Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is car. C-A-R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Well, here I am again with uh, $1,500 for one of our couples. Well, we invited some bridge teachers to the program, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Rose O'Brien Olson to be a contestant. And her partner is in the music business, Mr. Lucky Wilbur. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Rose O'Brien Olson, you're a bridge teacher, is that? Yes, I am, Archie. And where, where are you from, Rose? Tacoma, Washington. Uh-huh. Are you married? Yes, sir. Burned your bridges behind you, huh? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Your name is Lucky Wilbur? Yes. Oh. How old are you, Lucky? I'm 63. What sort of work do you do, Mr. Wilbur? I'm uh, what they call a song plugger. A song plugger? Mm-hmm. Well, really, of course, I, I know what a song plugger is, but I'm sure some of our listeners out there have never heard of song plugging. Could you tell them what a song plugger is? Well, I uh, mean... Uh, Without us being arrested up here? <laughs> uh, I work for a publisher, and when we get a brand new song, why, it's my job to go out and see how many plugs I can get on it. Mm-hmm. A plug means uh, disc jockey, orchestra leader, anyone in the entertainment field. By the number of plugs, why, if the song has got a chance at all, we hope it'll become a hit. Would you get paid by the plug? Oh, no. <laughs> I know no. a jockey does. I thought perhaps you did, too. <laughs> no, not yet. A disc jockey, I mean. Oh, he gets uh, paid by the plug. <laughs> There's a joke in there, but it uh, isn't worth investigating. <laughs> How long have you been doing this kind of work? I've been at if it... If you can uh, call it work. Well, actually, 44 years. 44 years? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are some of the songs you've made famous? Well, I started on Let Me Call You Sweetheart. Uh, Meet so me did tonight. I, and got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Me Tonight in Dreamland. I used to sing that. Three o'clock in the morning I sang in a little that around Spanish midnight, town. Huh? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning in a little Spanish town. Three o'clock in the morning in a little Spanish town? I never mm-hmm. heard that. Is that well, all one song? No, two songs. Oh. Two and songs? That's in Arizona, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then from there I went. You have to admire me. I certainly keep plugging away up there. <laughs> I'm not funny, but I'm certainly persistent. Well, Rose, let's talk about bridge. You say you're a bridge teacher? Yes, I am. And where teacher. is your school? At 611, the Contract Bridge Studio, 611 South Ardmore. Uh-huh. Not Los Angeles. We've been there about t- over 20 years. Uh-huh. I have my own system uh, in playing bridge. I played a couple of times. You kick your opponent in the shins, <laughs> and when they bend over, you just look at their cards. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how about cheating? Is, is there much cheating goes on among these card players in the oh, bridge clubs? Heavens no, Harpo. Um, I mean, Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. It's all right. You call me Harpo, and I'll talk about stud poker. <laughs> Lucky, let's get back to you. By the way, did you know I did an album for Decca Records last year? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard a laugh like that since <laughs> since Frankenstein was done by Boris Karloff. Well, I'd like to continue this conversation. <laughs> but the time has come to play your bet, your life. Now, we have questions here ranging from ten to a hundred dollars, and you must pick four of them. The higher the amount, the tougher the question. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You play bridge. I'm sure you're good with mathematics. All right, let's see how much money you can make. You selected sports. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to try a ten-dollar question, a fifty, or a hundred, or... Just talk it over between you and come to some specific conclusion. Let's start with 50. $50, all right. A period in the game of polo will last seven and a half minutes. What is this period called? Chuck. That's right, Chuck. You're on your way with $50. Now, you'll be much safer if you decide on an answer before calling out. 
60. Oh, 60. 60, all right. What does the rubber disc use in ice hockey called? Puck. Puck. That's right, Puck. We now have $110. Don't look so somber, Phantom, and this isn't our money. <laughs> but it's my arithmetic. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, which one do you choose this time? Uh, go up. Ten. Seventy. Seventy, all right. And what sport is Eric Guerin famous? G-U-E-R-I-N. Jockey. Jockey is right. Horse racing. We now climb to $180. Now, uh, what do you want for your last question? Eighty. Eighty. All right. Who is the winner of the decathlon in the last two Olympic Games? Talk it over. Uh, Mathis. Bob Mathis. Bob Mathias is absolutely right. $260. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Thank dealers. You very we have some newlyweds for you, Groucho. Um, Bob and Shirley von Kuznick, would you uh, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see, Shirley and Bob Van Kuznick, huh? Eh? You're newlyweds? Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. And Bob, where's your hometown? Oh, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, on Lake Erie. Cle- and Shirley, where are you from? I was born in Madisonville in Cincinnati. What sort of work do you do, Bob? I'm a lather. You get paid for laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, put on uh, wire paper and that and a plasterboard on the inside of the houses. Oh, you're a plasterer, huh? <laughs> How old are you, uh, Bob? I'm 26. You're pretty young to be plastered, aren't you? <laughs> What's your age, uh, Shirley? 19. Are you a plasterer, too? Uh? No, I'm not. How long have you two been married, Bob? Oh, about uh, 10 months. Hmm. Oh. Shirley, is he anywhere near the, near the right uh, amount? Well, to be exact, it's about eight months, three weeks, and two days. Oh. Bob, when was the first time you, you met uh, Shirley? I was in a... Um, Hot dog stand, Cincinnati in 1951. In a hot dog stand? Yes. Mm-hmm. You mean it was just puppy love at first sight? Huh? <laughs> what was Romeo doing there besides getting mustard all over his necktie? Oh, he was on a 48-hour pass from the army. Oh, 48-hour pass? That's right. What uh, what all did you manage to do on that 48-hour pass? Uh, well, we went out to uh, Coney Island, went dancing. Cincinnati. In Cincinnati. Is there a Coney Island in Cincinnati? Oh, yes, uh-huh. And uh, went swimming, went on all the amusements, took in a couple of movies, went to a show and a party. <laughs> you must have been loaded with money, eh? It's always a mystery to me how a $50 a month GI can spend $300 on a weekend. <laughs> Shirley, was Bob Zami uh, close enough for him to see you regularly after that first date? Was it Fort Knox? He was at Fort Knox? Yes. (laughs) That's where that $300 a week came from. (laughs) What were you doing at Fort Knox? Were you a gold brick? Um, I was an instructor there. I was teaching GIs why we fight in Korea, troop information, education. Mm. How long after you met Romeo did you get engaged, Shirley? About six months. Mm. What happened after he proposed, Shirley? Did he go and ask his general for a better job? He went AWOL. <laughs> From who? You or the, the army? army. <laughs> you know, you could get into trouble going AWOL, Bob. How long were you over the hill? Oh, about a year and a half. A year and a half? A year and I'm a half. Surprised the army missed you. <laughs> that is, I'm surprised the firing squad missed you. <laughs> Where'd you go for such a long time? Well, um, I was uh, teaching in my lesson plan uh, that the survival for Western democracy was at stake in Korea, and somebody would always say, wasn't he practice what he preaches, and after a lesson was over, and so I just went to Korea. You went to Korea? How'd you do that? I just decided to go and went out to the West Coast on an airliner, and... Well, how'd you swing it? I didn't know you could just pick up and go to Korea. Well, uh, after I got out there, I uh, went up to Seattle there, and I saw the ship there, and I knew it was going to Korea from where the GIs were talking around there, and uh, 
So I went over to the naval barracks there where they were billeted, and early that morning there was an advance detail of cooks and bakers leaving, and so I put on a white mess jacket and an apron and went down to the dock that morning real early, and there was only about 15 of us, and luckily it was raining at the time because an officer there said, are these the men? And he said, yeah, and he says, well, it's raining. You better get the men out of the rain. And So we went aboard, and I went forward and got lost with the crew. I got to Japan. Well, how far did you get before they finally caught up with you? Well, uh... Uh, they never did catch me. Uh, I got right up to the front lines. Well, tell us about your experience as an AWOL soldier on the front lines. How did you get lined up with an outfit? Well, uh, the first outfit I came across was the British uh, Princess Pats, and I stayed with them for a while and uh, on some assaults there, and then I worked my way over to their flank to a, a South Korean infantry unit. And I stayed with them for about three weeks. Now, weren't you frightened? After all, you were more or less short-sighted at all the training the ordinary soldier gets before he goes into action. Were you scared? Well, I was scared. Uh, some lieutenant might tap me on the shoulder and say I was wanted at Fort Knox. <laughs> well, what finally happened? Did the Army ever find out what became of their wandering boy? Well, uh, I finally uh, told the platoon sergeant about it. And what did he say? Well, uh, he told the lieutenant about it then. Then, yeah. what did the lieutenant do? Well, I went to captain, from the captain on up to uh, the colonel, the colonel to I Corps. They were passing the buck private, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened then? Well, I went to uh, Far East Command in Tokyo, and then from there to the Pentagon in Washington. Well, it certainly can get lost there. Huh? <laughs> what happened when it got to the Pentagon? Well, uh... Did they shoot you or anything? Hang you? They uh, finally court-martialed me and, and fined me $10. <laughs> well, you can get that half the exhaust in your car is smoking. Right? <laughs> Find you $10, huh? Now, after you gave yourself up, how did they ship you? Did they ship you home right away? Well, after my court martial there at Tokyo, uh, I requested uh, to be sent back to my adopted tank unit in Korea. And so my request was granted, and next morning I was shipped back to Korea. I served mm -hmm. a full tour then with that unit. Well, that's an incredible story, Bob. A man assigned to Fort Knox wants to get something easier? Imagine a guy hanging around Fort Knox and dying to get to Korea and get into action. <laughs> Shirley, you've probably heard the story a thousand times. Did he leave out anything important? Well, he was wounded and decorated a couple times. And uh, there was a platoon up on the hill which needed some ammunition. They needed a volunteer to drive through uh, the front to bring them the ammunition. And so Bob volunteered to go up there, and he got through all the, all the enemies and everything, although he was wounded. Were you dressed as a cook this time? Uh, Bob? <laughs> well, put her there, huh? Thank you. Uh, uh, I think this country is pretty safe with fellows like you hanging around. <laughs> now, Shirley, how soon after Bob got home did you get married? Did you wait until he closed the front door? Or did you get married immediately? Well, it wasn't immediately. We got married that evening. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm glad you waited a reasonable length of time. You said you took a chance waiting a whole day. You might have got a telegram from Patagonia saying, having a nice war down here. I'll be late for the wedding. Sign Bob. Well, now let's see if you two can win a lot of money. I, I have to be impartial up here. You realize that. I'm not allowed to say what I'm really thinking, but if you don't win the equivalent of Fort Knox, there's going to be some heads rolling in the morning. Around here. In the race for the $1,500, the bridge teacher and the song plugger won $260, and the secret word is car. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected American history. Uh, you know how to play the, this game? Oh, um... I, have to, I have ten questions. I weigh 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100. You must pick four of the ten. As they increase in value, they get correspondingly tougher. Is that clear? Clear. Now, which one do you want to start with? We'll start with the fifth question. Fifth question, $50. The first and most prominent signature among the names on the Declaration of Independence has become a symbol for all signatures. Whose name is it? John Hancock. That's absolutely right, John Hancock. <laughs> We're off to a good start with $50. You have $50 that nobody can take away from you except the Revenue Department. Now, what is the next one you want to try? We'll try the seventh question. Seventy dollars. Who was the general in charge of the government forces annihilated in the Battle of the Little Big Horn? General George Custer. That is absolutely right. 
You now have one hundred twenty dollars. We'll what take... is the one you're going to try now? We'll take uh, eight. Eighty. William H. Seward, as Secretary of State, was responsible for a land purchase that was known as Seward's Folly. What was Seward's Folly? He purchased some land for the United States. He was Secretary of State. And if you don't know, guess. Louisiana? No. I'm sorry, it's Alaska. But they still have $120. You $120 that nobody can take away from you. Now, which one do you want to try for on your final question? I'll try the 10th okay. question. The $100, $100. question? Yeah. Who was the first man to become president of all the 48 states? George Washington. The 48 states? Oh, the 48 now, states. Now, think it over for a minute. Not the 13, but the 48. Calvin Coolidge. No, it's William Howard Taft. Or if you want to be really technical... I would have accepted Eisenhower as the answer, since Ohio was formally admitted to the Union in 1953. So anyway, they, they wind up with $120. And well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, and I'm sorry you didn't win more. All right, George, who's next? Groucho, we ask for volunteers tonight. Uh, people for the Army? No, no, people with interesting stories. We asked that type of person to oh, volunteer. Let's see. And uh, just before we went on the air, uh, Aroxy Jam Gogian and Walter Atkinson were chosen to be on the show. And here they are. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Aroxy Jam Gogian. Uh, who's there? That's uh, me, Groucho. That's you? Huh? Yeah. How far did I miss the pronunciation? Well, not any farther than the average person. Oh. <laughs> what kind of a name is uh, Yam... Y- Yam Ogchian? Sham Gochian. Sham Gochian? Yes. What do I, it's what? an Armenian name. Armenian, huh? Well, what should I call you? Uh, um, Araxi? My friends call me Roxy, which is much easier to say. Oh, don't, don't, say, don't mention Roxy, will you? No. I played the Roxy in New York... We did five performances a day, and each performance lasted an hour. And on Saturday and Sunday, we did six. So if you must have a nickname, I'll call you the Palace or the Majestic Theater in Chicago. <laughs> do you have a job? Yes, I do. I teach at the Fairfax High School. Oh, really? In fact, I've been there since the school opened. What do you, what do you teach? Well, until just recently, I uh, taught um, drama and public speaking, had the play production work. But just now, I'm in the English department. Oh, you teach English? That's right. And where are you from, Walt? I'm from Madison, Georgia. That's close to Athens. (laughs) I thought Athens was in Greece. Is that still your home, uh, Uh, Georgia? No, I was... When when I left, when I was 10 years old, we went south. You went south? (laughs) You went south from Georgia? Yes, we went to Florida. Oh. I thought the only thing south of Georgia was the uh, Africa, uh, South Pole. No, we went, we went south. The bow evil and the zuzu bugs got too rough, and we went south. But that means they drove us plumb out of Georgia. What do you mean by plumb out? You had no plums? <laughs> no, we, we loaded up in a truck and headed south for Florida. And then when we got it... You went by Bull Weevil to Florida? No, the Bull Weevil drove us out. The Bull Weevil and the Zuzu bugs. Oh. <laughs> I thought Zuzu was a ginger snapper. Huh? The Zuzu bug is quite a bug. It is? <laughs> well, uh, evidently. What is it? Could you describe a Zuzu bug for us? Uh, you know anything about cotton? I know Joe Cotton. I've they, seen the movies. The Zuzu bugs, they suck the blossom, sting the bowl... Pull up the stalk and cover up the hole. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for scramming out of there. <laughs> where'd, where'd you wind up? We, we, we landed in Umatilla. Well, That's I'm... between Astatula and Oakie Humpkie on the <laughs> Well, where else could it be? <laughs> what was the name of this river? 
the Octawaha. Oh. But why did your family decide to settle in uh, Umatilla? Well, did they know anybody Umatilla, there? Umatilla, they... Well, we, when we were, we, as we were passing through Umatilla on this truck, a rear tire blew out. And we kind of settled out there. <laughs> well, you'd have settled any place where the tire blew out, is that it? Well, in this case, that's a, that we settled in Umatilla. Uh-huh. I don't think I'm familiar with Umatilla. I, I haven't been there recently. Uh, where is it located? Yeah, but tell her, I told you, it's, it's, on, it's between Astatula and Oakie Humpkie. Well, he hasn't changed the story any. <laughs> what kind of a joint is Uma Tiller? Is, that, uh, is, that, is it anything like New York City? No smoke, no small. Lots of rain and very little fall. Apex of the Golden Triangle, the home of the Okapanoke Queen Watermelon and the Big Mouth Bass. The heart of nature's wonderland. You, Matilla, you'll like it. <laughs> three, uh, three filling stations and all, all car garage, a post office, and a barbershop. Wait a minute, you said something. You said car. Okay, up. Uh. You oh, said the secret word car, so you get $50, and uh, Mrs. McGutchen uh, gets uh, $50. Uh, what, did you say? what did I say? You said... <laughs> you said bull weevil, and that's the secret word in there. <laughs> just, you just happen to be lucky that bull weevil was the secret word. It wouldn't happen again in a hundred years. Huh? <laughs> it was either bull weevil or Uma Tiller. I don't remember. <laughs> well, it's certainly been a confusing experience talking to you two. But now it's time to play your Bet Your Life. You know how to play our new quiz? I have a list of ten questions. You pick the category yourself. Is that right? Yes, sir. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple lead with $260. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a dictionary quiz. And being from Fairfax High, you ought to be very good at this, Mrs. Uh, Yamagochian. Now, uh, which question do you want to choose first? You can start with ten or a hundred or fifty. Let's start with four. You don't want to discuss this with her at all? Yes, sir. Uh, question number four, that's number, $40? Number four, yes. All right, a man who grinds grains and makes flour is called what? Talk it over. A miller. A miller on the D, that's right. <laughs> now have $40. Now what do you want to do? Five. Number 50. Yeah? If you were indolent, what would you be? Lazy. You'd be lazy. That's right. <laughs> We now have $90. Which one? Eight. Eight. Shall we try eight? $80? $80. If an aviary is a place to keep birds, what is an apiary? A-P-I-A-R-Y. Apiary? Apiary. Apiary. Bees. That's right. The place to keep bees. We now have $170. Now, which question do you want to try for? The 90, 100, 60... 30? 60. 60. What is the Latin phrase that means solid earth? Terra fun. Yes, he knew that. <laughs> and you wind up with $230. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> and that means the bridge teacher and the song plugger with $260... In just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Hello, this is Arlene Francis, here to tell you about the 1954 DeSoto Automatic. This dramatic new 1954 DeSoto is called the Automatic because it's the one car designed and built to carry out your sudden orders instantly, silently, and safely at all speeds. Parking or steering, DeSoto full-power steering works for you all the time and does the work of turning the wheel for you. And this year, the DeSoto Automatic offers you power flight transmission. With Power Flight Drive, you have really astonishing getaway power. And you never even lift your foot from the pedal. 
More big news is that the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine is now a full 170 horsepower. Take it from me, you'll want to see this 1954 DeSoto automatic right away at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now here's the bridge teacher and the song plugger all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. In 1889, an American newspaper woman went around the world in 72 days, 6 hours, and 11 minutes. For $1,500, what was the name of this famous New York journalist? Talk it over. Okay, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Wasn't Francis Quinby, was it? No, it no. was Nellie Bly, a very famous name. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, they lost the big money, but how yeah. much did they win the quiz, Joe? They won $260 well, in the quiz. that's not so bad. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show much. tonight. Thank you very much. Guys. You bet your life. Thank Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto... Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Good drivers drive safe cars. So wise up, check up, fix up. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is clock. C-L-O-C-K. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples. Well, uh, who's first, George? What have we got on the veranda? Well, um, Groucho, we invited some dancing instructors to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Ann Reardon to be on the program. Her partner is Mr. Bill Eddy. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, hot diggity diggity. <laughs> Welcome, youngsters, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Ann Reardon and Bill Eddy. And uh, you're a dancing instructor, it says here, huh? Yes. Where are you from, Annie? 
Well, I was originally from St. Louis, and I lived in Chicago, but I've been out here since I was 12 years old. In other words, Annie doesn't live there anymore. That's right. Are you single? Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm correct in guessing you're not engaged. Am I uh, correct? Yes. Are you busy tonight? Yes. You say yes? Yes. Tomorrow night? Yes. You said yes four times in a row. You realize that? Yes. Apparently, the answer is still no. This is the most delightful brush-off I've had in years. Bill Eddy, that's you, huh? Yes, I don't care how many times you say yes. My guess is you're about five years older than Ann. Is is that right? How old are you? Oh, I'm 28. Ann, was I pretty close? Yes. Still saying yes, eh? Right after the show, let's you and I have a soda, just the two of us, okay? No. They always get around to that sooner or later. Bill, are you married? No. Engaged? No. Can you support a wife, Bill? Well, reasonably well. You're walking on quicksand, Bill. (laughs) Where do you work? I work for the Bank of America in Glendale, Maine office. Oh, you work at the Bank of America. And congratulations. (laughs) This is better than striking oil. Bill, what do you think of Anne? And be candid as you like. You know, you're among friends. Well, on such short acquaintanceship, I think she's a very lovely and charming girl. I haven't seen a banker pay that much interest since the boom of 87. (laughs) I've often wondered about banks with all that money around. How do they know you fellas won't take home a few samples? Well, the uh, bank conducts a very thorough investigation and uh, ascertains our honesty before we're employed. That's not important. They better make sure you're honest after they hire you. <laughs> Isn't there some little way an employee can make an honest mistake, like slipping a couple of thousand under his toupee? Well, uh, be uh, honest, isn't it? Well, a teller could go out to lunch and take a couple grand with him and not come back, but it wouldn't be long before his absence was noticed, and he'd be caught eventually. Yes, but by this time he'd have had the lunch. Well, apparently you've been giving this some thought anyhow, haven't you? (laughs) And you may have your honeymoon in Rio de Janeiro. (laughs) Bill, by the way, I know the Bank of America is a very big bank. It happens I've got $32 there myself. (laughs) Now, just between us, what assurance do I have that this money is safe? Well, uh, all deposits up to $10,000 are assured or insured by the federal government in Washington. Mm, that's my guarantee. Yeah? Yes. Uh-huh. Have you heard that the federal government is about $280 billion in the hole? <laughs> <laughs> and that's after they collected Crosby's taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you, Ann. Where do you do your dancing? The Arthur Murray Studio on Wilshire Boulevard. Oh, Arthur Murray. Oh, I, know him very, I know him very well. As a matter of fact, I was on his show a few weeks ago. Did you see it? No. You didn't, huh? If you remember right after that, you remember he got robbed? Did yes. you read about that? <laughs> well, there was no connection between my performance. Uh, <laughs> I just thought he should have paid me off in something besides dancing lessons. That's all. <laughs> what is the most popular dance these days? I know the one I like. The costumes are wonderful. Uh, all you need is seven veils. <laughs> you do that dance at all? No, we don't. What is the most popular? Oh, of course, Foxtrot. And it seems everybody nowadays wants to learn the mambo. Oh, the mambo. Oh, I remember mambo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a sort of a combination of rumba and jitterbug, isn't it? Well, that's pretty close. With a little catches can wrestling thrown him for good measure? <laughs> pretty close. And you think you could teach this guy anything? Oh, I'm sure I could. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, uh, when do you think you can get together with her just to kind of talk things over, huh? Well, uh, we discussed this a little bit before the show, and we decided if uh, we want any money, why we might get together after the show and talk it over a little bit. This was, uh, you knew this all the time when I was uh, talking to her? Yes. At the beginning, huh? Yes. Like a cat playing with a mouse, huh? <laughs> well, she gave the right answers. Yeah. It was more like a rat playing with a mouse. <laughs> you two have already gotten together, huh? Well, I swan. <laughs> Gosh, I haven't swanned in years. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't spend all his time foreclosing mortgages. Huh? 
Why, you're a very attractive couple, and Anne, if Bill has trouble carrying you across the threshold... After you marry, don't worry. Do what I do. But... <laughs> now, let's see how much money you can win. You beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. Now, let's get... You select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Seventy. Okay. Seventy. Seventy. All right. In a matrimonial sense, what is a Benedict? Seventy. Seventy. Might as well guess. It's a ring. We gotta give a ring. Okay. Go ahead. Is that the fellow that gives the ring to the groom? No, that's a married man. Usually newly married. Well, that's single. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, uh, what question do you want? We'll you still got lots of chances. Mm -hmm. 80, 60, 90, 100, 60. 60. 60. What kind of a business establishment would you associate with a mortar and pestle? A plaster, I think. Okay, go ahead. A plaster? Oh. Either a drugstore or a pharmacy. Or pharmacy. Ooh, that's the thing he grinds it up in. That's right, yeah. Well, we're not doing what we're doing. Now, well... So now what do you want? Let's go for the 50. Okay. Can't get too low. Okay. 50. 50. According to Mother Goose, who went to bed with one shoe on? This will have to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> See, a married man with children would know this. Well, I know. It's Diddle Diddle Dumpling. My son John went to put his stockings on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Diddle Diddle Dumpling. My son John. You see, you have to have children. Yeah. Remember that. Now then. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? What question are you going to go for? Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. What do you call a freshman at West Point? Plebe. Plebe. Plebe is right. At least you have eighty dollars. <laughs> yes. Now we have a young lady with an interesting job. job, Groucho. Her name is Shirley Lestelle, and her partner is Mr. Charles Sandoval. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide by $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see. Charles uh, Sandoval and Shirley Lestelle, eh? You're Shirley, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, Shirley, you don't mind my calling you Shirley on such short acquaintance, do you? Not at all. What did you say? I said, I don't mind you calling me Shirley. <laughs> Do you always talk that way? Well, I guess so. My voice uh, didn't change as I grew up. Your voice didn't change? No. How come? I don't know. It sort of left me, or I left it one or the other. Oh. Well, your voice was very foolish, Shirley. Now, uh, how old are you, Shirley? Twenty-five. Twenty-five? Y yes. Ah, uh, you're five and uh, Mr. Charles Sandoval, is that that's you? Huh? Yes, sir, that's me. I can't help but notice that patch over your eyes. Is that anything serious? No, sir. The bright light has uh, hurt my eyes. Oh. You look very distinguished with the patch. And the schnorbart and the goatee. And... <laughs> isn't, isn't this a schnorbart? Schnorbart? No. Yeah, no, I think so. Goatee. Is your chin sensitive to light, too? Uh... No, sir. <laughs> Where are you from originally? I was born in the uh, city of San Salvador in the Republic of Salvador. Oh, well, why did you leave San Salvador? Did you get tired of bananas? No, there was a revolution in 1929, and my father thought it would be a good time to leave the country. You mean he let a little revolution scare him? Was no, he a coward? No, no certainly not. Uh, he was a president. <laughs> well, the job blew up in his face, huh? Right? I don't blame him for quitting. There's not much chance for advancement in a job like that. <laughs> Shirley, let's get back to you. There's one question I haven't asked. Uh, you, uh, you are married, huh? Yes, sir. Do you have any outside interest, Shirley, or do you spend all your time keeping house? Oh, no. I work for Paper Mate Pen Company. I have for the last three years. Just what do you do there? Well, uh, right now uh, I'm uh, uh, in uh, doing the uh, first assembly. I've done... Um, Fillers, first assembly, final assembly, inspection. Now, what's a filler? A filler is the... And that's uh, a fellow you were married to. I don't mean him. Well, a filler in a paper mate pen is the, is the, uh, the little inside that you write with. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you buy when you run out of ink, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Only when you write, I guess, huh? <laughs> There's about 70,000 words there. 
there is. I don't know that many words. Well, <laughs> can you write in an airplane with that pen? Sure. Can you write in a submarine? Definitely. Uh, have you ever been in a submarine? No. Well, how do you know you can write in one? Because we advertise it, and when we advertise it, it's so. <laughs> Suppose I were to buy one, how would I know if it was any good, assuming that I did buy one? Well, it would be good if you bought it because each pin is, is tested. We got uh, 20 girls. You test them underwater? No, on paper. Uh-huh. We have uh, 20 girls that, that uh, ride nothing? Johnson all day long. <laughs> Johnson must get an awful lot of mail, huh? <laughs> Why do they write Johnson? I happen to know Johnson. He can't even read. Besides that, he's a married man. Does Mrs. Johnson uh, get wind of this? No, but Johnson has all the necessary loops and swirls and straight lines. If you think Johnson has them, you should see Mrs. Johnson. (laughs) It's been an experience talking to you two. But I'm sure you'd be much more interested in winning some money, wouldn't you, John? That's right. So let's play you bet your life. Beat our other couples, you'll get a chance at the big money later. The banker and the dancing instructor won $80. And the secret word is clock. You selected science and fiction. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want? $10 one? $80? $100? Talk it over. Your partners. Good night. 60, please. 60. What is another word for vertigo? Vertigo, dizziness. That's right. <laughs> Off to a good start with $60. Now, what one do you want? Okay. 70. 70. What do you call the colored part of the eye? The pupil. The colored part of the eye is the retina. Right. No, the boat's gone, Charlie. It's the iris. Oh. Now you have $60. Now, what do you want? We'll try the $80. 80? Okay. What is the common word for clavicle? Clavicle collarbone. That's right. You now have one hundred forty dollars. Now, what do you want to try? Uh, Is your last chance to beat the other couple? Ninety. 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 What is the science that deals with birds called? Ornithology. That is absolutely correct. (laughs) And you wind up with two hundred thirty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth Dealers. Now, before we proceed, I have a telegram here I want to read. This is to Groucho Marx, NBC Hollywood. The 500 radio and TV editors participating in the annual Motion Picture Herald and Fame Magazine poll have voted George Fenneman the best announcer in television. Thank you very much. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. George, get your head out of the clouds and tell us who's next. <laughs> All right, Roger, we have a, a guest tonight from down under. He's Mr... And don't ask for more money. You're just wasting your time. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, we may cut your salary. <laughs> we, now uh... that you have these encomiums. <laughs> what? Encomiums. <laughs> we have a guest tonight from down... <laughs> <laughs> this fellow went to Stanford, and I went to reform school. Huh? <laughs> E-C-O-M-I-U-M-S. Something like that. <laughs> we, uh, we have a guest. E. e. <laughs> Look it up when you get home. I'll George. do that for sure. Look uh, under E. E. <laughs> we have a guest tonight, uh, Groucho, from down under, Mr. Uh, Ethel Smurden. Where is he, in the subway? <laughs> well, uh, you'll see in just a minute, I think. Mr. Ethel Smurden is his name, and his partner is a Hollywood pioneer, Miss Mary Sackett. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Day. Let's say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ethel Smyton. Oh, come now, you just made that up, didn't no, you? No, no, no. My name is Ethel. That's a Scotch Ethel? name. Hmm. Well, why aren't you in a gas tank? <laughs> oh, well, Ethel, you see, is the male equivalent for Ethel, the girl's name. Oh. How about Smyton? Smyton, well, that's... What kind of a name is Smyton? That's old that's English, Devonshire. My grandfather came from South Devon. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Smyton? Oh, I'm from Auckland. Auckland? Well, that's right across the bay from San Francisco, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, Groucho. 
Auckland, A U C K L A N D. I don't care how you spell it, it's still across the bay from San Francisco. <laughs> Why do you assume this uh, dialect if you're from Oakland? Well, actually, uh, have you ever heard of New Zealand? New Zealand? Mm. Have you ever ho- heard of Ecomium? <laughs> no, frankly, I haven't. Well, that's right across the bay from Oakland. <laughs> Same place. Now let's talk to you, okay, Mrs. Sackett? Miss Sackett, if you please. Miss Sackett? Thank oh, I'm, you. I'm terribly sorry. No, you may be sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> hasn't been an easy day for me, so. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not sorry, uh, Mr. Sackett. Are, are you a spinster, huh? I'm a spinster from Choice. From Choice. Is that near Oakland? Uh? <laughs> Where were you born? Uh, in uh, Suffield, uh, Connecticut. In Connecticut, huh? Uh, oh, you're across the alley from the town hall, opposite the town park, with the town cigar factory in the backyard, the family orchard in the family garden on my granddad's Connecticut seed leaf tobacco farm, 10 miles from Springfield, Mass, 16 from Hartford, Connecticut. And if you would dispose of the cigar, I'll thank you. Can I just hold it? <laughs> no, I don't like something. Well, how do you feel about me, Mary? Oh, you look all right, perhaps, if you leave the cigar alone. Okay. Does anyone have a time to <laughs> Boy, am I getting pushed around tonight. <laughs> how, how old are you, Mary? 78 years. 78. Well, you're... You're certainly spry and chipper, and, and not married. Now, Fenneman introduced you as a Hollywood pioneer. How long have you been in California? I landed here on Thanksgiving Day, 1887. 1887. Huh? <laughs> that was 70 years ago, huh? What was California? No, well. 67. Well, I wouldn't argue with you because I'd come off second best, but uh, <laughs> did you do any work as a girl when you first came out here? Oh, I attended a store outside of school hours for my father. Uh-huh. What kind of a store? A general store? A yeah, general store, a country store. Mm-hmm. I took care of the post office when it came along in the corner of the store, and when they electrocised the dummy line and put it down to Santa Monica, I had the ticket and freight business, three of them at one time for three years. Say, you were a pretty important part of... Well, I had to have help. You didn't do it all yourself, huh? Well, uh, when... Why did you quit the post office, Mary? Were the postcards getting too hard to read? I didn't read the postcards. (laughs) Just the letters? I I couldn't get into letters. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how do you spend your time these days? What do you do to entertain yourself? Oh, I read, and I walk, and I talk. Oh. And you do them all very well, too, Mary. I hope I do as well when I'm your age next year. <laughs> do you ever watch uh, my show on television? Sometimes. Not often. Because <laughs> I seldom look at the television. Well, do you like You me? or anybody else. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Took a long time to squeeze that out of you. Man. <laughs> well, well, I'd like to continue this conversation, but now it's time to win some money. If you beat our other couples, you'll get a chance at the big money. Our second couple leads with $230. Now, you two have to decide on one answer between you on all these things. Let's see how much money you can make. You select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what question do you want to start with? 
four. I figure we'll take about. Talk on. Uh, huh? I figure we'll take about uh, number eight. How's that? Number, number eight. eight? Mm. The eighty dollar one. Is that That's all right, right with you, man? All right. If right. I was right with him, it'd be all right with me, I expect. To what country does Greenland belong? Iceland. Uh, no, it's Denmark. Mm. All right, now you got three more chances. Mm. On, Which one do you want? want? Say 70. 70. What is the capital city of Alaska? Anchorage. Mm. No, it's Juneau. Mm. What one do you want now? <sighs> Come on, what do you want now? 50. Let's go the big one. You're getting nothing to lose so far. Um, yeah, we'll go a hundred. A hundred? We've got to get together. <laughs> <laughs> what is the largest state east of the Mississippi? Largest? Now, you're from the United States. What's the largest state east of the Mississippi? <laughs> Texas. Isn't that... Texas is right. <laughs> east. Oh. Isn't that just like a man? Well, it's Georgia. That's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much are you going to bet? You want a $90 one? A $10 one? No, we'll go the hundred. Well, it's all right with you if we go the hundred? It's all right with No, me. you've had the hundred. You oh, can go hundred. 90. Ah, all right. We'll go 90. All right? All right. In which of our states do you find Shoshone Falls? S-H-O-S-H-O-N-E. They're higher than Niagara. In which of our states do you find Shoshone Falls? Higher than Niagara. That's yeah. a, Idaho, is it? That's right. Idaho is right. <laughs> up with $90. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you didn't leave here broke, Mary. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And that means that Shirley Lestel and the man from San Salvador with $230 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. <laughs> Let me tell you about a man who's going to be mighty happy soon. He'll be happy because he'll be enjoying the comforts of a really fine automobile. A top-value used car he's going to pick out from his neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer's great selection. Now, let's see why this late-model, low-mileage car is going to be such an exceptional buy. Well, first, the car was traded in on a new DeSoto automatic, then given a thorough inspection. After being completely checked from bumper to bumper by the staff of expert mechanics at the neighborhood DeSoto dealer's marvelous service center, necessary reconditioning and tune-up work was completed immediately. Finally, because your DeSoto dealer thought that this car was one of the top values on his lot, he awarded it the Groucho Special Sticker. That's his way of showing you the finest used car buys in town. You'll find you can buy one of these Groucho Specials on the easiest of budget payments. So if it's a fine used car you want, look for the Groucho special sticker. Then perhaps you'll be the happy man sitting in the driver's seat of a Groucho special used car. Remember, see the Groucho specials at your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Groucho, here comes our winning couple, the man from San Salvador and Shirley Lestel, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. All right, for $3,000, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. Think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. One of the most famous of Greek legends concerns Jason and his quest for the Golden Fleece. The sailors who accompanied Jason had many wonderful adventures. For $3,000, what were these sailors called? It is a word still used frequently. Talk it over. I don't know. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Argonauts. Argonauts is absolutely right, eh? Three thousand dollars, and that was a tough question. How much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, two hundred and thirty dollars in the quiz, which gives them thirty-two, uh, thirty-two thirty. It's not bad. What are you going to do with all that money? 
At sixteen fifteen apiece, huh? I'm going to get a house. You're going to get a house? And you, what are you going to do with Same yours? Thing. You're going to get a house? Why don't yes, you get one between you, huh? <laughs> you can get a well, duplex. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life, Thank huh? You, sir. Great. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Don't cross between intersections. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name, N-A-M-E. Oh, you can spell, huh? You bet your life. Really? It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission. And the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... I'll fight Marciano for every nickel he's got. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. You know, we invited some uh, girls from a fan club to the show You did? Did your wife tonight. know about this? Well, this is for you. Uh, oh, for me. Uh, yes, and we selected, one to... <laughs> we selected one to be on the show just before we went on the air, and her name is Miss Sheila Pugh, and her partner has a very interesting story. Give me story. that again. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her partner has an interesting story. Uh, he's Mr. John uh, Burgoyne Ely. Mm -hmm. And I'd like these people now to come in and meet Groucho Marx. You would. Huh? Folks? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see, John Burgoyne Ely and uh, Sheila Pugh. Eh? Well, you make a very attractive couple. <laughs> Let's see what you have in common. Sheila, what is, what is your age? I'm 16, Groucho. You're 16? 16. Johnny, how old are you? 84. 84, well... You make a very attractive couple. <laughs> the man should be a little older, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, uh, what was your full name again? John Burgoyne Ely. That's an English name, isn't it, John? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you from England, uh, John? Uh, originally, I came from Normandy. Normandy? That's in France, isn't it? Well, I believe so. This was in 1066. Tell us something about your ancestors. They, they sound <laughs> illustrious. Uh, are they? Well, when William the Conqueror conquered England, he took 
the first John Hiley of record with him as his treasurer of the household. And John Hiley's son was treasurer of the realm. His grandson was Lord High Sheriff of London. So I suppose I'm the 45th Duke of Normandy. Well, were you ever married to Barbara Hutton? <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't that kind of a duke. I was a poor duke, I guess. <laughs> Well, uh, being a duke, Johnny, which one of these big English castles were you born in? Mm, I was born in a shack in Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas? Arkansas? What were you doing there? I was getting born. <laughs> well, it's like Shaq and the Beanstalk, huh? <laughs> yeah. Sheila, what was it Fenneman said you were besides a girl? I am the international vice president of the official Gordon McRae fan club. That's one of the largest in the world, Groucho. Gordon McRae? Oh, I know him very well. He's a great performer. I admire him a great deal, too. Isn't he the fellow that makes his living getting shot out of a cannon? Groucho, <laughs> you know as well as I do that he's one of the greatest singers in the country. What about the city? <laughs> well, he actually, he's one of my favorite singers. Huh? He's on the railroad hour or something, isn't right. he? Right. Monday nights on NBC. Now, Mr. Ely, uh, would you like to belong to her fan club? Well, yes. I like singing. I'm a musician. You are, huh? Well, who is your favorite star? Theda Barry? Oh, no. Jack Benny. Jack Benny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Present company accepted, of course. Yeah. It's all right. You made your faux pas. Let, uh, <laughs> let it lay there. Why do you like Jack Benny, of all people? <laughs> he paid my first year of college tuition. <laughs> I'm not, I'm I not. thought he was 39 years old. <laughs> he is. Well, all this nonsense about Benny being stingy is just part of his act, then, huh? Oh, yeah. Actually, he's one of the most generous men in show business. I right? think so. Sure, yeah. When did Benny pay your college tuition, John? In the days of William the Conqueror? <laughs> no, that was two years ago when I got through with John Muir. Uh, what yeah. college did you attend? Uh, do you attend now? UCLA. Oh, UCLA. I saw you play in the Rose Bowl against Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on the pep squad. Oh. <laughs> I used to write poetry for them. What are you studying now, uh, John. Music and drama. Mm -hmm. What kind of music are you interested in? Uh, classical, semi-classical music. Uh -huh. Like Gordon McRae kind of stuff? Huh? The, uh, he chamber. sings real He-Man songs. You oh, know. Really. Well, I like He-Man. The he -Man. wind in your face and everything. You know. I like He-Man on it. She-Women. Well, you said you got the sexes straightened out there. <laughs> Well, you make a very attractive couple, and I hope you'll be very happy together. Now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, all you have to do is win more money in the quiz than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later. You selected biblical quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what do you want to start with? Let's start with a $50 question, Groucho. What is the popular time for this biblical statement? All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. That's the golden rule. Bill. Yes, it is. That's the golden rule. On your way with fifty dollars. Seventy. What yeah. do you want? A seventy-dollar one? Or yeah. Thirty dollars. Seventy's fine, gotcha. Seventy. All right. On what famous mountain did Moses receive the Ten Commandments? Sinai. Mount Sinai. That's Mount right. Sinai is right. We now have one hundred twenty dollars. Now, which one do you want? Eighty. Eighty? Right. What was the name of the mountain where the ark landed? <gasps> oh, golly. Mount Ararat. Mount Ararat is right. You now have $200. And this is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? 100 or 100? 100. You want to try it? Yeah. Pretty sure you can get it. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. Uh, Come on, kids. Okay, 100. 100. What is the shortest book of the Old Testament? You know that? I know the shortest verse. 
Now the shortest book. Gone. No. Obadiah. Oh, dear. Never went That's a it. tough one. But you took a $100 question. That's a tough one. And you wound up with $200. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. This year, DeSoto is automatic with power flight drive that's the best. Folks, if you're looking for real driving pleasure, you'll find it in the new DeSoto automatic equipped with power flight. America's finest fully automatic transmission. Power Flight gives you the smoothest, quietest, fastest acceleration you've ever experienced. You see, DeSoto fully automatic Power Flight transmission was designed and built to carry out your sudden orders quickly, quietly, smoothly. It's truly no clutch, no shift driving at its best. No wavering, no fluttering. Power Flight gives you smooth, even, fast acceleration. The kind of lightning-fast acceleration and getaway you need on the steepest hills or in a sudden emergency. You'll find that in the city or on the highway, DeSoto Power Flight Transmission makes driving easier, safer, and much less tiring. So, for a new driving thrill, for a new experience in driving comfort, get behind the wheel of a DeSoto Automatic equipped with DeSoto Fully Automatic Power Flight Transmission. Stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. Once you've seen the smart styling of the new DeSoto Automatic, once you've thrilled to its wonderful performance, you'll know why the new DeSoto Automatic puts you ahead automatically. For the finest car yet, you should drive, you should get the DeSoto All right, George, who's next? Just before we went on the air, Groucho, our studio audience selected Miss Patricia Crane. Her partner is a man with an interesting occupation, Mr. Harry Lauren. So, folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss Patricia Crane, that's you, I presume, huh? You're a very charming girl with a cute squint. I'd say you were about 23, is that right? Thank you. I'm afraid 27, I'll have to admit. Well, you don't have to. You can lie up here the same as I do, huh? <laughs> Are you for high rot? For what? Are you married? Oh, uh... <laughs> I thought I was in violin. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not married? Well, you should be. Young, charming girl. Where are you from? Well, I'm from a small town near Salt Lake City, Utah. In fact, it's called Cottonwood Canyon. Oh, well, that's a very pretty name, isn't it? Huh? And you're Harry T. Lochran, huh? Uh, Is that the way you pronounce it? Lauren, that's close enough. I've been called Langhorn, Laughlin, Mick Laughlin, and lots of... Longhorn, is a, that's a steer, isn't it? That's from Texas, yes, yeah. sir. That's where I come from. Well, there was a lock when it was a light heavyweight champion. You're not him, huh? No relation, Groucho. No. Were you ever in the ring? <coughs> no, i never been in the ring. No, big enough. You could afford Jeffries and Dempsey and John O'Sullivan. You like that, huh? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a nice, pleasant prospect I laid out for you there. <laughs> and if you'd have taken it up, you'd have been laid out there. Huh? <laughs> Well, I'll call you Harry. That's simpler, huh? Although the name is Lachlan. I don't care what you call it. It's, uh, now, Pat, I'm sorry I've been neglecting you. You're real cute. It won't happen again. It's not like me. <laughs> Why were you chosen tonight? Do you have an unusual job? Well, at the present, I'm working for the Hughes Research and Development Laboratories, but my last job was quite unusual. I was with the uh, Special Activities Division of the Army. Oh. Were you a whack in the army? No, I was a civilian rec director. You were a rec director? <laughs> what did you do? Did you direct GIs to the hospital after they came back from a two-day pass? Well, actually, the term is uh, shortened for recreation director. I see. The, uh, Why didn't they just call you a hostess or something simple? Well, we had been called hostess, but uh, it sounded a little bit like dime a dance or something like that, and the uh, commanding general felt that it wasn't dignified enough. So he The general the wanted dignity, yeah? That's right. He's right. There's one thing a GI looks for in a girl is dignity. <laughs> I'll bet when the general dictated that order, his secretary was probably sitting on his lap at attention. <laughs> Harry, I forgot to ask you, what sort of work did you do after you quit the ring? Well, I... <laughs> Groucho, I'm a field deputy for Supervisor Burton W. Chase. I uh, 
formerly was uh, out at Compton in politics. I, I had the first position there in the planning commission, then I was on the housing authority, then I stepped over to the school board, I was president of that, postmaster, then elected mayor, and I found out that it only paid $40 a month, so I resigned and come to Los Angeles with the supervisor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if somebody offered you a big place, would you fight again, Harry? I believe so. <laughs> well, I wish you lots of luck the next time you enter the ring. Well, you're certainly a nice twosome, particularly you, Pat, and, uh, and you too, Harry. And me. And I'd like to pursue this conversation, but it's time to play your bet your life. You win more money than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple, John Burgoyne Ely and his partner, won $200. And the secret word is name. Now, let's see how much you can make. You selected food quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what one do you want? A $10 one? 50 100 90 Well, we'll try a 30 A 30 Okay. What kind of a fruit is a green gauge? Plum. All right, plum. Plum, you're plum right, huh? You now have $30. What is it, kids? Well, let's take a $50 and uh, see what he's got there. What is the correct name for the small bulbs of garlic used in seasoning? What is the correct name for the small bulbs of garlic Ooh, used in seasoning? Button. It is cloves. Oh. Well, you still have $30, however. That's a new one on me. Now what do you want to try? Mm. You, you say. Let's try another one. Let's take 60. 60? If sauerkraut was cabbage before it was sauerkraut, what was hominy before it was hominy? Corn. Corn. That's right. Corn is right. <laughs> You now have $90. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What question do you want to go for? Let's try the 100. Oh. 100? We'll try. What do you call the plants similar to mushrooms that grow a few inches below the surface of the ground? They are especially popular in France. Truffles. T-R-U. Oh, truffles. Truff F-F-E-L-S. That's right. Truffles is right. <laughs> And you wind up with $190. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. Now, before we proceed, I have a letter here I want to read. The Groucho Marx, NBC Hollywood. Dear Groucho, last week you made a point of heckling Mr. Fenneman because he didn't know what ecomium meant. I looked it up in the dictionary, and there is no such word. <laughs> Encomium, and it means high praise. George has the last laugh. Uh, signed, Bruce Final. <laughs> Abject oh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was enconium. I just left out the N, that's all. <laughs> Say, it's an achievement to even know encomium, isn't it? <laughs> all right, George, forget the encomiums and tell us who's next. Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories, and I think they're ready to come out. Mrs. Elizabeth Burrow and Professor Lou Girdler, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Elizabeth Burrow and Professor Lou Girdler. Eh? Mrs. Burrow, I'll start with you. Where are you from, Shorty? Uh, Mrs. Uh... Glasgow, Scotland. Glasgow, Scotland, man. Yeah. Near oh. Clyde Bank. Uh, Clyde Bank, yeah. That's where they uh, build the ships, isn't it? Yes, sir. How long ago was this? <laughs> well, it was 62 years ago. 62 years, eh? Wow. How long since you left Scotland? About 44 years. Mm -hmm. What caused you to leave the locks and rills, Elizabeth? Uh, well, Did they uh, just think because you were 18-year-old Scotch you should be exported? Well, no, I had a sister a here. A devious joke. <laughs> I had a sister here who was happily married, and I thought I'd like to come to America. Maybe I would meet a nice man get married, too. Mm -hmm. Professor Geidler, uh, where are you from? La Grande, Oregon. Oh. Of which of our institutions of higher learning do you do your professing? I'm at Arizona State College in Tempe. What brings you to Hollywood, Prof? Don't they have co-eds at Arizona State? Or are you just playing a little hooky? <clears throat> they or don't. Or does it say in Scotland, hooky? 
Is that the way you say it? That's right. Rootin. They don't have research libraries in Arizona, and I'm doing literary research in the backgrounds of English neoclassicism. I'm studying the Greek and Latin classics like Livy and Sallust and Ovid and people like that, particularly Latin neoclassicism, and in philosophy, in uh, the continental rationalists like Descartes and Spinoza, mm -hmm. and the... You touch Racine at all? I don't mean Wisconsin. <laughs> Racine was not a philosopher, Groucho. No, what was he? He was, was a playwright, principally, and mm -hmm. critic. Don't mention critics around here at all. <laughs> now you, and you teach what, English? Uh, yes, I'm a professor of English. Mm -hmm. No wonder I didn't dig you, Doc. We don't, speak, <laughs> we don't speak the same language. <laughs> Are you familiar with the word encomium? Yes. I listen to this program, too, you know. Uh -huh. And have you learned anything? A great deal. You didn't learn enough not to go on this program. <laughs> <clears throat> I've always been anxious to meet you, Groucho. Uh, well, I'm uh, flattered. I think that since the passing of the late George Bernard Shaw, you have some claim to being the leading wit in the English-speaking world. You may use that as an advertisement. If you don't win any money here tonight, it won't be my fault. <laughs> the first question may conceivably be, spell cat. <laughs> Betsy, let's get back to you for a minute, dear. I'm always interested in what people do for amusement, uh, Elizabeth. I think I know what the professor does. He makes up words, but what do you do? Do you have any hobbies? Well, I have a lot of fun with the Pioneer Gals. I used to have a lot of fun with them, too, you know. <laughs> Until they started uncovering those covered wagons. <laughs> what are the pioneer girls, Elizabeth? Well, they're a small band of middle-aged women, and we have different instruments and have a lot of fun. We entertain the veterans in the hospitals mostly. We never made any money, but the boys made them happy, and that was the main thing. Well, what instrument do you play, Betsy? Washboard. <laughs> you must be on the scrub team, eh? Yeah. Does this outfit have any other strange instruments in it, like a violin or a piano? Oh, yes, we have all of those, and we have uh, all things made. We had one made out of gas. We made it out of a gas pipe, and, um, and then we had a little drum with a string that we zing with. And, uh, could you sing for us now? No, I can't sing. I played the drums. Oh. You play the drums? Well, I did. I haven't been practicing for a while. Well, unfortunately, we, we do have drums in our band. Would you, <laughs> would you knock out something for us on the drums? Well, if the audience can take it, I'll try. Well, I was afraid of that. I'll tell you what you do. You come on down with me, and we'll see what you can do. We go down to the orchestra pit here, huh? And look, while we're going down there, could you entertain the audience with the, the soliloquy from Hamlet or something like that? A few stanzas of Lovelace? And... The opening of the third soliloquy might be appropriate. All right. Well, could, could you give us that? And we'll... <clears throat> He's going to uh, recite the third soliloquy from Hamlet. And now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player could so force his soul as to convince <laughs> that his whole right band? Little Alexander's ragtime band. How are you doing up there? <laughs> Let's go!
Betsy, that was beautiful. I'm sure CBS will be happy to learn there's nothing left of NBC except a few tangled wires. <laughs> well, I'd like to get... How'd you make out? Did you finish the whole thing? To myself. Oh. <laughs> That's what I say to your sorrow. Well, I'd like to continue this conversation, but now it's time to win some money. In the race for the $1,000, John Burgoyne Ely and his partner are still leading with $200. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a literary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. You can take anything from 10 to 100. We would like... Number seven? Yes. Seven. Who is the author of the novels Death in the Afternoon, To Have and Have Not, and Farewell to Arms? Ernest Hemingway. The boy with a beard. That's right, Ernest Hemingway. Well, off to a good start. You have $70. Now, what would you like? Number eight. Okay. In 1919, Somerset Maugham wrote a novel supposedly based on the life of the French painter Gauguin. What was this novel? South Sea Setting. I've forgotten. You'll know it when I tell you. It's The Moon and Sixpence. Indeed. Well, we still have $70. All right. Now, what do you want? Let's try the next one. Number nine. Ninety-nine. Mm-hmm. Ben-Hur was a bestseller as a novel and a big hit as a movie. Who wrote Ben-Hur? Wallace. General Lou Wallace is right. You now have $160. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? What are you going to try for? 100. 100. 100. One of the great novels at the turn of the century was Lord Jim, the story of a man's struggle to atone for cowardice. Who wrote it? Joseph Conrad. Joseph Conrad, also a man of the world. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. And you wind up with $260. And that means that Professor Girdler and his partner with their $260 in just one minute will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. George, would you give us the latest report on how the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers used car campaign is going? I'll be glad to. The best bargains have my picture on them, you know. I sure do. Folks, the Groucho Special Campaign is a tremendous success. So many people have gone to their DeSoto Plymouth dealer for a good used car and said, Groucho sent me, that your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is doing something extra for Groucho's fans. He's taken the best used car bargains he has and put a special sticker on the windshield marking the car a Groucho Special. Now, these Groucho Specials are unusually good cars, especially priced to make them the hottest values in town. You see, the overwhelming popularity of the 1954 DeSoto means that your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has obtained some really great used cars and trade. Many of them are late-model, one-owner cars. The very best will be the ones he selects as Groucho Specials. So don't miss out on this great opportunity. Tomorrow, first thing, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and look for the used cars with the Groucho special sticker. Sign of a used car that's a really outstanding buy. There may be one that's just the car you've been looking for. Yes, folks, the Groucho special sticker is your dealer's way of showing you a real used car value. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. And now, Groucho, it's time to meet our winning couple once again, Professor Girdler and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. All right, well, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide out a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Ludwig von Beethoven, one of the greatest composers of all time, wrote only one opera. For $1,000, what was Beethoven's only opera? Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided upon? We think it may be Percival. No, that was Wagner. This is Fidelio. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, they won $260 in well, the quiz. That, that's not too bad. Congratulations to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Sorry, didn't win the big one. We've done both of you.
Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And on Miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Good drivers don't brag about their ability to get out of tight spots. They stay out of them. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is paper. P A P E R. You say that every week, don't you? Really? You bet your life, huh? It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission. And the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. First, we have a housewife and a man with an interesting occupation, Groucho. This is Helen Pfeiffer and Mr. Milt Whistler. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's the common word, something you find around the house. Helen Pfeiffer and Milt Whistler, huh? Well, so far, we've got two-thirds of a bugle corps. <laughs> Mrs. Pfeiffer, where, where are you from? Uh, well, Mr. Marks, I was born in Bayou Sarah, Louisiana. Where is that exactly, say, in relation to Baton Rouge? Uh, well, uh, Bayou Sarah used to be uh, about 100 miles south of uh, Baton Rouge, just across the Mississippi River. What do you mean it used to be? Did the alligators swallow it up? <laughs> well, uh, almost. Uh, the, you see, the Mississippi River uh, washed, uh, just washed it away. It flooded, and Bayou Sarah went down to the bottom. That's, so. well, that's not very handy if you want to go to the post office, is it? <laughs> You're uh, Milt Whistler, is that right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I suppose you've had all the jokes about Whistler's mother. I'm afraid so. That's uh, been run into the ground. <laughs> been running the ground, you say? I'm afraid so, yes. Well, I'll get in a hole someplace and try it again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What, what is your hometown? Uh, I was born in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. just below the Coliseum. Oh. <laughs> well, you must see the football games free then, huh? No, I didn't get a lifetime pass. What sort of work do you do now, now that you're out of the Coliseum? Uh, I'm a rose hybridist. Rose hybridist? I knew her very well, huh? You did. Yeah. <laughs> she had a pair of the prettiest stems I ever saw. <laughs> now, just what is a hybridist? Uh, hybridist is a man who makes his living crossing plants. Well, don't ever cross a snapdragon. <laughs> <laughs> the 
You take a bite out of your plants if you do that. <laughs> well, I don't understand. What is the purpose of all this double crossing? Well, uh, the end result is uh, a new variety or a new strain with uh, improved characteristics such as longer bud form, uh, better foliage, more vigor, more fragrance, better bloom habit. You mean every time like you cross the flowers they improve? And no, not every time. No, no not by a long shot. No. Have you developed any, any neurosis yourself? I have a neurosis. Any new roses, I mean. Huh? Uh, yes, I've developed four or five. Our firm, Germain's, have introduced uh, varieties such as uh, Candle Glow, Amigo, Grand Canyon, Old Stork, Sun Valley, and Chrysler Imperial. Chrysler Imperial? Yes, Chrysler Imperial. Very fine rose. What about calling one the Groucho Special? After all, I'm sort of the flower of American manhood. Uh, you got any varieties to suggest as parents? Well, that's what they mean when they call me a blooming idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Tonight, we've got a surprise for you. We've added something to the quiz. You play the game exactly the same way, with this exception. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Is that clear? All right, now let's play it and see how it works. You selected movie quiz. 70. On time of 70? $70. $70. $70. All right, who plays the title role in the motion picture, Julius Caesar? Well, I know, I know. Oh. Okay. I know, and I just couldn't think well, of I it. Well, I know. Sometimes it, you get nervous up here. It was oh. Lewis Calhoun. Oh. Well, you've lost half your bankroll, so you now have $50. Is that clear? Instead of having 100 you now yeah, have 50 I'm sorry. It's further 30 Okay. 30 Betty Grable and Marilyn Monroe are two of the three female stars in How to Marry a Millionaire. Who is the third? Uh, no, you said Lauren Bacall, Betty Grable, and Marilyn Monroe. That's right. So you got the whole three. Well, your bankroll is climbing again. You now have $80. Now you have $80. <coughs> now what do you want to try? Let's try the $80. All right. $80? What is James Wong Howe's job in the making of a movie? He's a cameraman. That is true. He's a cameraman. Your bankroll now amounts to $160. Which question do you want this time? Shall we take the 90? Do you want to take the 90? All right. The $90 one. 90. Who is the director of such pictures as The African Queen and Moulin Rouge? Who is the director? Very famous director. Oh. All right, Isabel. No, no. I'm sorry. Well, you should have known it. It's John Houston. And you wind up with $80. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a man with an unusual occupation, Groucho. His name is Mr. Art McBride. His partner, Dr. Eleanor Fraser, was chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Eleanor Fraser and Art McBride, huh? Dr. Eleanor Fraser, huh? And Art, you're Art McBride, huh? Eleanor, you're, you're a doctor? Yes, I am. Well, compared to my doctor, you're certainly a treat instead of a treatment. <laughs> Where are you from, Doc? Well, I was born in Woodlake, California. That's a small town on the way to Sequoia National Park. But now I live in Laguna Beach. Are you Are you married? No, I'm not. Not married, huh? Really? Being a doctor, I thought maybe by this time you'd have some guy all sewed up. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Doc? I'm 26. 26. Well, that's a very nice age for a doctor. What kind of a doctor are you? Are you a horse, human, or, or tree? Well, I'm an intern. But I'm planning to specialize in radiology. Where do you do your interning? At Los Angeles County Hospital. That's the second largest hospital in the world. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Does a doctor make pretty good money? I understand they're all loaded. Well, I'm not. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I make seventy-five dollars a week, and uh, when taxes, uh, excuse me, a month. <laughs> seventy-five dollars <laughs> yes. a month. Yes, and after taxes. I was going to propose out, to you. <laughs> <laughs> after taxes are taken out, it's uh, seventy-one dollars and thirty cents. After all the medical education you've had, huh? You could make more money slicing salami in a delicatessen. 
As a matter of fact, there's not too much difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admire you, Doctor. When a pretty girl devotes her life to helping other people, she deserves a lot of credit. You can operate on me anytime you want. <laughs> and you're Art McBride? That's right, Garjo. Mm -hmm. where, where are you from? Well, I was from Canada, from Vancouver, but I've been in the United States many years. Why did you leave uh, Vancouver? I uh, ran out of fish up there. Were you a fisherman? That's right. I was in the commercial fishing for oh. about 25 years. And uh, what sort of work do you do now? I have the uh, ocean aquarium down at Hermosa Beach, Gracho. Oh. About 12 miles south of here. What kind of a place is that? Uh, it's a public aquarium with a display of all the different types of fish. There's sharks and seals and sea lions and bat rays, electric eels, piranhas, and big octopus. I could go on naming a lot of things. Octopus? That's right. What is the plural of octopus, do you know? Octopi or octopuses. Mm. <laughs> Whatever you want. What is the most interesting exhibit you have to offer? We have a new one, uh, Gacho. It's Winnie the Whale with the... Uh, Winnie the Whale? With the detachable tail. Oh. <laughs> Is that anything like Minnie the Moocha? <laughs> I, I beg you, it sounded like you said Winnie the Whale with a detachable tail. Would, is, would you give me that again? Yeah, that is correct. That uh, is correct? Yes, sir, that is. Uh, what do you mean, a detachable tail? Well, it's about a year and a half ago that Winnie was a California gray whale swimming out in the ocean, quite happy. And the How do you know? Well, I, uh, I'll take that back. She's swimming out in the ocean. And, uh, <laughs> it's not easy to know when a whale is happy. <laughs> I've hung around a lot of them, believe me. <laughs> They're tough going. They won't say, let it, they can have a headache and you won't get a peep out of them. They just, they just sit there and spout. <laughs> well, tell us some more about this uh, detachable <clears throat> tail. Well, the destroyer... Uh, rammed the uh, Winnie, and the tail was completely cut off by the propellers of the ship. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard uh, picked the whale up and brought her into shore at San Diego at Mission Bay. I went down with cranes, raised her out, and brought her up to the Ocean Aquarium, aquarium and I embalmed the animal. Well, Art, I, I really, I think you're a genius. Not only that, but you're a great businessman. A smart operator and a whale of a fellow. Put it down. <laughs> I'm just humoring you. I don't take any chances with a screwball who embalms whales. Huh? <laughs> you know, he might take it in his head to put me on exhibition. <laughs> well, I must say I've learned nothing about whales here tonight, but fortunately the time has come to play you bet your life. Can I ask you a question just before you get up? Well, it depends. Uh, I was watching one of your shows, Bracho, around Christmas time, and you, you were going to... Uh, Get a uh, bus for the McKinley School for Boys? That's did, true. Did yeah. you get it? I don't think they've got it yet. Why, why do you ask? We have two ravens that collect pennies from people. Down at the aquarium, the people give them pennies and they hide the pennies. And we've been saving them for some good charity. There's about $500 in those sacks. Oh. And the ravens, I think, would like to help you with your cause and fix those schoolboys up with a bus. Well, Art, I... <laughs> Well, Art, I think that's a wonderful idea, and I'm pretty sure your $500 should bring that total to just about what they need for a bus. That's fine. I'll throw a hundred of my own money in there, too. I didn't get it from a raven, but I'll throw one. <laughs> well, now we got $600, huh? Well, you know, we've had a lot of interest in this, and during the week I'll find out exactly how it stands and give you a complete report. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple, Mrs. Pfeiffer and Mr. Whistler, won $80. And the secret word is paper. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Now, which question do you want to try for? 10, 50, 70, 90, 100? 70. How much? 70. 70. Now, what do you call the special type of scissors used to cut cloth so it won't ravel? Uh, pinking shears. Pinking shears is right. <laughs> you now have $170. See how handy it is to have a girl on the show who does <laughs> operations? <laughs> probably pink many a customer down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you ever had a doctor that looked as good as that? Uh, I'm going to get sick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't 
sick for 15 minutes. You're going to try 80, eh? What do you call a Russian tea iron with a charcoal heating unit? I'm sure you've heard uh, of this. Samovar. So, that's right. Samovar, best friend. Your bankroll now stands at $250. 90? Oh, 90, 90, eh? 90. What is the one letter of the alphabet that does not appear on the standard dial phone? I. No, it's Q. Mm -hmm. You now have lost one half of your bankroll, so you have $125. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? A hundred. A (laughs) hundred. What do you call the swinging bar to which the traces of a horse's harness are fastened? The, um, whistle tree? Oh, you're so cute. That is absolutely right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand total of $225. Well, thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. And, Doctor, I'm going to call on you real soon. George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some high school girls to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Jan Van Alston to be our guest. And her partner is Mr. Ed Ryan, Groucho. And when I heard he was in town, I invited him down to the show. And in just a moment, I think you're going to understand why I did. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. <laughs> Bush Faggotty, say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Well, what are, uh, are you Santa Claus or Rip Van Winkle? Huh? Neither one, Groucho. Well, who are you? I'm Ed Ryan. Well, you're evading the issue. What are you hiding under those whiskers? Oh, I'm not hiding anything, Groucho. Well, what a waste, huh? There's room under there for a 12-pound turkey and a pumpernickel. <laughs> you say you're Ed Ryan? Ed Ryan. Where are you from, Eddie, my I'm lad? from the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. Well, welcome. Welcome to the smoggy plains of Los Angeles. <laughs> well, what are you doing in town, uh, Ed? Are you bringing in a load for a mattress factory? I'm here on a visit, uh, Groucho. Oh. Well, what do you think of our little city, Ed? Well, I think it's a wonderful little place. Mm-hmm. And uh, you the realize people it has been awful nice to me, Groucho. And you've got some pretty darn nice-looking women, too. <laughs> Why, Ed, you're nothing but an old Groucho Marx. <laughs> Let's see, you're Jan Van Alstein? Okay. Well, unless my eyes are deceiving me, you're a very attractive young lady. Thank you very much. If your eyes were deceiving you, you could say something nice about me, too. <laughs> How old are you, Jan? I'm 16. 16, huh? What, you, you go to school, I presume? Huh? I do. Mm-hmm. Santa Monica High School. Is that where you go, Santa Monica mm-hmm. High, huh? The greatest, the finest school in California. It is, huh? This apple polishing won't do you any good, you know. <laughs> if your marks aren't satisfactory, you won't pass anyway. <laughs> Mr. Ryan, let's get back to you. When did you start growing that schnitzel you've got there? Huh? When I joined the Army, Groucho. You were in the Army? Yes, Well, I let was. me guess. You're certainly too old for the last war. Were you in World War I? No. Spanish-American War? No. Civil War? No, I was with General George Custer. That's impossible. Custer was even before my time. (laughs) How old do you say you are, Ed? I'm 97. (laughs) Ed, if you're 97, I'm Bing Crosby. Can you prove it? Yes, you know, sir. a lot of people say they're 80, 90. I can, Groucho. Here's my baptismal certificate in black and white. Baptismal certificate, huh? St. Mary's Church, Centerville, Iowa, July 11th, 1856. I, and I was born on June the 23rd, 1856. Well, say, that's, that's remarkable. You said you don't look 97. By the way, if you were there with Custer... There's a small question I'd like to ask you. Uh, weren't Custer and all his men massacred by the Indians? Yes, that's right. There was no survivors at the battlefield. Well, I don't want to be nosy, but you don't look dead to me. Uh, <laughs> how did you get away? Well, I'm a technical survivor. I was left behind to care for a sick buddy. 
and uh, by being left behind to uh, take care of this sick buddy, I missed the battle. Oh, well, you certainly were lucky, weren't you? Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, I was. And what, what did you do then? Uh? Well, sir, uh, I, I was so mad at the Army because they hadn't sent me back help to take care of this buddy of mine that I, uh, I was angry at him, and I just quit the Army and never, never reported to the Army again. <laughs> You never went back to the army? You mean you, you you went over the hill? You were AWOL? Well, yes, you could say I was AWOL for 75 years. <laughs> well, if I were you, Ed, I'd, I'd sneak back into that camp and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you never know the difference, eh? And don't worry about the Indians, either. They're all busy hunting uranium. <laughs> well, hasn't the Army been after you all these years, Ed? No, Groucho. According to the Army records, I had... You're dead? Yes, I'm dead, and, and my name is on the monument out on the battlefield out there. <laughs> well, Ed, your secret's safe with me. I, I won't tell a soul. <laughs> right at this moment, however... 200 colonels in the Pentagon are getting dizzy just thinking of your back pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been fun talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. Just win more than the other couples, and you'll get a crack at the Bonanza later on. In the race for the $1,500, Dr. Fraser and Mr. McBride are leading with $225. Now, let us see what we have here. We start you off with a $100 bankroll. And whenever you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. $10 one is an easy one, then they get progressively harder as you go along. Now, which one do you want? Mm, we'd like to try the $50 one. 50 Is that all right That's with you? That's right. What kind of bird plays an important part in the poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? A raven? Would you think it would be a raven? No, it's the albatross. Yeah. You've lost half of your bankroll, so you now have $50. Now you have $50. Now what do you want to try? Let's try your 60. Yeah. 60? Well, let's try the 40. 40? Huh. Yeah. 40? The name Raynard is associated with what kind of animal? Would you uh, repeat the question? The name Raynard, R-E-Y-N-A-R-D, is associated with what kind of an animal? Mm. You don't know guess. I believe it might be a mink. No, mm. it's, it's a fox. Mm. Well, now you have $25. Is that right. right, George? Now what do you want to try? Mm -hmm. Whatever you choose is okay with me. Yeah. Right, we'll take it. We'll try the $30. Sadie, according to the song in the Disney cartoon, who was the bull with the delicate ego? He liked flowers. Good man, good man. That is right, Ferdinand. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. You now have $55. Right. I'm helping you out, George. You sure are. Now, what do you want to try? 100? Mm -hmm. 90? 10? Mm -hmm. 10? Mm -hmm. 60? 60. 60. What was the name of President Roosevelt's famous little Scotty? Bella. Joe. Well, that's close enough. It's Fowler, but we give you that one. And you wind up with $115. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, sir. And that means that Dr. Fraser and Mr. McBride with $225 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here comes uh, Mr. McBride and the doctor, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Groucho? Well, doctor, you Thank may you. only make $71 a month, but here's your chance to become extremely wealthy in one crack. Here we go for a thousand five hundred dollars. I'll give you fifteen seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. You ready? A hundred and fifty years ago, an emperor crowned himself because he said, "No man is great enough to crown me." For one thousand five hundred dollars, who was this emperor? <laughs> <laughs> 
Talk it over. What is the question you two have decided upon? Try Napoleon. That was right, Napoleon. Yes. Huh? Oh, <laughs> How much else did they win, George? Well, they won two hundred and twenty-five dollars <laughs> in the quiz, so that's seventeen hundred and twenty-five dollars altogether. What are you going to do with all that swag? Well, you going to buy your own hospital? No, I'm not. I'm going to pay back some debts I incurred in medical school. Oh, and you? Are you going to get a new tail for the whale? <laughs> no, Why don't you get a new whale for the tail? Huh? <laughs> no, Gracia, I'm leaving in about a week for a trip to Asia, and I think I'll find some place to do something with that money that will help the uh, goodwill of the United States from children or someone in the audience. Well, Ed, after donating that $500 tonight to the boys' home, I'm sure that you'll do a lot of good with whatever money you got tonight. And good luck, and thanks to both of you. Thank you. And the more than 3000 you sell upon the daily, you bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Be safe, be seen. At night, wear white. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is street. S-T-R-E-E-T. -E really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Teddy Roosevelt. He delighted. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first? Well, Groucho, we have some people who were chosen because they have interesting stories to tell. Uh -huh. Miss uh, Beverly Kaanapu and Mr. Ernest Ray. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome uh, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ernest uh, Ray and Miss uh, Beverly uh, Kaanapu, huh? 
Beverly Kaanapu. Kaanapu. Oh, I see. Kaanapu. Yes. Do you have a Hawaiian name? Is that your real name? Well, my full name is Beverly Phoebe Kamalulani Kaanapu. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Kamalulani, that means under the shade of heaven. Oh. <laughs> Where were you born, Bev? I was born in Kalihi in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I'm all right. How are you? But uh, <laughs> we always say that if anybody says Hawaii. Hawaii is the correct pronunciation. Huh? Hawaii or Hawaii. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But over here they say Hawaii. Okay. Well, that's uh, the easiest way. Yes, it is. And it also, there's no joke. I mean, you can say, I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> just to say Hawaii, you're dead. <laughs> aren't the real, genuine, blown-in-the-bottle Hawaiians pretty scarce now? I've heard there aren't too many of you left. Is this true? Yes, that's very true. As for myself, I'm part Hawaiian and part German. Really? Yes. Is that so? Well, whoever assembled the part suddenly knew what he was doing. <laughs> Who are you again? I forgot. Uh, Ernest Ray. Ernest Ray. Yes, yeah? sir. Oh, glad to hear it. I'm always glad to meet a man who's Ernest. Yeah? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Where are you from, Ernie? Uh, Billings, Montana. Uh, Billings, oh, Montana. Montana. That's right out in the wild and woolly west, isn't it? Yes, yes, sir. You spend a lot of time busting broncos and chasing buffalo? No, I uh, I spend most of my time practicing a flute <laughs> up there. Oh, it's not easy on a horse when you're chasing a buffalo. <laughs> No. The flute, you say? You practice the flute? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. I, are you pretty cool on the flute? Oh, well, I, uh, I, uh, I was the best flautist in the state. The best Montana. flautist in the uh, state? Best flautist. Flautist? Flautist. Because you said you played the flute. Uh, What's a flout? A flout is a flute. Is a flute? Yes. A flout flute? Is it? Flout a... flute. Flute is a flout. Flout is a flute. It's the same as a flute. It's the same thing. Well, I've learned a word tonight, flautist, huh? Yes, yes, sir. Right. And you were the best flute player in Montana. Yes, I, I was the best flute player in Montana. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, that's mm-hmm. an easy claim to make. Can you oh. substantiate this claim? Well, uh, Groucho, while I was still in high school, I uh, I entered a, a Montana, you know, the flute co- contest in Montana to see who was the best flute player. And I won first chair. And then uh, <laughs> after that, I... I you I won, won the chair, you say? Yeah. <laughs> I, I won the first chair. I won the first position. I was the first uh, flutist in the in the contest. They rated me first. Well, suppose in that contest you'd have hit a, a sour oh. note, uh, Annie. Would you have taken your flute and blown your head off? <laughs> no, I had third chair there, but I'd probably been denoted to about the fifth chair, I figure, if I hadn't done a good job. The but fifth chair? I had third chair in the second flute section. <laughs> Did you ever have the second float in the fifth chair section? Huh? No, no. That, that no I'm was... supposed to get you confused. Yeah, well, that, that that second section, that second flute section, that's a uh, that there's ten flutists and uh, five of them got the first. Ten flautists, isn't it? Flautists, yeah. 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 Well, why do they call it flautists when it's really flutists? Huh? Well, that's uh, that's a, a, a foreign word. It's a French word, I think. Oh well, why don't you play the French horn then? Yeah. <laughs> no, I. I don't know how uh, to do that. Anyhow, then... Uh, that hasn't stopped the men in our orchestra from playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've enjoyed this little chat with you two, but the time has come for some more serious endeavors, like uh, winning some uh, moolah. Is that a Hawaiian word, yes, moolah? Yes, moolah. Moolah. O kala. O kala. Huh? <laughs> well, you're going to play your bet your life. You, I don't know if you know how to play your bet your life, but we made a little change in our quiz last week. You played the game this way. The same way, with the exception that we start you off with a bankroll of $100. And that, that's very nice. You can quit now if you want. Huh? <laughs> no. Every time you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll, no matter what it amounts to at the time. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected science and medicine. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Number seven. Number seven is $70. In the laboratory, what do you call the small gas burner used to heat test tubes? Flask. Talk it over. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's a Bunsen burner. Well, you lost half of your original bankroll, so you now have $50. You have $50 left in the bankroll. Now, what do you want to go for? Well, let's try number eight. Number $80. What is the scientific name for the study of plants and plant life? Talk it over. Your partners. I think it's etymology. Study of plants. And plant scientific life. name for the study of plants mm-hmm. and plant mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Etymology. No, I, I'm sorry. Wow. 
Oh, it's botany. What am I asleep today? You uh, lost half your bankroll again. You now have $25. 25 You're still in the running. Now, don't get discouraged. Now, uh, what do you want to try? $90 one? $10? $100? Yeah. Okay. How much? Five, five, five. Five. Fifty dollars. What rare element do we obtain from pitch blend? Uh, let me see. I think we get radium. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Before you change your no. mind, it's radium, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you now have seventy-five dollars. So it's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now things are looking up a little, aren't they? Now, yeah. which one do you want to try now? Oh, we got to try number nine. Ninety dollars. Uh, scientifically speaking, animals with backbones are called what? Talk it over. Oh. Take a stab if you don't know. Uh, mammals. Oh, vertebrae probably. Yes, it was vertebrae. I wish I could have helped you, but I couldn't. Oh. Well, you lost half your bankroll and you wind up with $37.50. I'm sorry you didn't win more. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Well, Groucho, we invited some Navy men to our show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Walt Kluznick to be on the show. His partner is Miss Madge, no, Pat Madgewick. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word. It's something you see every day. Uh, Walt uh, Kluznick, huh? You're a sailor, huh? You are yes, a sailor, aren't you? Yes, sir. You don't have to say, uh, sir, to me, you know. I'm... Just an apprentice comedian, third class. <laughs> Let's see, you're a Miss uh, Pat uh, Madgwick? I prefer to be called Patricia Madgwick. You would? Well, I certainly there's no problem for me to call you Patricia. Where are you uh, from, Pat? <laughs> uh, Patricia? I'm from England. England, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Sorry? You don't have to be sorry. We all have to be born someplace. <laughs> Now then, what part of England were you born in? I was born in Surrey. Oh, this is like Hawaii. I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> you speak very, very good English for an English woman. Well, you know, that's of course, of after you've been here a while, uh, we'll take care of that. <laughs> well, what is your hometown? Bay of Biscay or something, I suppose. No, I'm from Butchertown in San Francisco. Butchertown? What is, what's in Butchertown? Is that a slaughterhouse? That's the exclusive section of the slaughterhouses. <laughs> what made you decide to join the Navy, Walt? Did you want to see the world? I want to stay out of the Army. <laughs> you realize you just wrecked eight years of hard work on the unification of the services. <laughs> what ship are you stationed on? I'm not on a ship. I don't have a ship. A sailor without a ship? The world is certainly coming apart. <laughs> Why'd you lose your boat? I'm on shore duty. What kind of shore duty do you have, sailor? Well, I'm a boatswain striker and a... A what? A boatswain's mate striker. A boatswain's mate? Well, I hope you're very happy together. <laughs> <laughs> and I work down on Terminal Island and I stay... What's, what's a boatswain's mate? Well, they take care of the li- rope, of the line on the ship and oh. securing of all the hatches. A deckhand, more or less. I see. But do you have a good line? Uh, hasn't been working too well lately. <laughs> I don't know why not. You're a pretty cute-looking sailor. <laughs> what do you think of him, Pat? He's pretty nice-looking. Let's see, let's go. They don't think they don't, do you? <laughs> <laughs> they go a hog wild. <laughs> Well, specifically, what do you do in your job, uh, sailor boy? <laughs> Walter Klusnick? You sound like you ought to be playing for Notre Dame. <laughs> Not me. Well, I... I know the Dame in South Bend years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I take care of the ball fields out there. I'm connected what? with... What? <laughs> take care of a ball field? Yes, sir. What do you do for the ball field? Well, I make sure that... Uh, Feels in condition to play on. I'm connected with the baseball team. Make sure the grass doesn't dry. Throw a little fertilizer here and there. <laughs> Just maintenance of the ball field. You never think of a sailor throwing fertilizer around. <laughs> well, that's a curious location for a man in the Navy. 
It's now, very... Patricia, uh, what about you? Are you married? No. You're not married? No, you I'm not. A guy like you, not married? Mm -mm. What about you? Are you married, uh, Sailor? No. Well, we're wasting time. <laughs> Is there anyone present here who knows any reason why these young people shouldn't be married? <laughs> Speak up or forever hold your peace. Are you uh, ready for the ceremony, Pat? Well, aren't you being just a trifle hasty? <laughs> well, I have to be. Uh, I know with sailors, he's got a date in half an hour. <laughs> now, I, this is all in fun. Well, you're a very attractive couple, and I expect you to get married the moment you leave here. How are you going to fight your bets your life? Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected, uh, you know, do you know about the change in the quiz? The change? Oh, yes. We start yes. you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever bankroll it amounts to <clears throat> at that time. That clear? In the race for the $1,000, the Hawaiian girl and the flute player won $37.50, and the secret word is street. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a general information quiz. Remember now, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. You talk it over, your partner. Seven, seven, lucky seven. number. Seven's your lucky number? <laughs> Let's go. Seven, well, seven, seven. Seventy dollars. What is the name of the plane Lindbergh flew across the Atlantic in 1927? The spirit talk of, it over. The spirit of St. Louis? That is absolutely right. The spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> well, you now have $170. Now, which one do you want to try? Sixty. Sixty. What is the distaff side of a family? Talk it over. Come on. Oh, the female side? Yeah, yes, that's right, the female side. <laughs> You've now run your bankroll up to $230. Now, what do you want to try? We'll take number, number nine. Okay. What is the proper time for a bicycle built for two? A, a tandem. That is right, a tandem is right. <laughs> You now have three hundred twenty dollars. Your last chance to be the other couples. We'll be very brave and have number eight. Number eight. All right. What do you call a motherless calf or an unbranded steer? Oh, uh, talk it over. A motherless calf. That's a young cow, isn't it? Yes. Uh, or an unbranded steer. Talk it over. No, I'm sorry. It's a maverick or a dogie. You lost half of your bankroll at that time, so you wind up with $160. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Uh, before we proceed, I have a note here to remind me of something. Last week, the owner of the Ocean Aquarium at Hermosa Beach, Art McBride, offered to give $500 toward the bus fund for the McKinley Home for Boys. Well, he gave us the money, and I have a further report to make. Mr. Slotkin, president of Abbey Rents, contributed another 500 And those of us on the show put in another 1000 On top of this, some other contributors, who asked to be anonymous, came through with another $2,500, making a total of $4,500. So that's enough for a brand-new bus, and now the 112 boys of the McKinley Home have transportation to take them to Sunday school, the mountains, and the beach. And to all of you who kicked in, my sincere thanks. George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a couple of interesting guests who have special stories to tell. Father Michael Montoya of the Claritian Fathers and Nelson Gary. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. How do you do, Groucho? How do you, Groucho? Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Nelson Gary and Father Michael uh, Montoya, eh? Father right. Montoya, what, what should I call you? Well, you can call me Father Michael. That'll be perfectly all right. Father Michael, well, that's okay. Now, you know, I'm no authority on religion. Will you correct me if I make a mistake here? I'd certainly be very happy to correct you if you make mistakes. Well, actually, you'd have to start back about 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, uh, you're Nelson uh, Gary, eh? Yeah, that's me. How old are you, Nelson? I'm 12. 12 years old, huh? Yeah. Where, where do you live, Nelson? I'm in the San Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley? Yeah. 1388 Dickens Street, West Hollywood. The Dickens Street? <laughs> well, 
you said uh, the lucky uh, secret word tonight, uh, street, so you win $50, and Father Michael gets $50 for the parish. Thank you very much. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's possibly sure. This was just an assumption on my part, Father. <laughs> Nelson, I realize I'm not being polite, but I think our listeners would be interested in knowing about your arm. Uh, could you tell us about it? I lost an electric mango when I was two years old. You lost it in what? Electric mango when I was two. An electric mango? Mm-hmm. An ironing machine? Mm-hmm. Well, that's too bad. That's a shame. Did you find it much of a handicap? No, I can do anything anybody else can do this job. Yeah. Well, I guess if you've got that spirit... There's no such thing as a handicap with that kind of spirit. Where do you go to school? Van Nuys Junior High School. Mm-hmm. Are you pretty good in school? Well, I belong to the Honor Society. You got to keep up pretty high grades to keep in there. You belong to the Honor Society? Yes, you got to get, you got to get uh, m- more than half your grades A. What is your biggest interest in school? Athletics, I guess. And in North Hollywood, I belong to a Y club called the Kryptons, and I play first string for their basketball team, and I did play first string for their football team. Really. Mm-hmm. Father, well, what do you think of this boy? Wonderful. I think a boy who apparently has this handicap and makes a go of things really can prove that where there is a will, there's a way. And I think he's wonderful. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> nice going, Uncle. Okay. He'd make a pretty good sermon for you, wouldn't he, Father? Certainly he would. He'd make make a, a sermon good... for everyone. Yes, else. he does. Make one for me, too. Huh? What a schlemiel I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sermons, uh, isn't it a problem to keep them timely and interesting? I don't think so, Mr. Marks. Uh, no. A sermon should be short and to the point, mm-hmm. but of course kept with interest. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you do that? Well, I remember when I attended the Catholic University of America, uh, one of the professors insisted that we imitate the uh, commercial announcers. He says they, uh, when they talk about uh, material things, they put their point right over. We could do the same when we bring the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Well, you probably keep yours shorter than most of the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Father Michael, where, where is your church? In San Gabriel, California. I'm at the old San Gabriel Mission. Mm-hmm. Could you describe its history here? Yes, it's uh, the oldest mission in the Los Angeles County. You see, very briefly, Father Cambon and La Samara came to the San Gabriel Valley back in 1771. And uh, this was five years, incidentally, uh, before the founding of our country, before the American independence. And this building was destroyed by the uh, earthquakes and the floods, and they built a second one. And the beautiful building that you see now is the last structure, which was completed in 1804. That's a real old building. Is much of the original structure still standing? Oh, yes, and very little of it has been touched. You must have the same landlord I have. (laughs) (laughs) Nelson, my favorite sport is baseball. How is it you're not interested in that? Well, I am. It's my favorite sport, in fact... I played on, on a little league team that won the championship this year. Really? Yeah. What position did you play? I played the outfield, right field. Outfield? And how are you with batting? Are you any good? Well, I batted 365 this year. 365? <laughs> Is that your best record? No, last year I batted 437. <laughs> well, you're slipping, huh? Yeah. League got older, the pitchers got better. Do you realize even Ted Williams can't hit that good in the major leagues, 365? He he faced a little better pitchers, I think. (laughs) Well, he's a much older man, too. (laughs) He must be hitting around pretty near 30, I guess. eh? (laughs) Well, it's it's been inspiring talking to you two, to both of you. And now now let's play you bet your life for a chance at a lot of money. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Marks, I... uh... I think the world of uh, Nelson. I think he's a wonderful boy. And so if you'll excuse me, I met his father, and I think he's also a wonderful man. So I'm going to let him participate in the contest. Where is your father? He's right upstairs. He's backstage. Oh, you carry your father with you? Yeah. Well, yes. Well, come back again, though. Hi. Well, you, you said you got a boy to be proud of here. Thanks, sir. You think Nelson can count on you to come up with the right answer? I doubt that. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I got tangled up on, in one of these men in the street programs one time, and I forgot my own name. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, I hope you have better substitutes uh, in the ball club than your father is going to be up yeah. there. 
All right, well, let's go. Now, Mr. Nelson, do you know how we play the game? Yes, I do, sir. You do, huh? And you too, Nelson? Yeah. Well, okay, well, let, let's go, and we'll uh, see how you make out here. In the race for the $1,000, Miss Madgewick and the sailor are leading with $160. Let's see how much money you can make. You select the sports. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder the question is. $70. $70. The world's record is 26 feet, 8 and a quarter inches. What is the event? What event would this be? Broad jump. That's right, the broad jump. Is... Well, you run your bankroll into $170. Your bankroll is $170. Now, what question do you want to go for? We'll go for the 80 $80. Only one boxer has held three titles simultaneously. Who was it? Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong is right. <laughs> Now I have $250. Say, Nelson, your old man is no dope. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> How much have they got? $250. All right, what one do you want to go for? We'll go for the 90 $90. It's the three big races. A horse must win in order to capture the triple crown. What is the third one? Oh, it's something smaller. Mm-hmm. I know it is. Scream. Saratoga? No. No. Pile. No, it's the Preakness. Oh. Well, you, you were up to $250. That was your bankroll. You lost half of it, so you now have $125. You have $125. Okay. Now, it's your last chance to beat the other couple. Take, oh, shoot, the worst. You got $100? The Immortals of Baseball are honored in Baseball's Hall of Fame. Where is it located? Cooperstown, New York. Cooperstown, New York is right. Wow, yeah. That's great. That Thanks, and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Thank you. That means that Nelson Gary and his dad, with $225 in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. And here comes our winning couple, Groucho, the two Mr. Garys. See, your father turned out pretty handy yeah. after all, didn't he, Nelson? Yeah. Huh? All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. Forty years ago, an American minister wrote a novel called The Winning of Barbara White. It sold over a million and a half copies. It's still one of the all-time records. For $1,000, who is this popular writer? I'm talking over. Oh, I know his name. I don't If you don't know, take a guess. Okay, we'll wait. Okay. Rupert Hughes will say... Rupert Hughes will Rupert say. Hughes? No, I, I'm sorry. It's Harold Bell Wright. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz? $225 in the quiz. $225. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And on Miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. (laughs) Folks, here's a reminder from the Red Cross. You help your neighbors in distress, wherever they may be, when you join the Red Cross. So answer the call. Join and serve. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.
ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is hand. H-A-N-D. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Louder, please. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Who's first, George? Well, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you. They volunteered just before the show started. So, Lieutenant and Mrs. Puses, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Lieutenant and Mrs. Irving Puses, eh? Lieutenant, what kind of a name is Puses? Uh, it's a Polish name. Oh, what part of Poland are you from? I was born in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Is that behind the Iron Curtain now? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Puses, huh? Uh, what is your first name? My first name is Kelly. Kelly, huh? Kelly Puses, huh? Is that anything like Kelly Pool? Well, I don't know. What is Kelly Pool? What is Kelly Pool? Well, yes. that's uh, something that you play with little numbers, and you each, everyone gets a number. And if you hit the ball that corresponds to this little number, why, that's Kelly Poo. Oh, thank you. You're quite welcome. Huh? <laughs> I used to be a bum on Vine Street, that's all I <laughs> How old are you, Luke? 29. 29. What uh, branch of the Army are you in? Uh? I'm in the Medical Corps, Groucho. I'm a doctor. Oh, you're a doctor. Yes. Huh? I should have known you were a doctor. Isn't there some uh, symbol on your uniform there? Yes, you can tell by my caduceus. <laughs> Well, if you keep your head tilted back, nobody will notice. <laughs> now, uh, what is the caduceus? Well, the caduceus is a symbol that stands for a physician. Oh, yeah. I see. I've seen that symbol. It's a picture of a man in a white coat endorsing cigarettes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that man you see endorsing cigarettes is, is an actor, you know whose medical background consists of a card, an actor's equity, and two aspirins. <laughs> now, uh, tell us, what does a caduceus look like? Well, you can see it here on the lapel. It's a staff with the wings on the top and two serpents entwined around the staff. Oh, that's all very plain. Next time I see a caduceus, I'll run for my life. <laughs> Doc, I notice you've got some ribbons on your clavicle. <laughs> We stole that from February McGee and Molly. That's their <laughs> favorite word. Could you tell us what some of them are for, those uh, The uh, red one, uh, Groucho, is the Brown Star. The uh, middle one is the Korean campaign with the three battle star campaigns. And the end one is the United Nations uh, ribbon. The top is the combat medics badge. Oh. You got the Brown Star, huh? yeah. Well, Kelly, I know most veterans are fairly modest. Would you tell us uh, why he got a medal? Well, the Bronze Star was given for his tour of duty in Korea. Uh, one of the incidents was the work that Irv did on Pork Chop Hill, where he worked three days and three nights without sleep. You know, there are a great many heroes in battle, in, in, in addition to the men who do the shooting. And I think we got one of them right here. Put it there, kid. Well, you're a charming couple, and I wish you lots of happiness, and now let's play your bet your life. Now, we've added an additional gimmick tonight. If at any time you feel that you have enough money or that you have more money than you feel the other couples are going to get, you can quit without jeopardizing what you have left. Is that clear? You selected sports, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Fifty. Fifty. Who is called the Dean of American Sports Writers? That'd be Henry McElmore? No, he's a good one, but it, it's Grandlin Rice. Okay. You uh, lost half of your original bankroll, which was $100, so you now have $50. Now, uh, now, which question do you want? 60. 60. 
What team won the 1952 and 1953 professional football championships? Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions is correct. You now have $110. Now, which question do you want? 70. 70. What do you call the man who calls the cadence on a rowing team? Toxin. That's right. You now have $180. Now, uh, you can quit now. You can go ahead. You take the 80. 80. All right. Who holds the Royals pole vault record? Uh, Paul Richards. No, I'm sorry. It's Cornelius Warmadam. And you wind up with $90. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth Who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some women who work for a specialty store to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Ruth Mitchell and her partner, Mr. Paul Searles, as an interesting occupation. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Ruth Mitchell, that, that's you. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm Magnum Company at, uh, in Los Angeles. Oh, Magnum's, huh? You were born in Magnum's department store? <laughs> I didn't know they delivered. Huh? <laughs> I presume you were born in the infants department, huh? I, I meant, uh, where were you? Where are you from originally? Well, I came here from Denver. Uh, Denver. When I was three years old. Oh, I see. Huh? Do you do you have a husband? Yes, I do. I do. Huh? Been lucky. married to him for thirty-one years. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't look old enough to. Oh, I'm a I grandmother. thought you were thirty-one. You were a grandmother. Uh huh. I have three grandchildren. Is that so? Gee. I didn't know that. Uh, then you must have had children of your own, huh? <laughs> That's right, lovely son and daughter. Mm -hmm. Paul uh, Siles, huh? That's right. I better right. be pretty careful how I talk to you. Uh, you must be over eight feet, aren't you? Oh, no, only six foot three. Is that so? Huh? Where's your home, Paul? In Washington. Washington? Another homeless Democrat, eh? Oh, in the state of Washington. Oh, well, Washington's in an awful state right now, you know. <laughs> What part of Washington are you from? From Toodle, Washington. Uh, I beg your pardon. What was that again? From Toodle. Well, why do you toodle? There's nobody on the track here. Oh, Nobody's toodled at me for years, you know. Well, stop toodling, Paul, and tell me, tell me where you're from. Huh? I'm from Toodle. We have a population up there of about 50 men and hundreds and thousands of deer and elk. Is that so? What, what sort of work do you do up there? I work for Warehouse Timber Company. I'm in the saw sharpening department. We sharpen the saws to cut the trees with. Oh. Is that a pretty big outfit, the uh, Weyerhauser or whatever it's One called? One of the biggest in the world. Is that so? Never heard of them, huh? Well, you haven't heard much. No. <laughs> you know, there's a quiz later, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're jeopardizing this woman's grandchildren, huh? <laughs> How did you happen to become a, a lumberjack, Paul? Oh, I... Were you fond of toothpicks as a child? Oh, no, I am fond of saws. I started with saws, a saw when huh? I was just a boy. Are you pretty handy with a saw? Oh, I think so. I've held the world championship with a hand saw for the last 21 years. Wait a minute. You said... Here's $50 for you and 50 Thank for you, you Paul. Thank you, You said the secret word. I forgot. What was it? What was it? Hand. Hand. Oh, I so. Congratulations. <laughs> well, tell us about this saw thing, huh? You say you won the World's Championship with a hand saw? That's right. Oh, that, that's quite an achievement, isn't it, huh? Well, uh, we think so. That is our... How long does it take to saw one of those big logs in two? And what is the circumference of one of those logs? My best record this year was on a 30-inch log. It took me one minute and 17 seconds to cut that in half. You saw it in, uh, in one minute and 15 seconds? One minute and 17 oh. seconds. I saw it a putty cat the other day. Huh? <laughs> That's pretty fast time, Paul. You're not Paul, sirs. You're, you're really Paul Bunyan, aren't you? <laughs> 
I want to ask you, uh, why do you keep cutting the trees down if you're so crazy about them? Riddle me that. Oh, so you'll have a chair to sit on? <laughs> well, I have a chair to sit on. Why do you have to keep on cutting the trees down? Well, you've got to have a house to live in. You've got to have paper to read. You've got to have doors, windows, everything that's made out of wood. You've got to have them. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have all these articles. I live in a cave. <laughs> well, you've got to have a door. We'll make a wooden door for it. No, I use a rock at the front door. <laughs> and I write hieroglyphics on the, on the wall, on the stone. After a while, I'll show you my bass skin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not, not you, I'm talking to Paul over there. <laughs> You keep out of this, you're a grandmother <laughs> uh, You may be a lumberjack, old boy, but I, I'm far from stumped <laughs> now, What are you doing for conservation? Isn't well, it true that our forests are being denuded? No, it's right? not It is not, absolutely not, not We are going all out for conservation We plant trees as we cut them The wind blows the seed all what over What do you mean, you plant the same tree that you cut? <laughs> no, no we plant seeds, or natural reforestation is, comes from the seed of trees that are still standing. We oh. cut in blocks. We'll leave a block of timber standing, and that will be reforested on what we have cut. If that doesn't do the job, the squirrels, they help us out. They'll go out and pack a little seed around and dig down and bury it, so they'll have something next winter. Sometimes they forget it, and that grows into a tree. A squirrel grows into a tree? <laughs> well, I don't think so, but his seed does. Oh. And they think those squirrels are nuts, huh? <laughs> right. Well, Paul, I'm, I'm glad to know that the big lumber companies are doing something to preserve the forest for the future. And uh, it's a very important part of our uh, whole heritage, and we should take good care of it. That's right. I would like to go on talking to you two, but uh, it's time to win some money. Now, you win more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the $1,500, Lieutenant and Mrs. Pusis won $90, and the secret word is hand. Now, let's see how much money you can make. Uh, you selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. 60? 60? 60. All right. What is the name of the small lizard that is able to change its color to match its surroundings? Beetle monster? Chame oh. Talk it over. Chameleon. Oh, uh, well, that's right. Chameleon, I think, Chameleon. is the way it's called. You now have $160. Now, what do you, what do you want? 60? And remember, this time before you talk up, one answer between you. Okay. Or I may have to chop okay. you down. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. What is it, 70, did you say? Mm -hmm. All right, what is another name for the one humped camel? A dromedary? That's right, a dromedary is right. <laughs> you now have $230. Now, what is your pleasure? Uncle you can 80? quit, you can go ahead. 80. 80? Okay, what is the word for the young of geese? What are baby geese called? Uh, Gosling. Gosling. Goslings is right. <laughs> You now have $310. 100? 100? All right. What kind of animal is a merino? M E R I N O. Um, Come on, time's a waste. If you don't know, take a guess. It's a, a reptile rat. No, it's a sheep. Oh. Yes. Well, you lost half of your bankroll, so you wind up with $155. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Thank you, Doctor. George, who's next? Well, Groucho, uh, we have an Irish housewife and a man with an interesting occupation for you now, and they're coming in right now, I believe. Mrs. Abby Donovan and Mr. Ward Kimball, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, uh, something you see every day. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Abby Donovan, you're the Irish housewife, eh? That's right, Groucho. Uh, which part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh? Well, I'm from County Cork, Ireland. You're from County Cork, huh? Eh? Right, well, I haven't pulled one of those out of a bottle in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> How long since you left the old sod? Well, it's about uh, 30 years. 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, how old were you when you left? Who? I was a little girl, Groucho. <laughs> One of the old Irish blonde, yeah. <laughs> I've got a little Irish in me myself, you know. Huh? I had an Irish stew for lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, who, who are you again? Uh, uh, Ward Kimball. Ward Kimball. Uh, where, where are you from, uh, Ward? Originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh -huh. Somebody out there from Jacksonville, huh? <laughs> 
Why did you leave Minneapolis? Well, it got too cold for us, so we came to California. Well, I came to California because it got too hot for me. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you work for, Ward? Walt Disney. You work for Disney? Oh, I thought your face was familiar. <laughs> Are you the duck or the mouse? <laughs> no, I'm a, an animator and director out there. Oh, a director? Oh, well, you'll direct. keep my mouth shut. I may want a job out there. <laughs> you ever need a rat, why, give me a ring. <laughs> what does a cartoonist do in his spare time? Do you have any uh, hobbies, Mr. Kimball? Uh, well, one of my hobbies, Groucho, is trains. Trains, huh? Well, electric or wind-up? Uh... <laughs> no, I have... Three full-size Baldwin locomotives and four big coaches. In the house? In my backyard. You must have a pretty big backyard, huh? Well, not too big. It's about three acres. Oh. Well, you say you have uh, steam engines out there? Yes. Well, can you go to Chicago? And... <laughs> no, uh, my railroad uh, is only 650 feet long. Well, what's the idea of having a full-size railroad that won't go to Chicago? I don't understand that. Well, I, I tell you, one of the railroads was selling one of its uh, passenger coaches, which was 40 feet long, for 50 bucks, and uh, so I bought it. You see, I can't resist a bargain. You paid $50 for this coach? $50. You know what Notre Dame just paid for that coach? <laughs> it's called the Irish Mail. They have a coach there, too. But uh, tell us about, uh, some more about your railroad there, Ward. Well, we call it the Grizzly Flats Railroad. My wife calls it the White Elephant Line, but she goes along with it. Mm -hmm. But you, you couldn't go to Chicago in this, huh? No, we couldn't go to Chicago. Wouldn't it be cheaper to just uh, go on the train and go to Chicago and then have all this stuff in the backyard? Well, um... How much money have you got tied up in this uh, folly out there in the backyard, huh? Well, I paid $400 for the big locomotive. That's 40 feet long, and I paid... You know what? You can go to Chicago in the Santa Fe for about $70. <laughs> you would have saved $330 right there, and your wife would have had some respect for you, and you'd have been in Chicago. <laughs> I just don't understand you at all. <laughs> what do you do for excitement in the... Now, you have a full-size railroad. I play the trombone. <laughs> I was only trying to be funny. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to me. Do you play in a band or do you play for the amusement of the neighbors? Well, well I... I assume by this time I've fairly decided opinions about you. <laughs> you play it on the train or... Uh... No, I play with a jazz band. I'm the leader and first trombonist of the Firehouse 5 plus 2. <laughs> That's a very famous musical outfit, isn't it? Why do you call it the Firehouse 5 plus 2? I never did understand that. Because there's seven of us. <laughs> you know, and everybody thought the Marx Brothers were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say you're an extraordinary young man, Ward, with a lot of talent. And since you play the trombone, do you, could you whip out a little Dixieland for us here? Well, I don't know, Groucho. Um, I, I could try. You. Uh, you don't I have a bring trombone my on you, huh? No. <laughs> George, you think you could uh, swipe a trombone from the orchestra out there? Don't wake any of them up. Be careful when you go out there. <laughs> I'm surprised you only have one trombonist in your orchestra. I'm surprised any of them show up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Abby, do you think you could contribute anything to this extravaganza we're, we're getting up? Do you, do you sing or dance? Well, I could dance a little Irish jig. An Irish jig? Uh-huh. Maybe the Irish washerwoman. Have you ever played the Irish washerwoman? That's a tough one. That's like playing the bee or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, if you'd have gone to Chicago, you'd have picked that up. <laughs> well, warm, warm it up a little. <laughs> That's enough. <huh? laughs> Could you give us a reasonably accurate facsimile of the Irish washerwoman? B flat, boys. If the boys played with you, huh? <laughs> All right, downbeat, Mr. Kimball, huh?
Send this to Chicago, eh? Huh? Oh, that was wonderful. And Abby, St. Patrick would be proud of you if he was here today. With that firehouse music and that Irish dance, we just chased all the snakes out of Los Angeles. <laughs> Well, I'd like to pursue this conversation. <laughs> the time has come to, to make some money. In the race for the $1,500, the lumberjack and his partner are leading with $155. Now, uh, let's see how much money you can make. You selected a movie quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. All you have to do is beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. And you can quit any time you want, or if you think you have more than the other couple. How about now? <laughs> you can even quit now if you want. Oh, you get, oh, don't forget, you have a starting with a bankroll of $100. I'll stay. That's your nest egg. <laughs> All right, now, what question do you want? A $10 one, $60, $80, 100 Take your choice. Well, I think we'll start about halfway, 50 halfway. bucks. All right, Olivia de Havilland has an equally famous sister. What is her name? Um, Talk it over. Remember your partners. Well, let's see. Um, maybe, um, boy, I know it. She's a... Smirk. Yeah. Well, it's Joan Fontaine. Oh, yeah. And if you just got out of that backyard once in a while... <laughs> you can't pick up things like Joan Fontaine riding around a fake engine in a backyard. <laughs> Tried it. Now what do you want to go for? You lost half your bank. Well, you now have fifty dollars. Boy, my kids are going to sure laugh at me. <laughs> I hope they laugh at me. <laughs> they don't. I'm in a fine fix. Huh? Forty bucks. Forty dollars. Who played the monster in Frankenstein? Boris Karloff. That's right, Boris Karloff. <laughs> you now have ninety dollars. You now have ninety dollars. And what do you wish to try? We'll take a crack at that 60 one. You take a crack at the 60 one? Yeah. It is very nice. Uh, Walter Disney. Oh, you dirty crook. <laughs> That's all right. I, I won't know the answer. <laughs> Walt Disney made a feature, feature-length cartoon that included such characters as Jiminy Cricket, Figaro, and Stromboli. Figaro! What was the name of this picture? That's so easy, I hate to mention it. Uh, Pinocchio. Pinocchio is right. <laughs> You now have $150. You have $150. You wish to continue or do you wish to cease? Let's try that uh, $70. 70 Fate Lancaster made a picture that was filmed in the Fiji Islands. What is the name of it? Talk it over. Crimson Park. No, His Majesty O'Keefe. And you wind up with $75. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto <laughs> Limit deal. Huh? That means that the lumberjack and his partner with $155 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Friends, most people like to do things the easy way. That's why you'll enjoy driving a new DeSoto Automatic, equipped with DeSoto full-time power steering. When you turn the steering wheel of a car equipped with ordinary steering, it is actually your muscular strength hauling your wheels around. But DeSoto full-time power steering takes over to do literally all of the work for you, to make turning those wheels a lot easier. And I hope you've noticed I say DeSoto full-time power steering. That means it works for you all of the time. Not just some of the time, as some other power steering units. But DeSoto full-time power steering goes to work for you as soon as you start your engine. Doesn't cut on and off, as do other types. Wait until you park with DeSoto full-time power steering. You'll find it actually makes parking a cinch. So visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow and try DeSoto full-time power steering for yourself. It's another one of the many reasons why we say... DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. For the finest car yet, you should drive, you should get the DeSoto Automatic. Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sells the high-style Plymouth. Now here's the winning couple, Groucho, the lumberjack and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Well, Paul, here's your chance to chop down $1,500 here. 
I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Let's see how well you remember recent history. In January of 1952, a freighter sank off the southwest coast of England after a heroic 12-day effort by her captain, Henry Carlson, to save her. For $1,500, what was the name of Captain Carlson's ship? Talk it over. Don't you remember reading that? All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Take a guess. Um, strag uh, the strata stragly it's a Norwegian name. It's the, the Flying Enterprise. Enter Enterprise. <laughs> well, that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. <laughs> well, you lost a big money, that. but uh, how much did they win the quiz, Joe? Well, they won one hundred and fifty-five dollars in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks Thank to you. both of you Thank and you. to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And on Miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Traffic control begins at your wheel. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is floor. F L O O R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Horace Greeley. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. A lot of money, isn't it? It certainly is. Would you like to win it? Love to have it. Well, maybe you'll know the answer. Would you split it with me? I think it could be arranged. Yeah. It could be arranged with me, I know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's first, George? Well, Groucho, we, uh, we invited some girls who work for a large manufacturing concern to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Miss Patricia Darian, and her partner is Mr. Peter Ellesmere Jones. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Now, let's see. Uh, Patricia Darien, huh? Yes. And uh, Mr. Peter Ellesmere Jones. Huh? That's right. In seven years on the air, I think this is the first Jones we've ever had. 
Well, it's not really Jones, you know. It's not really Jones? No, it's Elsmer Jones with a hyphen sort of mixed up in between them. Oh. Mm hmm. Well, that name has a lot of dash to it if you have a hyphen there. <laughs> well, where are you from, uh, Pete? Well, I'm from Wales. You're from Wales, huh? Uh, you you're know, you're not Jones, you're Jonah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. Well, let's get down to details. What sort of work do you do, Pete? Well, I had my training as a civil instructional engineer, and at the moment I'm working for Kobig and Kobig on Wilshire, you checking some structural steelwork for the marine barracks at uh, Camp Pendleton. Oh. And where do you work, Pat? I work for the Carnation Milk Company on Wilshire Boulevard. Well, science is certainly wonderful. They're now getting milk from carnations. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I know you could get it from milkweed, but I didn't know you could get it from carnations. Well, do you operate a milking machine for this outfit, or do you milk by hand? No, I'm a secretary. You're a secretary? Yes, uh huh. Well, in that case, it's a good thing you don't milk the cows. <laughs> They'd probably object to your shorthand. Huh? <laughs> well, I I've heard of your company. It's a very famous company, but I, I know they produce an awful lot of milk. How many cows do they own, uh, Pat? Uh, Groucho, we don't actually own any cows. Well, where do you, where do you get your milk from? Coconuts? <laughs> uh, the milk is sold to us by small local producers. Small cows? No, no small producers. <laughs> oh. Where are you from, Pat? I was born in Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, huh? Yes. Oh, a big... <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an old line. Uh, there's a show called Lightning many years ago. It was a very famous play on, on Broadway. And I remember in this uh, scene, the judge asked this girl, she said, uh, why did you get married? Uh, and she said, well, I was in Peoria and it was raining. <laughs> That's a very famous line out of the play Lightning. Frank Bacon was in it. Are, are you married? No, I'm single, Groucho. You're single, mm -hmm. Groucho, huh? That's a funny <laughs> way. Single, Groucho. Huh? Would, you, would you like to get married? Well, eventually, probably, yes. Eventually, why not now? <laughs> you know that a flower company used that slogan and sold 45 million bags of flour? You should be able to bag one poor sucker. <laughs> Are you married, Pete? No, I'm afraid not. Well, I'm not afraid, but I'm not. <laughs> you're, you're getting alarmed rather early, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> not really. Well, Pat, I'd like you to meet Mr. Ellesmere Hyphen Jones. Huh? <laughs> Pete, do you consider yourself an eligible bachelor? Well, I consider myself a bachelor, but not particularly eligible. You're alive and breathing, aren't you? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you're a very nice couple, and my advice is for both of you to win lots of money tonight and open a joint checking account. <laughs> and you'll have something to argue about, and you'll have a very happy marriage. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you miss a question, you lose half of whatever you've got. Is that clear? Yes. If you think you've won enough, uh, you can stop any time. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, uh, what question do you want? Oh, it's 70. Fine. Oh, 70, 70, 75, did you say? 70. 70. All right, Jack Macon and the orchestra will play a song. Let's see if you can identify it. Perfidio? Perfidio is right, yes. <laughs> you now have $170. $170. Now, which question do you want to take? 80. 80? Okay. Andrew Segovia is one of the world's greatest performers on which instrument? Mm. Wonderful. Guitar. Guitar is right. <laughs> You now have two hundred and fifty dollars. Now you can go ahead or you can quit. Wonderful. Ninety. I'll try it. Duke Ellington wrote the number Jack Meekin and the orchestra are going to play. You tell me the name of this modern classic. Play Jack. Mood Indigo. Mood Indigo is right. Yes, he's now applying the three hundred and forty dollars. What a nest egg for your marriage, yes. eh? <laughs> it's your last to go. <laughs> it's your last no. chance to be the other couples. Which one are you going to go for? Oh, might as well. Well, let's go. Hundred. All right. We all know the song "Hail, Hail the Gang's All Here." From what operetta was the tune taken? Oh, are you kidding? 
Knock it over. You know, you, I don't even know an operetta. Florida, Florida door, is it? Now, you ought to know this. You're English. It's The Pirates of Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah. Well, you lost half your bankroll, so you still have $170. Well, well thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Thank you, Brad. Sorry you didn't move. Ladies and gentlemen, for a car with real power, real get-up-and-go, try a DeSoto Automatic with the mighty DeSoto 170-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine. This DeSoto Fire Dome engine is designed to give you power with maximum efficiency and economy. And the secret is in the design of the hemispherical combustion chambers. These dome-shaped chambers are the reason why the Fire Dome engine can squeeze every bit of power from your fuel. They enable you to drive your DeSoto automatic on regular gasoline and still get premium performance. Think of that. A 170-horsepower engine operating perfectly that lets you use regular gasoline. I'm sure that once you get behind the wheel of a DeSoto automatic and feel the smooth, powerful response of the mighty DeSoto 170-horsepower V8 engine, you'll say there's no other automobile engine can match it. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow you'll see that the great DeSoto 170-horsepower Fire Dome engine is just one reason why DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. For the finest car yet, you should drive, you should get the DeSoto Automatic. Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sells the high-style Plymouth. Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories for you now. They were chosen just before we went on the air. And here they come, Mrs. Pauline Mells and Mr. Eric Sanders. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <coughs> Mrs. Pauline Mells and Eric Sanders. Miss Mells, I'll start with you. What is your hometown? Crookston, Minnesota. What's the that? Ba- Crookston, Crookston, Minnesota. Somebody out there from Venezuela. <laughs> You were married, I presume, eh, Paul? Yes, I am, about 12 years. 12 years. Uh, did you meet this chap in Crookston? No, I met my husband in a singing class at night school. No. You met your husband at a singing class in night school? Yes, I did. In other words, your romance got started off on a sour note, eh? No, we got along beautifully. Do you think I... a duet sounds better when a couple's in love? I think so. Mm-hmm. Isn't there a saying that says if um, music is the food of love, play on? Have you ever heard a couple of romantic cats on a back fence? <laughs> I don't think so. Where are you from, Mr. Sanders? Sanders. Sanders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was you're... born in Colgate, Oklahoma. Oh. Well, in that case, you must have a full set of teeth, huh? <laughs> oh, what sort of work do you do, Eric? I sell worms. <laughs> you say you sell worms? I do. Well, who buys these worms? Early birds? No, Farm, farmers and agriculturists and people who wish to better their soil. Well, how do worms help the farmer? Do they give them some new angles? And uh... Well, they certainly do. They homogenize the soil and loosen it up for aeration. And, uh, of course, the castings of an earthworm is the richest soil known to science. That's homogenized and blending of all the materials in the soil, and it's deposited around the roots. And, uh, of course, that helps in a tremendous number of ways. Well, how does the worm know where to go? They work around the roots of anything that lives, and they will eat nothing which lives but anything which has lived and died. Like vultures, aren't they? Huh? Yes. As a matter of fact, they're good at eating garbage, too. Dead animals, anything which has lived and died, either animal or vegetable. I wish I'd have met you some months ago. I, I wish you had, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really mean that. You weren't planning on draping me around an orange tree, were you? No, I was planning on making an earthworm farmer out of you. Yeah, well, I expect you to give me some of those worms. I'm going to try it. Give you? Well, I'll buy them. Oh, well, that's fine. When do you want to deliver? I know where you live. Deliver them tomorrow. I can't make it tomorrow. I'm delivering $500 worth in Vista. Well, I hadn't planned on any sale of that magnitude. (laughs) Where do you live now? Fullerton. Fullerton, well, couldn't you put the worms out and just tell them to come to my house? Huh? No people write to me in Fullerton, just Fullerton, California, earthworms. That's the only right, and I get it. Just Mr. Earthworms, Fullerton, California? That's right. Huh? 
Well, how is it you know so much about worms, Eric? Are you well, I just naturally in... attracted to I... each other? <laughs> yes, we have something in common. Uh, <laughs> people don't realize how large an industry is becoming because of the fact in California now there's an earthworm association with 200 members. I'm not affiliated with it myself because I've always felt that I could merchandise my own product. Mm -hmm. I've been reasonably successful. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. Particularly here, huh? <laughs> Pauline, do you have any hobbies like raising ladybugs? Uh... Yes, I have several hobbies. Oh, but... here it comes, huh? <laughs> well, cooking... Well, let's take them one at a time. You a good cook? I'm pretty good. What's your husband's favorite dish? Well, he's fond of my uh, prime ribs. I'm sure he is, but let's take the cooking. Huh? <laughs> What does your husband do for a living? He's the Los Angeles police officer. Oh, a police officer? Mm -hmm. Oh, how do you like being married to a cop, uh, policeman? <laughs> well... I suppose it's all right in a pinch, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no groaning, please. Tell us about it. Well, it has its good points and its bad points. Of course, their hours are long, and the you never know long, when they're yeah. going to come home, and, uh... Everybody's always yelling at them, and... Yeah. Uh, well, they're yelling they're at everybody on, else, too. <laughs> <laughs> they're on call 24 hours a day, and uh, the pay isn't very high. And <coughs> well, as Gilbert and Sullivan put it, a policeman's lot is not a happy one, you That's know. That's very true. You happen to know that song, by the way? Well, isn't that from the Pirates of Penzen? Yeah, yes, it is. It's well, one of my favorites. I think I might know it. Should we try it, huh? I'll just a chorus or so. I'll start, <clears throat> and if you can remember, you just chime in, huh? All right. Okay. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've sung this. <coughs> when a felon's not engaged in his employment... His employment... Or maturing his felonious little plan... Little plan... His capacity for innocent enjoyment... Innocent enjoyment... Is just as great as any honest man... Honest man... Our feelings we with difficulty smother... Difficulty smother... When constabulary duties to be done... To be done... Oh, take Take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Now, this is the part I like. The part I like. <laughs> When the enterprising burglar's not a burgling, Bling, not a burgling, and the cutthroat is an occupied and crime, pied and crime. Oh, he loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When a cost is finished jumping on his mother, on his mother. Oh, he loves to lie a basking in the sun, in the sun. Oh, take one consideration with another. A oh, policeman's lot is not a happy one. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. I may have to go back on the stage after. <laughs> well, it's been fun talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. Now, uh, we start you off with a $100 bankroll, and when you, t you try to build it up. But when you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. Is that clear? In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $170, and the secret word is floor. Okay, now let's see how much money you can make. You selected culinary quiz. Start with 70? All right, 70. 70. Romano, Munster, and Brie are varieties of what food? Cheese. Cheese is correct. Your bankroll is now $170. $170. Now, which question do you want to try, uh, Eric 80? the Red? 80. 80. 80. What do you call a Hawaiian feast? A luau. Luau is correct. I'm glad you got it. Well, you now have $250. $250. Now, what do you want to try? Shall we pass the 90? Yeah. Oh, we'll try it. What food do we get from the root of the cassave? C A S S A V E. It's a plant grown in the south that is commonly made into a pudding. Um, and if you don't know, guess. It's uh, the breadfruit tree. They have it. I must have been over this week. It's a it's a breadfruit tree, and they they pound it up and make a. Yeah, uh, but what is the name of the pudding? Oh. C A S S A V E. Well, mm. take a guess. Cassave. No, 
sorry it's tapioca. Oh, sure. Oh, oh my heavens. Well, you've lost half your bankroll, so you still have $125. No, here's your last chance to be the other couple, so you can quit, whatever you want to do. Well, we'll try the hundred. A hundred dollars. All right. Gumbo is another word for what vegetable? It's, um... Okra. Okra? Okra, and it's also my brother. <laughs> And you wind up with a grand total of $225. Thanks, and good luck Thank from you. the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Give me a match. All right, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a married couple for you now. Dr. Yeah. and Mrs. Jean Bordeaux. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the sacred word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Doctor and Mrs. Jean Bordeaux, eh? Well, you're a very charming pair. Now, which one of you is Jean? I am. Oh, you are, huh? Mrs. Bordeaux, what shall I call you? You just call me Mary. Mary, yeah? Well, that's a nice, sweet, simple, uninhibited name. <laughs> where, where are you from originally, Mary? Well, I'm from Murray, Kentucky, Groucho. Where? That's Murray, Kentucky. Murray, Kentucky? Yes, it's really a very important town. It was really the ver birthplace of radio. Is that so? The man was Nathan B. Stubblefield. Is that so? Yes. I thought Amos and Andy invented radio. <laughs> <laughs> no. Stubblefield? Yeah, Stubblefield. That was the name of the man who invented radio? That was the name of the Before man who invented Before Marconi? Yes. He well, really the Russians hear about that, huh? <laughs> 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 You know what, they're, they're, they're going to claim that they invented Stubblefield. Huh? <laughs> he really did invent it before Marconi, but you know, as that often happens that the real person doesn't get the credit, you that's know. Tr that's true. Now, Doc, uh, by the way, uh, what kind of a doctor are you, Doctor? Are you an MD, a DDS, or a BVD? PhD. A PhD, huh? You've got to be pretty smart for that. Mary, does the doc give you a feeling of inferiority, or are you, like most wives, superior to your husband? No, I have no feeling of inferiority. After all, I have two degrees myself. Mm. A.B., mm. M.A. That makes Mary two degrees smarter than you, eh? I have an A.B. and an M.A. plus the Ph.D. <laughs> there are more degrees around here tonight than you'll find on a thermometer. <laughs> As a Ph.D., Doc, have you ever done any teaching? Yes, I taught at Whitworth College down in Mississippi at USC... And the Dale Carnegie Institute of Public Speaking and Effective Human Relations. Why do they call it the Institute of Public Speaking and Human Relations? Because they teach public speaking and human relations. <laughs> Thanks. I thought they taught how to win friends. <laughs> Why do you emphasize public speaking? Few things are more important to anyone than to be able to speak effectively in public. That's true. And one of the things that are more important is being able to keep your trap shut in public. <laughs> well, I didn't mean you. I just mean, yeah. Me, I meant. <laughs> well, since you're an expert on public speaking, could you give us some tips on the subject, uh, Doc? Could you boil it down to a few words? Boil down, I think you could sum it up by saying, just be yourself. Have a good opening. For example, you should startle yeah, an audience. Good opening? You mean the back door, right near where you're <laughs> You should startle an audience. You say you should startle your audience? Yeah. What do you mean? When you open your mouth, you should let a flock of pigeons fly out? <laughs> How do you startle them? For example, you might say to this audience, why did you come here tonight? A lot of them have said that to each other. <laughs> or you could startle an audience by... Standing in front of them with your hand closed and say, I'm going to open my hand and show you something the world has never seen before. And after I open my hand, they will never see this again. Open your hand, take out a peanut, crack it, and eat it. <laughs> it isn't enough that the audience eats popcorn. I want the actors to eat peanuts. <laughs> What sort of work are you doing now? I'm a psychotherapist. <laughs> that means nothing to me. What are you doing? Now? I help people who have become emotionally upset to get back on an even keel emotionally. Oh, you're a shrunken head man. <laughs> you're a couch boy, is that it? Huh? What, what is it like being married to a psychotherapist? Does he uh, ever try to analyze you, Mary? Oh, yes, there are a few little problems connected with it. For instance, 
I sort of have a creative imagination, I think, and dream. I have just lovely little dreams, but I just can't dare mention them because, you know, to a psychotherapist, all dreams have some very, significance. Oh, right? yes, they're very deep, dark. So if I tell my dream, I, he's liable to end up saying, well, now, who do you hate? <laughs> and who do you want to murder now? <laughs> and me, well, I love everybody. I long ago took Booker T. Washington's motto as mine. I resolved to let no man belittle my soul by making me hate him. That's wonderful. <laughs> Old Booker T. had plenty on the ball, didn't he? He did. Mm -hmm. Well, I've learned a lot talking to you two, but I imagine even a successful psychotherapist would like to win some money, wouldn't you? Huh? So let's play your bet your life. Huh? You understand the game, huh? You try to run your original bankroll of $100 into more than our other couples. And remember, if you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. In the race for the $2,000, the earthworm grower and the housewife are leading with $225. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You select a dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. How about $70? You could discuss it with Mary there. Don't talk 70? to me. That's all right. We'll... All right. What do you call the jars used for keeping tobacco fresh? Humidor. Humidor is right. <laughs> Your bankroll is now $170. Now, what do you want to try? How about 80? It's all right. Ask Mary. Uh, All, right. All right. How many years in a millennium? Thousand. Thousand years is correct. <laughs> you now have $250. You can quit or you can go ahead. It's up to you. Let's go ahead. All right. Fine. How about it? Oh, yeah, let's go. What do you want? Do you want? 80, about 90, 90? 10, anyone 90. you want. 90. Most of the gold at Fort Knox is in the form of bars. What is the proper word for a bar of gold? A bar. Talk it over. Come on, a bar of gold. Uh, pig. Pig. No, you're flighting with it. It's Inga. Inga. Oh. Well, you uh, lost half of your bankroll, so you now have $125. Now, here's your last chance to be the other couple. Make it the 100 100 How about it? Yeah. All right, if a misanthrope hates mankind, what is a misogynist? Oh, he hates women. He sure does. Give him the money. <laughs> Thanks and good luck to the Minnesota Plymouth dealer. You wind up with $225. And that means, show that there's a tie for the big question chance. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sanders and Mrs. Mells with $225, and the doctor and his wife with well, $225 in just one moment. That, uh, they'll get the chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. <laughs> All right, Groucho, here are our winning couples, Mr. Sanders and Mrs. Mells and Dr. Bordeaux and his wife, all set for a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Now, each of the couples will write an answer on the card, and, of course, if they all get it right, we'll divide the money between them. Think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. Here it is. For $2,000, what is the name given to the promontories on either side of the Straits of Gibraltar? One is in Spain and the other in Africa. It's a name that's been used for centuries. <laughs> your card. Sanders and Mrs. Mells. Malta? No, that's wrong. Dr. Bordeaux and his wife. Pillars of Hercules. Right. So you two win $2,000. Plus, how much in the quiz, George? Well, you won $225 in the quiz. That's $2,225. What are you going to do with all that money? You won't believe us, but we're going to buy a DeSoto. Are you? <laughs> Why shouldn't I believe you? It's the best car in the market. <laughs> well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember...
Just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Look out for the driver who doesn't look out for you. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is people. P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me. Here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We have some young single people for you tonight, Groucho. For me? Well, uh, for you to talk to. Oh. Uh, Miss Virginia Harbin and Mr. Chuck Wallace. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day, I presume. Virginia Harbin, that's you, huh? That's right. Are you uh, married? No, I'm not, Groucho. Are you engaged? No, I'm not. Are you over 21? Yes, I am. Chuck Wallace? That's correct, sir. Oh, how old are you, Chucky boy? I'm 31, Groucho. 31? Well, say, you're a pretty young-looking kid for 31. How tall are you, Chuck? Five foot six. Mm -hmm. That must be why they call you Chuck, isn't it? Because you're short for Charles? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Virginia, let's get back to you. What, what sort of work do you do? I'm an employment interviewer at the Bureau of Occupations at UCLA. Oh, what do you what do you do at this place? I try to find work for college students. Uh -huh. We try to match the employer's requests with the um, students' requests as to the type of jobs that they're particularly interested in doing. That doesn't seem uh, plausible. <laughs> I does. never heard of a college student that was interested in work. <laughs> <laughs> How about salary? I should imagine college students are pretty practical. What do they want to start with? Fifty thousand a year and free parking? No. I <laughs> I don't think so, Groucho. I think that they're really more interested in the job and the opportunities that the job has to offer more so than, uh, than the salary. Is that so? In other words, you don't think they're interested in money? And you expect an employer to hire a netwit like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that they, they really are interested in the money, but I think, too, that they're interested in the opportunities that the to job meet the has to offer. the boss and, uh, yes. and the other people who work in the office, the I male think. ones, I mean. Where do you work, Chuck? I work at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, you work in Vegas, huh? Yeah, that's right. No wonder you're short. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go up there occasionally. I've stayed at the Flamingo, and last time I was there, I stayed at the Desert Inn. They have a golf course there. What is your job at the Flamingo? Are you the little fellow under the roulette wheel that makes it stop in the wrong number? <laughs> no, I'm the masseur there. Masseur? Oh, you're a Frenchman. Well, uh... Good evening, monsieur. <laughs> monsieur, what do you do in this place, uh, monsieur? Well, I give the steam bath, the rubs, and the oxygen there. You give the oxygen? Is That's this uh, after they play or before? <laughs> 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 well, have you always been a masseur up there? No, I was a lifeguard before that, you gotcha. That's kind of a strange job in Vegas, isn't it? When a man jumps in the pool up there, the last thing he wants to be is saved. <laughs> 
pretty, is it uh, pretty hard work, Chuck? Uh, no, it's uh, fun. The lifeguard? Mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, uh, you dive after pennies like they do in Hawaii? Well, in a way, yes. There was a rumor going around the hotel that... Uh, there were a number of them when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> they finally threw me out of the hotel. Well, anyway, there, this rumor was that uh, if anyone would throw a silver dollar into the pool before they'd uh, go into the tables, well, they'd have good luck that night. And uh, How does a rumor like that ever get started? I started it. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Finally found somebody who was crooked than I was. <laughs> well, Vegas is certainly a fabulous place. Are there any more little traditions like that one about throwing the coins in the water? Well, there's a, uh, a rumor going around the Flamingo now that uh, if you come down to the health club and get a rub and give the boy a silver dollar to rub your arm, you'll have a... That's you, huh? Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Wallace, I hope you won't be offended by this, but my guess is you're about as straightforward and honest as a Las Vegas slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make an interesting and attractive couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but now it's time to play your bet your life. You st we start you off with a $100 bankroll. This is right up your alley, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which you try to bill as high as possible. Each time you miss a question, you lose half of what you have. You can quit whenever you like. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Fifty? Fifty. Fifty, Okay, uh, $50. What musical instrument does Vladimir Horowitz play? Mm -hmm. Talk it over. Your partner's. And if you don't know, get. Do you have any idea? Mm -hmm. Take a guess. Violin? No, you're close. It's a piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty close. They're next to each other in the audience. <laughs> well, you lost half your bankroll. You still have $50. Now, what do you want to try? Mm -hmm. 60, 80, 10? 10, 20. Okay, whatever you say. Forty dollars. A few years ago, a famous clarinetist had such men in his band as Gene Krupa, Harry James, and Lionel Hampton. He was known as the King of Swing. Who is he? Artie Goodman. Mm -hmm. One answer. Benny Goodman. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. Go ahead. I think it was Benny Goodman. Oh, you just nose under the wire. <laughs> That's right. Huh? <laughs> well, you now have ninety dollars. Chucky, maybe you better let her answer. Yeah, I, uh, I think you're right there, Ralph. This girl goes to UCLA. Now uh -huh. you have ninety dollars. Now what do you want to try? Should we try seventy? Seventy dollars. Seventy. The orchestra will play a familiar song. You tell me the name of it. Play, Mr. Meekin. <laughs> We've now climbed to one hundred and sixty dollars. Should we try the ninety? The ninety is right off the boat. We just got it in today. Good. <laughs> Gonna try the ninety? Ninety. Wow. The orchestra will play a song by Cole Porter. You identify it, Jack. <laughs> Just that? one of those things. That's right. Once again. Just one of those things. That makes three of those things. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> And you wind up with two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I Thank hope you're very happy to get it. George, it's time for a commercial. Not just any commercial, but the one about that beautiful, tremendous new DeSoto Coronado. So say something. Well, I don't have to, Groucho, because this car speaks for itself. It's a real honey. Sleek, glamorous, and new. The DeSoto Coronado is a 170-horsepower beauty with a Sierra beige top and a Caddy's blue body that's just the greatest. And the Coronado's got a new chrome and stainless steel setup that makes it look even longer and lower, if that's possible. Yes, this Coronado is a real work of art. And to prove it, we put the name on the rear fender in shiny chrome. Up front is the famous Fire Dome name, proof that the Coronado offers the same unbeatable performance as all the other DeSoto automatics. Inside, this car is like nothing you've ever seen. It's so beautiful. The cream seat bolsters are the finest top grain leathers, a perfect blend with the pale blue of the weave pattern corded nylon upholstery. George, that car is so lovely. I wonder if it's doing anything after the show. Well, Groucho, I hope it has a date. A date with a lot of those nice people out there. A date at their DeSoto Plymouth dealer showroom to see for themselves that the beautiful DeSoto Coronado is another proof that DeSoto puts you ahead automatically.
Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sells the High Style Plymouth. George, let's have the next couple. Who are they? We have some people with interesting stories, Groucho. Mrs. Tommy Lewis and Mr. Peter George Stathis. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Peter George Stathis and Mrs. Tommy Lewis. Mrs. Lewis, you're a woman. I'll start with you. What's your first name? Tommy. Tommy? What's Is that? that a man's name? Nothing to start with I.E. Really? I didn't know that. Next time I see somebody with an I.E., I'll make sure and tip my hat. <laughs> Where are you from, Tommy? Huh? <laughs> I'm originally from Pasco, Washington. Where? Pasco, Washington. Pasco, Washington? Mm -hmm. That's in the apple country, isn't it? Near there, yes. Mm -hmm. I was up there once, but they threw me out. They figured one bad apple could wreck the entire industry. <laughs> Are you married, Tommy? Yes, I'm married. Where did you meet your husband? I met my husband, Douglas Aircraft. Douglas Aircraft? That's right. What were you doing there? I was a riveter, and he was a tool crib attendant. You were Rosie the Riveter. No, I was Tommy the Riveter. <laughs> well, Rosie is I.E., isn't it? Yes. That's right. <laughs> we're back to the I.E. again. What was he doing in the tool crib? Was he just a baby at the time? Or? No, he was the attendant. He uh, gave out the motors and guns and, and the uh, equipment to work with. So the, the employees had to go to the tool crib and get the equipment to work with. Well, we seldom have an opportunity to explore romance in the riveting section. <laughs> and I always like to do research on any subject. Uh, how did your husband break the ice the first time he saw you? He did. I did. Uh, mm -hmm. he I rushed up to the tool crib and asked him if he had a high-speed motor with a loose chuck. <laughs> He said he had the motor. You're lucky he didn't call a policeman, then. Yes, I think so. What is a high-speed motor with a loose chuck? Well, a high-speed motor is a 1,500 uh, RPM motor. And That's uh, revolutions per minute, isn't yes. it? Yes. And it's... Uh, That's what uh, they're having in Puerto Rico. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a loose chuck is one you spin down to fit the, the, the um, drill with your fingers instead of taking your chuck and keep the key and keep turning it like this by hand and making your arm tired. So I'm on the high speed motor with a loose chuck. And, uh, well, is that how they make chuck steak? Do they shoot at it with a gun? No, I think that's a different subject. That ends with I.E. too, you know. Oh. Chucky. Yeah. I thought we were, we were past that deal now. We may never get past that. Oh. <laughs> your name is Peter George Status? Yes, Gracho. Well, you're a very cute-looking uh, George Stathis. Well, thank you. I didn't mean to uh, ignore you for such a long... I was of... wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really ignoring you. I was merely occupied with a ricochet romance. Over <laughs> Can you sing that song, uh, Tommy? No, but I don't sing. It's on the black notes and on the white notes, but I always sing in a track. <laughs> Well, I have no answer for that. <laughs> what, what sort of work do you do, Peter? I'm a restaurateur. Uh, a restaurateur, huh? Yes, sir. Really? I've been arrested many a time. Do <laughs> you have frog's legs? Yes, sir. Let's see them, huh? Uh, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> well, Pete, you look like you're a pretty good advertisement for your place. What are your measurements, by the way? Well, I measure five, in, uh, five feet, five inches, and I weigh 210 pounds. That strip for Jim? Yes, sir. Well, you're a fine figure of a man, Pete. Thank you. My advice is stay out of dark alleys. <laughs> You'd certainly be an easy man to roll. <laughs> Where are you from, Peter? Originally, I mean. I was born in Greece, oh. in the island of Kithira. Kithira. How is it so many Greeks are good restaurant operators? Is it just a coincidence? Or because well, they happen to be experts on Greece? Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, Gracho is like this. That's an old joke, uh, you know. Every Greek boy is born with a spottle and a spoon on his hand. A spottle? What kind? A whiskey spottle? No. <laughs> it's the one that you stir a stew or a soup or oh. anything that you want to make in a deep casserole. Well, let's talk about your place, Pete. Uh, where is it? Well, uh, my place is located at 701 East Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach. No. Oh. The seafood grotto. And if you really want to enjoy the finest seafood, 
You better come down or call Long Beach is 76748, <laughs> and you'll have the finest seafood you ever had any place. Well, I'll, I'll give you a ring. Suppose a halibut uh, answers. Do I hang up? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about uh, seafood, Tommy? I don't like it. Fish tastes too much like fish. Fine partner, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Why I choose you? <laughs> well, my advice is, after that, don't eat at Pete's place, huh? <laughs> You're liable to get a Mickey in your mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a very entertaining couple, and it's been real nice talking to you two, and now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $250, and the secret word is people. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You select a sport. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? That's about fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. That's a nice compromise. What do you call the last runner on a relay team? Talk That's it over. the yeah. anchor man. Yeah, you're right. It's the anchor man. But in the future, <laughs> you may want to. have a different version. Wonderful. Of feet, and you you're a pretty uh, smart cookie there. Huh? You now have a hundred fifty dollars. Now, uh, what question do you want, Pete? Mm -hmm. Let me have it. Well, you can have an eighty, a ten, a hundred, thirty, anything. Sixty. Else? Let's advance it ten more. Okay. That all right with you, Tom? That's that all right, right Tommy. That's what do you call the area a football player aims for when he tries to kick the ball out of bounds near the goal line? One answer, Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a coffin corner. That is right. It's the coffin corner. Your bankroll is now $210. Now, you can quit or you can go ahead. Let's take a chance. What do you want? What question? Uh, $70. $70 left. What do you call the basic rules and provisions of modern boxing? The rules of, uh, uh, Logsbury rules is something of that type. The Queensbury rules. That's right, the Queensbury rules. <laughs> the markers of Queensbury rules. Well, you were That's fighting right. with it. We had to give it to you. And you now have $280. Are you a gambler? Well, let's gamble on it. Okay. Big one or a little one? 80. Let's have $80. $80. How many players on an ice hockey team? On an ice hockey team? Five. Oh, that no. Six. Six. Too bad. Well, you've lost half your bankroll. You wind up with $140. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Sorry you didn't win. Thank you. Who's next, George? Well, Roger, we have a housewife and a married man for you. They volunteered just before we went on the air. Mrs. Capitola Fredrickson and Mr. John Blake, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. You're John Blake, eh? It's spelled yes, J-O-N. Why yeah. is that? Did somebody knock the H out of you? Uh, no, Groucho. It's just a contraction of the early English Jonathan. Oh, I see. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jonathan? The Washington Heights uh, section of New York City. Oh, really? I used to live up there. Mm -hmm. 165th Street and um, Amsterdam, man, around there. Mm -hmm. How old are you? It was about 100 years ago. I'm 27, Groucho. 27. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Mrs. Uh, Capitola Fredrickson, eh? Fredrickson? Fredrickson. That's you. Uh, where are you from? Uh... Well, I was born on an Indian reservation in Red Lake, Minnesota. Oh, really? Yes, I was. You're not wearing your feathers tonight, huh? What tribe are you from? I'm from the Chippewa tribe. Chippewa? Yes. Is that your Indian name, Capitola? No, that isn't an Indian name, Groucho. My That's Indian it. name is Celine Janat Ozawandib Dabusanakudo Kinu. I don't know, but I'd be willing to try. <laughs> well, what does your name mean in English? You fish on your side, I fish on my side, nobody fish in the middle? <laughs> no. It means a girl with the dark brown hair flowing outwards under low clouds with a little eagle. That's not easy, either. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do, Capitola? Oh, he works in the post office, Groucho. Oh, does he ever play post office with you? Uh... Well, sometimes. <laughs> what does he do in the post office? Well, he calls himself a post office, I mean a... Um... Postmaster? No, post office mortician. <laughs> he works Why? In, well, he works in the dead letter department. <laughs> That's his little joke, huh? Yes. And while he's clowning around the post office, the mail order electric belt I sent for to give me the strength of Hercules is rotting in the basement. <laughs> Come to cut out those jokes. 
Where did you meet your husband? Well, he came up to Minnesota on a duck hunting trip one time, and he lost his hunting license. So he... Yeah. You were a decoy? No. <laughs> well, I was in an Indian pageant at that time, so he spent his evenings watching this pageant and flirting with me and saying fancy things. And... Like what? Oh, how you doing, kid? What you doing tonight? How about a date? And he didn't think I could understand English because I was in Indian costume all the time. When did he finally find out you understood every word he said? When he asked me to marry him, I fooled him, and I said yes. <laughs> That's one question a woman can understand in 68 different languages. <laughs> By the way, have you taught your husband how to speak Chippewa? Well, um, a short time after we were married, I told him, Honey, I'll bet I can make you talk Indian. Talk in two minutes. And right after that, he declared war on them. Uh, <laughs> he said, how? I said, see, I made you talk Indian already. <laughs> you certainly have a variety of little jokes in your family. <laughs> you know, I was up in Montana last summer, at the <clears throat> Blackfeet uh, reservation up there. I was up there. They were shooting a Western picture, some friends of mine, and I went up to watch them. I had this big museum up there, this Indian museum, and I went in, of course, I had my little girl with me, and we, I was interested, and she was. And we went there, there were, oh, there was a couple of dozen Indians in there looking at this exhibit, this Indian exhibit. Mm -hmm. They had moccasins there, and a canoe, and uh, all kinds of blankets, and uh, things that they carried, the papooses, and, and these Indians were standing there, and they were fascinated by this stuff. Most of them had never seen any of these things. <laughs> and I, start, I had been in a Western picture with a lot of Indians in one of our movies, and I was explaining to the Indians what all these things were for. Really <laughs> incongruity to have me standing there from New York City explaining to the Indians about their own paraphernalia. There's no joke to this, but I thought it was a kind of an interesting piece of Americana. Now, John, occasionally I like to sound people out on their hobbies. Do you have any uh, particular ones that we could discuss? Uh, yes, I do, Groucho, well, but... What do you uh, do? What is it? I paint with salt and pepper. You paint with... Uh, what do you mean you paint with salt? What do you paint, steaks? <laughs> uh, no, Groucho, I paint uh, portraits of uh, pretty girls, landscapes, and so forth. Mm. You know. Now this is modern art. You have to take it with a grain of salt. I guess. <laughs> have you sold any of these salt and pepper pictures? Yes, quite a number, Groucho. As a matter of fact, uh, a few of them are in some of the finest bars in Hollywood. <laughs> well, so have I been, but I can't paint. Huh? <laughs> well, how much do you get for these... Uh, I ask $500 a picture, Groucho. No, you haven't answered my question, John. <laughs> oh, well, uh, so How much do you get? I asked 500 but I got 30 for my last. Oh, yes, please. <clears throat> now we're getting down to basic uh, facts here. Yes. What kind of work do you do, John? I'm a window cleaner, Groucho. A window cleaner? Is that so? Oh, yes. Yeah. Hmm. What kind of windows do you clean? Uh, dirty ones. <laughs> That's a pretty good joke. Uh, I'm just surrounded by feeble jokes here tonight. Now, I'll bet five dollars that I can teach you to talk Indian in less than two minutes, okay? I'll bet you can't. No, you weren't supposed to say that. You were supposed to say how. Okay, here's your five dollars. You're getting too sharp for the old quiz master. Right? Well, it's been fun talking to you two, but I'm sure you'd rather win some money. So let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,000, our first couple, Chuck Wallace and his partner, are still leading with $250. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected movie quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with and one answer between? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 70. Mm -hmm. 70? 70? What is Henry King's job in the making of a movie? Uh, he's a director. That's right. He's a director. That's right. <laughs> Your bankroll now contains one hundred seventy dollars. Want to quit? Want to go ahead? I want to go ahead. Okay. I'm too. All right. What do you well, want to try? Let's play eighty. 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 Yeah, it's fine. All right. Who won the Academy Award for her portray portrayal of the title role in Kitty Foyle? Ginger Rogers. Yes. Ginger Rogers is right. <laughs> you now have two hundred fifty dollars. We'll try the ninety. Ninety. Have you consulted this yes. with the oh, yes. Yes. John over here? Virginia Mayo's husband is also in pictures. What is his name? Michael O'Shea. Michael O'Shea is right. <laughs> your bankroll now contains $340. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. 
What do you want to go for? Well, 100. Mm -hmm. You're betting 100. About 100. <clears throat> Who won the Academy Award in 1946 as the best supporting actor in the picture, Best Years of Our Lives? It was his only movie role. Oh, the, um, anti... Yes, yes, it was, uh, Harold, he's, uh, he's the, uh, the amputee, the veteran, uh, the veterans organization now, the, uh, Harold. disabled American veterans, uh, Harold, uh, Kirby, was it? No. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I don't know the last the name is uh, the name is Harold Russell you didn't guess the name I'm sorry how much did they win and you wind up with one hundred seventy dollars well that's not too bad thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Thank dealers you. sorry you didn't win it <laughs> And that means, Groucho, that Chuck Wallace and his partner, with $250, in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. And here's the winning couple, Groucho, Chuck Wallace and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. In the year 1215, the Confederated Barons of England forced King John to sign one of the great documents of human liberties, the Magna Carta. For $1,000, where in England was this document signed? This is something you learned in school. Now, talk it over. Unless you can think of something else, I'll say the Charter of... What is the answer you two have decided upon? Charter Oak. No, it's Runnymede, Runnymede, England. Mm. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? They won $250 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Caution, control, and courtesy are the ingredients that add up to traffic safety. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. <laughs> really? <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> it's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... What a grisly name. Oh, that's me.
<laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you tonight. And uh, when you meet them, I think you'll understand why I invited them to the show tonight. They're sort of special guests. So, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? <laughs> Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and take home uh, an extra $100. It's a common word, something you always have uh, with you. Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, well, the, the stool I'm sitting on is just like 42nd Street and Broadway. Sooner or later, the whole world passes by your door, <laughs> like Port Said. In case there's anybody who doesn't recognize him, this fellow happens to be the greatest all-around athlete of our time. He's the male Babe Dittrickson. <laughs> <laughs> This year's Jim Thorpe. <laughs> if you don't believe me, I'll ask Mrs. Matthias, isn't he? Sure, yes. <laughs> well, that proves it. What's your first name, Mrs. Matthias? Melba. Melba. Obviously, you're the toast of California. <laughs> How long have you been married, Melba? Oh, about eight and a half months, Groucho. Mm -hmm. But you knew all about him when he was doing all that jumping and running, huh? That's right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, since you caught him, I'd say you were the greatest athlete of our time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How old are you, Bob? 23, Groucho. Well, you're a pretty big fella, huh? How, how big are you? Well, I'm six foot three, mm -hmm. 205 pounds. And what do you weigh, Melba? Uh, about 118. He's twice as big as you are. <laughs> Does he scare you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was always that way, ever since Samson and Delilah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's probably planning to get my hair cut any day now. <laughs> How'd you meet Bob? Uh, do you remember the very first time you saw him? Oh, yes, sir. He was on the cover of Life magazine. What did you do? Ask him to get off so you could read it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you actually meet him? Well, it was at Stanford University. Uh, I was going around the corner, and he was coming from the opposite direction. And he, we bumped into one another, and he knocked me down, and he said, excuse me, and picked me up and went on. That's all he did, huh? Mm -hmm. Probably shows more sympathy when he knocks down a high hurdle. <laughs> How about Bob's athletic victories? What are some of his achievements, Melba? Do you recall? Well, uh, I think two of his greatest was... Uh, Marrying you, I think. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, was during the last two Olympics in 48 and 52. He won the decathlon event both years. And uh, in 52, he set a world and Olympic record and amassed the most points for the event. Have you always been athletic, uh, Bob? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, when I was 13, I was anemic. I was tired and, and weak and a 90-pound weakling. You were tired and run down at the age of 13? Yes, sir. Took me 40 years to get in that condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you change from this miserable little crawfish <laughs> into this legendary athlete? Well, my father is an MD and surgeon, a doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, he prescribed lots of rest, the proper foods, and gave me iron shots mm -hmm. to build back my uh, blood. What is your ambition, Bob? Are you still continuing your athletic career? Well, I took up golf about five, five months ago. Golf? Say, you really yeah. have a high ambition, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be president, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what is your best score at golf? 85. 85. Well, we're about the same there. Is that for 18 holes or nine? 18, I'm, I'm afraid. 18, yes. Yeah. Well, mine is for three holes. <laughs> <laughs> But that's for cheating, huh? <laughs> what are your plans for the immediate future, Bob? Are you in training for the next Olympics? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm through with track and field, but right now uh, we're getting ready to make a motion picture called The Bob Mathias Story, oh. a picture about my life. Who's going to play the part of Bob Mathias? I am. Could you use me as the 13-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> are you going to play yourself in the picture? Yes, I am. Well, no one ever plays himself in a Hollywood movie. <laughs> I should think the part would call for a real brawny type like uh, Clifton Webb. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Bartholomew. <laughs> what happens when the picture's over? What are you going to do? After the picture, I go into the United States Marine Corps for two years. Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, my congratulations to the Marine Corps. Huh? <laughs> They're certainly getting a one-man army. Well, I've certainly enjoyed meeting you two. Thank you. It'd be nice if all the American couples looked like you two. 
beautiful girl and a handsome athlete. Oh, thank you very much. Here I am. <laughs> well, let's see how much money you can win. You're going to play your bet your life. We start you off with a bankroll of $100. You're both college students, so you ought to be pretty smart. Every time you miss a question, you lose half of whatever your bankroll amounts to at the time. You're entitled to four questions, but you can quit any time you feel you've won more than the other couples. Clear? Right. Mm -hmm. You select a general information quiz. Mm -hmm. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Seventy. Seventy. Is that all right with you? Uh, That's fine. <laughs> what was the name of the celebrated French line of fortifications along the German frontier? Mm -hmm. Mosino. Is that the Mosino line? Maginot line. Maginot well, that's line. Close enough, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way. Your bankroll is now one hundred seventy dollars. Now, what do you want to try? Sixty. We'll try sixty. Sixty. What are the What do the following have in common? Kohinoor, Great Mogul, and Hope. Kohinoor, Great <laughs> Mogul, and Hope. They're all the same. They have different names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, guess. Comedian. <laughs> well, there is a hope, comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any Cohen or though, a great mogul. Well, they're all famous diamonds. Well, oh. you oh, lost yes. uh, half your bankroll, so you still have $85. All right, now what do you want to try? Eighty. Eighty dollars. What do you associate with words cumulus, stratus, and cirrus? I believe that's how you pronounce uh, it. Clouds. Clouds is good enough. Don't go any further. <laughs> the bankroll is now $165. Now, what do you want to try? Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. $90. $90. This is the last hurdle. <laughs> Whose picture is on the regular issue of the three-cent stamp? If you don't know, Washington guess. Washington or Jefferson? Jefferson. We'll That's Jefferson. right, Jefferson. You gave me a heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and good luck oh, from the Soda Plymouth deal. And you wind up with a total of $255. This year, DeSoto is automatic with power flight drive that's the best. Just the turn of a key and you're ready to breathe. No clutch and no shifting, just drive as you please. DeSoto has beauty that's clean and modern. Both inside and out, it's a dream. For the finest car yet, you should drive, you should get the DeSoto Automatic. Yes, drive a new DeSoto Automatic equipped with Power Flight, America's finest fully automatic transmission. You'll find driving is easier and far less tiring because DeSoto's fully automatic Power Flight transmission was designed to carry out your sudden orders quickly, smoothly, quietly. So for a new driving thrill, drive a new DeSoto Automatic with Power Flight. And if it's power you're looking for, get behind the wheel of a DeSoto Fire Dome. The mighty Fire Dome 170 horsepower V8 engine gives you all the power you can possibly use at the touch of a toe. Ready to perform the instant you call on it. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow and treat yourself to the beauty and luxury of a new DeSoto automatic. Available in two great series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the superb Power Master 6. Remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. All right, George, who's next? We invited some business women to the show tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Lindy Jamel to be your guest. Her partner is a businessman, Mr. C.W. Wiggle. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome, folks, to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Lindy Gannell. Let's start with you. Uh, where is your home, Lindy? Well, I came from Sigourney, Iowa. Uh, Sigourney Island? Sigourney, Iowa. That's an Indian chieftain's name. What sort of work do you do, uh, Mrs. Gim? Well, I have a foster freeze. I didn't ask you where you were frozen, Mrs. Gim. <laughs> I just was interested to know what sort of work you do. Oh, you mean what foster freeze is? Well, yeah. um, 
We're an ind small independent business, mm -hmm. and uh, we have 200 stores in the state of California. A small independent business? Small right. independent 200 business. Stores? 200 stores in what the state of California. What do you consider a large uh, business? Well, larger than the little store I operate. Treasury Department? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the stuff good for? Do you rub it on your chest when you have a cold? Oh, no, it's food. It's the most delicious and healthy food there is. We have chocolate, taste? strawberry, chocolate riffle. Uh -huh. And uh, who, are you, who are you again? Uh, I am C. W. Wiggle. <laughs> That's an odd name. Uh, certainly a new twelve. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an English name, is it? No, it is not, Groucho. It's Swiss origin. Swiss? That's right. Can you yodel? No, I cannot. I ask all Swiss people if they can yodel, because <laughs> it's commonly accepted that they can all yodel. Huh? What is your full name, Mr. Wiggle? Uh, C. Wilbert Wiggle. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather see Marilyn Wiggle if I had my <laughs> However, go ahead. <laughs> I'd be glad to see uh, uh, Wiggle, uh, Wilbert Wiggle. Wilbert, is it? Uh, That's right. I'm sure you must get kidded about your name, huh? Yes, I do, Groucho. You must hear many wisecracks. What are some of those you hear? Why, when I was a kid in school, the teacher in school called me Wiggle by name and Wiggle by nature, and then as I grew up and put on this weight, why, everybody called me Wee Willie Wiggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what sort of job do you do, uh, Wiggle, or have? I am or district operate, huh? manager for the National Federation of Independent Business. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an organization of Do you have a drop-in on, on Linda here? I haven't as yet, but probably I will after the show. <laughs> what we do is call on these businessmen. Are you married? You're married. Oh, yes, I'm married. Would you take your wife with you when you went to visit? My them? wife is always with me. She's right up in the audience right now. Uh, would, uh, would she go with you to the Foster Freeze place? Oh, certainly, at all times. Uh, apparently, she's on to you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, but I'm, I'm all in favor of the small businessman. I think they're a very necessary and essential part of our economy. And after the show, we'll all have a force to freeze, shall we? Yeah. That's right. Followed by a chaser of antifreeze. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's play you bet your life. We'll start you off with a bankroll of $100. You try to build it up by answering four questions. Every time you miss one, you lose half your bankroll. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $255, and the secret word is smile. You select a food quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, which question do you want to start with? Better make it a cheap one. Okay, we'll make it 40. 40. Okay, if the meat from a sheep is called mutton, what do you call meat from a calf? Veal. Mm. That is right. You now have $140. Now, uh, what so do you, you want to try? 51 or the 31? 50. All right, we'll try the 50, Groucho. 50? What kind of a fruit is a royal lamb? That's a cherry. That is right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a cherry. Your bankroll is now one hundred and ninety dollars. Let's try a thirty this time. Okay. Let's try a thirty this time. A thirty? Yes. Okay. What do you call the heart, liver, and gizzard of poultry? Talk in it over. Entrails. Entrails. What do you say? I guess not. I don't know. Well, it's giblets. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Well, you've uh, you've lost half your bankroll, so you have ninety five dollars. You have ninety five dollars. Now right. you can quit or go ahead. No, we we'll go on. Okay. What I'm do you want? This one. Hundred dollar one. Ten. Six. Anything. Twenty. Twenty or sixty. 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 A popular Japanese alcoholic beverage is made from rice. What is it called? Uh, sake? That is right. Sake is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck, Minnesota Primitive. And you wind up with $155. <laughs> George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some dog show judges to our program tonight. And before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Donya Klein to be on the show. And her partner is a visitor from the Middle West, Mr. Louis Menke. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. Something, it's something, it's a common word. Something you always have with you. I've been saying this for seven years and I still can't say it. Mrs. Uh, Donia Klein and Mr. Louis Menke, huh? Mrs. Klein, you're a dog show judge? 
Yes? Well, don't be nervous. I won't bite. <laughs> Louis Menke, huh? Menke. Yes, sir, that's me. Are you, you're a dog judge? No, I'm just a farmer. Oh, farmer? Pig judge, huh? Well, I'm a pretty good judge of pigs, yes. Oh. Well, don't look at me, huh? But I, <laughs> I still have a, a good dog, though. You have? Oh, huh? yeah. We keep one good dog. Mm. I'll tell you, Mr. Marks, I'll tell you, a good dog is worth $1,000 on a farm. I'll tell you why. If I'd have a dog down in my cellar and my house would go fire, he'd bark and scratch on the door, he might save my whole family's life. Well, if he didn't come out, he'd be a hot dog. He would be a hot dog. <laughs> He's still going to come out if he's able to. Yes, you're, you're a dog, right. A dog is your best friend. He'll yes. never go back on you. You That's can thank right. him a dozen times, and when he, you say, come on, puppy, he'll always... He's got more, he's got more sense than lots of people have. You can say that again. Absolutely. You can say that again, and I hope you don't. Uh, <laughs> I, are you married? I... No, sir, I never married. You're not married? I'm not married. Uh, but I'm the happiest, why not? I'm the happiest old bachelor in the state of Iowa. Uh, do, you, do you enjoy being a bachelor? Do I ever enjoy it? If I wasn't an old bachelor, I couldn't be in California tonight. I'd have to be down in Iowa taking maybe dictation from my wife. But I have no wife. So what do you do? Take dictation from the dog? Yeah. No, sir, he don't dictate me either. Well, do, you, do, you, do you have a lot of fun as a I bachelor? Have, I have more fun than any man in the United States. I do for a fact. Well, how is that? Do you well, take I'll all your you, corn and distill it? No, I don't even know. drink, Mr. Mark. But I'll tell you what I do. You don't drink? I, I don't drink, cuss, swear, or even run women. But my pleasure... What do you mean, run women? You, <laughs> you don't run women, you run cattle and well, sheep. Well, that's a fellow chasing. Yeah? That's a fellow chase women, but I don't do that. You don't chase no, women? Sir. Don't they, they have no attraction for you well, at all? Well, I would say just no attraction, but I never hooked up with one. I love them all, but I never hooked up with one. <laughs> In fact, I never want to be, uh, be under a woman's thumb. I want to be my own boss. And I'm going to keep it that way. I've done it for 54 years, and I believe I can try it a little longer. <laughs> but listen, if I ever do get married, if I ever do go and get married, I'm going to stick with her for life. I ain't going to do it like some of these folks. The first thing you know, when you get married to a half a dozen women, it'll be your kids and my kids is fighting our kids. <laughs> If, if, if you don't get married soon, you won't have any kids. <laughs> they always say there's one and only Groucho Marx. Or you're a very good sport. I'm the only right. one and only Louis Mank in the state well, of Iowa. I admire you, Louis. Uh, you're fine, well, fine we, we'll keep it that way, Groucho. <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. Huh? Doesn't always add up, but it's an answer. <laughs> don't you? You're a dog show judge. Is that that's right? Well, yes. Uh, I may have a question to ask you later about a certain gay dog that I know. Huh? <laughs> What kind of dogs do you judge, four-legged or two-legged? Well, uh, I judge the four-legged kind. I judge uh, all of the hounds in the... Four-legged hound or two-legged? Eh? Four-legged ones. Mm -hmm. Afghans, beagles, bloodhounds, borzois, whippets, those that are in the hound group, mostly. Well, pretend we're at a dog show, uh, don't you, and you're about to judge a bloodhound. What is the first thing you do? You see if he's anemic? Uh, no, after the dogs come in and parade around the ring and stand for your judgment, I look at the teeth, and uh, then I look at the wrinkles in the dog's head and see uh, if it has a dip behind its withers so that its back doesn't grow. I beg grow. your pardon. What was that? <laughs> you see if it has a dip behind its withers? Do you yes. understand this, uh, Louis? It's all, it's all Latin to me. <laughs> I don't know much about dogs, no. We have one dog, but he's just a mutt. He's just a, just a dog. But does he have a dip behind his withers? Uh? I wouldn't know anything about the dip, no. <laughs> well, yes. Mrs. Klein, I, I happen to read a piece in a recent issue of Coronet Magazine called Dogs Are Dumb. Uh, did you read that? Uh? Yes, I certainly did. And do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with it because the, the man uh, asked the dogs to drop little round balls and square holes and uh, do a lot of uh, kindergarten stuff uh, that dogs are not inclined for and if uh, the man who wrote this article knew anything about dogs he wouldn't say that they're dumb because I'd like to send the man down into a badger hole and see what he could do with a badger that's what our dachshunds do and I'd like to see uh, what he could do about retrieving a duck or pointing birds out in the field and, and uh, a few of the things that dogs really can do the most wonderful example of intelligence uh, with dogs are the dogs which are trained for seeing eye. Yeah. And if anyone can say that dogs are dumb and watch one of those seeing eye dogs work, and, uh, well, I just can't agree with him at all. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, you see, it's all with you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
pay it all. Well, Louie, uh, tell us about your farm in Iowa. What kind of a farm is it? Well, it's a, it's a stock farm. It's mostly cattle and, and cattle and hogs is the main goal. But we raise uh, corn and beans and oats and a little wheat for the chickens and alfalfa. And is, there, is there money in farming? Well, if there wasn't, I wouldn't be here today. Where would you be? Uh, well, I'd probably be out working every day. You don't living. regard that as work? On well, a sure it's work. But I'll tell you why we have a farmer has over most city people. I'll tell you why. If I want to work, if I want to work 24 hours, I can work 24 hours. If you want to punch a clock for eight hours and you miss an hour or so in the morning, you're out. But if I oversleep, I can work an hour over in the evening, I can make it up. If I have a rainy day, I can go to town all day. When it gets good, I can work two days in one. I got it over you. I can put you in the factory, Mr. Marks, and, and you run a machine. Not so loud. My sponsor's liable here. Well, <laughs> I don't care for your sponsor. I'm, I got the floor now. Well, I, I do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about a bride, Louie? Uh, a bride? Do you have any ideas on uh, what you'd like if well, you get married? Uh? Yes, sir. I, I, I like a little beauty, but beauty's only skin deep, and the other fellow said, for Lord's sake, skin her. But we'll not do that tonight. <laughs> Some people try to live on love. They try that for about six months. They find out that doesn't work. But we have a sign in our little restaurant down home. It says, if your wife can't cook, don't divorce her. Keep her for a pet and eat here. But who wants to keep her for a pet? <laughs> well, you're sort of a cracker-barrel philosopher, aren't you? <laughs> more, more truth and poetry. Last week, it was a couple had a bunch of kids going to school, and one little kid said, I don't like your daddy. He says, why? He said, because he drinks. He said, how do you know? He said, we had him last year. <laughs> Who knows who'll get them next year? <laughs> <laughs> your, judge, your guess is good as mine. It's been a delightful experience talking to you two. <laughs> now it's time to play your bet your life. Mm -hmm. We start you off with a bankroll of $100, and you try to increase it. In the race for the $1,500, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias are still leading with $255. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? You can start off with anything you want. Well, you were worried about starting too high, so we'll start at about $60. About $60. $60. Yeah. What kind of an animal is a Clyde, Clydesdale? That's a horse. That's a horse is correct, huh? Real, real, really teach you. Well, your bankroll is now $160. Now, what do you want to try? You want to go up or down? Well, it's up to you. Well, I thought you didn't want any women to rule your life. <laughs> <laughs> Age, age before beauty. Age before beauty. Say for $50. All right, we'll say $50. $50. What is the name of the huge vulture of the South American Andes? It is one of the largest birds that flies. Oh, the vulture in the Andes. Talk it over. It's part of the vulture family. Pelican? No, that's not a vulture. No, it's a condor. C-O-N-D-O-R. Well, you lost half your bankroll. You now have eighty dollars. All right. Now, what do you want to try? We better take uh, seventy or eighty. Yeah, what do you want let's to do? take seventy. All right. All right. What is the science of ornithology? Talk it over. Oh, bird. Mm -hmm. Science of birds. Study of birds is right. You now have one hundred fifty dollars. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. You can quit or you can proceed. Let's take ninety dollars. All right. Ninety dollars. What kind of animals live in warrens? In where? Warrens. W A R R E N S. Uh, those aren't there. Talk it over. Wrens that live in warrens. Warrens. Some of the bird family, aren't they? Wrens. No, you should have known this, Louie. It's rabbits. And you wind up with one half your bankroll, so you have $75. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Clement Dale. That means, Groucho, that Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, with $255 in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is National Safety Month. Can you see, steer, stop safely? If not, check your car. Check accidents. With a busy driving season here, now is the time to check your car. Be safe by driving a safe car. Last year, over a million people were killed and injured in needless automobile accidents. A good percentage of these accidents would have been avoided 
if the car owners had taken a small amount of time to have their cars checked. And to make sure your car gets a complete safety checkup, there's no better place to take it than to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. His factory-trained mechanics will go over every part of your car that can affect your safety to make sure they are all in perfect working order. Wheels, brakes, headlights, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, taillights, everything you need for safe driving. You'll be surprised how little time and money it takes to keep you and your family safe on the highways. Remember, to be a safe driver, you must be able to see, steer, stop safely. Check your car. Check accidents. Stop in where you see the sign of better service, the friendly sign of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the winning couple, Groucho. Mr. and Mrs. Bob Mathias, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. In the last presidential election, Adlai Stevenson ran on the Democratic ticket. For $1,500, who was his running mate? Talk it over. You got 15 seconds. Is it, uh... Is that... <laughs> well, I don't know. What's the answer you two have decided upon? No, all I know is he's from Alabama, or Southern State, but that's well, all I know. Well, it's John Sparkman. Oh. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, two hundred and fifty-five dollars in the well, quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both Thank of you, you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night for the Groucho Mark Show. And don't miss Groucho on television. Also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> DeSoto Plymouth Dealers salute the great state of Michigan during Michigan Week. Vacation in Michigan, the water wonderland this summer. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Hernando DeSoto. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first? Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories for you tonight. And without further ado, Andy Sanchez and without Lee Whitney, what? further ado. Oh, that's pretty fancy. <laughs> what does that mean? 
Right now, would uh, Lee Whitney and, and Mr. Sanchez come in, please, and meet... Further ado, is this the way you talk in private life, too? <laughs> no, I... No, no, You no, wouldn't no. say that if you were playing poker with three or four or five fellas, would you? I wish I hadn't said it tonight. I... <laughs> and... Fire, further ado. Huh? I sort of like it now. <laughs> and without further ado, Andy Sanchez and Lee You're Whitney. repeating it, huh? <laughs> Andy, uh... <laughs> Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house without further ado. <laughs> Liz Whitney and Andy Sanchez, eh? Lee Whitney. Lee, Lee Whitney, yes. oh. Miss Whitney, obviously I should start with you. Is that okay? Uh, it's not Miss Whitney, it's Mrs. Obviously I should start right where I started. I should stop right here. However, I might as well find out a few things. Uh, without further ado, uh, where, are you, where are you from, Lee? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, huh? Mm-hmm. Wonderful place, Detroit. The sun rises and sets there every day. Did you ever visit the DeSoto factory in, in Detroit? Yes, as a matter of fact, I modeled for the DeSoto company. You don't say, a mm-hmm. DeSoto model, mm-hmm. huh? Men, wouldn't you like to have one of these models in your garage? <laughs> <laughs> what else did you do in Detroit, Lee? Well, I used to model Chris Craft speedboats, and you I did... You modeled speedboats? <laughs> yes. Well, how do you model a speedboat? Well, uh, I used to sit on the, on the boat, you know, when it was in or out of the water, and they used to take pictures <laughs> as to where... You said water, water. that's the secret word, and without further ado, you get $50. (laughs) And here's $50 for you with plenty of ado. (laughs) Now, how how did you say you model a a speedboat? Well, There's I no s- point in saying water again. You've got your fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on the boat. You know, you've seen the girls that wave on the boats. No, uh, no girls no. wave to me. In here. <laughs> <laughs> the only waves I see are the waves that are in the water. Right? <laughs> and they take pictures of the boat while it's in motion and out of motion, uh-huh. and then they put them in various magazines. I see. Well, Andy uh, Sanchez, uh, you. S- it's me, about you. I used to smoke a cigar with that name. <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Sanchez? Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque? Sir. What did you do for a living in Albuquerque, Andy? I uh, sold Carl's shoes. You sold Carl's shoes? And what did he do? Run around barefoot? <laughs> 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 While we're on the subject of shoes, Andy, tell me, do you have a mate? Yes, I do, Groucho. Been married 39 years. Do you have any kids? Yes, I have six grown children, three beautiful daughters, and three good looking young men. Have you been a good father to this uh, large Very man? good. I raised them nicely and advised them instead of using the paddle. What do you mean? You were out in a canoe with them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never uh, spanked them or used a whip or anything like that. You mean after they grew up, you were afraid, huh? <laughs> Somebody once said, never strike your children except in self-defense. Huh? <laughs> well, let's return to you, Lee. When, when did you meet your husband? Well, I met him, well, uh, about 18 months ago when I was a chorus girl. I met him while oh, I was... You were in show business, huh? Yes. What, uh-huh. sh- what show were you with? The Top Banana Show. Really? Oh. Uh-huh. You know, the Phil Silvers, the star of the show, is one of my best friends. Did you know that? Well, I, I thought he might mm-hmm. be. What, what, do you think, what do you think of him? Well, I think he's wonderful. I think he's one of the funniest men in the world, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there goes a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Lee, what did, what did you do in Top Banana? Well, I was the understudy to the lead, the oh? leading lady in Who the show. Who was the leading lady? I don't remember. Well, there were two, Judy Lynn and Kay Ballard. Uh-huh. And uh, I, would, I did a lot of chorus work, too. Mm. I was the girl with the pinwheels. Mm. Uh, they had a, a skit, the very last scene Well, I was the, the, the boy with the telescope in the second uh, row. <laughs> <laughs> What does an understudy do? Could you tell the audience? Because most yes. of them are not familiar with the, the well, theater. Well, an understudy is, uh, has to know the lines and know exactly what the songs are. And she goes usually through rehearsal twice a week with the cast. Mm. And she has to be ready each night on a moment's notice to go on if anything happens. But most of the time she just stands around and waits for the leading lady to uh, break her leg or something. <laughs> <laughs> to go on. Well, how often do they break their leg? Uh, not too often, I'm afraid. No. It's this kind of warmth and loyalty that proves there's no business like show business. 
And anyway, if she broke her leg, she'd still be in the cast. <laughs> well, it's been fun talking to you two, and now let's see how much money you can win. Without further ado, we, we're going to go into the quiz. Remember, we start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. You can stop any time you feel you're ahead of the other couples. Is that clear? You're very yes, clear. Sir. Thank you. Okay, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Okay, 60? 60. All right, $60. $60. One answer between you. Jack Megan and the orchestra are going to play a great tune written by Maxwell Anderson and Kurt Weill. You identify it. Play, Jack. September song. <laughs> September song? That's right. We just wanted to see if they could play it. <laughs> Well, your bankroll is now one hundred sixty dollars. Okay, now what do you want to try? Seventy. Seventy. Seventy dollars. Right. Stranger right. in Paradise is from what Broadway musical? Uh, Kismet. Kismet is correct. Then. Eh? Wow. <laughs> now have two hundred thirty dollars. What do you want to do? Well, I'll what about the eighty dollars now? You want the eighty dollars? Eighty dollars. Wow. All right. Words and music for such great songs as Strike Up the Band, Embraceable You, and Someone to Watch Over Me were written by two famous brothers. Who are they? Oh, dear. Talk it over. Uh, what? Well, can you... Two famous brothers. They wrote Strike Up the Band, Embraceable You, and Someone to Watch Over oh, Me. Oh, my. Um, Two famous brothers. Not Rogerson. Right. Talk it over. Uh, and one answer between. Uh, who is it? Uh, Rogerson Hart? No, it's George and Ira Geishman. Oh, you my. Known that. I should have known. You uh, still have half of your bankroll, so you have $115. And this is your last chance to beat the other couples. You can go ahead or quit. I'm taking the $50 one. All right, the $50 one, I guess. All right, Gus Kahn and Isham Jones wrote this song in 1924. You tell me what it is. Play, Jack. It had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. <laughs> and you wind up with $165. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> Only Plymouth dares to compare. Yes, only Plymouth dares to compare part by part with the other two cars in the lowest price field. Recently, a 1954 Plymouth and current models of the other two best-known low-price cars were taken apart by Plymouth engineers and compared part by part. The findings, published in a free booklet available at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer, prove Plymouth is America's best buy low price car in frame and body construction, safety, comfort and convenience, under the hood. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and get the complete facts in the free eight-page Plymouth booklet. Then go for a ride in a new 54 Plymouth and see for yourself why Plymouth is America's best buy low price car. For example, the Plymouth six-passenger Plaza Club sedan $1,582. Factory retail price at Factory Detroit, Michigan. All taxes, transportation, and delivery charges, license, and optional equipment extra. See and drive the new 54 Plymouth, the only car in the lowest price field that dares to compare part by part. <laughs> We invited some girls who work for an airline to the show, Groucho, and our studio audience selected Miss Mary Whitney to be on the show. Her partner is a married man, Mr. Ben Frank Bell. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> Miss uh, Mary Whitney, eh? Yes, Groucho. I like my work. Uh, you're not married? No, I'm not. Engaged? No. Would you like to wrap me around your little finger? <laughs> I'll get back to you in a moment, uh, Mary. Less than that if I can swing it. <laughs> ben Frank Bell, huh? My friends call me Big-Footed Ben. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those evenings. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Ben? Texas. Texas. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I never suspect that. <laughs> I was going to say New Hampshire. <laughs> You're from Texas, eh? What kind of work do you do, Ben? I do asbestos work. Uh, I cover a hot pipe, boilers, and so forth. 
And then I also cover, uh, put cork and so forth on refrigeration. I cover hot things and cold things. Your work sounds very interesting, Ben. Do you enjoy it? Is that what you've always wanted to do? I have always wanted to do public speaking. <laughs> I know hundreds of jokes and uh, stories, and some of them would do to tell the public. Well, we're certainly glad to offer you an opportunity to speak here as a public speaker. Let's hear one of your stories. Not a long one. Keep it kind of short. Well, for one thing, down in Texas, we always believed in doing things the easy way. If you rush through life, you get to heaven tired. And, and I know my pa had a pond out there, and uh, he stocked it with fish. And we taught those fish to chew tobacco. And then we'd get in a boat and go across this pond dropping out pieces of tobacco. And when we'd get on the other side, we'd get us up some baseball bats and come back along and knock them in the head when they'd come up to spit. <laughs> well, Ben, it's, it's stories like that that'll make you a big success in the asbestos business. <laughs> now, Mary, let's return to you. And I might add, the returns are very favorable. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? Are you a policeman? No, I'm a stewardess for Pan American. Oh, a stewardess. No wonder they strap the passengers down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> do you like flying? Oh, yes, Groucho. There's nothing as romantic as flying. Have you ever taken a close look at a pelican? <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell us about your job. Pretend I'm one of your passengers. What do you do first? Throw me off? No, no, I'd welcome you aboard. I'd you say, are. hello, Mr. Marks. It's nice to have you aboard with us today. Obviously, you've never flown with me before. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. What happens next? And then I'd check to see that all the passengers have their seat belts fastened. Uh -huh. And then uh, I'd make the pre-departure announcement. Now, where do you go in these planes? We cover the Central and South Pacific. I... Uh, for example, go on an Australia trip, I would go to Honolulu, Canton Island, the Fiji Islands, and to Sydney, Australia. Mm. How long does it take you to make a trip like this? It takes me 18 days. 18 days? Mm -hmm. You could go faster than that in a Wilshire bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, Why does it take 18 days? <laughs> the passengers go right through, and it probably doesn't take them over 48 hours, but the crew... You mean that the, the passengers go through without the plane? <laughs> That's what they call jet propulsion, I guess. Was this always your ambition to be a stewardess? I think it was, Groucho. Mm -hmm. Most little girls dream of being a stewardess like little boys dream of being cowboys, I'd say. Well, I'm just a little boy, and I certainly didn't dream of being a cowboy. <laughs> I guess there's something wrong with me. All I dream about are stewardesses. <laughs> Well, it's been fun talking to you two. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $165, and the secret word is water. Let's see how much money you can make. You selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. A hundred. A hundred. Well, you're ambitious. What do you call the teddy bear-like animals of Australia that lives in trees and eats only eucalyptus leaves? Koala bears. Koala bear is right. Well, you now have $200. You know, I think this is the first time since we've been doing this new quiz that anybody has ever taken the $100 question first. Oh. And I admire your confidence and knowledge. Good. Now you have uh, $200. You can quit or you can go ahead. A 90. 90? Yes. Is that all right with yes. you, Mary? Mm-hmm. What is the correct word meaning a baby swan? Baby swan. Uh. Gosling. If you don't know, guess. Go ahead. Gosling. Yeah. No, it's signet. It's spelled C-Y-G-N-E-T, but it's pronounced signet. Well, you uh, still have half your bankroll. You have $100. Now, what do you want to try? Right. 80. 80 or 70. 80. 80. 80? What is the name of the orange and black poisonous lizard that lives in the southwest part of the United States? You ought to know that, then. We don't know guess. Uh, the stinging scorpion. Well, that's oh. one of them. We just... I'm sorry, it's the Gila monster. Oh. Well, you now have $50 left. All right. <laughs> want to bet. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... 50, or shall we go up to 60? 
Sixty? Mm-hmm. What kind of an animal is a Kodiak? Uh, Are you sure? A bear? Okay. A Kodiak is a bear. A bear? A bear is right. (laughs) (laughs) And you wind up with $110. Thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. Thank you, you, Bear. Mr. Fenneman, who's next? Well, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Mr. Louis Murphy, and his partner has an interesting story. She's Miss Frances Kane. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Now, without further ado, Frances Kane and Louis Murphy. Mr. Louis Adu, let's start with you, huh? You're a fine figure of a fellow. I'd say you were about 35. Is that right? Uh, thanks for the compliment, Groucho. Uh, uh, I'll do the same for you someday, but I'm 52, and uh, call me Murph, will you? Call you Murph? That's right. Okay, I'll call you both Murph if you want. To. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, uh, Lewis? Uh, Larimore, North Dakota. Larimore? Well, that's down in the cow country, huh? Well, oil country, huh? It's oil country now, yes. Yeah. Of late. What sort of work do you do? I'm a plant guard. A plant guard? What yes, kind of plants do you guard? Do you chase uh, the daisies away from the bachelor buttons? No, I work for a general plant protection company out on 6900 South Hoover. We have about 500 men doing guard duty. 500 men doing guard duty? Yes, sir. Well, you guard this one plant? There's 500? No, we do industrial guarding, industrial plants throughout the industrial area of Los Angeles and the county and Southern California. Well, tell but us something about we this. We uh, check the windows, the doors, fire equipment, burglar alarms, if there are any there, mm-hmm. or we take care of all entrances, and uh, we listen for strange noises and strange what, silences. What do you, what do you rega- what? You listen, listen for strange silences. Well, how do you hear a strange silence? It's quite you, simple because... You mean if you don't hear anything, you say, what was that, eh? <laughs> Let's see, you are uh, Francis Kane? Okay. Where are you from, Francis? Uh, Bakersfield, California. Francis Kane from Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. I didn't know, realize that they raised Kane in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did. They did, huh? Did you? <laughs> well, How long have you lived in uh, L.A., uh, Francis? Uh, about 30 years. 30 years, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How mm-hmm. old were you when you left Bakersfield, <coughs> Francis? Well... If you want to know my age, I'm in the late 40s. I wasn't crying into your age. I was just just curious to know how old you are when you left Bakersfield. (laughs) But you answered my question. Uh, Do you have a job, uh, Francis, or do you uh, keep house? Oh, I work at the Hollywood call board. I'm a telephone operator. Oh, telephone. It's a telephone secretarial service. Is this a full-time job, Francis, or does it leave you any opportunity to pursue other interests? Like well, betting on the horses. <laughs> well, I take time off now and then, write popular songs. You're a, song ri- a songwriter? Mm-hmm. Is that so? Have any of your songs ever been heard by the public? Yes, as a matter of fact, one of them sold over a million records. Really? What was mm-hmm. the name of it? Stardust? No, it was called uh, Rose of the Mountain. Rose of the Mountain. And it sold a million records? Mm-hmm. How come I never heard of it if it sold that many? I listened to records. Well, it was on the back of Rosemary Clooney's recording of Come Out of My House. <laughs> well, she certainly was lucky to be on the other side of such a big hit as uh, Rose of the Mountain. Huh? I think, uh, two people heard it, and I'm one of them, I think. You heard it? Mm-hmm. Is there much money in your songwriting? Well, there is, is now, finally. I've got a three-year contract after about 15 years. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Huh? Do you write the words or the music? Uh, well, I just write the lyrics. My brother told me when I started writing songs, I'd go for bad to verse, so I guess I did. <laughs> your, brother, your brother is quite a clown, isn't he? He is. <laughs> what does he do, uh, Francis? Is he a well, comic writer? He collects rocks. I think he's got a few of them in his head. (laughs) Francis, in addition to Rose of the Mountain, have you had any other big record sellers? 
Well, I had another one that was on the wrong side of a record. <laughs> it was on the back of Wheel of Fortune. It's called Heart of a Clown. Well, uh, you're apparently the most successful other side songwriter in America. <laughs> I agree with you. Have, you. have you written any new songs, Francis? Well, I've <coughs> been specializing in hillbilly songs. There's gold in them dar hills when you write hillbilly songs. There is. Eh? Well, uh, do you know anything about hillbillies? Or isn't that necessary? Well, I don't think so. What kind of a hillbilly song have you written? Oh, I've written with Cliffy Stone and Tex Williams. And uh -huh. I okay. had one called She Was Pure as Snow, but she drifted. <laughs> well, uh, you, you don't know where she is now. Huh? Could, you, uh, could you sing us a few bars of this uh, song, Francis? I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I can bet Fenneman to bring in a bucket. It wouldn't be any trouble, huh? He used to work in a bucket shop, and it wouldn't be any trouble for Fenneman at all. No. Could you give us the lyrics of uh, of this song? Just a few lines mm -hmm. of the chorus. You can uh, recite it if you don't want one? to sing it. Uh, I like the one about snow? the slush song. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, she, hit, she hit the honky tonks in Kentucky. She hit the taverns in Tennessee. But I want you to know she was pure as snow till she drifted away from me. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing personal in this lyric, is there? Francis? No, I don't think so. Well, I think there. Um, it isn't easy writing successful songs, Francis. Mm -hmm. And I hope someday soon you'll be on the right side of the record and make a lot of money. Well, thank you. Now let's play. You bet your life. You uh, understand how we play this game? Mm -hmm. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple leads with $165. You selected movie quiz, and we start you off with $100. Well, what do you think? Which one do you want? 30, 10, 50, 80, 30. 100? 30. 30. 30. Mm -hmm. Who is the star of the Western picture? Hondo. Oh, John, John Wayne. That's right. <laughs> well, you're on your way. Your bankroll is now $130. Now, what would you like to try? Forty. 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 Who produced such great film shorts as Seal Island and The Living Desert? Walt Disney. Walter Disney is correct. You now have one hundred seventy dollars. Now you can quit or go ahead. Well, we go ahead. Let's just take fifty. You're doing so this way. Fifty. Ethel Merman played the title role of Annie Get Your Gun on Broadway. Who played it in the movies? Uh, Betty Talk it over. What's that? Annie Get Your Gun. Can he get your uh, gun? Betty Hutton. Betty Hutton is absolutely right. You now have $220. You want to quit or go no, ahead? We'll it's try. your last chance to be the other couples. Oh, well, we'll uh, try. Let's try 60. Uh, we... 60. 60 you haven't okay. had. That's a nice okay. round figure. In what successful movie thriller starring Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton was a zither used for background music? Uh, the Third Man. The Third Man is right, Francis. <laughs> and you wind up with $280. Thanks and good luck Thank with you. the Soda Plymouth Dealers. And that means that the songwriter and her partner... With $280 in just one minute, get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. All right, Groucho, here comes the winning couple, the songwriter and her partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Here we are back again, huh? Same day. Now, you probably... <laughs> If you win this money, you can write a song about it, huh? Brother, can you spare $1,000? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide out a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The Bible is three sons of Adam and Eve. Two of them were Cain and Abel. For $2,000, who was the third son? Talk it over. <laughs> What is the Sorry. answer you two have decided upon? I just don't know. Well, guess. Sorry. Cain and Abel. 
Well, I'm sorry. I just don't know. It's Seth, S-E-T-H. I wouldn't have guessed it. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win the quiz, George? Without further ado, tell me. Without further ado, $280 (laughs) in the quiz. That's pretty good. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, got you. Congratulations. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, remember that courtesy is contagious. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is house, H-O-U-S-E. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! I wonder what became of Sally. And Groucho. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. Mr. Fenneman, uh, bring on the first couple. Oh, Groucho, we have some young single people for you. They were chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Miss Ula Anderson and Mr. Charles O'Brien Osborne. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Ula Anderson and Charles O'Brien Osborne. And you're both single? That's right. Yes. Ula? Mm. Is that how you pronounce it? Ula. Ula. <laughs> yeah, the Ula. French have a word for it. Ula la. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know. You're a Svenska? Yeah, I'm Swedish. Yeah. Do you what? speak Swedish? No, but I uh, wish I did. Huh? <laughs> After looking at you, I wish I could speak English. Huh? <laughs> what part of uh, Sweden are you from? Minneapolis? No, I'm from Ocean Speak. What was that? Enschelsvik. Could you, could you spell that for the audience? Or? Well, I can't spell it in English, but I can spell it in Swedish because you don't have those letters. <laughs> well, spell it in Swedish, huh? E-R-N-S-K-E-L-D-S-V-I-K. Now spell it backwards. <laughs> uh, I can't. How long have you been from Sweden? One and a half year. Oh, I see. How old are you, Ula? 
18. Well, you're a very pretty Svenska, huh? <laughs> it's certainly the best advertisement for smorgasbord I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could pick her instead of the herring on that smorgasbord? <laughs> Charles O'Brien Osborne, huh? That's a pretty imposing name. Which one of these three names shall I call you? I'd rather you call me Chad, sir. Chad? That's right, sir. How old are you, Chad? I'm 20. 20? Well, we're both in the prime of life. <laughs> the only difference is they have to prime me to get me started in the morning. <laughs> what do you think of Ula? Oh, I think she's a very nice, pretty young lady. Uh, she has a very cute accent. <laughs> yes, she is. You ought to know. You've been looking at it ever since you've been up here. <laughs> How long have you been in this country, Chad? Uh, two months now. Two months, huh? And what, what, where do you come from, Europe? <laughs> well, it might be Europe to you, but it's North Carolina to me. <laughs> oh, you, you, you come from the United States, huh? Uh, Ula, how long have you been in this country? A year and a half, you said, huh? What made you decide to come to America? Was it Chad? Well... <laughs> was it the equivalent of Chad? Well, it was lots of American pictures I saw, and it was real handsome boys in those pictures. You saw American pictures, and that uh, prompted you to come to America, huh? And now that you've been here a while, would you say these movies were accurate in depicting American men? Well, I think they're a little bit too overdone, though. <laughs> Don't you like them overdone? What do you want, them rare? <laughs> what did you really expect over here, Ola? 60 million Gregory Pecks? Um, you realize what that is? Sixty million pecks is fifteen million bushels. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit too much, though. Chad, let's see if you're a gay, romantic, handsome, typical American male. What sort of work do you do? I work at a service station. <laughs> that's good, honest work. Is this your ambition to someday own your own service station and and service to Sotos and Plymouths? <laughs> uh, no, uh, Groucho. My ambition is to further my ability to be a stuntman. A stuntman? Right. At a service station? What do you do, <laughs> hang upside down from a gas pump? <laughs> That's certainly a curious way to give a gallon, uh, ten gallons of gas to a car, isn't it? What kind of a stuntman are you? I'm a narrow trapeze artist. In the circus? No, uh, that comes under the uh, heading of uh, airplanes. You, I have uh, my trapeze bar that I hook underneath the airplane and then go up a couple thousand feet and hang by my heels and my knees. Well, that's not so exciting at that. <laughs> I did that the last time I flew east. It's called tourist third class. <laughs> what else did you do? Did you just hang there like a bat until the plane runs out of gas? No, after you get through your, uh, your trapeze act, uh, the crowd, uh, they, they don't think you have a shoot on because you're up so high they can't see it. And to put the shoe over pretty big, you're hanging there by your heels, and all of a sudden you just fall off. And uh, That's a good joke on them, It kind of shakes the people up, yeah. <laughs> it really shakes the people up, and you fall a couple of thousand feet, and then you open your chute. Uh -huh. And they, you're all relieved then. Yeah. What is your opinion of American men now, Ula? Do you think Chad is a dashing, romantic, and gay, or do you think he should be locked up? No, oh, I think he's very brave, and I don't think many men would do the same thing as he does. Ula, would you like to go flying with Chad? No, I don't like to ride in airplanes. Well, you wouldn't be riding in the plane. You'd be swinging upside down. <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and now you're going to play your bet your life, and Ula, this is one part of America you'll enjoy. Because you have a chance to make a lot of money here. We start you off with a hundred dollars. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll, and you can quit any time you like. Now let's see how much money you can make. You selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Fifty. Uh, don't kiss her. Just talk it over. <laughs> Fifty dollars. Fifty. All right. Let's see if you can identify this well-known Gershwin tune. Play, Jack. <laughs> Talk it over, and one answer to please. Talk it over. One answer. 
No, it's a very well-known song. It's Embraceable You by George oh. and Ira Gershwin. Well, you lost half your bankroll. You still have $50. All right, now don't get discouraged. What do you want to try this time? That's up to you. I'm going to let you decide. I messed up on the first one. <laughs> well, let's, t- let's try 60. 60? This tune has been a favorite for years. What is it? Play, maestro. Sleepy time, gal. Sleepy time, gal is right. And your bankroll is growing again. You now have $110. Now, what do you want to try? 70. Well, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's say 70. 70. Old Devil Moon and How Are Things and Glockamora are two hit songs from what successful musical comedy? They're two song hits from what successful musical comedy? Played on Broadway for two years. You can talk it over, you know. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Finian's Rainbow. Well, you now have $55. $55, and here's your last chance. I had to beat the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? Let's go for 80. 80. Okay. <laughs> Al Jolson and Vincent Roos wrote this longtime favorite. What is the name of it? Play, Jack. Come on, you stunt man. If you don't know, take a stab. Nothing? Nothing. Well, it's. They play it every time you go to Catalina. It's Avalon. And you wind up with $27.50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Sorry to me. Well, Groucho, we have a high school student from Fairfax High in Los Angeles. He's Henry Aaron. And his partner is a special guest. She's Mrs. Laura Asher. But I'll tell you what, let's see how long it takes you to find out her real identity. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Henry Aaron and Mrs. Laura Asher, eh? Uh, Mrs. Asher, I gather there's something about you Fenneman thinks I should know. I've got a pretty good idea already, but I'll give our listeners a chance to guess. Weren't you in the movies? Yes, about 20 years ago. Well, that's the time I was in it. <laughs> what are some of the pictures you were in? Oh, dear, I wonder if I can remember. Well, name ten. Well, <laughs> King of Jazz. I'm talking Paul about Whiteman. old times. That's right. And um, Finders Keepers, Cat and the Canary. Oh, dozens of others I don't remember. Henry, did you ever see Mrs. Asher in pictures? Well, if she made pictures 20 years ago, I don't think I could have seen her. I'm only 18. <laughs> Don't you watch television? (laughs) If you made movies 20 years ago, and my Hollywood arithmetic is correct, you must be pretty close to 34, is that right? Well, you're getting warm. Well, that's easy around you, huh? Well, you're just as lovely and charming as you were 20 years ago. Thank you. And the whole world knew you as Laura LaPlante. Well, Laura, you were a very big success in the movies. Why did you give up acting? Didn't you like the food in the studio commissary? Well, no, it wasn't that altogether. I I got married, and, um, well, I've never been one of those people who can run two careers at once, and I decided that marriage was the more important. Well, that's a wonderful attitude. I'm sure many of our actresses in Hollywood feel the same way. (laughs) I know one actress who gave up acting eight times just to get married. (laughs) Your husband's a big producer at Paramount, isn't he? Well, I think he'd be very insulted to have you call him big. He's just taken off 25 pounds. (laughs) He looks like a leading man now. But he is a producer at Paramount Studios. I see. Is he tall, your husband? About six feet. Mm-hmm. Can he hit hard? Oh, <laughs> he's never tried it on me. No, I was referring to me. <laughs> what picture is your husband producing now? Well, his last production was Elephant Walk with uh, Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Dana Andrews. 
It was a picture that was made in Ceylon. They took a whole troop of players over to Ceylon, worked there about two months. They use lots and lots of elephants in it, and it's, uh, the scenery is magnificent. I think scenery that most of us have never seen. Mm -hmm. I haven't even seen an elephant. <laughs> And did Elizabeth Taylor, does she ride on the top of the elephant? On the, what do they call that? A howdah? A hoodah? <laughs> what do they is... call that? You're I a don't student. know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not much of a student, are you? <laughs> what is your chief interest in school, uh, Henry? Well, I'm interested in a lot of things at Fairfax High. I guess I'm interested in athletics. I like to watch the sports and... I well... <laughs> That's, that's pretty tiring, isn't it? <laughs> well, sometimes it gets me down, but... Uh, the thing that I'm most interested in, I have been trying to help organize a debating team at our school for a couple of years, and... Nobody will talk? <laughs> <laughs> the wrong people won't. Well, what would you like to be when you finish school, if you ever do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to go into politics, as a matter of fact. I... You want to be a statesman? I think that would be a better name for it, probably. Well, there's quite a difference between a politician and a statesman. Yes, there is. A politician gets elected and a statesman gets defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want, what do you want to be? A well, uh, an alderman? Or? I, 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 I'm very interested in being in the Congress because I feel that there there's a real opportunity to do things, and there are certainly things that could, can be done. Oh, come now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, those boys are perfect. <laughs> well, I... Do you, you know they're only stuck with 200 million pounds of butter? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> that was one of their big schemes a couple of years ago. <laughs> all I know is what I read in the paper. <laughs> Gosh, he <you> wins. <laughs> well, it's been an honor to talk with you, uh, Laura. You don't mind if I call Thank you Laura. Thank you. And you too, Henry. You don't mind if I call you Laura, too. <laughs> I wish I could continue this conversation, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $27.50, and the secret word is house. Now, you, you both know how to play this game, huh? I mm -hmm. would like to say, if I may, Groucho, well, that if, if, we're, may, um, if we're lucky enough to win something, I'd like to have my share go to the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Well, that's, that's very nice of you. Huh? Unfortunately, the, this one influenced the quiz, I think. Uh, <laughs> however, it's, it's a commendable uh, objective, Laura, and uh, I'm proud of you. And I wish you weren't married. Now, let's see how much money you can make. <laughs> let's see how much money you can make. You select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. We'd like to start with the $100 question. A $100 question? Yes. Why, you're as mad as Freddie <laughs> March's head. <laughs> $100. Okay, what is the capital of Puerto Rico? Talk it over. Oh, I wish I was home. <laughs> I don't. Go ahead. San Juan. San Juan is correct. Oh. <laughs> well, you're off to a fine start. Your bankroll is now $200. Now you have $200. Now what do you want to do? Well, the 90? Uh, yeah. Come on down the okay. line. Okay. Okay, 90. 90. What country is known as the Pearl of the Antilles? Antilles, I guess. How is your Antilles, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's A-N-T-I-L-L-E-S. Pearl of the Antilles, we think it's Cuba. By Jove, it is Cuba. Oh, yes. oh. You now have $290. Do you want to try the $80? You can quit, question? you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to proceed. Oh, no, I have a good part here. <laughs> We're not going to quit. <laughs> we'll try the $80 question. $80. 80. The Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea with what other sea? Talk it over. The Mediterranean, I believe, with the Pacific. I'm depending on you, The dear. Pacific Ocean. Think. Caribbean Audience? Sea. Audience? It's the Red Sea. Oh! I was thinking of the Panama Canal. <laughs> oh, well, you, uh, you, you lost it. half your bankroll. You, you still, still have $145. You have $145, and you can quit or go ahead. We'll try for the $70 question. All right. What is the name of the storm-tossed southernmost tip of South America? Tierra del Fuego. Oh, so quick. I hope it was right. 
What did you say? Tierra del Fuego. <laughs> well, I've got uh, Cape Horn here, but you, apparently you know more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and also the boys in the back here, <laughs> who conceive these questions. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Yeah. And you wind up with a bank of two hundred fifteen dollars. Big kiss. <laughs> Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> George, do your duty. Tell me who's next. All right, Groucho. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a fireman. His name is Cyril Bennett. And with him is a housewife, Mrs. Jacqueline uh, Reinerson. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Jacqueline uh, Reinerson, eh? And Mr. Sale Bennett. You're a fireman? Jackson. How's the pinochle game going? <laughs> Jacqueline Reinerson, huh? That's you? You're a very attractive Jacqueline. May I call you Jackie Jacqueline? You may. Everyone does. Everyone does. Uh, where are you from, Jack? Oh, I was born in Paris, France. In Paris, France? Mm-hmm. My oh. mother was a war bride in the First World War. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Do you poly Well, oh, I do, but I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Have you tried getting oiled once in a while? <laughs> How'd you meet your husband? Uh, your husband. Uh, Would you say it was love at first sight? Well, that just depends on how you define love. Well, the definition for love is fairly simple. It's it's an itching that you can't scratch. <laughs> Can you ever hear the seven-year itch? How would you define love, uh, Jack? Well, I feel that um, it's a combination of things, and, um, physical as well as the mental attraction. But uh, I do think the most important thing is that uh, people feel the same about basic principles, things that involve integrity, honor, and uh, consideration, courtesy. And that's love, huh? I think so. Well, I guess it is. I guess that's why so many people marry for money. Eh? <laughs> I'm just an old cynic, that's why. So let's get down to some facts about your job as a fireman. For example, how many fires do you attend in a day? I don't go to any fires. <laughs> not a very hot fireman, I must say. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like to smash furniture? <laughs> Why don't you go to fires? Well, I'm at the fire department alarm board. That's the uh, communications center for the fire department. Mm-hmm. Well, were you uh, formerly uh, just a regular fireman? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I was a fireman for many years. Mm-hmm. Well, when you get a call, how long does it take for a fire truck to respond? Uh, do they get there the same day? <laughs> <laughs> well, when a fireman receives an uh, alarm... He jumps out of bed, slides the pole, and is on the uh, truck within ten seconds. And five seconds later, he's back upstairs trying to find his trousers. <laughs> well, Jackie, let's get back to you. I've discovered after seven years on this seat here that every housewife has outside interests. Uh, what is yours? Well, for the past 18 months, I've been doing everything I can to help Lakewood become a city. Lakewood? You mean there's local Lakewood out there? That's mm-hmm. a pretty big job. How many children do you have so far? <laughs> How do you explain this away? Well, about 18 months ago, there was a move to uh, annex Lakewood to Long Beach. And uh, many of us in the community felt that we were 60,000 young people, intelligent. There certainly should be enough leadership in our community so that we could have local self-government. So we decided to do it, and we did. It sounds like an unusual place, Lakewood. Like it is. What would you say is your biggest asset there? Well, I would say our children are. Mm-hmm. We have uh, 35,000 children whose uh, average age is under six. You have 35,000 children and a total population of 60,000? That's right. And you say Long Beach wanted to annex your town? Mm-hmm. Well, you just keep having children at that rate, and I predict in four more years... Lakewood will not only annex Long Beach, it'll engulf the whole of Southern California. (laughs) 
Well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and I wish both of you the best of luck in the future. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,500, the high school student and Laura LaPlante are leading with $215. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. All right. Seven. Seventy. In mathematics, what do you call the figure three decimal point fourteen sixteen? Three decimal point one four one six. Pi. That's right. What kind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, pi is right. You now have one hundred and seventy dollars in your bankroll. What do you want to try? Six. Sixty? <laughs> what what do you call a fatal spot in the desert? An oasis? Mm-hmm. That's true. You now have $230. You can quit or proceed. Five. We'll go ahead. Fifty? Mm -hmm. What do you call the track left by a ship passing through the water? Wake. Wake. That's right. You now have $280. You can quit or go ahead. Forty. 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 What do you call the complete outfit for a newborn infant? You Lay- ought to know that. Layette. Layette is absolutely correct. And you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And that means that Mrs. Ryerson and the fireman with $320 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Friends, the time is now. Hold on there, Fenneman. What do you mean the time is now? Well, Groucho, now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer if you're interested in buying a good used car at the lowest price and on easy terms. Because this is the time of year your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can really offer you real savings on used cars. The reason is he now has a fine, full selection of all makes and models in a wide price range. Many are one-owner, low-mileage DeSotos and Plymouths that the dealer has serviced regularly from the day they were new. As long as you've gone that far, George, you might as well tell them about the TV sticker. All right. Look for the TV sticker on the windshields of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's used cars. It stands for top value. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. There's one other thing I want to point out. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer plans to be in business in your community for a long, long time. He needs your goodwill and confidence. That's why you can be sure of an honest, fair deal. Remember, the time is now. First thing tomorrow, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer for the finest used cars at the lowest possible prices on the easiest terms available. And here comes the winning couple, Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. All right, here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Only one denomination of United States currency has a picture of the White House on the back of it. For $2,500, which bill is it? Talk it over. You have 15 seconds. All right, what, what's the answer you two have decided upon? The dollar bill. No, I'm sorry, it's the $20 no. bill. So that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz? Uh, $320 in the That's quiz. That's not too bad. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Sorry. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $3,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... 
Just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Friends, adult and child victims of cerebral palsy can become useful, productive citizens in your community. Send your contribution to your nearest cerebral palsy chapter to help pay for the needed treatment and research. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is arm. A R M. Really? You bet your life. Yeah. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me. Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples. Uh, Mr. Fenneman, who's first? Well, Groucho, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Dory Martin and Mr. Dick Hubler. They both have some rather interesting experiences they'd like to discuss with you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Dory Martin, eh? Mrs. Dory Martin. What a shame. <laughs> Foiled again. Where are you from, Mrs. Martin? I was born in Philadelphia, Groucho. Philadelphia. Beautiful Philly from Philly, eh? Have you always lived in Philly? No, I, um, when I was three, my parents moved to Denver, oh, and I call that you, my home. What did you do in Denver? Uh, wish you were in Philadelphia? <laughs> no, I went to school there and uh, did some fashion modeling and some swimming, and my hobby was riding horses. Mm -hmm. I became an equestrian. Were you any good as an equestrian? Well, I did fairly well after I'd practiced quite a while. I became uh, undefeated Colorado State champion of... Um, Three five-gated and hunting and jumping horses for three well, years. It's pretty risky, isn't it? No, not if you're uh, used to it. Well, if we can find a side saddle somewhere, would you care to go riding with me someday? I don't ride side saddle, Groucho. I know that, but I do. <laughs> you're Dick uh, Hubler? That's right, Groucho. Or Hubler, how do you pronounce it? Hubler. Oh, Hubler. Yeah. What is your hometown? I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. What sort of work do you do, Dick? I'm a writer, Roger. A writer? Really? What all have you written besides Home for Money? <laughs> I've written seven novels and uh, numerous magazine articles, even some poetry occasionally. Is that so? Is there any money in poetry? None at all. No. Dick, I'm curious, as an author, do you ever hear from your readers, or once the book is published, is that the end of it, as far as you're concerned? Well, you don't hear on books, but right now I'm hearing from thousands of them. You are? Why? They're demanding their money back? Uh, no, but in the uh, February issue of Coronet, I wrote an article called Dogs Are Dumb. And uh, ever since then, things have been happening. They, uh, it seems everyone... You're getting letters from dogs? Uh, no, but uh, I've been getting letters from dog lovers uh, demanding my blood and threatening assault and battery, offering the, the... to... Show me uh, their dogs are smarter than I am. They're pretty sensitive dog lovers, huh? Yeah. You think dogs are dumb, uh, do you, really? Well, I have one myself. I, I'm very fond of him, but I don't think he's very intelligent. Mm -hmm. His, uh... Have you ever discussed uh, you with him? <laughs> <laughs> you think that dogs are dumb, 
Dory? I wouldn't say they were dumb, no. But you think uh, they're as smart as men? <laughs> and some men, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's compare dogs and people. Dory, can your husband sit up and beg? <laughs> no. Does he carry the paper in from the front lawn between his teeth? <laughs> Does your husband ever jump in your lap and let you scratch him around the ears? No. <laughs> now then, does your dog jump on your lap and let you scratch his ears? Yes, he does. Well, that shows your dog is smarter than your husband. <laughs> I'd be glad to do what the dog does for you, but you'd have to get your own paper off the lawn. <laughs> Dick, I happen to live in Beverly Hills, and most of the dogs I see out there are well-behaved, intelligent, and well-groomed. Now, what have you got to say about that? Well, dogs in Beverly Hills generally are, are treated like people. I know, uh, for example, there are some poodles out in Beverly Hills that have what they call poodle parties. They, uh... There are some people out there that have poodle parties. <laughs> <laughs> These are exclusive dog parties, though. You mean the people are not allowed at all? Not at all. They have special birthday cakes of hamburger, hand-painted bones for favors. And they, they amuse each other with uh, their own tricks. Mm-hmm. Usually ends up in a brawl. Too. <laughs> well, that isn't just confined to the dogs in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Have you got anything else to say about the Beverly Hills dogs? Well, a survey a few years ago showed that uh, actually there was more dog food sold there than there was baby food. What's wrong with that? In Beverly, they feed their kids dog food. <laughs> You know some of those kids, you'd understand why. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about dogs tonight, and I think all the dogs who are listening certainly learned a lot about people. <laughs> now let's play your bet your life. You, do you understand the game? I think so. Fine. Well, I wish I did. Now, uh, <laughs> you select a literary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? A $10 one, $40, $80, 100 Seventy. Seventy. Who wrote The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. That is absolutely correct. You now have $170. Now, what do you want to do? What do you think? Eighty. All right. Eighty dollars? The Iliad is one of the two celebrated classics by Homer. What is the other one? The Odyssey. The Odyssey is correct. Huh? <laughs> You now have $250. Sam, I'm getting an education here tonight. Now you have $250. Now what do you want to do? 90. 90? Who wrote Robinson Crusoe? Daniel Defoe. Daniel Defoe is right. Your bankroll now contains $340. You're pretty lucky to be up here with a literary guest. I know. Huh? There's your last chance to beat the other couples. What do you want to do? 100. You can and quit or you can go ahead. Let's try the hundred. A hundred. Sidney Carton is the central figure in which of Dickens' stories? The Tale of Two Cities. Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> and you wind up with $440. Thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth Dealers. Thanks, huh? You know, ever since we presented the lovely DeSoto Automatic, People everywhere have been asking us about one particular feature of this great car. Oh, sure, they wanted to know about power flight fully automatic transmission and remarkable DeSoto full-time power steering. But they also wanted to know about another revolutionary DeSoto feature, DeSoto air conditioning. Well, here's the story. Fresh air is taken in through handsome vents on the sides of the car. It's then filtered, cooled, and dehumidified by the air conditioning unit on a ledge in the rear of your trunk. This unit, by the way, takes up very little usable luggage space. Then the clean, fresh air is blown gently into the interior of the car. Stale air, odors, tobacco smoke are quickly dispelled, leaving the DeSoto interior cool and comfortable. And no matter what the conditions are outside, blistering hot or freezing cold, the temperature inside is always just right, just the way you want it for complete driving and passenger comfort. DeSoto air conditioning eliminates the need for blowy open windows, which do nothing but let in air filled with particles of road dust and dirt. And it's simple to work. Just one simple switch on your dashboard operates the whole system. 
DeSoto air conditioning is available on most DeSoto models as extra equipment. DeSoto air conditioning is just another one of the fine features and added conveniences that enable us to say and prove DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. Next, Groucho, I'd like you to meet Miss Deonto Farnsworth and her partner, Mr. Mel Morrison. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Deonto Farnsworth, you're, you're very, very charming, huh? Thank you. What kind of a name is Deonto? Deonto means carnation in Esperanto. Esperanto? Oh, I used to go down there every summer and watch the bullfights, huh? <laughs> I think it's a lovely little town, don't you? There is no such place as Esperanto. There isn't? No. In that case, I'll have to find some other place to watch the bullfights. <laughs> what is Esperanto? Does it go over or under chili and beans? Esperanto is an international language that's meant as a secondary language to enable people all over the world to understand each other. It's uh, composed of the better parts of all languages. Mm -hmm. What part of the English language did you use? Hello and yes. That's about all you need, really. <laughs> you can even skip hello. Huh? <laughs> Who are you again, if I may be so bold as to inquire? Mel Morrison. Mel Morrison, huh? Where's your hometown, Mel? I'm originally from uh, a little town called Nassau, Minnesota. It's oh. a small wooden shoe uh, Dutch community in Minnesota southwestern part of Minnesota, but I later moved to Chicago, where I spent most of my life. You change your shoes, too, I noticed. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Chicago, you know. Whereabouts uh, did you live there? Uh, I lived down on the south side, right near the White Sox baseball park. Oh. In fact, I was practically raised in the ballpark. I, as a little kid, I picked up pop bottles, sold peanuts, later become an usher, gate man. In fact, I, I did everything in the ballpark but play ball. Mm. You were a good deal like the team in those days. Right? <laughs> what sort of a job do you do? What do you do now? Uh, I'm a crowd engineer. and You uh, engineer I, crowds? Yes, sir. I head a firm here known as Mal Morrison's Crowd Engineers, and we furnish people for public events. You, uh, you furnish crowds, you mean? No, we just furnish the people that handle them. We... Furnish the ticket sellers, the gatemen, the ushers, the guards, parking lot attendants for all types of events, baseball, football, the uh, races, wrestling matches, the sportsman show, all types. Any well, who place. furnishes the crowds? Well, I guess that's up to the management or a good publicity man and I good see. show. Well, it sounds like interesting work. Tell us something about the crowd. Are they all the same? If you've seen one crowd, I suppose you've seen them all, huh? No, I wouldn't say that they were all the same. For instance, you wouldn't expect the same type of crowd that attends a wrestling match to attend the opera. No, I suppose not. I guess people who like grunting and groaning probably don't care much for screeching and howling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and I wish both of you the best of luck in the future. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. We start you off with $100. You try to run it into more than our other couples. Now, you select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. In the race for the $3,000, the first couple won $440. And the secret word is arm. Now, what do you want to start with? I'll start with the 80. Okay. Okay, the 80. How much? The $80. Dollars. $80. I said how much because I want you to talk up. Uh, remember, <laughs> one answer between you. Now. Okay. If Haviland suggests chinaware, what does Fostoria suggest? Fostoria? Crystal? I have the slightest idea. Crystal? Glassware, I guess crystal is right. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. Your bankroll now has $180 in it. Now, you can quit any time you want, or you can proceed. Now, what question do you want to start with? Go ahead with it. Seven. I can't hear Seventy. You. Seventy. Seventy. George McManus is the creator of one of the most popular comic strips of our time. What is it? Maggie and Jake. Maggie and Jake. That's right, Maggie and Jake. You now have two hundred fifty dollars. Sixty. Sixty. What do you call the boats used in the canals of Venice for centuries? 
Gondolas. Gondolas. Gondolas or gondolas is right. You now have three hundred ten dollars. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. You can proceed or you can quit. Shall we go down to uh, say 30, thirty? Okay, thirty. Okay, whose picture? Whose picture is on a one dollar bill? George Washington. George Washington is right. And you wind up with $340. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Well, Groucho, we invited some women who work for the city to our show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Ida Cole. Her partner is a man with an interesting career, Mr. Joe Oakey. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Ida Cole, I'll start with you. Are you a native Californian? No, Groucho. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the Avondale section. Is that so? Uh, you're married, huh? Yes, I am, now, Groucho. What does your husband do? Uh, Groucho, my husband is associated with the May Realty Company as a real estate salesman. Oh. He sells income property in residential homes. Oh, he dishes date, in other words, huh? <laughs> And you're Mr. Jack Oakey, huh? Joe Oakey. Joe Oakey, huh? Are you sure you're not Jack Oakey? <laughs> you're not sure, huh? Do you know Jack Oakey? I heard about him. I don't know him, no, sir. Well, I'll call you Jack Oakey, huh? You don't care, huh? I don't care. <laughs> and you can call me Joe Oakey, huh? Where are you from, Mr. Oakey? Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> How long ago did this event occur? Huh? Uh, 1898, Groucho. 1898, huh? Well, that, that makes you about 39, huh? Easy. Easy. <laughs> That's an easy 39. Are you married, Mr. Oakey? No, I'm single. Do you have a girl now? No, no. Have you ever gone steady with a girl? No. How long would you call steady? I mean, how long have you gone with a girl at one time, huh? About three weeks. <laughs> Three weeks in, in your, since you're 18, 19 years old? Yeah, you never right. went longer than three weeks with a girl? Why not? Don't you like girls? Sure I like girls. You know anything better? <laughs> I, I don't know anything better, and I, I must say I don't know anything worse either. <laughs> What sort of business are you in, Joe? Well, I'm a sort of a salesman. Mm -hmm. Well, that's certainly qualifying it nicely. Huh? <laughs> well, Joe, I'm not in the market for anything, but uh, out of curiosity, uh, what are you selling? Well, right now, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> that's the kind of a salesman I like. <laughs> a real live wire crackerjack salesman. <laughs> well, are you loafing now? Well, right now, I'm not doing anything. You're not? Huh? Well, maybe we can find a job for you, Joe. What sort of work have you done in the past? Aside from not selling anything. <laughs> what sort of work have you done in the past? Well, uh, uh, let me see now. Many, many years ago, I sort of took to the liking of the sea. I was a sort of a merchant marine sailor, Groucho. Oh, like Moby Dick? I don't know nothing about Moby, Moby Dick, but I... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I had quite an experience, Groucho. When I was a kid, I signed aboard a... A cattle boat. Uh, as one of the cattle or as the one of the, <laughs> as part of the crew? As part of the crew. Uh -huh. We had a lot of donkeys on there, mules. Was this the crew, the donkeys? Or? No. <laughs> well, Ida, let's declare a recess for a moment and find out about your work here. Fenneman says you're with the city. What do you do, Ida? That's right. I'm a recreation director with the Department of Recreation and Parks. Well. And... Um, I have a center, one of the centers in the city. It's called the Marvin Youth Center. Mm -hmm. And um, we well, have... could you direct some recreation my way? Uh, where do you do your directing? Outside the pool hall? <laughs> no, we have, uh, we have a building that we have um, an auditorium where we have basketball and, and sports and dancing and such. Okay. I've been at a city playground, you know. I go no, down I there didn't. two or three mornings a week with my daughter, Melinda. She's only seven. And then she picks me up around five, and I'm ready for bed. <laughs> well, what are some of the activities you have to offer at these playgrounds? Yeah, haven't you got something for fellas of my age group, like hopscotch? I mean, without the hops. Well, we have, uh, 
We do have activities, and I think something you might be interested in is our weightlifting program. We well, have a lot I, of I men might. There. If they'd promise not to drop me, I'd be willing to... Uh, <laughs> I used to be a dumbbell at the local gymnasium. Joe, I've got my second win now. Let's continue your story. Now, what is your present ambition, Joe, aside from being first in line at the unemployment office? <laughs> Well, I uh, kind of like to write jokes. You do? Uh, well, so would I, but I haven't been doing very well tonight, I must say. <coughs> well, just don't lose your place in line, Joe. Have you ever tried uh, Have you ever tried writing jokes? Well, I wrote about three or four jokes. I sold some of them to some big comedians, you know. You did? Like who? Like you. <laughs> you sold me jokes? Not you, but several big ones like you. I don't uh, want to mention their names, you know right. what I mean. I don't buy any jokes, at least not from strangers, Joe. I, I bought a joke from a stranger once, and after I got home, I found it had over 100,000 miles on it. This joke. <laughs> the, the, the fellow who sold it to me said it used to belong to a school teacher in Pasadena. <laughs> you know, I always like to encourage uh, potential Joe Millers or Mark Twain's. Joe, could you give us an example of one of your jokes? Well, uh, how much will you pay me? Well, that's a pretty good joke right there. Joe. <laughs> Joe, don't you have any free samples? Well, yeah, I got one here if you like it. it I'll right? tell you what you do, Joe. What? If if your joke gets a big laugh, yeah. I'll give you five bucks. Now, you go ahead. And I'll let the audience judge. Well, this is a story about uh, an income tax uh, party who uh, paid his income tax. And... So far, it's not very funny, Joe. Well, I'm not you? finished yet. <laughs> no, but they finished with me. <laughs> And uh, he kind of figured that he'd had a rebate coming, and he uh, had uh, written a letter to the Internal Revenue Groucho, and they, uh, in turn, answered him uh, in this manner. They said, Dear sir, we're in receipt of your letter, and uh, you're right about having the uh, rebate enclosed fine check in the sum of one cent. And he went over to the bank, and he said to the teller, I'd like to have this check cash. And the teller says, How do you want it? Heads your tails. <laughs> <laughs> I've certainly got a bigger laugh than anything I've said tonight. <laughs> that's that's a. As a matter of fact, I sort of like that joke, Joe. Now, what are you what are your plans for the immediate future? How about the five dollars? <laughs> Well, Joe, it was, it was so unusual to hear a laugh here tonight that I'm going to give you the five dollars anyhow. I'm going to frame this, but I want your autograph on there after the show. Well, I've been framed uh, for less than... <laughs> Well, it's been a laughable experience talking to you two, and Joe, I wish you lots of success in the future. Now, let's see how much money you can win. In the race for the $3,000, our first couple, Mrs. Martin and Mr. Hubler, are still leading with $440. You selected movie quiz. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Talk up. $70. $70. For $70, what male star had his first big success a few years ago in the title role of Golden Boy? William Holden. William Holden is correct. You now have $170. Now what do you want to do? $80. $80. Who plays the leading role of the Mountie in the latest version of Rosemary? Howard Keel. Is it Howard Keel? You learned this in a playground at a <laughs> ripper park? <laughs> I like to go to movies. Is that correct? Yes, that <laughs> I didn't is correct. See the Howard Keel but... is right. Huh? Yeah. You now have two hundred fifty dollars. Take ninety. Ninety. Who played the title role in the Eddie Cantor story? Keith Brazell. Keith Brazell. Keith Brazell is right. 
You now have $340 and in it, your bankroll. And here's your last chance to be the upper, other couples. What are you going to go for? Take $100. A hundred $100. Who produced and directed Roman Holiday? Roman Holiday, um, I don't want to... Help her, Joe. Who Help. produced and directed it was, um, William Wyler. William Wyler is right. <laughs> Wind up with four hundred and forty dollars. You better give her a big hug, Joe. Huh? You know, I took a look at her. I said, "You are smart. You do the talking. I don't know if I'm not." <laughs> you wind up with four hundred and forty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto oh, Plymouth Dealers. You. You're a smart guy. Thank you, Joe. And that means that we wind up with a tie for the big question tonight. The couple was just here, and Mrs. Martin and the writer, Mr. Hubler, with $440 also. And in just one minute, they'll all get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Well, Gacho, here are the two winning couples all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. We've given them each a card to write down their answer on, and of course, if both couples get it right, we'll split the money between them. All set? All right, here we go for $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Are you ready? Mary Geneva Dude, D-O-U-D, or Dowd, was the maiden name of the wife of one of our presidents. For $3,000, who married Mary Geneva Dowd? <laughs> There's the writer's solution. This is President Buchanan. Yeah. No, that's that's wrong. What 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 is this? this Abraham is, uh, Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. That's wrong. Yeah. That's too bad. Well, I don't. It is Mary Geneva Dowd. Is she's Mamie? That's Dwight D. Eisenhower's oh. wife. <laughs> That's a dirty trick, but that's the way it goes on our show. Huh? <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth three thousand five hundred dollars. Well, you lost the big money, all of you, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Well, each couple won four hundred and forty dollars. Well, in the quiz. that's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $3,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When you stop, park to stay parked. Set the parking brake and remove the key. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is chair. C-H-A-I-R. Really? You bet your life. It's great.
Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Who's he? Oh, that's me. Oh. Well, here I am again with $3,500 for one of our couples. Tidy sum, huh? It certainly is. Gentlemen, who's first? Groucho, we uh, invited some delivery men to the show, and our studio audience selected James Walker to be a contestant. His partner is Mrs. Mary Carr. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Mary Carr and Mr. James Walker, huh? Mayor of New York, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Carr, we, we get friendly in a hurry around here. You mind if I call you Mary? No, I'd like you to. Okay, now where are you from, Mary? <laughs> uh, well, I was born in Philadelphia and raised in Germantown. Okay. Mary, would you mind if I asked how old you were? I realize I might get slugged, but I think our listeners are always interested. <laughs> There's one time in a woman's life when she doesn't mind telling her age. I was 80 last March. Really? Well, you're a very good-looking uh, 80, uh, Mary. Thank you. You can help me across the street anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, how old are you? 29, Groucho. Where are you from? I'm from Highland Park in Detroit, about four or oh. five miles from the DeSoto plant. Oh, do you work for the DeSoto people? No, I don't. Okay. What sort of work do you do? I work for United Parcel Service. What kind of a racket is that? Well, that's a delivery system. Uh, we have about the best in the United States, I guess. Uh, we deliver for retail. That's wholesale. enough. He's a, pa- he's a parcel man, all right. <laughs> he's all wrapped up in his job. <laughs> Are there any special requirements for getting a job with your outfit? The main one is you have to be honest. Well, that's a pretty stiff requirement, isn't it? Uh, let's forget it, shall we? How can they tell you're honest before they hire you? They can, but if you're not honest, they'll find out soon enough. I suppose the company gets a little suspicious when the delivery man hires a chauffeur to drive his truck. <laughs> There's always one way to find out if a man's honest. Ask him. And if he says yes, you know he's crooked. <laughs> Mary, let's converse with you. Now, let's see. You, you say you're from Philadelphia? Mm-hmm. Did you go to school there or work oh, there? I went to or? school. I graduated from the normal school as a teacher. Oh, you were a school teacher in mm-hmm. Philadelphia? Is that so? How long did you teach in Philadelphia? I didn't teach. I'm just a school teacher gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did the truant officer catch you hanging around the pool room? <laughs> what do you I mean did... you went wrong? Oh, I became an actress. You became an actress, eh? Well, I, I hope that's what they called me, anyhow. I went on the stage. <laughs> Were you in any Broadway plays? Oh, yes. Some of the Hoyt plays, uh, Alabama, the Cherry Pickers. Texas Steer, were you in that? Mm-mm. Wasn't that one of the Hoyt plays, eh? Yes, I think it was. Yeah, yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Way before your time. You think so, right? Mm-hmm. You're very flattering. Not only that, but you can't be a day over 50, Mary. <laughs> you tell that to all the girls. <laughs> It's true. I tell it to a few men, too. Huh? <coughs> Were you in any big shows that our audience might remember? Oh, well, not stage show. I did the um, a Mother and Over the Hill in the silent days, you know, way Over back. the Hill of the Poor House? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. so. How long ago was that? Well, it was at least in 20. Is that many? You're sort of the fairy godmother of television, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> I'll Your it. pictures will be seen for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. My grandchildren call me up and say, Nanny, you're wrong. <laughs> I bet they have new respect for you now, don't they? They do. What kind of parts did you play in pictures, Mary? You didn't always play mothers, did you? Well, I was a mother about 200 times or more. That'd be a good title for a movie, you know. Yeah. I was a mother 200 times. <laughs> I was a mother 200 times for the FBI. <laughs> you say you were a mother in 200 movies? 
Did mm. you enjoy playing this role so many times, Mary? Oh, uh, well, it got to be rather boring, Groucho. Mm. Would you like to play a huzzy in the pictures? Uh? Oh, no. <laughs> I couldn't be wicked at 80. <laughs> Mary, it hasn't slowed me up any. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, Mary, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Let's see. Now, you select a dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with a $10 question or a 50 or a 100 any guy, anything you want. But one answer between. Them. Well, it be. How about 70? 70, you want? Is that all right you with you? You know your dictionary? Is that all right with you? <laughs> Which part of the dictionary do you know, Jimmy? The outside or the inside? The outside, probably. <laughs> All right. What do you call the person who gives the parting address at a graduation? The valedictorian. The valedictorian mm. is correct, huh? And you now have $170. Now, what do you want? Well, we might as well go on. We have nothing to lose. 80? 80. What it's do you right call the edge of... What do you call the edge of cloth woven to prevent raveling? A selvage. Selvage is correct. You now have $250 in your bankroll. You're pretty lucky to have a partner like that, Jimmy. I sure am. (laughs) Now what do you want? the inside. Why not? not, Well, let's go up. No, you're going down. You want 90? (laughs) Well, let's see how well you listen to this show. What does the word encomia mean? Uh, E-N-C-O-M-I-U-M. It's a, uh, a praise. That's right. Uh, That's good enough. Stop right there. You now have $340. You know, I mispronounced it a few weeks ago on this show. For some curious reason, I said ecomium instead of encomium. And I got a ton of mail. All right, now, how much have they got? $340. Now, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? A hundred. A hundred? What is a more common term for a colliery? C-O-L-L-I-E-R-Y. Well, that's a mine. It's a coal uh, mine. Don't go any further. <laughs> and you've gone all the way. You wind up with four hundred and forty dollars. Yes, well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. And You're pretty you true. Very, very <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is National Safety Month. Can you see, steer, stop safely? If not, check your car. Check accidents. With the busy driving season here, now's the time to check your car. Be safe by driving a safe car. Last year, over a million people were killed and injured in needless automobile accidents. A good percentage of these accidents would have been avoided if the car owners had taken a small amount of time to have their cars checked. And to make sure your car gets a complete safety checkup, there's no better place to take it than to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. His factory-trained mechanics will go over every part of your car that can affect your safety to make sure they are all in perfect working order. Wheels, brakes, headlights, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, taillights. You'll you'll be surprised how little time and money it takes to to keep you and your family safe on the highways. Remember, to be a safe driver, you must be able to see, steer, stop safely. Check your car. Check accidents. Stop in where you'll see the sign of better service, the friendly sign of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Groucho, we have a housewife for you, Mrs. Jerry Shipley and her partner. Why do you always say you have a housewife for me? <laughs> <laughs> I should change that, I guess, shouldn't yeah. I? Uh? <laughs> Let's take every... I'll take every other housewife, huh? All right. Uh, you there... take an occasional housewife. <laughs> I have a housewife, Groucho, <laughs> and her name is Mrs. Jerry Shipley, and her partner is Mr. William Vaughn. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Mr. William Vaughn and Mrs. Jerry Gerard Shipley. Mrs. Shipley, I'll start with you. What is your face name? Jerry. Is that short for Geraldine? No, I was christened Jerry. You are? How come? Well, it's just an old... Spanish Southern, custom? Yeah, no Southern custom giving girls a uh, boy's name down there. You know any girl's name Hank in the South? I know one named Henry. Imagine being under a magnolia tree in the moonlight with a pretty girl. 
and you turn to her and say, Kiss me, Henry. <laughs> Probably hit you with a plate of corn pone. <laughs> Where are you from, Mrs. Shipley? Well, I usually say uh, Paducah, Kentucky, because people ask so many questions. But well, I should think so. Huh? But it's uh, it's a really uh, it's really a little town called Barlow, near there. I see. And who are you again? I forgot all about. Jerry Shipley. <laughs> you both Jerry Shipley? I think. No, I'm Bill Vaughn. Uh, You're Groucho. Bill Vaughn, huh? You used to pitch for the Cubs, didn't you? No, uh, not not me. No. Well, they had a Vaughn there. Yeah. Oh yes. Several Vaughns. Oh, you related to that Vaughn? None whatsoever. You know, he pitched a 19-inning, one nothing game against Brooklyn some years ago? Well, the Vaughns do great things at times. Uh-huh. <laughs> Have you done anything great that you could tell us about? Well, it depends upon what uh, you may uh, refer to. Well, that's true. Well, where are you from? Well, let's start with that. Huh? Well, I was born in Osceola, Missouri. <laughs> well, that's pretty great, right? And uh, <laughs> moved to... Uh, Oroville, California, when I was six years of age. Oh. What sort of business are you in now, Mr. Bourne? Well, I'm uh, executive vice president, uh, secretary, treasurer, and director of Electrical Products Corporation, manufacturers of neon and xeon signs in the 11 western states and for many of the DeSoto Plymouth dealers in the area. Well, thanks for that information. I'll keep my trap shut for now. (laughs) Of course, I need a job as well as the next fellow. <laughs> the next fellow happens to be a Harpo. <laughs> Did you have any interest besides being a housewife, Jerry? Yes, I do. I have uh, some hobbies. I like interior decorating, and um, I like um, analyzing handwriting or graphology. Is that what it's called, graphology? Yes, uh-huh. I thought graphology was what a politician did. No. Could you analyze uh, my handwriting? Yes. If uh, if I gave you a sample? uh... Okay. Don't look. This will surprise a lot of people who didn't (laughs) didn't think I could write at all. (laughs) Here you are. See what you can do with that, Jerry. And while you're working on it, I'll talk to your partner here. All right. You analyze it. Now, Mr. Vaughn, do you have any outside interests? Yes, uh, Groucho, I'm the illustrious potentate of Amalika Shrine Temple, Los Angeles, ancient Arabic order, nobles of the Mystic Shrine. What are some of the activities of these uh, organizations? We have uh, many charities centered uh, primarily upon the what we consider the world's greatest fraternal philanthropy, Shriners Hospital for crippled children. We have discharged more than 250,000 crippled children who were materially aided or completely cured. I must say, your lives does a great job, Bill. I know all about your work, and I, I congratulate you. It's, you do Thank a you wonderful job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. Shipley, how do you analyze my handwriting? What kind of a fellow am I? Tell the truth. Forget that I also happen to run the quiz. <laughs> Be merciless. Well, you're very inquisitive. Nosy, you mean? Eh? Yeah. Uh, you're witty. You're ambitious. You have a strong will. And uh, if you hadn't become an actor, I think you might have become a scientist. Mm. The don't. way you make some of your characters. I, I don't think so, Jerry. I took one of those scientific tests in the laboratory at UCLA just the other day. And three white rats and a guinea pig beat me to the cheese. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm I'm flattered by your diagnosis, Jerry. It's been an experience talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Let's see what we have here. In the race for the $3,500, the first couple won $440. And the secret word is chair. You select a geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. hundred. A hundred. In what country or principality do you find the fabulous resort city of Monte Carlo? Monaco. Monaco is right. 
off to a fine start, you have $200 in your bank You're roll. You're off to a flying start. Ninety. Ninety. What famous cape on the coast of North Carolina is noted for its bad storms? Hatteras. Cape Hatteras. That's correct. You now have $290. What next? Eighty. What country is directly east of Poland? East of Poland. Russia. 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 Russia is correct. You now have $370. The way things are going over there, Russia is east of everything. <laughs> Seventy. Okay, for $70, what is the former name of the country now called Iran? All right, I think it, uh, I think it should be Turkey. I say Persia. Persia is right, and it's a good thing you stand up. <laughs> and you wind up with $440. Thanks, and good luck in the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Yes, you <laughs> All right, George, proceed. Well, we found a couple of young single people for you tonight, Groucho. Miss Eleanor Green and Mr. Noel Kennedy. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Noel Kennedy and Eleanor Green. Uh, well, you're a fine-looking couple. Neither of, you, um, neither of you married? No. No, I'm not, Groucho. You're not married, eh? Would you like to get married someday, Eleanor? Oh, I think every young girl would. They like a husband and a home and some children. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in the right place. Have you have you got a marriage license with you? <laughs> well, no. Don't you think that's pretty careless? You'd certainly never think of going fishing without a fishing license, would you? <laughs> well, I think that would be a different story. You just, well, you just think it's different, that's all. <laughs> Sucker's a sucker whether he's walking or swimming. <laughs> Well, let's find out something about you two. Eleanor, where are you from? I'm from Beverly Hills, California. Beverly Hills? Yes. Uh, oh. How long have you lived out here? <laughs> 23 years. Mm -hmm. Then you're a natural-born citizen, huh? Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Well, I'm a third-grade teacher, Groucho. You're a school teacher? Yes. Didn't have any school teachers like that when I went <laughs> to school. Uh, you're Noel, Noel Kennedy? Well, I prefer to be called Bill, Groucho. You prefer to be called Bill Groucho? <laughs> kind of a, it's kind I of a silly to be name, isn't Bill it? Period. Huh? Bill Period. Bill Period, you want to be called? <laughs> Bill Kennedy. Bill Kennedy. Well, who is Noel? Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> Noel Confused. Well, that's a nice name. <laughs> Now, where are you from, uh, Noel? I'm from Brisbane, Australia. Oh, Australia. Uh-huh. Well, what is it like in Brisbane? Is... Well, Brisbane's a uh, big, semi-tropical city. It's um, Semi-tropical? Much... Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Well, it's very much like L.A., a little warmer. What sort of work did you do in Brisbane? Well, when I was younger, I went prospecting with an older brother in a place called Mai Mai in when Queensland. you were younger? Mm -hmm. How old are you? Uh, I'm 24. Getting along, Bill. Huh? <laughs> now, where where did you say you went prospecting? Uh, my my, it's a uh, little place outside Bong Bong, which is in male section. <laughs> my my is near Bong Bong. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's right across the river from Walla Walla, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's in male section four nine three, via Morani, via Marion, via McKay, North Queensland, Australia. You must get a lot of mail with an address like that. <laughs> How do you get it? Is it floated ashore in a bottle? Well, if you send a postcard, there's not much room for the uh, message. No, I guess not. What's the reason you never got married, uh, Bill? Shrewd fellow, these Australians. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was always a little cynical, and I could never see any reason in giving away half my food to get the other half cooked. <laughs> Is this the uh, is this the customary attitude by the Australian youths? No, you're just speaking say. for yourself. Huh? Just personally, you and I've changed a lot you, since you, then. You, you don't have this attitude about marriage at, at present, do you? No. 
Well, how recently have you changed? Now, the last three minutes? <laughs> That's a pretty good estimate. Approximately. And you, Eleanor, what would you require in the man that you'll marry? Oh, I'd like him to be nice looking and have a good sense of humor and charming and, oh, he must be intelligent, too. No money? <laughs> Comes later. <laughs> would you say you're intelligent, Bill? I don't know about that, but uh, I had an IQ test once. And you had what? I had an IQ test once, and it rated fairly high. Well, uh, do you know what your IQ is, Eleanor? A psychology teacher once took it, and it uh, came out 140. Well, if it goes any higher, my advice is sell it. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a pretty good uh, IQ, Bill, 140? One four zero. That's very good. One hundred and forty is genius rating. Mm -hmm. And what's yours? Do you know? One hundred and forty-one point five. <laughs> you mean we've got two geniuses up here? No wonder they're not married. They're too smart. <laughs> well, we're going to take an awful beating in the quiz. Bill, obviously you have a lot in common. You, you could have a good time on a brainy day. <laughs> All right, let's play You Bet Your Life. We'll start to off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. In the race for the $3,500, the first two couples are tied with $440 each. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. It's kind of a curious category for two geniuses, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now what do you want to start with? 10, 50, 100, anything? 70. 70? 70. $70. Before Richard Rogers teamed up with Oscar Hammerstein II, he wrote many great songs with another talented lyricist. What was his name? Larry Hart. Larry Hart. Larry Hart is correct. You now have $170 in your bankroll. Now what do you want? 80. Okay, the orchestra will play a longtime favorite. You tell me the name of it. Okay, Jack, play. Jealous. What is it? My partner says jealous. 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 Oh, well, that's I'm... right. Jealous is right. <laughs> you now have $250. $250. You want to go ahead? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. $90. Well, we're on the 90s. Okay. Duke Ellington wrote this song, which became a big hit in 42. You identify it. Music maestro. Okay. What is it? Don't get around much anymore. Well, apparently you do. Eh? <laughs> and you now have three hundred forty dollars in your bankroll. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? One hundred. One hundred dollar. Dollar, yeah. In George White's scandals of twenty-six, that's nineteen twenty-six. <laughs> this song was introduced for the first time. What's the name of it? The birth of the blues. The birth of the blues. Howie, it's a big hit. <laughs> and besides all that, you have four hundred and forty dollars. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. I hope you two are very happy. And that means that all three couples on our show tonight, in just one minute. We'll get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. Magracho, here come the three couples, all of them time for a chance of the DeSoto Plymouth big question. They'll write down their answer on the cards that we've given them, and if uh, all three couples get it right, they'll divide the money among them. Mob scene, Mary. Oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right, here we go for $3,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on the single man, so between you, think carefully, and please no help from the audience. James Fenimore Cooper wrote five historical novels, The Deerslayer, Last of the Mohegans, The Pathfinder, 
the pioneers in the prairie. For $3,500, what was the name given to this internationally popular series of novels? Write it down. Uh, this is a blank. From uh, Miss Carr and her partner. Miss Carr and Jimmy Walker. Yes. Leather Stocking Tales. And what is yours? No, uh, Leather Stocking Tales. Uh, it's this couple here. <laughs> Stick around. You come back here, please. Well, now, let's see. The gentleman, the uh, Shriners organization. Al Malika. Al Malika. And, uh, and Jerry from Paducah. <laughs> Barlow. 30, from Barlow. Well, that's close enough. You win $3,500. And how much in the quiz? They are $440. That's $3,940. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. If you can't control your temper, you can't control your driving. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is clock. C-L-O-C-K. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, George Fenneman. No, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> well, here I am with a thousand doubloons for one of our couples tonight. Well, take off, Mr. Fenneman. Who's first? Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories for you tonight. They're uh, Mr. Harry Myers and Mrs. Alice Braben. Uh, they're waiting outside to meet you. So, folks, you come in now, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common way. It's something you see every day. Mrs. Alice Braben and Mr. Harry Myers. Mr. Myers, you're a fine-looking gent. Well, thank you, Groucho. And uh, you certainly don't look your age. By the way, how old are you? About 86? Uh, yeah. You're uh, missed it about 20 years, Groucho. 
You mean you're 106? No. <laughs> Say, you don't look it. You don't look a day over 66. <laughs> are, you, are you married, Harry? Uh, Groucho, I've been married for 21 years to a very lovely blonde. Is that so? Yes. Is she still a blonde? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, most of the people we get up here have some claim to fame. What is yours? And don't say a scotch and soda because that's an old joke. <laughs> Has anything unusual happened to you? Well, uh, back in 1904, I was the first person arrested for speeding in an automobile. Well, shake hands. I was the last man arrested for speeding. <laughs> I got finished this afternoon. How fast were you hitting it up, Harry? I was driving the 194 Wenton, going at 12 miles an hour in the 10 mile an hour zone, and was chased by a policeman on a bicycle in a speed trap. And he, he caught you? He caught me, and I went to court and paid seven dollars. <laughs> what what sort of work do you do, Harry? Uh, on the Fourth of July, I produce the uh, fireworks show in the Coliseum for the American Legion. And that's your job? You just blow your top one day a year? <laughs> what do you do the other 364 days? Well, that you sell, is... sell sunglasses for, for eclipses or something? Yeah, sure, well, that isn't a one-day job. It takes about six months to build this show. It does? You get it ready for preparation because it's the world's largest fireworks show. Uh-huh. Well, you must get a big bang out of a job like that, don't you? <laughs> Indeed, right. Jess, and you I've just... been doing it for 22 years. And you blow everything up. That's blow everything up in about an hour's time. Mrs. Braben, is that you? Yes. That's a good old Irish name, uh, Braben. Where are you from? Uh... Lapland. Where? Lapland. Lapland. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lapland. Is there really such a place as Lapland? Yes, it's the northern part of Finland. It's in the northern part of Finland? Yes, sir. Is that so? Well, you see, I always, I learned something here tonight. I always thought Lapland was where good secretaries go when they die. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it like in, in Lapland? It must be pretty cold there. Huh? No, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, it can be cold and beautiful. I once had a girl like that. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling tundra and snow-capped mountains and... Rolling dundras? Tundra. Dundra. No, tundra. T-U-N-D-R-A. Has some notion that I can spell. Huh? <laughs> well, you have some refreshing points of view, Alice. Do you have any advice to people in general that you could impart at this time? Oh, one of them is to them should mind their own business. <laughs> no. I didn't mean me. I meant the uh, other mean... people. <laughs> you didn't mean me. Uh, well, I was going to ask your age, but since it's none of my business, I don't... I won't. That, that doesn't concern anybody, Alice. And anybody that wants to know is just an old busybody. Isn't that true? Sure. Now then, who was president when you were born? Do you remember? <laughs> Sir Nicholas II. Who? Sir Nicholas II. Nicholas II? Who's he? The last emperor of Russia. Finland belonged to Russia in those days. Oh, and Lapland was in Finland? Mm-hmm. And where's Lapland now? Is it still in Finland? Yes, sir. And now the whole thing belongs to Russia. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get a rise out of it. <laughs> well, let's hope it doesn't, Nate, and let's hope it remains that way, Alice. Thank you. I would like to go on talking to you two, but uh, it's time to win some money. We start you off with a bankroll of $100. Each time you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. Any time you feel you've won more than our other couples, you can quit. You don't have to take all four questions. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you selected the animal kingdom, and remember, <clears throat> the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? And remember one answer between you, your partners. About $70. Okay. $70. Okay. What kind of birds are widgeons, teals, and mallards? Ducks. Ducks is right. You better talk it over here. You now... She might have another answer. You keep out of this. I one, will, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that you now have $170 in your bankroll. Yes. Now, what do you want to do? You want to proceed? Yes, sir. For uh, 60? Hmm? 80. 80? Okay. okay. $80. $80. What is another name for a hedgehog? Now, just talk it over. Hedgehog. Isn't it a gopher? No, I'm sorry. It's a porcupine. Uh, well, you now have $85. You okay. lost half your bankroll. Well, don't get discouraged. Now, what do you want to try? So for sixty now. All right. For sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. What do you call a young hen? A pullet. 
I'll agree with that. Okay, Pullen is right. <laughs> you now have one hundred forty-five dollars. Now you're climbing again. What do you want to try? Is your last chance to be the other couple? Go for eighty. All right, eighty. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. What is an? No, we had an eighty dollars. Yeah, we. Yeah. Let's go for ninety then. All right. Ninety. What kind of animals are Poland Chinas, Duroc Jerseys, and Chester Whites? Pigs. What is it? Pigs. Pigs is right. <laughs> And you wind up with $235. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for a car with real power, real get up and go, try a DeSoto Automatic with the mighty DeSoto 170 horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine. This DeSoto Fire Dome engine is designed to give you power with maximum efficiency and economy. And the secret is in the design of the hemispherical combustion chambers. These dome-shaped chambers are the reason why the fire dome engine can squeeze every bit of power from your fuel. They enable you to drive your DeSoto automatic on regular gasoline and still get premium performance. Think of that. A 170-horsepower engine operating perfectly that lets you use regular gasoline. I'm sure that once you get behind the wheel of a DeSoto automatic and feel the smooth, powerful response of the mighty DeSoto 170-horsepower V8 engine, you'll say there's no other automobile engine can match it. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. You'll see that the great DeSoto 170-horsepower fire dome engine is just one reason why DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. For the thrill of the ride that will fill you with pride, try DeSoto Remember the dealer who sells the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sells the High Style Plymouth. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we uh, have a man with an interesting job and a housewife. Uh, and here they are, Mrs. Luann Metis, Mr. Charles Carpenter. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, uh, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Luann Metis. Eh? Well, I'm glad to meet us. Eh? And Mr. Charles Carpenter. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Uh, Metis, is that the way you pronounce it? That's right, Groucho. Since you're more my type, I'll start with you. Uh, are you. Are you a local girl? Well, I'm as local as almost anyone in Los Angeles. I'm living here now, but I'm originally from Chicago. Uh -huh. I've been out here three years. You like it out here? I love it out here. How long have you been married? Uh, a little over two years, and I have a lovely 15-month-old son. Uh -huh. What sort of work does your husband do? My husband's an attorney at law, Groucho. A lawyer? A lawyer. Oh, well, I'll bet he's a prince of a fellow, is he? He certainly is. Uh -huh. I'd say you were about 21, is that right? Oh, how flattering. <laughs> Of course I'm flattering. You think I want to get socked with a briefcase? <laughs> However, I'm not too far away, am I? Not too. As a lawyer's wife, how much do you know about his work? Uh, for example, uh, how does he go about preparing a case? Well, he gets the facts from his clients and uh, goes about getting evidence to substantiate their pleas, and then he goes about preparing briefs and then prepares his cases in court or presents them at court, in court. Mm -hmm. Does he win all his suits? Well, he misses one occasionally. Nobody's perfect. Well, he occasionally loses his suits. Huh? Yeah. Well, that explains why he's so careful about his briefs, I guess. <laughs> he just wants to look good in front of the jury. <laughs> What sort of work do you do, Mr. Carpenter? I'm a real estate broker. Really? Well, who have you broken lately? Uh, <laughs> broken anyone? Yes. Uh, myself, prim primarily. Oh, well, is this a full-time occupation, or do you have other interests, like something legal? Well, I do some blind buying at auctions. You mean you're loaded when you buy things, then? <laughs> Not necessarily. Maybe it would help, though. You mean you buy things without knowing exactly what they are? That is correct. That's like getting married. Yeah, almost. <laughs> Well, specifically, what, did, what have you bought at auction? Oh, about a year ago, I bought a uh, lot here uh, at a tax sale on Sunset Boulevard for $250. Property there sells for around $5,000 a foot, doesn't it? That's right. On Sunset Boulevard. How big was this lot? 
18 inches by 150 feet. You're sort of the local boy wonder of Wall Street, aren't you? What did you do with this lot? Did you store flagpoles on it? Uh, no, there was a signboard on it. I figured I'd get some rent out of it. And so I contacted the sign company, and uh, they moved the sign. <laughs> Well, what are you doing with this lot now? I'm waiting for someone else. I'm not paying the taxes, so it'll be up for tax sale again. <laughs> and you plan on buying it again? Oh, no. I'm waiting for someone else to step into my shoes. Oh. Well, what are some of the other shrewd bargains that you've made? <laughs> uh, well, I bought 80 acres of land on top of a mountain uh, up in Ventura County... That sounds like a pretty good deal. Well, there's no road to it. <laughs> Isn't there a helicopter goes up there? Well, it's flat on top, they tell me. And You've uh, never been up there? I can't get to it. <laughs> you bought this sight unseen? Oh, yes. What are some of the other smart bargains you've purchased? <laughs> well, I bought a uh, small lot uh, out in the west side of Los Angeles... Uh, it was three feet by six feet by nine feet. It was in a cornfield. Just a, a good site for a telephone booth, maybe. Well, where do these little lots come from? And don't tell me the stork delivers them. No, uh, they are surveyor's mistakes. And some of them are mine. <laughs> Well, you certainly know your onions, Chuck. You don't know anything about real estate, but you certainly know your onions. Well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $235, and the secret word is clock. Now, you selected movie quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what question do you want to start with? And remember, one answer between you. That's right. $100. $100. One of Hollywood's top directors turned out A Place in the Sun and Shane, among others. What is his name? George. Place in the Sun and Shane. Stevens. George Stevens. George Stevens. George Stevens is correct. You now have $200 in your bankroll. Now what do you want to try? 90? Yeah, William Claude... Duncanfield was the real name of what great comedian? Fields. W.C. Fields. That's right. W.C. Fields is right. You now have $290. Now, what do you want to try? 80. 80. Okay, for $80, who was the original Phantom of the Opera in the movies? Lon Chaney Sr.? Lon Chaney. Lon Chaney. Chaney. Yeah. Serious. You now have $370. Now, what do you want to try? Last chance to beat the other couple. <laughs> What's left? 70? You can quit? Yeah, 70. 70. Here's the cast. William Holden, June Allison, Barbara Stanwyck, Frederick March, Walter Pidgeon, Shelley Winters, Paul Douglas, Louis Calhoun. What's the picture? <laughs> Executive Suite. Executive Suite is correct. <laughs> And you wind up with $440 in your bankroll. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Fenneman, uh, on with the show. Who's next? Well, Groucho, I saw a piece in the paper not so long ago about some people with a very unusual story. So I got in touch with them, and I asked them to come down to our show any night they got a chance, and they're here tonight. So right now, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Yvette Bro and her daughter, Flash. Ladies, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Flash and Yvette Briault, huh? Is that right? Well, you're very charming young ladies. Which one is Flash? I'm Flash. You're Flash, huh? How old are you, Flash? 17. And where's your hometown? I was born here in L.A. Uh, Yvette, if your daughter is 17, how old are you? You must be around 27, huh? No, I'm 41. 41, huh? Mm -hmm. Where are you from, Yvette? Montreal, Canada. Cana oh, I'm a yeah. Canadian. Oh. 
Do you speak French? Oh, yes, I do. I uh, wish you could talk, too. I can barely talk English. You know? <laughs> well, in addition to Flash, uh, Yvette, uh, do you have any other children? Yes, I have 17 children. You bet. I, I didn't. Uh, what are, my eyes are not what they used to be. What, what did you say? Seventeen children. You have seventeen children. Yes, I Yours? do. Yours? Yes, all mine. Well, I'd like to shake hands with you. Thank you. Flash, how mm-hmm. does your father feel about this rather startling turn of events? Is he happy or just dazed? Oh, my daddy loves children. He must be quite a quite a fellow, you bet. What sort of job does he have? Uh, he's working for Columbia Steel Company. He's a machinist. Machinist? Uh, yes. Uh, well, let's find out about your brothers and sisters, uh, Flash. Uh, could you give us their ages? Uh? Well, the oldest one is 23, 22, 21, 29. Well, just, just a moment. <laughs> the oldest is 23? 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, and 2, and the baby's 3 months. <laughs> What happened to four? <laughs> That's all there is. <laughs> well, it sounds like a wonderful family, Mama, well, and you say you to be congratulated. Thank you. It must be quite a job handling 17 children. Do you find it difficult? Well, the first 10 are the most difficult. <laughs> now, there's a statement I'd like to think about. Huh? <laughs> Mama, what do you mean by that, the first 10 are the most difficult? Well, now the oldest one that could help the smaller one now. Oh, I see, I see. Well, it for works. someone who's had 17 children, you, you look pretty healthy. Uh, how do you explain that? Well, before I got married, I was sick and run down, and after I got married, and I have my health back, and now I'm getting stronger all the time. <laughs> Ladies, do you feel sick and run down? Well, how about cooking for a gang like that? How do you manage it, uh, Ma? Well, uh, I mean, uh, I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and and then I serve breakfast. Wait a minute. <laughs> you said clock. That's the yeah. secret word. So there's $50 for you Thank and 50 you. for your daughter. Thank you. And see that she gets it later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're a remarkable woman, you bet. Thirty Thank million you. housewives out there complain bitterly when they can't find a can opener. Mm-hmm. And you're up at six making oatmeal. Mm-hmm. How about food, Flash? Could you give us a rundown on well, the week's we get, supply? We got about four, 42 loaves of bread, 100 pounds of potato, 50 pounds of meat, 25 pounds of sugar, 25 heads of cabbage. Well, do you have a truck to deliver this? Or? <laughs> no. Oh. Well, the grocery store is not far away from the house. There's always a line on the street to go to the store. <laughs> There's always someone running to the grocery That's store right. and someone on his way back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be cheaper to open up your own grocery store? No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> no business. <laughs> well, how do you manage such a large family on one salary? It's a kind of a personal question, but... It, do you, well, you get any yeah. help? Uh? Oh, yes. The older one uh, helps the, to clothe the smaller They're one. They're working? Oh, yes. We have, we have five that work. Five of them are working? Yes, and they all give the money to help the, the kids. Uh, Groucho, I don't want to interrupt anything here, except we have sort of another surprise for you, I think. We not only invited Flash and her mother, but we invited the whole family to our show tonight. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Well, where are they? Well, uh, they're out in the audience. Uh... Will the Briol family please stand up? Uh... Come out, come out, wherever you are. Now I know how Custer felt when the Indians surrounded him. Huh? 
Say, if you ever move out of Los Angeles, Philadelphia's going to be third again. <laughs> Maybe. Well, congratulations, Mr. Briot. You certainly have a wonderful family. Thank you very much. And if you want to dispose of a few of them, I just send them over to my house. <laughs> well, now, what about the quiz? Which of you wants to take part? Now, wait a minute. Any family that has to buy 56 quarts of milk and 50 pounds of potatoes deserves a break. Should we let the whole family answer the yeah. question? <laughs> and I suppose the audience, too, huh? <laughs> now, get together and make up your minds now. Real fast, remember? We start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. And you can quit any time you want. In the race for the $1,000, the lawyer's wife and Mr. Carpenter are leading with $440. Okay, now let's see how much money you can make. You selected culinary quiz. I'll start with 70. What are you going to start 70. with? 70. What do you say, Pop? 70. 70. Yes, yeah, 70. 70, Dollar? What is the name for a thick Italian vegetable soup? Thick Italian vegetable soup? Italian. Goo goo. Goo goo. Ravioli. <laughs> One answer now. Come on. Talk it over. Italian. Take a guess if you don't know. No, it's, it's minestrone. No. Well, this will well, never do. This baby needs milk. Uh, well, you still have $50 of your original 100 All right. Now what are you going to try? No, we're going to try 30 on that. 30 Yeah. The word Bermuda is associated with what kind of vegetable? Bermuda what? Kitten. Hey, you can answer too, you know. Bermuda onions. Oh, okay. I'm, you must have cooked a lot of onions for this gang, yeah, haven't you? Eh? Not Bermuda. Well, you now have $25. I'll take 60 60 What meat do you associate with Yorkshire pudding? Yorkshire. Beef. Beef? Beef is right. Roast okay. beef. Wow. You now have... $85. And this is your last chance to be the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. $100? All right. What do you call the liquid portion of separated sour milk? Skim milk. Sour cream. Sour cream. No, it's way. W-H-E-Y. Jim, I'm sorry. You wind up with $42.50 in your bankroll. Well, forty-two dollars. See, you you didn't earn as much in the quiz as I hoped you would. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the DeSoto Plymouth dealers would like to show you our appreciation for coming here tonight. How about an automatic washing machine? Could you use anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I would like that very much. Would you like that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you want the secret word? Well, we can't help you in the quiz, but we're going to give you ten dollars to each kid for winning the secret word. So that gives you $170 and a washing machine and whatever you won just now in the quiz. $42.50. So you'll get Thank over... Thank you very much. Thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Good night, young man. And that means that the lawyer's wife and Mr. Carpenter with $440 in just one minute get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. And here comes our winning couple, Groucho, the lawyer's wife and Mr. Carpenter, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide out a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Let's see how well you know your states. For $1,000, tell me the name of the capital of Kentucky. That's the only one I can think of. What is the answer you two have decided upon? The only name I can think of is Louisville. Well, you're a racetrack fan, I guess, but it's Frankfurt. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500.
Well, you lost the big money, but you did pretty good in the quiz. How much, George? Uh, $440 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank, Thank you, you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth... $1,500. And on Miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Groucho Marx and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America salute Atlantic City, which this year is celebrating its 100th birthday. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N-A-M-E. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who have on display the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Charming lad, I know him well. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Uh, George, who's first? Well, Gracia, we have a man with an interesting story for you. He's Mr. James Murphy, and his partner is a special guest, Miss Stella Walsh. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Stella Walsh, eh? One of the greatest women athletes of our time. Female Bob Mathias. <laughs> It's an honor to have you here, Stell. Uh, you too, Mr. Murphy. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you, sir. Not quite as big an honor, perhaps, but a, a small size honor. <laughs> Stella, where are you from? Well, I come from a little village in Poland called Wieszbieszhovnia. <laughs> and your name is Stella Walsh? That isn't a Polish well, name, uh, is it? Well, my name really is Stanisława Walaszewiczowna. Well, we want to get ahead of This fit, we never never lose it that fast around here. It's $50 for okay. you and uh, 50 for your partner, Stella. Now, you can quit right now and go home if you want. <laughs> That's it for the night, Stella. Now, uh, you say, what was your name again? I didn't get that. Stanisława Walaszewiczowna. That's good with a heavy cream sauce, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Stella, I know you've been a headliner in sp on the sport pages for a good many years, and... Uh, this is a kind of a delicate question, but how old are you? I'm 43. Are you? Well, you don't look it. And well, certainly like. your actions don't uh, indicate any such age. What are some mm -hmm. of the titles you hold? Well, I hold uh, 40 United States championships, 
22 uh, Polish national titles. Of course, I had the Olympic title and a number of world titles. Was this what, decathlon? Well, uh, pentathlon. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, I had also won the uh, uh, Greatest Woman Athlete of the Half Century Award in a poll. Who did the voting? Uh? It was a newspaper poll. See. Well, one poll would naturally vote for another poll. I mean. <laughs> How many records do you hold, Stella? Altogether, over 100, 100 records in various countries. That's amazing. Mr. Murphy, how old are you? I'll be 51 in August. In August, huh? Mm -hmm. This year? That's right. What is your hometown? Boston, Massachusetts. Oh. Somebody out there from Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> and uh, how long did you live in Boston? Or I did they say Boston? Boston. Boston. It's foggy from Bar Harbor to Boston. Oh. It's uh, foggy from Bar Harbor to Boston? That's what I used to say, but no more. Oh. It isn't foggy anymore? It's just foggy. Oh. How long did you live in Boston? I lived in Boston 20 years, then I went in the Navy for the next 22 years. Oh, you were an ex-sailor, huh? That's right. Have that's you got right. anything to show for it, like a, a boat and a bottle? Well, no, not a boat and a bottle, but I've got uh, 13 tattoos and a p good pension. <laughs> You're a real sailor, huh? 13 tattoos. That's right. right. <laughs> well, your wife must be very happy with you when she can't sleep at night. All she has to do is switch on the light and look at the cartoons. <laughs> When you have an itch, you must be almost as entertaining as Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. <laughs> Stella, let's get back to you. You say you're, you're 41? 43. 43, yeah. But now that you're too old for competition, do you still keep in condition anyway, Stella? Oh, I'm not too old for competition. Uh, just last year, I had won the um, United States All-Around Pentathlon title. And, of course, I expect to defend it this year. And the uh, interesting part about my uh, competitors is that uh, mo most of the contestants weren't even born when I was winning my first championship 25 years ago. <laughs> it's been a very interesting and gratifying experience mm -hmm. talking to you, Stella, and to you too, Mr. Murphy. Thank you. And uh, Stella, I must say I admire your athletic achievements. I can say that because I'm an old sport myself. <laughs> there used to be an old joke about the fellow says, the girl says, uh, fellow says, the girl, he says, do you like uh, indoor sports? And she says, yes, if they go home early. I... <laughs> they go home early, it's no sport. No. <laughs> well, I just threw that in. I give that well, joke. Well, I thought I'd throw mine in, too. <laughs> well, would you mind picking me up and throwing me out? <laughs> Okay, now we're going to play your bet your life and give you a chance to win some real money. We start you off with a $100 bankroll, and if you miss a question, you lose half of it. Now, you selected sports. That's odd. I can't understand yes. that. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't select it. My partner did. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with a 10, 70, 80, 100, anything you want. $70. $70. Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta, and Tony Zale were all boxing champions in which weight division? Middleweight. Right. Middleweight. You now have $170 in your bankroll. $170. Now, what do you want to do? Just a uh, okay with you. Yeah. $80. What is the proposed site of the 1956 Olympic Games? Uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. Australia. That's right. Yeah. Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> You now have two hundred fifty dollars. Now decide on one answer between you. You're going to get in trouble. Now, what do you want? Well, what do you think, Stella? Uh, Miss Walsh, if you don't oh. mind, huh? Uh, do you know her well enough to call us. Well, her we Stella? got two hundred fifty bucks between us. We don't know each other. We're going to split, you know. Yeah, um, how much? <laughs> you lose half. You, you can't take seventy or eighty. Well, take 90, 90 or 50 or 60? 60. 60. 60. 60 dollars. The last Olympic Games were held in 1952. In what city were they held? In Helsinki, Finland. That is right. 
You now have three hundred ten dollars. Now you can quit or go ahead. Last chance to be the other couple. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take the ninety. Ninety. All right. Ninety in fencing. What do you call the protective pad on the end of a foil? Tip. I think, isn't it? I mean the uh, the protective the, pad on the end of a foil. Times. Well, it's a button. Mm. Well, we don't have all our buttons. That's so <laughs> You just lost some of your buttons. Well, how much do they got? Well, they wound up with half the bankroll. They have one hundred fifty-five dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Sorry you blew the last one. <laughs> We invited some doctors to our program tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Dr. Robert Barnes to be your guest. His uh, partner is Miss Frances McGrew. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Dr. Robert Barnes and Frances McGrew. Frances McGrew, is that you, huh? Yes, sir. You're very attractive, if I may say so. Uh, well, thank you. Do you mind if I say so? Not at all. Well, you're very attractive. Now, where do you hail from? Montrose, Colorado. Do you have much hail there? Or? I wouldn't know. I haven't been there for a long time. How long? Well, I came out where, here when I was about four years old. Uh -huh. And uh, you're single, I yes, sir. understand? Yes. How long have you been single? <laughs> Let's get on to the quiz. <laughs> I'll return to you shortly, yeah. Dr. Barnes? Yes, Groucho. Where are you from? New York City, originally. How long have you been out of New York? I've been here in Burbank for 13 years. Doc, almost everyone in your profession is a specialty. What do you specialize in? I specialize in feet. Feet. Well, I'm always happy to meet a man who's at the bottom of his profession. <laughs> you have ptomaine poisoning? Not recently. Well, how come you specialize in feet? After all, there's only two feet to each person. If you were a horse doctor, you'd have four feet to work on. Well, originally I was interested... a centipede, interested... you'd have 18 feet. Originally I was interested in optometry, and I went to Philadelphia to investigate optometry and met my cousin who was studying that subject, and he was finding it rather difficult, and he said, why don't you go across the street to feet? I went across the street to the Temple University College of Chiropathy, and here I'm a chiropodist and love it. What is optometry? Is that the treatment of the eyes? That's right. Oh. They have such fancy euphemisms now for every profession. You don't know what a man is anymore. He can tell you, though. Yeah. They used to call them children's doctors. Now what do they call them? Pediatricians. That's right. That costs an extra $5, you know. Of course. <laughs> Francis, let's get back to you now. Uh, by the way, Francis is pretty formal. Do you have a nickname that I could use here? Yeah? You may call me Fran. Fran? That's fine with me. Fran McGrew. You wouldn't be dangerous, Fran McGrew, would you, uh... You know, Groucho, if I hear that again, I will be. That's what people always give me. Am I dangerous? Well, are you? Well, only at times. I'd say you were about as dangerous as an angry butterfly. <laughs> now, what sort of work do you do? I'm a private detective. As I said, you're about as dangerous as a loaded revolver. <laughs> and whatever it is, I didn't do it. Private detective? How does it happen a pretty girl like you became a private eye? Are you crazy about trench coats? <laughs> I was on the police department, and I sort of branched out from there. Oh, you went in business for yourself, huh? <laughs> Lady cop. Uh, well, you ought to be glad you're teamed with a chiropodist tonight. <laughs> he could be a big help to a flat foot. <laughs> well, who do you work for as a private eye, Fran? I work for Richard S. White & Associates Industrial Security Bureau. What is that? I do all types of investigating. Right now, I'm spotting shoplifters. Uh huh. Well, how does a person go about shoplifting? <laughs> well, I, I think our audience would be interested in hearing a few tips from an expert. <laughs> Not that they need it, but uh, <laughs> let's suppose I was in your store and you happen to notice I had a watermelon under my vest. <laughs> Well, I would keep you under observation all the time you're in the store, and then I'd wait till you got outside. I'd follow you out, and I'm and very... And the watermelon with me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very polite. Uh -huh. I'd walk up to you, and I'd identify myself. And then kick me in the watermelon, huh? <laughs> I'd like to continue talking to you two, but now it's time to play your bet your life. 
I said you learned nothing about uh, chiropody. Is that the... <laughs> yes, I'll be glad to talk to you after the show. Well, I wish you would. Huh? I got one shoe unlaced already. You know? <laughs> Remember, now we're going to start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll, and you don't have to take all four questions. You can quit any time you feel that you're ahead of the other couples. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $155, and the secret word is name. You selected movie quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, one answer between you on everything. Now, what do you want to start with? Ninety. We'll start with ninety. Ninety? Okay. What movie star was formerly the vocalist with Les Brown's band? Talk it over, and one answer. Don't kiss him. Just talk it over, huh? <laughs> what is Doris it? Day? Doris Day. Doris Day. You now have one hundred ninety dollars. Go down to eighty. Eighty. Who won an Academy Award for his portrayal of George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy? Jimmy Cagney. That's right. You now have two hundred seventy dollars. Now you want to quit or go ahead? How about seventy? Seventy. Fred Zinnemann received an Academy Award for the year nineteen fifty-three. What was this award for? Or from here to eternity. That's right, from here to eternity. You now have three hundred forty dollars in your bankroll. Here's your last chance to be the other cops. Sixty. Sixty. Who played the title role in Citizen Kane? Orson Welles. Orson, Orson Welles is right. And you wind up with four hundred dollars. Thanks and good luck to the Thank Soda Plymouth Dealers. Thank you. George, you haven't told me where are you going on your vacation this year? Oh, I don't China? know. China? No, I hadn't planned on China. I thought maybe we'd uh, all jump in the car and go up to Lake Tahoe. You know, I won't be here next week. That's true. This is the final show of the current season. Beginning next week, our summer series starts, and I want you to tell them about it, George. Well, friends, it does start next week. Next week, we begin the best of Groucho, our usual summer series of shows taken from the past. Uh, these are shows that you've written in and asked to see. They're shows that we've learned about through rating surveys and through the praise of the critics. So don't forget, next week, it's the best of Groucho. And while you're all asleep in a hammock this summer, I'll be in Europe. I'm taking my guitar and a gross of Mother Sill seasick remedy. <laughs> and I may take Mother Sill. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be back in the fall. A little older, but just as clever. <laughs> and far wiser, I hope. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some girls who work for a nationally known company to our show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Dolores Buxton to be on the show. And her partner is a very special guest, the former mayor of Los Angeles, Mr. Fletcher Bowron. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Mr. Bowen, I've long been an admirer of yours, and I must say it's an honor to have you here. Thank you, Groucho. Dolores Buxton, I've only been admiring you for the last ten seconds, but you're yeah, welcome, too. Huh? Thank you very much. And if either of you say the secret word, you'll divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Are you two going steady? <laughs> oh, no, not, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> as soon as you get the hundred dollars. Huh? <laughs> what brings you to Los Angeles, Mr. Bowen? Well, I live here. Oh. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's an odd, odd one. Uh, this is staggering. Imagine an ex-mayor who isn't living in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Mr. Byron, how long were you mayor of Los Angeles? Just about 15 years or four terms. Four terms. Was this before or after you were mayor? You say four terms. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I know you were one of the most honest and forthright mayors we've ever had. I'll get back to you in a moment, Mr. Bauer, and you know this is a little difficult uh, with this charmer over here. <laughs> you haven't heard the last of me. Now, Dolores, where, where are you from? I'm originally from Newark, New Jersey. Are you married? No, I'm not, Groucho. You're not. Well, goodbye, Mr. Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. <laughs> Dolores, uh, I know you're very young, uh, so I, I 
Don't imagine you would object to telling me how old you are. No, I'm 24, Groucho. 24. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a nice age. Mm -hmm. And how old are you, Mr. Barr? I'm not being personal, which I usually am. It's just that I like to know the contrast, that's all. Well, you're not personal at all. It's a matter of public record. I must admit that I'm 66. No, you don't look at it. <laughs> Dolores, what sort of work do you do? Well, I'm the manager of a Slenderella salon. A slender fella salon? No, a Slenderella. Slender Slenderella. Slenderella, uh huh. What kind of an outfit is that? And remember, we have Mr. Bauer in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a lot of legal experience. Well, it's a nationally known slenderizing chain of salons throughout the country, and we have salons in every principal city in the world. Is that so? Well, how successful have you been in slenderizing these suckers? I mean, customers, <laughs> or clients. Patrons. Patrons. Uh, I that I read a Every book racket has their own name. Uh, I think that I read. Varies all the way from suckers to patrons. I read a uh, bulletin the other day that said we our patrons had lost thirty six million inches and four and a half million pounds in five years. I see. How many country. patrons have you lost? In that time? <laughs> By the way, suppose I came into your place, uh, could you do anything for me? Our salons are for women. Uh huh. No, I'm asking you personally, I mean. I don't know what you mean, Groucho. I don't know what I mean either, but... Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's nice to run up a blind alley. You never know what to leave it. <laughs> Mr. Barron, what are you doing these days? Well, Groucho, uh, presently I'm, I'm unemployed. Unemployed, huh? I'm sorry to hear that. Have you looked in the classified ads for a job there? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm looking. Under Mayo on it? <laughs> Tell them Groucho sent you? <laughs> what were some of your achievements as mayor of Los Angeles, aside from being able to digest fried chicken? Well, Groucho, I'm afraid that that would sound a little like boasting if I'd uh, attempt to make claims for what I did during the 15 years that well, I served. Well, this is really a case for Ripley. We not only have an honest, but a modest politician. No wonder he lost the election. <laughs> well, it happens I know some of the things that occurred when you were mayor, and you made Los Angeles one of the cleanest cities in the country. You gave us many miles of new highways and new buildings and new industry. Did anything else of importance happen that I forgot? Yes, many things. One thing that uh, comes to my mind is the almost fantastic increase in population just during the time that I was mayor. Now, Fletcher, you're not going to take credit for that, are you? <laughs> No, indeed, but <laughs> certainly uh, many problems resulted because there were about uh, 600,000 additional people uh, moved into uh, Los Angeles. Now, Mr. Barron, do you think the average person has a good grasp of politics? No, I don't, uh, Groucho. Uh, the average person does not uh, appreciate the importance of local government in our American governmental scheme. Too many people uh, act on prejudices and not enough upon facts. Mm. Democracy uh, should begin at home, and people should contribute, make their contribution uh, right in their community. That's true. I think we should pay more attention to our local governments. Uh, do you have any political aspirations for the future, Mr. Bauer? Not so far as running for office is concerned, if that's what you've, you mean. You've had it. Yes, I've served about 30 years and 27 years of that time as elected public official, as judge of the Superior Court mayor, and now I'd like to serve my community and state and nation as a private citizen. Well, I, I get what you need is a park bench and some popcorn for the pigeons, you know. <laughs> the politicians may ignore you, but you'll have a lot of friends among the pigeons. <laughs> Not only that, but I want to assure you, Mr. Barron, you have an awful lot of friends among the people of Los Angeles. And you can count me as two or three of them, eh? Thank you, Groucho. I'd like to continue talking to you, Mr. Barron, and to you too, Dolores, but now it's time to play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, Miss McGrew and Dr. Barnes are leading with $400. We start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose one half of what you have. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, which one do you want? Twenty dollars. Twenty. Mm -hmm. All right. What do the initials FHA stand for? Federal Housing Administration. Well, you didn't even need that. <laughs> right? You now have $120 in your oh, bankroll. what do you want? 
$80 of it. $80. You're going to bet $80. This is an $80 question, in other words, you want. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. John Rolfe, R-O-L-F-E, married what Indian princess? Pocahontas? That's right, Pocahontas. You now have $200. Now you have $200. You can quit or you can go ahead. Uh, we'll say $100. The Roman numeral D stands for what number? Now get together now. One answer between you. Must be on the courthouse, Mayor. 1000 no. Mm. Just half of that, 500. Oh, yes. mm. And you have half your bankroll, 100. Now you have 100. Now there's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to do? I will say 50. 50. What do you call the small percussion instruments held in the hand that are used to accompany Spanish dancers? Oh, castanets. The castanets is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $150. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Well, sorry to win, boys. And that means that Miss McGrew and Dr. Barnes, with $400 in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. And here's the winning couple, Groucho. Miss McGrew and uh, Mr. Barnes, Dr. Barnes, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the patrons, customers, audience. <laughs> Ready? According to mythology, Pygmalion created and fell in love with a statue of a beautiful woman. When she came to life, he married her. For $1,500, what was the name of this statuesque beauty? Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided on? We think it's Aphrodite. I wish it was, but it isn't. Uh, it's Galatea. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they won $400 in the quiz. Well, that's pretty good. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, Groucho. Thank you. From the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember, friends, next Wednesday night at the same time, we'll start our summer series, The Best of Groucho, shows from the past that you've indicated you want to hear again. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember the dealers who sell the outstanding DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. Folks, here's a little rhyme from the National Safety Council. Stop on red, go on green, don't sneak through on the in-between. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. Really? Where did you learn to spell like that, Phantom? It was easy. You'll bet your life. <laughs> It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. 
the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto and the exciting Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only... You can do better than that. Oh, that's me! Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Groucho, we invited some servicemen and their wives to the show tonight, yeah. and Sergeant and Mrs. Douglas Bogart were chosen to be on the show. So, folks, would you please come in to meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Okay. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see now. Uh, Sergeant and Mrs. Douglas Bogart. Are you any relation to uh, Humphrey, Sarge? No. No. Judging from that handsome uniform, I'd say you were in the Marine Corps. Is that right? That's right. Mm, I thought so. You can't fool an expert like me. <laughs> Mrs. Bogart, judging from your uniform, I, uh, I'd say you were a girl. Is, uh... <laughs> That's right. What is your uh, first name, Mrs. Bogart? Is it, is it Baby? No. No? It's Ida. I, oh, Ida. Well, you could be a ba baby. I don't know. What is your first name, Sarge? Douglas. Douglas, huh? Oh. Where, where are you from? Susanville, California. What is your job in the service? General Supply Chief at Camp Pendleton. For a general? I thought you were a sergeant. No, I'm a tech sergeant. My title is General Supply Chief. Oh. Well, well what do you do in your job? Just supply chiefs with uh, generals? <laughs> I issue... You supply generals with chiefs. Uh, you can uh, have it either way, you know. Uh, I issue spare parts for tanks. You're welcome. And I'd say, what is your... <laughs> Never fails. What did you say your uh, job was? I issue spare parts for tanks. Oh. <laughs> what is your hometown, Ida? Uh, I was born in Naples by Man Vesuvius. And is that near here? Uh, well, about 8,000 miles in Italy. Oh, you, you're from Italy. Mm -hmm. you? oh. But I was Isn't raised Ida in Rome. Is Ida kind of an odd name for an Italian girl? Well, it's Ida in Italian, but... Oh, it's like it... Aida? Well, no, there is no A. It's oh. just Ida, I-D-A. Oh. But the American pronounce it Ida. I see. Would you say all Italian girls are as uh, attractive as you are? Oh, they're much prettier. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> no wonder Vesuvius keeps blowing its stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sarge, how did you meet Ida? And don't leave out any of the details. I met her while I was on duty in Rome. Real chatterbox, isn't he? <laughs> Just imagine, Corvatus had the same plot, and it took a million words and five million dollars to tell it. <laughs> He's given us the whole thing. By the way, Ida, how long have you been married? Eighteen months. Do you uh, two lovebirds uh, ever have any arguments? No. <laughs> if they ever have an argument, she's going to have to talk to herself. Huh? <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and apparently the Marines have things well in hand. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Before you go, however, I want you to listen to some good news about a great car. Friends, we sincerely believe that the distinguished DeSoto is the best car on the road today. Best for dependable safety. Best for truly great riding comfort. Best for real ease of operation. DeSoto, you know, is the car that lets you drive without shifting. Just turn the key to start, step on the gas, you go from low to high in one fluid sweep of power. As for safety, well, a light touch of your foot is all it ever takes to stop a fast-moving DeSoto. Because DeSoto power brakes do 50% of the work for you. And Auraflow shock absorbers ease you over the bumps gently as a feather. But friends, the best way to test the great DeSoto is to drive it yourself. Go to your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow and take the wheel behind the mighty 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the brilliant Power Master 6. Both great cars let you drive without sh... Take a date now to drive the world's finest car by the distinguished new DeSoto. And remember, the dealers who sell the distinguished DeSoto also sell the beautiful Plymouth, first truly balanced car in the low-price field. The 
Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected songs by Hoagie Carmichael as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? All of it. He says all of it. <laughs> all of it? Mm-hmm. All right, you're going to bet $20. Let's see if you can identify this song. Play it, Jerry. If you don't know, take a guess. Uh, I thought at first it was Old Buttermilk Sky. It isn't. So. Oh, no. oh it's, it's Old Rocking Chair. I'm sorry. Oh, the Old Rocking Chair will get me? Well, that's a I shame. I'm sorry, but nobody leaves here broke. I'll give you one more question. Who at least you'll spend $25. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a pretty tough one. This isn't Grant's tomb tonight. <laughs> now, listen very carefully. Who wrote the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. You're absolutely right. I didn't even know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Groucho, we have a young lady who's going to be married soon. Oh, and... I'm sorry. To hear <laughs> and a commercial reporter who was chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Uh, Miss Virginia Putnam and Mr. Frank Daniels, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Each year they're getting prettier, and each year I'm getting older. <laughs> well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss Virginia Putnam and Mr. Frank Daniels. Eh? Well, you're a handsome couple. Miss Putnam, may I call you Virginia? Certainly. Well, where is your hometown, Jimmy? I was born in Los Angeles on Glendale Boulevard. Let's see now. Since you were born in the West, I'll just call you West Virginia. How would that be? <laughs> By the way, you say your name is Putnam. Is your father uh, Israel Putnam? No, my father's Fred Putnam. Oh. Do you know Israel Putnam? Well, as a matter of fact, actually, he's my great, 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 great grandfather. Oh, well, he was a great grandfather. You know, <laughs> you know who he was, huh? Yes, I do. He was a famous general in the, the Revolutionary, uh, Revolutionary War, War mm -hmm. and uh, fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill. He did? Yes, he did. <laughs> I know more about your great, 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 great grandfather than you do, huh? And I wasn't even there at the time. I was pretty near. <laughs> at any rate, uh, you've learned something here tonight. Oh, I have. Now, oh, Mr. Daniels, tell us something about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Groucho, but I've been out here in Los Angeles for about two years now. Oh. Well, uh, Virginia, Fenneman says you're going to be married soon. Is that correct? Yes, in about uh, three weeks. Hmm. Well, Frank, you've just got time to catch a boat for Liberia. Oh, no. Not, or would you rather go through with this execution? Well, uh, Groucho, I think you got this uh, little bit mixed up. I'm not marrying her. I've already got a wife and a nine-month-old baby. <laughs> well, I don't understand this. If you're not going to marry Miss Putnam, how did you get up here? Well, the, the audience selected me uh, before the show. To marry this girl and you're married? <laughs> no, no, that's not. They selected me to come on the show. Oh. I'm already married. I see. Well, they had something like that in uh, Arizona or New Mexico not long ago. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have that on our show here. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Frank? Uh, I'm a commercial reporter, Groucho. Oh, well, let's hear you report the commercials on this show. <laughs> we could use something after Fenneman. What is a commercial reporter? Well, actually, I'm a uh, credit investigator. I, um... Commercial reporter, indeed. Huh? <laughs> what a sneaky way to introduce himself. Huh? <laughs> Who do you work for? I work for Dunn and Bradstreet, Groucho. Oh, I know them very well. I've been done by Bradstreet for years. <laughs> Well, exactly what is Dun & Bradstreet? I often see that name in the Wall Street Journal. And... Well, Dun & Bradstreet is a um, mercantile agency that performs a service for its subscribers and the fact that it writes credit reports on businesses so that uh, the subscriber may ship merchandise to a person with some assurance that they will be paid. I see. Well, suppose I want you to check on a company for me. How do you go about it? Well, first you have to tell me the name of the company. Well, it's, it's Dun & Bradstreet. <laughs> Before you get my money, I want to know how shifty you are. <laughs> Virginia, let's get back to you. Do you have a job? Yes, I work for uh, Tom Kelly, the commercial photographer. Oh, I am. 
I'll have to come over and see our studio sometime. We, we could go in the dark room and see what develops, huh? <laughs> That's an old joke, isn't it? Huh? It's very old. <laughs> You don't have to agree with me quite so quickly. Don't you? <laughs> well, forget, there's a quiz coming up. <laughs> what sort of work do you do for this uh, photographer, Ginny? Well, I'm a prop girl, and I assist the stylist. Prop girl? You don't look like any prop to me, Virginia. <laughs> what do you spend most of your time doing? Running around for unusual props, such as uh, old live pheasants or an unusual beer stein or uh, drapes. Sounds pretty dull, isn't it? Well, drapes can be pretty interesting. Uh, for instance, we got the uh, nice red plushy drape that Marilyn Monroe draped her form across on that famous calendar photo. You did that picture there? Mm-hmm. There was a drape in that picture? Yes, there was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've looked at that picture a thousand times and I've never seen a drape. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what year it was. <laughs> well, I'd like to continue this kind of conversation, but it's time for uh, you to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple lost all their money, and the secret word is smile. Run your $20 and no more than our other couples, you'll get a chance at the big money later. And I hope you win because you're going to have two wives and you're going to need every nickel you can <laughs> You selected nicknames of famous sport figures. Here's your first question. Now, how much will you bet? You have 20 bucks and talk it over and one answer between. Can you bet the $20? No. Let's the whole okay, let's bet the whole work scratch. All right, what baseball player was known as the Georgia Peach? Georgia Peach. Georgia Peach. I don't know a baseball player that's coming from Georgia. Um, Think. Think. I don't know. Uh, Scooter Rizzuto. Let's see. Take a stab if you uh, don't know. Oh, Red Rolf. Uh, no, yes. probably the most famous ball player of all time, Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. Well, you got off to a flying start there. Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't even take care of one wife after this. <laughs> well, we're not going to let you leave here broke. We'll give you one more question for 25 bucks. Are you ready? What kind of animal is noted for his monkey shines? <laughs> a monkey. Ty Cobb is right. Huh? <laughs> Put it there. That's how you do it. Well, Groucho, uh, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a college girl, Doreen Davis. Her partner is a special guest tonight, Judge Leroy Dawson of the Los Angeles Municipal Court. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome uh, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Doreen Davis... And uh, Judge Leroy Dawson. Hmm. Can't be a judge. Where's your bench? Well, that's at the uh, courthouse where I've been expecting to see you sometime. <laughs> Dawson, I'm letting you off with a warning. <laughs> Don't let me catch you facing me again, ever. <laughs> Where? Yes, sir. You, girl, tell the court your right name. Doreen Davis. Age? 21. Marital status? Married. Case dismissed. <laughs> Doreen, what is your hometown? I'm from Hollywood, California. I was born in the Hollywood Hospital. You were, eh? Well, that's a nice town. Now, Judge Dawson, by the way, how is it I, I've never been in your court? Are you, are you new around here? No, I've been 22 years on the bench. Really? Have you ever tried hatching any eggs? <laughs> you know, just as a sideline. <laughs> Oh, brother, am I going to be careful the next 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> Judge, what kind of cases do you handle? Oh, we handle a little bit of everything in the municipal court. Uh, I'm in preliminary hearings now. But I... You're only a preliminary judge? Well, at the present well, When do you moment, get to the main but... bout? <laughs> well, uh, traffic, and then we, uh, oh, we handle civil suits, too. Damages, civil suits. Oh, you handle suits, you say? Yes. Well, I wish you'd take this and have it back in the morning. <laughs> Make sure you get the gravy off this. Uh, that's an old joke, isn't it, Judge? Well, I, uh, I I don't want to judge that here. <laughs> You're not going to get an opportunity anyplace else. <laughs> now, Judge, uh, I imagine you must see people as they really are in your courtroom, huh? 
No, I see them as they hope to make me think they are for that moment. Uh, Were you a lawyer before you became a judge? Oh, yes. Is that necessary? That's absolutely necessary. You have to pass the bar examination? Yes. Well, how can you tell if a man is lying to you? Or a woman, for that matter? Well, well, let's leave the women out of it. Yeah. They're hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they lie just to keep in practice. <laughs> oh, I object to that. Well, I object to it, too, but it's true, nevertheless. <laughs> Objection's overruled. Go ahead. <laughs> Do women ever try to uh, kind of give you the eye in order to get a lighter sentence? Well, you know, uh, Mrs. Dawson is here, and I, in my own self-protection, I prefer not to answer that question. <laughs> I, I'll say that if, uh, that if they did, I don't think she got much results. Who did, Mrs. Dawson? <laughs> uh, she was never in court yet. <laughs> I've been waiting for that day, too. <laughs> Doreen, the, the judge is pretty cute, isn't he? Sure is. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Fetterman says you're a college student, is that right? Yes, I am. Uh, which college do you attend? Uh, I go to UCLA. Uh huh. And uh, when did you matriculate? Well, I started UCLA in, right, in 1949. Uh huh. And I've been going there ever since. You continue to go there indefinitely? <laughs> it looks that way. <laughs> Well, uh, you say you're married? Yes, I am. You, you met your husband in college? Yes, I did. I, uh -huh. I met him on a are blind date. Are you going to raise the family at UCLA, or are you <laughs> planning on quitting there someday? <laughs> I guess we'll raise our family there. Oh. You know, I've heard that 97% of you girls at college go there to hook a sucker. Is that, is that true? No, I don't think... No. No? Well, what would you say the percentage is? <laughs> Now, uh, Judge, uh, I was surprised when you said you were in the preliminary division. I remember you very well in connection with traffic cases. How come? Well, we're subject to transfer by the presiding judge. We work one year in traffic, another year in another division. Mm -hmm. Well, would you regard this as a promotion? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You were nationally famous as a traffic judge. Can you give us uh, your general impressions of the average driver who came up before you? Well, you I... You probably think we're all crazy. Huh? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't like to say definitely, but there's some... Uh, <laughs> after you watch people drive and then listen to their explanations, you're liable to get that idea. <laughs> I've learned after listening to about three or 4,000 uh, customers. That's a nice legal phrase. Isn't it? <laughs> well, that's a big... You would think he was running a haberdashery shop. <laughs> it's a big business. Oh, Last year, I had 2,500 customers, and not one of them was satisfied, but we're still doing business. <laughs> well, uh, do you get a cut on all the fines that you slap on these people? No, but that would be a very delicious assignment if that were true. <laughs> oh, I've listened to these folks, uh, and I've found there's a, there's a distinctively Los Angeles technique in drivers, you know? As compared to other cities? Oh, yes. The average Los Angeles driver drives as though he had just bought the street. <laughs> <laughs> he drives, uh, Judge, if you pardon me, but there's uh, more of a chance that they bought the street than the car. <laughs> I think there's something to that, too. At least they can't take the street back. <laughs> they, uh, they drive as though they just bought it. They drive as though their license was a title and not a right to use. They drive right down the center of the street. I don't know why we need three-lane highways. <laughs> they drive right down the center lane, and they have one eye on the rearview mirror and one eye on the speedometer. <laughs> I say, how fast were you going? And they say, 34 miles an hour. <laughs> How do you know that? They say, I was looking at, at the speedometer. So there you are. They have one eye on the speedometer, one eye in the rear view mirror, and what chance has a pedestrian? <laughs> Not until they get another eye. <laughs> so there you go, down the street, and all of a sudden, the guy they've been looking for appears <laughs> in the wrong place. The guy on the motorcycle, instead of being in the mirror, is out here on the left side. <laughs> He announces his arrival, beep, beep, and suggests you pull over. So you take five blocks to find a 
fire plug yes. that you could park it. <laughs> and, uh, well, then they come on the court, and I say, come on up here. And I say, you're charged with doing this. Read whatever it says. And they say, guilty, Your Honor, but... <laughs> what I'm going to get now. I'm going to get a five-minute speech on why this guy is so important socially, you financially. You mean he can break you? No, that's what he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to break him with his fine. No, no, he just wants to explain why he shouldn't be required to pay the prevailing scale. It's all right for everybody else, mm-hmm. but not for him. Well, and then, he's got a point if it's me. <laughs> well, of course, there's that other type that says... Uh, you can't send me to jail. That's a bad statement. <laughs> you know, that always arouses my competitive spirit. Hey, Judge, have you ever thought of going into vaudeville with this man? <laughs> There's one question I have to ask you because I hear this question frequently. I hate to interrupt this. Well, that's this is right. real humorous and good. But uh, is a p- motorcycle policeman obliged to bring in so many people every day? No, they don't get a percentage. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. There's some kind of a theory or rumor that a motorcycle policeman is obliged to bring in so many customers, as you call them, every day. Well, I don't think they are. Of course, uh, I've heard that rumor, too. Yeah. But, it's uh, not true. I don't think it is. They, yeah. there, there is no necessity for a quota. I think that's difficult to keep from bringing in more. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judge, uh, I've been kidding you, but I want you to know we all respect you for your outstanding work as a jurist, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And if I ever have to appear in your court, it'll take six men to carry me in. <laughs> <laughs> and a straitjacket. Now it's time to play You Bet Your Life for a chance at the big money. And you're a pretty smart cookie. You ought to do pretty well up here, Judge. In the race for the $1,500, our first two couples lost all their money. You selected what's the numbers your category. These numbers are associated with familiar titles and phrases. Let's see if you can identify the number. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Go ahead. You want to bet 15? 15, all right. Okay. How many thieves opposed Alabama? Go ahead. Forty. Forty is right. You now have thirty-five dollars. You have thirty-five dollars. How much of this are you going to bet on your second question? Sorry. In the story by Jules Verne, how many leagues under the sea? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand is right. <laughs> you now have sixty-five dollars. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? Sixty. Sixty. All right. How many horsemen of the apocalypse were there? Four. Four is correct. Mm-hmm. You've now climbed to $125. You didn't spend all your time with Chief Justice Marshall, though, <laughs> Judge. <laughs> or even Gladstone. And I don't mean the bag. Here's your last chance to beat the other cops. They have $125. How much are you going to bet? $120. $120. dollars How many reindeer in a visit from St. Nicholas? Eight. Eight is absolutely correct. And you wind up with a grand total of $245. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto <laughs> Plymouth dealers. And that means that Judge Dawson and the college girl will get a chance in just one minute at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Folks, have you seen a Groucho Marx used car special yet? Well, if so, you'll have noticed a great many things about it. First of all, you'll have admired the appearance. Chances are the Groucho special used car you saw was a late model, low mileage car, in perfect shape and ready to roll. Then, if you looked at the price tag, you probably saw that you could buy this Groucho special for a remarkably small down payment, and that all the remaining payments were small, and you could take your time in paying them. That's what that Groucho Special sticker stands for. It means that the car you're looking at was picked by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer as one of his really outstanding buys. A remarkable car, priced to make it the hottest bargain in town. 
Of course, if you looked around, you saw that all the cars the DeSoto Plymouth dealer had on display were unusual bargains. That's because of the overwhelming popularity of the new DeSoto and Plymouth. Your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer has far and away the finest used car bargains in town. Take advantage of his remarkable used car offers. See his unusual stock of fine used cars tomorrow. Pay special attention to that wonderful group of cars known as the Groucho Special Used Cars. We're sure you'll find exactly what you're looking for among the fine used cars of your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, Groucho, here's our winning couple, Judge Dawson and the uh, college girl, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help in the audience. Here it is. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world was the one built by Nebuchadnezzar to please his Persian queen. For $1,500, what was this great wonder called? You got 15 seconds. Now talk it over. The answer you two have decided upon. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon. That is absolutely correct. Oh. Oh. Now, I'll just say to it, if I ever appear before your court, that uh, I, I get a break, Judge. I think I'll, I think I'll award you a free Boulevard stop, sir. <laughs> Right, you win $1,500. Uh, how much in the quiz? Uh, $245 in the That's quiz. That's $1,745. Uh, what are you going to do with all that money? Uh, I can't believe her. <laughs> well, if you don't believe her, we won't get it. <laughs> That'll take care of that problem. Well, thanks to both of you, and congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, peel your eye for the small fun. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is table. T-A-B-L-E. Nice spelling, George. <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> it's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto, and the exciting Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only...
Now, where have I heard that name before? Oh, that's me! <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George, who was first? Well, Groucho, we invited some Chinese girls to our program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Jenny Lee Wong. Her partner is a grandfather, Mr. Jesse J. Gilbert. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Jesse uh, Gilbert, huh? What's the Jesse J. Gilbert, huh? What does the J stand for, Jesse? Don't tell me you're Jesse James, huh? Jesse James Gilbert. Jesse James, really. Why did your folks call you Jesse James? Did your old man take one look at you and holler we was robbed? (laughs) No, I adopted the name myself when I was seven years of age. You admired this crook, huh? Exactly. Uh Has it done you any good being associated with Jesse James? Well, it hasn't done me any harm. <laughs> well, we came out even on that one, Jesse. <laughs> Mr. G., would you mind telling us where you were born? Not only where, but when, while we're at it. Well, I was born 71 years ago on the uh, top floor of a six-story tenement in New York City. Is that so? <laughs> you don't look it. You look like you were born in Philadelphia. <laughs> Jenny Lee Wong. Uh, Miss uh, Wong, uh, whereabouts in China were you born? I was born in Canton, Shakay, China. I came here when I was three years old. You were born in Canton? I mm-hmm. thought that was in Ohio. No, there's a Canton in China, too. Do you have a job, Jenny? Yes, I do. What do you, what do, you do? I work at Manjin Low Restaurant in New Chinatown. Would you say your restaurant is a real good Chinese restaurant? I would say it's the best in the United States. <laughs> Now, Milton Bell told me a joke about a couple driving along the road. They're looking for a Chinese restaurant. And they finally come to one, and uh, the girl says, uh, there's a good Chinese restaurant. Let's go in there. And the, the fellow driving says, how do you know it's a good Chinese restaurant? She says, well, all the Chinese truck drivers eat there. <laughs> That's what he told me. (laughs) Now, suppose I came to your place for a genuine home-cooked Chinese dinner. What would you recommend? Well, to start off with, I would serve you chestnut roll, bake, um, let's see, and then we have ginger chicken. Oh, I knew her. She used to be in the movies. (laughs) Dance with Fred Astaire. Siu Mai. What's that? Siu Mai. It's a Chinese meatball Uh shaped like a tulip. A Chinese meatball? Shaped like a tulip? That's right. I know him very well as Charlie Chan. <laughs> well, uh, Jesse, let's get back to you again. What do you do for a living? I'm 50% retired. Well, wake up and answer my question. <laughs> don't you do anything? Yes, I'm interested in birds. Well, don't give me any. Now, what kind of... What kind of birds do you work with? Bald eagles? They say birds of a feather flock together, you know. No, I teach parakeets how to talk. You teach them how to talk? Well, what do you teach them? Pigeon English? How do you go about teaching a bird to talk? Well, first you make friends with them, which is a very short process. How? How do you make make friends with them? Teach them to perch on your finger. Uh Uh-huh. Then when they're unafraid and friendly, you start in with a very short phrase of single syllable words, such as, uh, hello, baby. Hello. (laughs) I did that pretty good, didn't I? (laughs) Hello, baby. Hello. (laughs) You keep on repeating that until the the parakeet repeats it. Mm Mm-hmm. This is a silly question, but uh, which is easier to teach to talk, the male or the female? You can't teach a female parakeet how to talk. (laughs) Well, if there's anything in reincarnation, I'd like to come back as a parakeet. (laughs) Right brain and all. (laughs) Hello, baby. Jesse, have you always been an elocution teacher for parakeets? 
No, I was once a motion picture producer in Hollywood. Now I know why he's teaching parakeets to talk. <laughs> what happened, Jesse? Why didn't you stay in the movies? Well, when sound came in, I hadn't any foresight. I didn't think there was much of a future to talking pictures. I didn't think they would last. So I quit making motion pictures and took my accumulated capital of almost a million dollars and bought stock. When was this? Just before the crash in 1929. What did the broker say to you? Hello, baby. <laughs> well, I hate to change the subject, but now it's time to play your bet your life. Run your $20 no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected vocabulary quiz as your category. I'll use a word in a sentence, and you tell me the meaning of the word. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Let's say one cent. All but one cent. All but one cent. If you were ludicrous, what would you be? Ridiculous. Right. You know, I have $39.99. All right. How much of this are you going to bet? Let's save a penny. All right. $39.98. All right. If you were penurious, what would you be? Saving stingy. That's right. You now have $79.97. Here's your third question. How much of the $79.97? All but a penny. Okay. If you were indolent, what would you be? Lazy. Lazy is absolutely right. You now have $159.93. Hey, I think you've learned something from those parakeets. <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> To beat the other couples. How much will you bet? All of it. All of it, huh? Right. Have you consulted it uh, with uh, Miss Blom right? over here? Quite all right. Yes. All right. If you were taciturn, what would you be? Quiet. Silent, reticent. Reside. That's good enough for me. Huh? And you wind up with three hundred nineteen dollars eighty-six cents. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealer. Thank you. Now, before we continue, here's something I want you to hear about the beautiful DeSoto. Friends, I'd like to tell you about a few of the most talked about features in the distinguished DeSoto. First, there's DeSoto's tiptoe hydraulic shift that lets you drive without shifting. Just turn the key to start, step on the gas, and you go from low to high in one fluid sweep of power. And DeSoto's full-time power steering makes steering as easy as dialing a telephone. It works for you all of the time, not just some of the time. DeSoto full-time power steering literally takes all of the work out of driving and parking. Then there's DeSoto's mighty 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine, the world's most efficient engine design. You can release a tremendous surge of power with just a touch of your toe. And best of all, this mighty DeSoto Fire Dome engine burns regular gas. There's no need for expensive premium gas. These DeSoto features are a few of many that have set a new standard in driving pleasure for millions of Americans. Put yourself behind the wheel of a DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or a brilliant Powermaster 6. Remember, both great cars let you drive without shifting. Make a date now to drive the world's finest car by the distinguished new DeSoto. And remember... The dealers who sell the distinguished DeSoto also sell the beautiful Plymouth, first truly balanced car in the low-price field. Uh, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we asked for some people with interesting backgrounds tonight, and uh, here they come, Mrs. Uh, Minnie Peterson and Mr. Otto Schmidt. Would you meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Hey, Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Minnie Peterson and Mr. Otto Schmidt, eh? Mrs. Peterson, I'll start with you. What is your hometown? Salisbury, Missouri. Where? Uh, Salisbury, Missouri. I thought that was a hamburger. No, it isn't. That's right on the Wabash Railroad. Oh, you Between... were born on the railroad? No, just off the railroad. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep track of you, that's all. 
Mrs. Pete, I don't want to pry, but could you give us some approximate idea of your age? Our radio audience, you know, can't see you. I and never... they'd like to form some kind of a picture of our contestants. I never tell that, but being as it's you, I'm knocking at the door of 70. Well, how many times? <laughs> how many times have you knocked, Petey? I'm just getting ready. <laughs> What do you do for excitement oh, besides I... going around knocking on doors? <laughs> I have plenty of excitement. I'm a co-publisher of a baseball score book, and I have a baseball team. You so, have a baseball team? Yes, a baseball team. Oh, what do you know about that? I'll just call you Casey, eh? Yeah? Yes, just call me Casey. <laughs> well, what do you play for? Well, I don't play. You mean you quit already? No, well, I have a manager that has, handles the team. My son, Jack, handles the team for me. It's the Peterson Square Master. Oh. And we play uh, professional, I mean, semi-pro ball in the different diamonds around in Los Angeles. Or? No, hardball. Oh, no, hardball. Oh. You wouldn't condescend to softball? No, not softball. Not these boys. What do you do? Uh, you uh, sit in the grandstand and oh, move the team Oh, I have to sit home? in the grandstand. Uh -huh. They won't let me down in the dugout. I have to sit in the grandstand. <laughs> but do you ever get into a, a discussion with the umpire? You know, what they call a rhubarb? Oh, yes, just about every time we play. <laughs> what do you do? Jump out of the grandstand and get oh, out? Oh, no, I just... You know, like this, and oh, use my tongue. Was that very effective? Hmm? Use my tongue. And... Oh. Well, you must have a long tongue. That's all right. <laughs> what is a long tongue? That's 2,200 pounds, isn't it? <laughs> Just about. As opposed to a short tongue, which is 2,000. <laughs> Mr. Otto Schmidt? Uh, yes. That's you. Uh, are that's you me. married? Yeah. Where did you meet your wife? In Copenhagen, Denmark. Oh, well, snuff said. <laughs> <laughs> What were, you, uh, what were you doing in Denmark? I was born there. Oh. I thought you were left over from an old smorgasbord. Or something. <laughs> well, could you tell us the details of your first meeting? Well, I met my wife in, uh, in a church, you know. She was uh, singing in the choir, and uh, I liked the look of her, and uh, I want to meet her. So one evening I meet her in the street and I, she was down from, to buy some cake with a, with a baker and uh, we talked together about seven hours. In the street? Yes. You're lucky you weren't pinched for loitering. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you talk about for seven hours? The expression on your face is far more eloquent than words, Mr. Schmidt. But it's not very practical for radio. <laughs> well, time's up for small talk. Now let's get down to serious business. Right now you're going to play your bet your life. All you have to do is run your twenty dollars into more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. The first couple leads with three hundred nineteen dollars eighty-six cents, and the secret word is table. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected capital cities of European countries as your category. Now here's your first question: How much will you bet? The whole thing. Oh, it. All of it. Me. What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid. Madrid is correct. <laughs> Off to a good start. You have forty dollars. How much of the forty dollars? You... All of it. All of it. All, of it. All right. What is the capital city of Austria? Austria. It's not Sydney. Austria. Austria is um, capital city of Austria. I Take a guess. Oh. One of the most famous cities in the world. Yes. Vienna. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Well, they've uh, lost well, all their money, Groucho. Well, there's no use continuing this quiz. Then I'll give you one question. If you get this right, we'll split twenty-five dollars. What kind of seafood do we get from an oyster bed? Oysters, I guess. Oysters are correct. Eh? Oysters. <laughs> Sorry, didn't win more. Thanks. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, Groucho, we asked if there were any men present tonight with unusual... Men? Men, yes. How dreary. <laughs> men, especially with unusual occupations. And Dr. Harroward Carrington was chosen to be on the show. And his partner is a junior high school girl, Miss Anna Glom. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. 
Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Harroward uh, Carrington and uh, Miss Anna Glom. Anna, how old are you? Twelve years old. That's a wonderful age. I had the best time of my life when I was twelve. I was too old to spank and too young for the electric chair. <laughs> Dr. Harroward Carrington. That's, uh, that's an odd name, Harroward. Where did you get it? Well, it's a historic English character immortalized by Charles Kingsley in a book, Harroward the Wake. Uh-huh. What kind of a doctor are you? Ph.D. Ph.D., yeah. Well, as a Ph.D., what sort of work do you do, Doc? Well, I'm the director of the American Psychical Institute. The American Bicycle Institute? Uh, not bicycle, psychical. <laughs> Although I realize that many people think we psychic investigator have wheels, but that's not necessarily the case. Well, it certainly put me in my place. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Which is right on top of a bicycle. <laughs> well, tell us some more about the uh, Psychical Institute. Well, our work is to investigate various types of psychic phenomena, curious human experiences such as telepathy, clairvoyance, premonitions, telekinesis, cryptosthesia, poltergeists, and so forth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it isn't often a man mentions six words without me understanding one of them. <laughs> you didn't bring an interpreter with you, did you, Doc? Well, the one on my right. Well, I gather that you're interested in ghosts, is that right, Doctor? Yes, uh, ghosts and apparitions and kindred manifestations. Here we go again. Huh? <laughs> well, do you, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yes, uh, though I say that uh, 98% of the phenomena we're called on to investigate turn out to be fraudulent. But now and then we run into something that is interesting. You and me both, Doc. <laughs> Tell us about some of your experiences. What is the most unusual adventure you've had in your work? Well, the most outstanding striking I had was in connection with an Italian medium named Giuseppe Palladino. I had about ten sittings in Naples and about forty in New York. She would come into a room or a laboratory in a university, take her seat in front of a table, both hands... Wait a minute! You said the secret word table, so you get $50? Oh, thank you. And the little woman over here gets $50. <laughs> well, now, would you mind proceeding with this? Uh... When she entered the room, she would take her seat at the table, both hands, feet, and knees securely held. The by who? By two skeptical investigators. Mm-hmm. The seance would begin in bright white light. The t- table would begin to tilt, move, and oscillate, and finally go bang up in the air what we call a complete levitation. Mm. Now, I've seen hundreds of she? those. Seated with she the, remained there? She remained there, mm. visible, held. What uh, was responsible for this levitation? Well, we psychic investigators don't believe that when an object moves in that way that there's a spirit running around the room like a chicken. We think it's due to some mechanism, and that mechanism is an energy which is evolved or extruded from the medium's body, mm. moving material objects in its environment. This was a medium, huh? Eh? Yes, yes. Did you ever strike a happy medium in all the times that you were uh, investigating these cases? <laughs> well, that's perhaps older than some of my ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you realize there's a quiz coming later in which you might win some money. <laughs> well, now, Anna, uh, have you been listening to all this talk about ghosts? Yes. Uh, does it scare you any? A little. Mm-hmm. I sure wouldn't like to spend the night with a ghost in a haunted house. Do you have any hobbies like boys uh, with ectoplasm growing out of their hair? <laughs> well, I am a member of the um, junior high players in Pacific Palisades. It's called the Pied Pipers. Oh. Well, where did you learn acting? Are you going to a drama school or are you just in this... Uh... No, we learn by observing. Uh-huh. Well, you won't learn anything here tonight. <laughs> Not unless you keep your eye on him, huh? <laughs> what are some of the things you've learned about acting? Well, we learned um, to make our own 
sets and stage projection and everything that you learn in putting on a play. What do you mean by stage projection? Well, speaking... Are you projecting now? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen in an amateur theatrical? Well, once we had made our own sets, and it was my very first stage play. It was called um, The Silver Thread. I was playing a princess. And, well, I um, imagine you make a pretty cute princess. <laughs> and um, these goblins were coming to capture me, and this hero was supposed to come in and fight them off and everything and save me. And I, he just didn't show up, and I was looking around for him, and I looked around, and... I looked at the window, and he had been stuck half in and half out with his trusty axe in one hand, and the thing had slipped down on top of it. It's a fine position for a hero. Huh? <laughs> stuck in a window pane, huh? <laughs> well, did he ever extricate him from this predicament? <laughs> Come again? <laughs> Anna, now you know how I felt when he was talking to me. <laughs> Did they ever loosen this character from uh, this window pane? Oh, yes, we managed to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> they did it from the outside. They, I see. They it, was, saw it was an outside job, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hate to change the subject, but now you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, the idea is to run you 20 bucks and the more than our other couples. And you'll get no help from the spirits, you know. <laughs> the first couple still leads with $319.86. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bid you $20. You selected characters from Alice in Wonderland, and through the looking glass is your category. This should be uh, duck soup for you over there. <clears throat> how much are you going to bet on your first question? You... Talk you up your partners, you know. Eighteen. Eighteen? Huh? Nineteen? Nineteen. Nineteen. Alice got into Wonderland by following an animal underground. What was the animal that Alice followed? The rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. That's right. A white rabbit. Huh? You now have thirty-nine dollars. Don't ponder around like that. You gave me a heart failure. <laughs> Here's your third, second question. How much is the 39 you're going to bet? 38. 35. 38. 38. 38. After going through the looking glass, Alice met a pair of fat twin brothers who planned to have a fight. What were they called? Do you know the end of it now? Yeah. Hmm? Really? Yes. Tweedledee and Tweedle. That's Donald. right. That's right. <laughs> Now I have $77. This is like that prince in that play. I have to pull her through the window on each one. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 77 are you going to go for? 76. Talk up, kids. 76. 76. All right. At the tea party with the Mad Hatter, a little animal kept falling asleep. What was this animal? The mouse. The dormouse is correct. <laughs> you now have $153. And here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 153 are you going to go for? 150. 152. All right. 152. 152. What animal said that the time has come to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings? The walrus. The walrus is correct. <laughs> and you wind up with $305. Gee. Thanks and good luck to the soda flavor dealer. And that means that Mrs. Wong... And Mr. Gilbert, with $319.86 in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Fannerman, why don't you tell our audience what's so special about the Groucho Special Used Cars? Oh, well, that's easy, Groucho. They're the finest used car values in town. You see, because the new DeSoto is so popular, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is getting the cream of the crop in fine used cars. All great values, but just a few of the very best are being selected as Groucho Specials. These are the really exceptional used car values your DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks as the best buys in town. My DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks them? You mean he goes all over the country picking out Groucho Specials? Doesn't that keep him pretty busy? No, you know better than that, Groucho. Each DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks out his own Groucho Specials. Oh. 
Well, tell him about the beautiful picture on the windshield of the Groucho Specials, Fenneman. Sure, Groucho. Folks, that's the Groucho Special sticker with Groucho's picture. The Groucho Special sticker is your dealer's way of pointing out the very best used car buys he has. Now you no longer need take a chance when you buy a used car. Just look for the Groucho Special sticker. What's more, your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer can arrange convenient budget payments for you. Friends, visit your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer and look for the Groucho Specials. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. And here's the winning couple, Groucho, Mrs. Wong and Mr. Gilbert, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Of course, you realize, Mrs. Mrs. Wong, that if you win this money, I expect a free meal at the Chinese restaurant. Certainly will. For about 200 people. <laughs> All right, here we go for $1,000. Give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. One of the most important of all drugs is obtained from the bark of the uh, cinchona. C-I-N-C-H-O-N-A. Tree. The cinchona tree. During World War II, 90% of the world's supply was cut off from the Allies. For $1,000, what is this drug from the bark of the cinchona tree called? <laughs> What is the answer you two have decided upon? Quinine. Quinine, Quinine is absolutely yes. right. Huh? <laughs> and a free meal at the Chinese restaurant. Huh? <laughs> That's right. You win $1,000. And how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $319.86 well, in the well, quiz. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 or so to Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. Sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth one thousand dollars. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Twilight doubles traffic troubles. So, double your caution. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Benjamin signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.
And now, here it is, the one, the only... Well, what do you know? That's me! Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. The doctor, I'd like you to meet a couple of guests who have unusual backgrounds. This is Gretchen Alfred and Mr. Fortune Gordine. Would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Mrs. Gretchen Alfred and Mr. Fortune Gordine, eh? Gordine, eh? Mrs. Alfred, I'll start with you. Do you mind if I call you Gretchen? No, I don't. That's my name. Oh. Do you mind if I call you Gretchen? <laughs> that's not my name. Gretchen, that's a very pretty name. That's a German name, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you from Germany? Yes, I was born in Stalo in East Prussia. Where? In Stalo in East Prussia. Oh, well, when did you come to this country? When I was a year old. Oh, you must be very good German, huh? <laughs> and when, when was that? Uh, when, uh, were, when were you a year old? Well, that was in 1923. 1923, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Einstein, Pumpenkopf. Einstein, that makes you 24, is that right? That's right. <laughs> That's I, I hope Dallas is listening. You should make me an ambassador. <laughs> That's close enough. Yes, that's close enough for me, too. When you left Prussia, did you come directly to California? No, my folks settled in DeSoto, Kansas. Where? <laughs> in DeSoto, Kansas. DeSoto, Kansas, huh? And I thought I was being diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> Is there really such a place as yes, DeSoto? there's really such a town. It's just a small railroad town outside. Please, Kansas. no belittling now. <laughs> <laughs> How long since uh, you've been there? Well, I came out here in 1939. Well, it's changed. Yes. Today, DeSoto is the mm. most, it's a beautiful new DeSoto, Kansas. <laughs> the mayor is a wonderful fellow. I know him very well. Mm. His name is Mr. Paul Power Sterling, Jr. <laughs> Let's see, Mr. Fortune Gordine. Are you related to Jack Gordine? No, no sir. Who is Jack Gordine? Is it? <laughs> Where did you get the name Fortune? Very good friend. Is that your last family. name? First name. Oh, it's too bad it isn't your last name. Now, can we had a daughter named Miss Fortune? <laughs> <laughs> All is grist that comes to my mill. Where, where are you from, Fortune? Uh, Fortune, Washington. Oh, is that in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> that isn't near DeSoto, huh? <laughs> are you married? Yes, sir. You are, eh? Yes, sir. You say that very emphatically. Uh, yes, sir. How long have you been married, Fortune? Seven months. <laughs> You're a newlywed, huh? Yes, sir. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Tell us something about your wife. Would you uh, care to attempt to describe her? Well, she's the type of girl, very striking, uh, the type who, when she enters the room, everybody looks at her. So what? <laughs> when a ry rhinoceros walks into a room, everybody looks. <laughs> I didn't mean your wife was a rhinoceros. <laughs> uh, well, she could be, as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen her. Now, uh, Fortune, where have I heard your name? It's a very familiar name. It rings some kind of a bell, but I just can't place it. You may have seen it on the sports page, Jackson. I saw the discus. You, you saw the discus? Yes. Mm -hmm. At who? <laughs> Are you pretty good with the discus? Well, I saw about 194 feet, six inches. Mm -hmm. Is that good? That's a world record. <laughs> Fortune, I, I have seen your name in the sports pages, and I, I'm happy to meet you. Thank you, Jack. We don't have the world champion discus thrower up here every week, you know. Not even every other week. You know. <laughs> Actually, we're, we're proud of you. Very proud of you. Now then, what is a discus? <laughs> <laughs> You're not a discus jockey, are you? <laughs> well, a discus is uh, comparable to two plates laid face to face. And uh, weighs four pounds, six point four ounces. Has a metal ring around the outside, and uh, metal on the inside, and the rest is wood. Mm. It sounds just like the biscuits Aunt Minnie used to make. Right? <laughs> Gretchen, aren't you excited uh, being up here with a celebrity? Oh, I sure am. He's so tall and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking about him? <laughs> You haven't got a chance here tonight, dear Gretchen. Fortune, by the way, has marriage affected your athletic progress? It's, it's made a bum out of a lot of athletes, you know. It's and also a lot of people who aren't athletes. It's taught me a great deal, Doctor. It has. 
Yes, I've worked in the world twice since I've been married. Yes, and you attribute this to the uh, matrimony? Oh, yes. Good food and good wife. Is your wife interested in your track activities? Very much, Doctor. She uh, stands out about 180 feet. She did uh, to start with, and I would throw at her for directional purposes. <laughs> you would throw at her? Yes, sir. And then, of course, to get up to 194 feet, she'd just back up. Uh, well, with an incentive like that, most men could throw a piano. <laughs> You yeah, hasn't got a chance to throw a discus at your wife? Huh? <laughs> Gretchen, let's get back to you. Do, do you ever throw the discus at your husband? No, I don't even know what one looks like. <laughs> you don't know what a husband looks like? No. Or a, <laughs> or a discus? No, the discus. Oh. You have a husband? Oh, yes, I have oh, a husband. Have a, I guess you're not rugged enough to be heaving a discus around, are you? I guess not. <laughs> well, what outside interests do you have? Yeah. Well, I'm the constable of Hadoopa Judicial District in well, Riverside good, County. Good day. I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> You're a constable? Yes, I am. With shades of Jesse James. <laughs> the Wild West is wilder than I thought it was. <laughs> How did you get to be a constable? What do you do as a constable? Well, I have to serve all kinds of papers. Oh, and, uh, did you switch them over to my house one day? <laughs> yeah, I might. <laughs> Even if it's only a subpoena. <laughs> well, I serve those kinds of... Do you? Uh -huh, and I have to summon juries, and then when they have a jury trial, I have to act as the bailiff in the court. How many crooks have you tossed <laughs> in the can since you've been in office? Up to now, none. <laughs> You're getting money on the fourth potential, then. <laughs> well, why haven't you, Gretchen? Well, what a I name for a constable, Gretchen, <laughs> <laughs> huh? I just haven't run across any, I guess. Oh, well, I wish, hiding you, from me. I wish you luck in the near future. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and I'd like to continue, but now it's time to play your bet your life. You run these $20 or more than our other couplings, you'll get a chance at the big money later. You selected the animal kingdom as your category. I'll name three things. You tell me what kind of animal, bird, or fish they are. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? <laughs> All of it. All of it. What are Dalmatians, beagles, and stealing hands? Dog. Dalmatians, dog. Dog is correct. <laughs> on your way, you have $40. Now, how much of the $40 are you going to bet on this one? <laughs> All of it. Sir. All of it. All right. What are Cheviot, Oxford Downs, and Cotswolds? C-O-T-S-W-O-L-D-S. -S. Cheviot, Oxford Downs, and Cotswolds. Talk it over. Yeah. Take a guess. Sheep. What's that? Sheep. Sheep is right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you now have eighty dollars. Yes, that's cheap at half the price. Are you thinking? Let me nervous, eh? They got eighty dollars. All right, how are you this is your third question. Uh, how much of the eighty do you want to try? All of it. All right. What are monitors, iguanas, and chameleons? Lizards? Lizards is right. <laughs> you now have one hundred and sixty dollars. Here's your last chance to be the other couple. How much will you bet? All of it. What are sperms, sulfur bottoms, and bottle noses? Sperms, sulfur bottoms, and bottle noses. If you don't know, take a guess. Um. Mm. He's a uh, part of the animal kingdom. Mm. Mm. Animal, mm. bird, or fish? Fish. Fish. No, it's uh, they're whales. You were close, but not close enough. Oh. Ah. That's a tough question. Well, nobody leaves here broke. I'll give you one more question. You get this right, and you'll split $25. You ready? How many shots in a six shooter? <laughs> six. Six is right. Sorry, you didn't win. Thank you, Doctor. That's too bad. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, news about the big, bright, beautiful event that is happening tomorrow. And tomorrow's the day to see it at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The big, bright, beautiful new 54 Plymouth, the car that introduces to the low price field fabulous new ideas in beauty and high style. Tomorrow's also the day to enter the big Plymouth contest. $25,000 worth of prizes. Your chance to win a new 54 Plymouth, 
or one of hundreds of cash prizes just for telling what you like most about this exciting new car. I like the choice of drives Plymouth gives you. Synchro silent or at slight extra cost, either overdrive or no shift high drive. I like the new Plymouth full-time power steering. Makes parking so easy, and it's surprising how little extra it costs. Yes, the contest's real easy. Lots of fun. And you can get an entry blank containing the easy rules and the full list of prizes tomorrow from your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. But don't put it off. Contest closes Monday, so be sure to go in and see the new 54 Plymouth tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, George, who's next? Well, our studio selected a woman who works in a movie uh, studio to be on the show tonight. Oh, uh, actress? She, uh, well, you'll see in just a minute. She's oh, Mrs. I can't uh, wait, George. <laughs> Lorena Nelson. And her partner is Mr. Robert Disterdick. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet to life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Lorena Nelson and Mr. Robert Disterdick, eh? Mrs. Nelson, where are you from? Colum, Nebraska. Cortland, Nebraska. I was caught in Nebraska once, too. <laughs> May I ask how old you are? That's sort of a, a nosy question, but uh, I'm a very uh, nosy fellow. Well, I have to say I'd rather not. You'd rather uh, say you would rather not? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's skip it. It's all right with me. Okay. Now, Mr. Robert Disterdick, uh, that's an unusual name. What kind of a name is it? Well, that's the German extraction name. Oh, Mr. Disterdick, that, that's too formal. What do the boys in the office call you? Well, lots of things, mostly shorty. <laughs> Well, that's logical. What other name is there for a name like this today? Huh? <laughs> how, how tall are you, Shorty? Well, it depends on who asks me. Usually I'm 5 foot 18 inches. <laughs> In other words, you're 5 feet 6. Is that right? No, 6 feet 6. Oh, 6 feet 6. Bob, a fellow with your height makes an, an easy target. I presume you're married. Is that right? That's right, I am. How did you meet your wife? Was it an office romance? Oh, no. I met my wife my sophomore year in college. In my junior year, we were married, and in my senior year, we had our first daughter. I guess that's what they mean by progressive education. <laughs> you had just the one child? No, we have three children now. Oh, you're back in college again, huh? <laughs> you went back for postgraduate work, is that right? <laughs> now, Mrs. Nelson, you say you're from Van Cortland Park? That's in the Bronx, isn't it? No, Nebraska. Oh, you know, Van Cortland Park is in Nebraska? No, Cortland. Oh, Cortland. Uh, well, let's Cortland, get back to you. Um, Fenneman says you're from a movie studio. Is, is that right? Are, That's right. Are you an actress? No, I work behind the scenes. Well, so do I, but I mean, what is your... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I am... How do you make a living? Uh... I'm with the ladies' wardrobe, oh. 20th Century Fox. Okay. Ladies' wardrobe? That's right. Well, what do you do in your job? I guess the stars. Could uh, you tell the get folks? Them, just get them ready for their pictures. Uh -huh. What stars? Make their clothes. Uh, what are some of the actresses well, that you've uh, pinned these things on? Susan Hayward. Yeah. Betty Grable. Yeah. And Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gene Simmons. And Vera Allen. But they're just, they're not with our studio. They're barred stars. You say you borrowed them? Well, uh, we borrowed uh, Gene Simmons and Vera Allen. Mm -hmm. Well, can anybody do that? Or, I mean, you have to, <laughs> you have to be in the studio, huh? I can see Bob, what sort of work do you do? I work for the probation department in the county of Los Angeles. What do you do uh, for the probation department? I'm in the administrative offices. I'm the executive assistant of the probation department. Mm -hmm. Your job sounds pretty cushy. What do you have to know to get a job like that? Well, you have to know the answers to the civil service examination that all people who work for the county have to take and pass. Well, do you have to keep a civil tongue in your head when you're doing this? Yeah, I imagine you do when you're taking your interview. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you do before you got this job? I was an examiner for the Civil Service Commission. <laughs> well, you certainly know the right fellow to go to to get a job. <laughs> Now, wasn't that a little uh, irregular, giving yourself your own examination? No, I didn't do that. Uh, someone else prepared and administered the examination that I took. I would probably have gotten a better grade if I had made my own, though. <laughs> I would think so. 
Well, I hate to change the subject, but now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple lost all their money, and the secret word is wall. You selected uh, English expressions for American words as your category. I'll give you the English expression, and you give me the American version of the same word. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Of the 20. All of it. All of it. In England, they call it a tram. What do we call it here? Streetcar. Streetcar is right. You don't have $40. $40? How much are you going to go for? Mm -hmm. All of it. In England, they call it an ironmonger. What do we call it here? Will you say that again? Ironmonger. I-R-O-N-M-O-N-G-E-R-S. If you don't know, take a guess. Uh, Miner? No, it's a, it's a hardware store. Ironmongers is a hardware store. Well, they uh -oh. lost, lost all their money, Groucho. Uh, well, nobody leaves here broke. They give you one more question, get this right, and you'll spend 25 bucks. How many wheels on a tricycle? About three. So about three is absolutely right. Sorry, didn't win. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, Groucho, we invited some ladies' dress shop proprietors to the program, and our studio audience selected uh, Mary Campbell to be on the show, and her partner is a schoolboy, Leonard Ross. So, folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Mrs. Mary Campbell and Mr. Leonard... <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Ross, eh? Uh, say, can't we get him a boxer stand no, on or something? Leonard? I'll talk to you in a minute, Shorty, as soon as you grow up here. There you go. Okay. No, that's no good. Now he's taller than I am. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell, where are you from? Scotland, I imagine. Huh? Franklin, Kentucky. Franklin, Kentucky, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, down the bluegrass country, yeah. Uh? Close to Bowling Green. Bowling Green, huh? <laughs> well, I'm a little bowling, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about your job. Uh, what is what is it you do? I'm a sales girl. A sales girl? Mm-hmm. For F. L. McKenzie's dress shop. Oh between Bullock and I Magnus. Well, tell us about the new styles and, and keep them short, eh? Well, I don't think they're going to be short. You don't, eh? Well, I'm no. sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're going to feature full skirts and slim skirts and... What's the difference between the slim skirt and the full skirt? Well, the full skirt's like I have on. Yeah, and the slim skirt is, is what you have off, eh? <laughs> Well, that clarifies that pretty well. <laughs> now, Leonard, by, uh, by you're Leonard, aren't you? Oh, yes, I believe so. <laughs> well, do you have a nickname, uh, Leonard? Or do, you, or do you prefer Leonard? Um, uh, I'd like to use Lenny. Lenny, eh? Yeah? How old are you, Len? Oh, eight. Eight? And where were you born? Los Angeles. Mm hmm how long ago? Eight years. <laughs> Pretty tricky, this kid, isn't it? What grade are you in school? B4. B4, huh? No, I mean now. B4. <laughs> Let's not go into an Abbott and Costello routine here. Huh? What grade are you in in school? B4. You're going to stick to that story, huh? <laughs> What is your favorite subject? Arithmetic. Hmm. I've always liked that subject myself, Lenny. Let's see how good you are. How much is 15 and 10? 25. That's absolutely correct. Huh? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> you got a pencil on you? <laughs> I, I, I think that's right. I hope Fenneman's listening. I told him he could be replaced. You know. <laughs> now, you ask me one and make it tough. Not too tough. Oh, uh, 11 times 208. <laughs> 11 times 208. 11 times... 10 times 208. One more example like that, and I'll kick that <laughs> soapbox out from under you. <laughs> I give up. How much is it? Uh, 2,088. 
2,000. 288. 2,288. 2,000. That's absolutely right, Lenny. <laughs> how do you know? How, do, how did you figure that out so fast? Ten times uh, two hundred eight, two thousand and eighty. That's right. And that I have. Two hundred eight uh, would be two thousand two hundred and eighty eight. Mm. Well, you're pretty good, Lenny. When I was eight years old, I could only count up to fifteen. <laughs> that was the number of pool balls there was on the table. Are there sixteen balls on the pool? The pool table, counting the uh, cue ball. <laughs> This kid is not only an exploit mathematician, he's a pool shark. <laughs> well, let's try you on some tough ones. Uh, Fenneman. Hey, Fen George. George. Come out here, please. I don't want to be humiliated alone out here. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Fenneman, maybe a little of this will rub off on you. <laughs> All right, uh, Lenny. I'm... Um, uh, Multiply 640 by 5 and divide by 2 and a half. Let's see, 2 and 8. 1280. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> what is it? 1280. Well, I haven't even got it written down. <laughs> you say you went to Stanford, uh, George? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And you divide by how much? <laughs> Here we are, two old men asking, <laughs> a, asking an eight an eight year old moppet how to uh, do a sum. And how much you want to divide by? To keep me out of this, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> are you bored, Lenny? This won't take more than ten minutes, huh? You give yeah. up, George? Oh, I uh, forget yeah. it, huh? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you and I the beginning, huh? I'll see you in nursery school tomorrow morning at home. <laughs> Lanny, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I could learn something by continuing this conversation, but the time has come for you two to win a lot of money. Run your $20 and no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the $1,000, both couples lost all their money. George, come out here again. Don't ever leave me alone with this monster. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected Canadian cities and provinces. I'll give you the Canadian city, and you tell me the name of the province. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? You have $20. Oh, 20. Okay. All of it? All of it. All right. And what Canadian province is the city of Montreal? Quebec. Absolutely right. <laughs> you now have $40. Why don't you make it a little tougher for yourself and do this in fractions right here? <laughs> How much of your $40 will you bet on your second question? Uh, How much? I'll 40 You have $40. And what Canadian province is the city of Halifax? Nova Scotia. Right. You're now applying to $80. Mrs. Campbell, aren't you going to say anything here tonight? I don't have a chance. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 80 are you going to go for? 80 <laughs> In what Canadian province is the city of Gander? This is a famous stopping off place for planes en route to Europe. I'll take a guess at it. I don't know. It's Saskatchewan. I didn't know it. I took a guess at it. Well, one answer between you. Well, I'm sorry. It's Newfoundland. <laughs> They're broke, huh? Yeah, they lost all their money. I'll give you one question now. Get this right and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. What Shakespearean character gives Hamlet soliloquy? He was buried in Grant's tomb. <laughs> General Grant is at the Thank you. Good luck from the Soto Plymouth All our couples lost all their money tonight, so all three couples in just one moment get the chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Say, hey, George, did I ever tell you about a friend of mine named DeSoto? DeSoto? Well, that's not really his name, but it makes the sponsors so happy. Oh, I see. Well, what about your friend DeSoto? Do you know him, too? How that DeSoto does get around. I want you to watch this, folks. 
This is the trickiest lead into a commercial you've ever seen. Not the dramatic new DeSoto Groucho. Mm -hmm. This lovely car isn't going to be around until its first appearance on November 5th. It's well worth waiting for, though. What was that date again, Fenneman? November 5th. And what happens then? 30 years in show business, and all of a sudden, I'm a straight man. November 5th is the day the dramatic 1954 DeSoto, the most beautiful and best-performing car ever built, will go on display for the first time. So be on hand November 5th and see the dramatic new DeSoto. Yes, friends, on November 5th, drop in and see your Groucho Plymouth dealer. And when you drive in, you'll tell them the dramatic new DeSoto really sent you. Groucho, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Now, we've given them a little slip of paper, and uh, if all three couples get it right, we'll split the money among them. Are we all set? Okay. Our present calendar has been in use since 1582. When it replaced the old style, or Julian calendar, the one now in use throughout the world was named for the Pope who introduced it. For $1,000, what do we call it? What do we call this calendar? You have 15 seconds and talk it over. This one says Gideon. That's wrong. Nothing from our second nothing couple. Nothing from the second one. That's wrong. And nothing from the third one. That's wrong. Yeah, this is a tough night. It's the correct answer is the Gregorian calendar. That means the big question next week will be worth fifteen hundred dollars. Well, they all lost the big money, but and they didn't win anything in the quiz. Huh? No. They each won twenty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealer. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember that the dealers who sell the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field, will have the magnificent new 1954 DeSoto on display November 5th. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Caution, control, and courtesy are the ingredients that add up to traffic safety. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name, N-A-M-E. Really? You bet your life! It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field, and who, on November 5th, will have on display the astonishing and beautiful new DeSoto for 1954. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Are you sure you want him? Oh, that's me! 
Well, here I am again with 1,500 smackolas for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, I um, saw an interesting article in the newspaper about a married couple, and I told them to come and see us next time they were in Hollywood, and maybe they'd get on the show. And they did, and here they are, Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, how do you do? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra 100 uh, smackolas. The secret word is a very common word, and it's something you always have with you, I presume. Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich, huh? That's right. Where are you from, uh, Mr. Fedorovich? I was born in Rotten, Poland. I've been here over 40 years. You were born in Rotten, Poland? Or Rotten, Poland. What kind of a place is Rotten, Poland? Uh, I don't know. A long time since I've been there. How old were you when you uh, fled from there? Sixty. You were no, sixty I'm when you six left there. No, I'm sixty You are sixty. Gee, you don't yeah. look. What sort of work do you do? I'm a roofer. Well, top of the morning to you. <laughs> what does a roofer do? Fixes the roofs. <laughs> well, I, I didn't think you raised caterpillars, but I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what do you do specifically, then? Well, it depends on the type of roof. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. You're, you're Mrs. Uh, Fedorovich, huh? That's right. Fedorovich. Is that the word? How do you pronounce it? Fedorovich. Fedorovich, that's huh? That's right. Well, that's a whole lot better, huh? <laughs> what is your... <laughs> Helen? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you mind if I call you Helen? That's all right. What part of Poland are you from, Helen? I'm not from Poland. I was born in the United States. I was born in Hobart, Oklahoma. Well, Hel- uh, Helen, uh, you're, you're pretty short for a tall girl. How tall are you? <laughs> well, I'm just a little over five feet tall, and I weigh 155 pounds. Oh, you're kind of five by five, huh? <laughs> well, you carry it well. How much do you weigh, John? I weigh 125. <laughs> Did she weigh more than you when you got well, married? She weighed about John? 100 pounds more when I met her. I beg your pardon? She weighed about 100 pounds more when I met her. She weighed 100 pounds more than she does now when you married her? Than I did. Than you did. You weigh 125, she weighed 225? Helen, after you were married, did you try to lose a little excess baggage? Yes, I did, and John thought it'd be a good idea if we take a walk. Did he suggest it, that you lose some weight? He suggested that we walk. Is that true, John? That's right. Well, how did you do this? Did you lie down on the floor and let him walk all over you? No. We took a walk to Arizona. You took a walk to Arizona? How far did you walk on this Arizona stroll? About 500 miles. Well, Helen, did this walking uh, trip to Arizona have any effect on you? I lost 50 pounds. Did this make you happy, John? No, but she gained 60 later on. Well, John, did you try any other reducing measures, like walking to Shreveport? Uh... No, we didn't walk to Shreveport, but we went to, we walked to Spokane, Washington. You, you walked to Spokane? That's right. Well, how far is that as the crow flies? We didn't we fly, we walked. About <laughs> well, look at some, he keeps topping me. I guess that's, that's because he was a roofer. <laughs> How did you make out on the Spokane trip, Helen? Did you did you lose any uh, any blubber, any weight? I lost about eighty five pounds. Okay, I'm ready for the next question. John, how much did she gain? Well, she gained uh, one hundred fifteen pounds. This could be I serious. Two hundred and sixty five. So where'd you go this time, Alaska? No, we went down to Morongo, Imperial Valley, Mexico, Mexico, up in San Diego. Get to Los Angeles. She didn't lose enough. She we went to take a walk down to Fresno or, or to the coast. <laughs> we walked all together about two thousand miles in four months. And uh, you say how much do you weigh now? One hundred and fifty-five. Oh, well, are you satisfied with her? Oh yeah, weight, huh? sure. I can lift her now. Before I couldn't budge her. <laughs> Did any? You mean you you did this whole thing just so you could lift her? That's right. And so she feel better and look like something. Oh. <laughs> well, I think she looks pretty cute. Now she does. Yeah, I see her before. Well, the next time she puts on a hundred pounds, bring her around, will you? <laughs> well, this has been a pretty heavy conversation we've had here, but. Uh... 
you can lighten your load by winning a lot of money, and I hope you do. All you got to do is run your $20 and more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. These are all French words and expressions that we have adopted for cooking and serving foods. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? 20. You don't consult this with Skinny here at all. Huh? <laughs> Go ahead. That's the answer. What about it, Slats? Are you in a... Let her go ahead and do what she wants. All right, you're going to bet $20. What is the French word that means a small cup of coffee taken at the close of a meal? Demitasse. Right. Well, you're on your way. You have $40. All right, how much of the 40 are you going to bet in your second question? All of it. You ignore him completely. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> What are the small cubes of toasted bread served with soup called? Croutons. That's right, croutons. You now have $80. Did you carry a menu on this trip you took to Phoenix, Seattle? No, no. <laughs> Here's your third question. You have 80 bucks. How much are you going to bet? All of it. Slices of bone meat or fish are called what? Filet. Filet is right. <laughs> You now have $160. I always thought Phil A. was in Pennsylvania. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? All of it. All of it, huh? Whites of eggs whipped to a standing froth with sugar is called what? Meringue. Meringue is right. And you wind up with $320. Right. Well, thanks and good luck to the Minnesota Plymouth dealers. Fenneman, everybody's talking big, bright, and beautiful these days. Let's listen in. It's big, the 54 Fenneman. It's bright, the 54 Fenneman. Big, bright, beautiful too. The 54 Fenneman is a car for you. Yes, the new 54 Plymouth, big, bright, and beautiful, is the car for you. The car that's got everybody talking about its new beauty. I've never seen such luxurious fabrics and appointments before in any low-priced car. So many smart new ideas in detail and color combinations. Plymouth's high-style interiors certainly live up to their name. Power steering's available this year. Plymouth's full-time power steering. Does 80% of the work for you, getting in and out of tight parking places. And always lets you keep the feel of the road for good, steady handling. And there are three great drives available, including Plymouth High Drive, that gets you where you're going without shifting. See this great new beauty for yourself. Visit a DeSoto Plymouth dealer for all the exciting details on the beautiful new 54 Plymouth. Big, bright, beautiful too. The 54 Plymouth is the car for you. All right, George, who's next? Well, we invited some uh, plumbers to the show tonight, Groucho. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Michael Moran. His partner is Miss Regula Thorsten. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word. <laughs> Say, plumbers always get applause here. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Michael Moran. That's, that's you? Yes, sir, that's You have a sister named Lemon? No, sir. <laughs> Not that I know of. Oh, I used to know a Lemon Moran. She lived in the, in the automat in New York. Uh, where are you from, Mike? I was born in Huntington, Oregon, but raised in Los Angeles. Raised in Los Angeles. Are you married? Yes, sir. How old are you? 31. Regular Thorson, that's you? That's right. That's an interesting name, Regular. Where'd you get it? <clears throat> I was named after the city saint in Zurich, Switzerland. <laughs> You said name. That's the secret word. So you get 50 smackers, well, and uh, the you, plunger Groucho. over here gets $50. Thank you, Groucho. Thank you, Groucho. Now, uh, uh, what were you saying about uh, you were named after a, a plumber named Lemma Moran at the <laughs> Automat in New York? Groucho, you got it all wrong. I was oh. named after a city saint. The city saint? Yeah, that's right, in Zurich, Switzerland. You come from Switzerland? I surely do. I mm -hmm. did, at least. Uh -huh. How long ago? Oh, well, now, Groucho, you wouldn't ask me embarrassing questions. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I make a living, huh? <laughs> now, uh, how did you get the name? Uh, you were named after a city saint? That's right. How long ago was this? Oh, many years ago. How long ago? In this century. 
In this century? <laughs> At the turn of the century? A little later. Oh. Why did you come to this country, Regula? Oh. Just to outwit me? <laughs> <laughs> no. You succeeded in so far. <laughs> no. I, uh, you see, I trained as a nurse in the American hospital in Paris. And my superintendent of nurses thought that I would make a much better career in the States, and that's why I came. Uh, have you had any exciting experiences as a nurse in this country? I certainly have. One what of, way, huh? Well, one of them was uh, taking care of you. You once were my patient. I knew that past of mine would catch up with me. <laughs> well, what happened? Did I did I emerge alive? Uh, you certainly did. I did, huh? Yes. <clears throat> you used to come to uh, this doctor's office quite regularly, and after a few visits, one time, you impersonated your own brother. And you did it so convincingly that you had me completely sold. So I almost got fired. But that isn't all. Two weeks I later... Hope not. <laughs> two weeks later, you sent your brother into the doctor's office, and you had your brother impersonate you. And to make matters even more complicated, you know what the doctor's name was? No. Dr. Marx. Really? And that isn't Rudolf all. Marx? Rudolf Marx. Oh, and yes, that yes. isn't all. He's a nice guy, Rudolf. Isn't he the I want to say, after you left that doctor's office, I impersonated Rudolf Marx. I didn't know. <laughs> But that isn't all. It was all on Wednesday. It was his day off, and he didn't. They don't come in on Wednesday. You know, doctors don't work on Wednesday at all. Wednesday, Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want to die, you got to do it Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> you know, speaking of hospitals, it reminds me of the story about Mark Connolly. He wrote. He's a famous playwright. He wrote Green Pastures and many other plays. Anyway, he had gone to Cedars of Lebanon to visit a friend there who had had a tonsillectomy. And he got in the elevator there at Cedars. And the elevator operator says, what floor? And, and he said, men's tonsils, please. And, <laughs> that's a true story, isn't it? Uh, are you still at that uh, same hospital, regular? No, I'm not. I've quit the nursing profession. They always do that after they get me in. <laughs> Mike, who do you work for? Uh, Sicking Plumbing. Is yes. it a big outfit? One of the largest in town, Groucho. We have about 40 plumbers on tap. 40 plumbers on tap? Say, hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> you know any roofing jokes? No, sir. I don't. <laughs> Is that one of the little jokes you plumbers use in the trade? Well, you might call it that. Mm -hmm. and this, for this, you charge five and a half an hour? No, not for the jokes. Have you ever had any unusual experiences as a plumber, like fixing a leaky faucet in less than eight hours? <laughs> Yes, uh, I was fixing garbage disposal one time when I'm, I had to take the garbage disposal out of the sink to, to repair it. And in order Is that why they call it the Sinking Brothers? <laughs> no. <laughs> and in order to remount it, I had to lay on my back under the sink and put the spud through the hole in the sink, which is just actually uh, like a big donut. So I'm laying there tightening the screws up, looking right up through the sink, and this housewife comes walking over me and turns the water on. <laughs> right in my face. And she says, she, she says, I didn't think it would run on you. And what do you think it's going to do, run up? <laughs> well, at least you got a bath out of it, didn't you? You're lucky she didn't drop any garbage down there. Today. Well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. I haven't learned anything, but it's been interesting. <laughs> and the next time you come to my house, charge me four dollars an hour, will you? Well, now you're gonna you're gonna work in the quiz. Now let's see how you make it. We'll see how smart you really are. All you got to do is run your twenty dollars in the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later. In the race for the fifteen hundred dollars, the first couple won three hundred twenty dollars, and the secret word is name. Now uh, let's see how high you can bid your twenty dollars. You selected instruments in common use. As your category, is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. Most of us have seen or heard of these instruments. Now, these are not plumber's tools, you know. No. <laughs> now, let's see if you can identify them. You have $20. How much are you going to bet? I think you should bet uh, 19 Talk real loud now. $19.98. Okay. <laughs> now, we didn't hear a word uh, you said. All right. $19.98. Nineteen ninety-eight. Sounds huh? like Macy's basement. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of quitting plumbing and going into uh, <laughs> going into show business? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> everybody's in show business now. You can get yourself a panel show in no time. Huh? <laughs> well, 
What is the instrument used by doctors to determine the heartbeat? The stethoscope. That, that's right. That's a stethoscope. <laughs> You have $39.98 now. Uh, what does that remind you of? Uh, <laughs> Gimbal? Can't think of anything. I'm concentrating right now. <laughs> oh. uh, what is the. How much are you betting? It says all but two cents. So it'd be $39.86. 96. 96. 96. Uh, what is the surveying instrument called that is used to measure angles? It is mounted on a tripod. What is the surveying instrument called that is used to measure angles? It is mounted on a tripod. The datum isn't correct. No. Datum is the only thing I can think of it. Datum. One answer. Is that what you used to decide on? Yes, sir. You were. I know it too, but I can't think of it. (laughs) Transit. 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 That's that's a shame. (laughs) Just used it the other day. (laughs) You now have two cents. Wow. (laughs) How much of the two cents are you going to bet? Go for broke. Go for broke. Go for broke. <laughs> what is the instrument used for marking exact time in music? Um, no, no, I just meant, um, I know it as well as... A fork. Mm-hmm. Couple I know. <laughs> it's, it's metronome. A metronome. <laughs> well, I've well now you have nothing. Now All gone. Nothing. All gone. Now I'll give you one more question. You get this right and you spread 25 bucks. Popular figure of early American history was Martha Washington. What was her husband's name? George. <laughs> George Washington. Absolutely right, George Washington. Thanks, Thank you, George. Thank you. Thanks and good luck in the DeSoto Plymouth deal. And now, Groucho, our next contestant is N.C. Byer, a waiter. Mr. N.C. Byer, a waiter, eh? What's the N.C. stand for? It stands for New Car, Groucho. Your name is New Car Byer? Well, you've certainly come to the right show. Where are you a waiter? Oh, I can wait anywhere, Groucho. I thought I'd wait right here in the studio. It's not too personal. What are you waiting for? For November 5th, Groucho. All of us new car buyers are waiting for November 5th because that's the day the wonderful new DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Yes, I know. They say that this outstanding new DeSoto is the most wonderful car ever built, with so many new engineering features that you'll have to drive it to believe it, and with an outstanding new beauty and style that will put it years ahead of all the others. Yes, I know. So that's what I'm waiting for, November 5th, the day this magnificent new DeSoto for 1954 makes its very first appearance. You see, folks, you got to be careful. You never know when we're going to bring in a commercial to remind you that November 5th is the big day. Your first chance to see the stunning DeSoto for 1954. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a a young married couple for you now, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Shefflin. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra $100. It's a common word, <laughs> something you always have with you. Mr. What are you calling him? Fenneman, what are you calling him Mr. for? This man's a general. Uh, are you a general? No, Groucho, I'm a master sergeant in the Air Force. Oh. How, uh, how old are you, uh, Sergeant? 33. 33, huh? Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Shefflin. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to call you Mrs. Shefflin. That's... Uh, too dignified for me. Well, can you call me Margaret? Uh, well, I could try. <laughs> Margaret, I notice you're holding pretty tight to your husband there. Uh, do, do you feel all right? Oh, I'm feeling fine, thank you. Oh. But um, I used sometimes hold on to him this way when we're walking around because my left leg is paralyzed. I had polio in 1942. Oh, is that mm-hmm. so? I'm sorry to hear that. Would, oh, would you like to sit down? Then? Oh, no, thank I'd really huh? rather stand. You would? Yeah. I sit down watching... One thing, another, all day. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'd rather sit down myself. I didn't know how you felt. <laughs> well, are you sure you won't be too tired? Huh? No, I'll be fine. All right. Does your polio seem to be getting better as time goes by? Well, it's a gradual process. Yeah. But uh, it's been getting better, and strangely enough, having a baby seems to help. How old is your baby? Well, we have four little girls, but the youngest one is five weeks. You say these four children helped your health, eh? Well, it seems to have, anyway. That's odd. Uh, I've been a father three times, and look at me, eh? <laughs> Next time, I think I'll try being a mother. That would be fine. 
<laughs> Who takes care of the four kids, Margaret? Do you have help? No, I, I take care of them in the house. Oh, I, I don't feel I have a real handicap because I can play ping pong and swim and do lots of things. Well, you certainly have a lot of courage, Margaret. Well, Next my... time I get a little ache or pain, I, I don't think I'll complain quite so much. <laughs> Maybe the little ones are bad, too. Uh, I had a headache the other day, and I sent for an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out some more about you two. For example, what was there about Margaret that prompted you to uh, pop the question? Uh, well, I thought she was very nice-looking, and she was a good conversationalist, and pleasant, courteous, and above all, she was very smart. You mean by trapping you, she was smart? <laughs> Well, okay. she, can, she can read a book in, say, less than an hour, and she can tell you everything that she's read. Well, can she cook? <laughs> she can do anything. You're pretty proud of her, aren't you, huh? Oh, that I, say, I am. And I say you don't blame you, Sergeant. You think she'll win a lot, uh, win a lot of money for you here tonight? Oh, it's just as good as money in a bank. <laughs> Why, what makes you think she's going to walk away with the loot here tonight? Well, she used to be a quiz kid for about three years. A quiz kid? <laughs> Jumping butterballs were wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true, Margaret? Are you really a, a former quiz kid? Yeah, I was a quiz kid from... Uh, for 19... Kelly? Joe Kelly. Mm -hmm. Joe Kelly, uh -huh. yeah. And he's still on. Is that so? Uh, I've gotten too old. See, when you're, uh, <laughs> when you're 16, they figure you're not a kid anymore. Yeah. So I was on from 42 to 44. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, Ed, doesn't it uh, sometimes annoy you that your wife knows all the answers? Well, Groucho, it, it sometimes scares me. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about her knowing the answers, old boy. The time to get scared is when she starts asking the questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you're a happily married couple, and I'm sure everyone is anxious to see you slaughter me in the quiz. <laughs> so let, let's see what you can do. You have to run your twenty dollars no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the fifteen hundred dollars, Mr. and Mrs. Fedorowitz are leading with three hundred twenty dollars. You selected what's the number? This is a test of your powers of observation. Let's see if you can correctly identify the amount or number. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Twenty. Sure. All of it? All of it. All of it. How many strings on a standard violin? Four. Four is right. You now I have $40. Uh, you have $40. Now, how much are you going to bet on this one? Shoot two works. I wish we'd taken it. On a standard telephone dial, how many holes are there? Ten. One, two, three, four, six, seven, zero. Okay, you tell me. Ten. Ten is correct. Okay. <laughs> you now have eighty dollars. She's the quiz kid, but I know she's slipping you the hard ones here. Huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the eighty are you going to bet? Eighty. We'll bet the eighty. How many rows of keys are there on a standard typewriter? Four. Four. Four, Four is right. <laughs> You now have $160. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You have $160. How much are you going to risk? All of it. We'll try it all. All of it. Let's How many it. cigarettes are there in a standard pack? 20. 20 is right, huh? <laughs> and you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Right. Thank you. And that means that the first couple, Mr. and Mrs. Fedorovitz, and Sergeant Shefflin and his wife, both with $320, have tied for the chance at the big $1,500 question. Groucho, do you realize it will be here November 5th? I didn't even know it had been away. What are you talking about? Well, the day is Thursday, November 5th. Certainly, and that's the day the magnificent 1954 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. That's right. Thursday, November 5th, is D-Day. D for the stunning new DeSoto for 1954. <laughs> I knew it all the time. 
Well, then why did you ask me what I was talking about? Well, for some reason, I thought you were thinking about a gorgeous blonde. Well, why should I be thinking about a gorgeous blonde when I can remind the folks that November 5th is their first chance to see the dramatic new DeSoto for 1954? Fenneman, I shall treat that question with the contempt it so richly deserves. Folks, go to your nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealers on November 5th and see the wonderful new DeSoto for 1954. And if you run across that blonde, tell her Groucho sent you. Well, Groucho, here are the two couples tied for the chance at the big question. Mr. and Mrs. John Peter Fedorovich, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Shefflin. Each couple will decide on a single answer and write it down on a little piece of paper we've given them. If both couples get it right, they'll split the money between them. We all set? Fifteen Already? seconds. Yes, okay. One of the colorful figures of the gay 90s was a former newsboy who on July 23, 1886, allegedly jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge and survived. For $1,500, what was his name? Nothing? You wouldn't even write anything? I didn't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Fedorovich, huh? The gentleman over here is right, it's Steve Brody. Oh, sure. And you can... Well, I'm sorry you didn't all win, but uh, that's the way it goes. Thank you. Uh, how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they all won $320 in the quiz, and... Uh, well, you won $1,820. Congratulations. <laughs> from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember that the dealers who sell the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field, will have the magnificent new 1954 DeSoto on display November 5th. DeSoto, DeSoto Plymouth. Two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Friends, tonight your DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast salute the National Safety Congress, which is celebrating its 41st anniversary. DeSoto is proud of the part it has played in making America highway safety conscious. Remember, the life you save may be your own. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. gentlemen. The secret word tonight is chair. C-H-A-I-R. What is it? Really, you're supposed to say. It's really, you're supposed to say. <laughs> you bet your life. You bet your life. <laughs> it's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field, and who on November 5th will have on display the astonishing and beautiful new DeSoto for 1954.
And now, here he is, the one, the only... That old boy? Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000, George, for one of our couples. Not $1,000, George. That's silly. $1,000, George, dollars for one of our couples. <laughs> Who's first? Oh, we have a housewife and a druggist for you, Groucho. Mr. Sid Chambers and Miss Mrs. Edna Rob Webster. Would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. That is, if you have a house. A druggist and a housewife, huh? Yes, sir. Mr. Sid Chambers, I presume you're the druggist. Huh? Yes, sir. Are you uh, married? Yes, sir. I have two children. Where are you from? I'm from Hollywood, sir. Hollywood? Yes, sir. Only in, only in Hollywood would a druggist have a butch haircut. Eh? <laughs> Mrs. Edna Rob Webster, huh? Yes, sir. And is that a simple declarative? What do you mean by Edna Rob Webster, huh? That's my name, Groucho. Oh. You're a housewife? Partly. Well, which part, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Edna? I was born in Marshalltown, Iowa, and grew up among the tall corn, but I didn't grow so tall. Oh. Oh, you'll find plenty of tall corn here tonight. Uh, <laughs> how long have you been a housewife? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years? Why, well, you're not that old, Edna. <laughs> well, that's what my birth uh, certificate says. It does, huh? Does it talk? <laughs> you you say you've been married thirty-five years to yes. Noah Webster? No, to uh, William Webster. Oh. Well, what do you attribute the success of this marriage, the longevity of this affair? Anything in particular? Well, I do think that many married people would be happier if they permitted each other more freedom in activities and uh, interests and didn't try to dictate to one another and say, you have to do this and you have to do that. We don't do that in our house, either for our children or each other. I think that's very wise. You notice what's happened to most of the dictators in the last few years. <laughs> Are you still awake over here, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not. I don't know about you. Well, let's get back to your pharmacy. Uh, well, uh, where is it? Well, let's see. Friendly Owl Rexall store in, in Westwood Village, Groucho. Oh. What is your job there? Well, I'm the pharmacist and the manager, Groucho. And what does a pharmacist do? Well, the specific duty of a pharmacist is to carry out the doctor's instructions. Well, where do you bury them? <laughs> You know, t as long as we're talking about druggers, uh, why do you always put so much cotton in the pill bottles? Well, we don't charge... By for the time you drag that cotton out of the pill bottle, you can die. Uh, the cotton... Isn't even the cotton kind of cotton you can use for cleaning out your ears. It's just a... It's just a waste. You just have to throw it away. Well, it's good cotton, Groucho, but uh, you're not charged for that. The cotton is put in there to... Why do they stick that in there around protect... four in the morning when you're trying to find a pill? <laughs> well, that's to protect the pill. Uh... One night I swallow the cotton. <laughs> that's to protect the pill. Next day I had a fur-lined vest and I was naked. <laughs> There's another complaint I have. I have 32 bottles at home, approximately, in, in my medicine chest. And they all say the same thing. Take three times daily. Groucho. Uh, or uh, uh, doctor's directions. As directed, it says. Why don't you put the name of the medicine on the bottle? Well, that's, that's coming about. If you had 32 <laughs> bottles in your medicine cabinet, I'd start cleaning house. Uh, uh, well, they're not all medicinal. <laughs> I say the truth. Some of them are fifths in there. <laughs> but uh, actually, the uh, the doctors now are putting what is in the prescription and uh, telling the, the pharmacist to write the, the name of the drug right on the label. Yes, and how often to take it? Uh, the other night, I thought I was taking three aspirins. It turned out to be three benzodrines. <laughs> well, that's, that's... I wound up jumping over my house. <laughs> That's, that's the advantage, I think, of putting the name of the preparation right on the label. That's right. And how often you should take it and when. That's right. Will you remember that? I would certainly do my best. Give my love to your three children. Thank you. It's two. Now, let's play you bet your life. Run your $20 and no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big question later. You uh, selected girls' names and song as your category. All of these girls' names have been popularized in music. I'll give you a hint from a song, and you identify the girl. Clear? 
Yes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Twenty. 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 Twenty dollars. Who is sweet as apple cider? Ida. Ida is absolutely right. And you now have forty dollars. We don't pay the whole thing. Uh, Cantor pays $19 of that. Huh? <laughs> now you have $40. How much are you going to bet on your second question? We'll bet it all, Gracia. Okay. Through the black of night, i got to go where you are. Who am I looking for? Chloe. Chloe is correct. You now have $80. How much? All of it, huh? Nature, fashion, roses, kiss with dew. It was the start of who? Uh, sweet Lily Liney. Sweet Lily Liney is right. We've now climbed to $160. How much are you going to go for? We'll go all the way, Gretchen. All the way, all right. Dum Dum doesn't live here anymore. Annie doesn't live here anymore. Dum Dum is what I call her, but her name is Annie. That's right. <laughs> and you wind up with $320. Well, thanks and good luck with the soda Thank Plymouth Dealer. You. You're very smart. George, have you heard this old Scotch ballad? DeSoto's arriving, hooray, hooray. DeSoto's arriving a week from today. DeSoto's arriving, it's going to be great. So get out and see it, and don't you be late, late, late. <laughs> That's a fine song, Groucho, but it's not exactly accurate. No? No, you see, the stunning and remarkable new DeSoto for 1954 goes on display a week from tomorrow, Thursday, November 5th, to be exact. I know that, Fenneman. But if you're so smart, let's see you rhyme hooray with a week from tomorrow. Let's see you rhyme anything for that matter. Rhyme orange for me, Fenneman. Well, I can't rhyme orange, Groucho. Of course not. All you're good for is to remind people that Thursday, November 5th, is the day the stunning new DeSoto for 1954 goes on display. Give them that date again, George. That's one week from t tomorrow. Thursday, November 5th. The day the stunning new DeSoto for 1954 goes on display for the very first time. Be sure to see it at your DeSoto Ply Plymouth dealers. Now, uh, before we proceed, uh, I want to read a little note here. In the November 1st issue of Parade, the Sunday newspaper supplement, there's a story about Fenneman, uh, Mr. Fenneman. It's titled, Groucho Always Picks on Me, and I think you may find it amusing. I hope you do. Uh, <laughs> I doubt it. All right, George. Uh, on with it. Who's next? Groucho invited some bakers to the show tonight. In our studio. I invited some bakers? No, we did. Oh, you said Groucho invited some no, bakers. No, I said Groucho. We invited some bakers to the show tonight. Oh. You Gr still said Groucho invited some bakers <laughs> to the show tonight. Anyhow, these bakers that got to our show... Uh, were How'd they get in? I have no idea. <laughs> Anyhow, uh... You're probably loafing on the job coming down. <laughs> I'd, I'd like you to meet a baker that we have here. His name is Mr. This isn't Home Run Baker. He used to play with the athletics. <laughs> no, it isn't. This is Mr. High Catan. His partner is Mrs. Ruth Bro. And here they come, folks. Would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx right now? Well, howdy. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. High Catan, eh? Mr. Catan, I'll, I'll start with you. Where are you from? New York City, sir, near Central Park. Oh. Are you a squirrel? No, sir. <laughs> a baker. A baker? You're a baker, so well, you have to be from the East, don't you? Huh? That's right. You're a baker, so you have to be from the East, eh? I was kind of ashamed of that, so I mumbled it. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Ruth Bro. Yes, That's you? That's I. Where are you from, uh, Ruth? I'm from Monongo, West Virginia. Where's that? And remember, I have no shame. <laughs> That's a small town. I have no joke either. Huh? <laughs> That's a small town on the West Fork of the Monongahela. And we had some people in the service in our family. And I left the town in 1943 to join the Marine Corps. Uh, why did you join the Marine Corps? Well, as I said, we had some people in our family in the service. We had a soldier, we had two sailors, we had a CB. And I figured it was time we got a fighting man, so I joined the Marines. <laughs> what did you do with the Marines? I was a laundry officer. 
Well, at least you were right up there on the line, weren't you? <laughs> now, Mr. Catton, let's hurry back to your bakery. I just love to smell the hot bread. <laughs> Have you had a bun on recently? <laughs> Now, where do you work? Delhaven Bakery in Beverly Hills. Oh, Delhaven's. I've been there many times. Have you ever seen me in your bakery? Yes, many times. We appreciate having you as a customer. Oh, I'm not a customer. (laughs) I just go there on rainy days. Your oven is a wonderful place to dry my shoes and socks. Occasionally, I stick my head in there, too. How would you describe your bakery? Uh, What kind of a place is it? uh? Well, we have quite a diversified line. We make French pastries and Danish pastries... German coffee cakes, regular American type of pastries, donuts, everything. I think you're putting too much rye in your rye bread, uh, Bacon. <laughs> How can you be all of these things to all people? Well, you see, sir, we uh, have a Frenchman making French pastry and a Dane making Danish pastry, somehow a Canadian making the German coffee cakes. <laughs> in fact, uh, we try to make everything that people will buy, like, and talk about. Well, you said you were successful last week. Everybody at the hospital was talking about your cream pie. <laughs> Well, I hate to change the subject, but now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. In the race for the $1,000, the druggist and his partner won $320, and the secret word is chair. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected old riddles as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Marine wants to shoot the works. What kind of a coat is put on wet? It's just coat of paint. That's right. Coat of paint. Yeah. <laughs> well, you now have forty dollars. All right. How much of the forty are you gonna bet? The whole thing. What is black and white and red all over? A newspaper. A lexicographer. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you now have eighty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the eighty? Whole thing. Let it ride. Okay. When is a door not a door? When it's a jar. When it's a jar is right. <laughs> You now have $160. Pretty sharp baker, is not Your last chance to be the other couples, you're going to bet the 160 Shoot the works. To what man do other men always take off their hats? A woman. Woman. To what man do other men always take off their hats? Talk it over. Your partners... No, man? No, I'm sorry. It's a barber. Uh, Pretty easy. It's a real old red. Well, gradually... Well, we can't let you leave here broke. Lost all their money. We're going to give you one question. You get this right, and you win 25 bucks. <laughs> Who was president during Grant's administration? I didn't Grant. Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, that's absolutely right, and I'm sorry you didn't win more money. Thank you. I understand the new DeSoto is coming out soon. November 5th. My spies tell me that it's going to be out of this world. November 5th. They say this new DeSoto is going to be the greatest car ever built. November 5th. I don't like to mention it, but your needle seems to be stuck. November 5th. What's going to be so new and marvelous about this stunning new DeSoto? November 5th. You know he gets paid for this, and him a college graduate. I know, November November 5th. 5th. Folks, watch for the greatest new car ever built. The magnificent new DeSoto coming... I believe that date you had in mind was November 5th. Well, that's the date, Groucho. November 5th on our television show. The first TV view of the marvelous new DeSoto. Before we went on the air, Groucho, we selected a married couple. And now I'd like you to meet them. Mr. and Mrs. Everett Calicote, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Marilyn Calicote. Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Everett Calicote. What is your hometown, Ev? That's you, I presume. That's me. I was born at Ironton, Ohio, on the river. In the river? On the river. Is this near the Monongahela River? No, that's the Ohio River. Oh, does that empty into the Mississippi? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. It does. That's so long a time. What's that? After so long a time. 
Well, sure, I didn't mean immediately. <laughs> I mean, it didn't go right from the Senton Hotel in Cincinnati to the Mississippi Inn. <laughs> Took a cab. <laughs> Mrs. Calico, where, where are you from? I was born in a log cabin in Brown County, Indiana. You're not Abe Lincoln, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I might be relation. I wish I was. <laughs> well, I hope you are. By the way, Mrs. Cal... I can't keep calling you Mrs. Calico. What does Everett call you? Oh, you wouldn't want to call me that. My name's Helen Lucille, but I don't like Helen, so everyone calls me Lucille. Well, why don't you like Helen? What has she done to you? <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet uh, this uh, buxom lad over here, Everett? Well, our church was holding an open-air service, and Everett came wandering by. He asked if he could play our guitar. wandering by? Was he, <laughs> was he on his way to church, or was he just casing the joint? <laughs> He was casing the joint for a girl. <laughs> Everett? You rascal, you. Huh? <laughs> Is this where you usually prowled around on Sunday morning? <laughs> oh, this was a Saturday night. Oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, let's go on with this. Uh... Well, he has to play a uh, guitar, and we let him. He was a strolling troubadour, in other words, huh? <laughs> Not exactly. Well, what, what, what attracted you to Everett besides his guitar playing? Well, uh, he... Uh, was there well, anything just... about him that you didn't like yes. besides his guitar playing? Maybe that's simpler, that. For well, one thing, he didn't... The main thing that I didn't like, he didn't like children. And I think everyone should like children. Well, Everett, have you, uh, have you revised your opinion in recent years? Yes, I have. You, you like them now? Oh, I, I love children. And Do you uh, have any? We have eight. <laughs> eight children, eh? Never underestimate the power of a woman. <laughs> or a guitar. You know, that reminds me about liking children. W.C. Fields was one of the great comedians. Somebody once asked him, he said, uh, Bill, do you like children? He says, yes, fried. <laughs> you know, he pretended all his life that he, that he disliked children. And when he died, he left all his money to an orphan asylum. It was a queer quake in this man, but he was a wonderful comedian and a great guy. And uh, there's nobody around like him. Now, uh, now that we're through with this uh, sad soliloquy, uh, <laughs> Lucille, are there any problems connected with raising eight children? Yes. In addition to Everett? <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of problems with eight children. I don't see why. After all, I've raised three myself. The only thing that keeps me from being perfectly normal is that I've lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what are some of your problems, Lucille? Well, uh, an example, uh, when we came to California, no one would rent us a place to live. With eight children, they just laughed at us. Mm. So we moved into a two-room apartment, and the health department heard about it. So they came around and looked at our place, and they told us we were overcrowded. <laughs> well, we knew it. <laughs> and then they told us we had to move. Well, Everett, how did you solve this dilemma? Well, there was a very well-to-do industrialist uh, from Burbank came over and bought us a four-bedroom home and uh, put us there and, and uh, wouldn't take any money. Of course, uh, we're going to pay for it. We, we want to pay for the home, but well, he, that he did that. Magnificent gesture so on his part. We appreciated it, too. I imagine there's a continuous picnic at your house, isn't there, uh, Everett? What are some of the forms of entertainment a large family like yours enjoys? Well, we... I mean, you're not playing the guitar. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we all climb trees together. That doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's the the ten of you go up a tree yes, together? Yes, we just find a big tree that we can climb. It doesn't cost any money to climb trees. No. Sometimes <laughs> does it get down again, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, we go picnicking and... Uh, do a lot of things as a family. It doesn't require any money. And we sing together. Uh -huh. Are any of your family out front? Yes, two. I have uh, two daughters is all. We we brought them along. How many... What are the uh, 
Yeah, how many uh, girls do you have? We have four boys and four girls. Oh, it worked out fine. Yes, huh? it was. Uh, now, would you uh, could you sing something for us? Well, <laughs> what about the kids? Couldn't you have them come up and help you sing? Well, we could try. You could we <laughs> they all sing together like the Trap Family. Where are the children? <laughs> Just sing a short chorus or something. I don't know how to sing a song. Come on, Gary. 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 Come on,
D for the outstanding new DeSoto for 1954. Mark that date down now. Thursday, November 5th. Your first chance to see the dramatic new DeSoto for 1954. Now, Groucho, here's our winning couple, the druggist and his partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Early in the 17th century, the Lord Protector of the British Commonwealth made a statement that since has been widely quoted. Trust in God and keep your powder dry. For $1,000, what was this great soldier, statesman, and civil administrator? Who was he? Okay, what, uh, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Take a stab if you don't know. Uh, no, we don't know. Sir. Well, make a guess. Oliver Cromwell. Baby. Oliver Cromwell is right! <laughs> Oh, I never thought I'd have to plead with somebody to take $1,000 away from me. Well, you win $1,000 plus how much in the quiz, George? Well, $320? That's $1,320 yeah. you want. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, there are so many places for it, but I, I think I will send some to my niece who is a missionary in Korea. Oh, well, that's a wonderful way to spend the money. But I want to ask you one question. Why didn't you? Why were you so reluctant to say Oliver Cromwell? Because I couldn't associate Oliver Cromwell with powder. You know, gunpowder. But you knew that there was any question, any answer was better than nothing. Yes, I did. It was, that's why I said it. <laughs> well, you didn't. I had to force it out of you. Well, I mean, finally. <laughs> if you had any manhood, you'd give me five hundred dollars for that. <laughs> what are you going to do with your dough? We'd like to maybe put another room on our house. It's getting a little small as our family's getting a little larger. So. Oh, I see. Well. I have no answer for that. Uh, <laughs> however, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Thank you. You bet you your life. Pleasure. Huh? Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember that the dealers who sell the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field, will have the magnificent new 1954 DeSoto on display November 5th. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, signal your intentions and slow down gradually. Remember, quick stops invite rear-end collisions. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. The secret word tonight is tree, T-R-E-E. -E. Really? You bet your life.
It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto transmission and the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. More about the remarkable 1954 DeSoto later in the show. Listen for it. And now, here he is, the one, the only... He's a real cool cat. Oh, that's me. <laughs> huh? Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Uh, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you. Mr. and Mrs. Leslie Townley. Would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. Leslie Townley, eh? Well, you're a fine-looking couple. Thank you. What's your hometown, Mr. Townley? Uh, Santa Barbara, California. Santa Barbara? Yeah. Huh? And Mrs. Uh, Townley, where are you from? Well, I was born in a little town 93 miles west of Minneapolis called Olivia, Minnesota. Oh. Is that near Olivia de Havilland? <laughs> There is a town like that. <laughs> well, Minnesota, let, let, let's see. Uh, that's near what? Uh, Duluth? Around in there, yes, Gretchen. Uh, I used to shovel snow up there. <laughs> it's the only way we could get the people in the theater. <laughs> no, really, the snow was that high and nobody could get to the box office. In addition to that, we had a very bad show. <laughs> how, how old are you, uh, Mrs. Townley? I'm 19. I'll call you Olivia. Is that your name? No, my name is Patricia. Oh. You, you may call me Pat. I thought you said you came from Patricia, Minnesota. No, Olivia. Oh, Olivia. Olivia. Your name is Patricia. Yes, Mr. Marks. Oh. Mr. Townley, how, how old are you? I'm 22. 22. Oh, well, Fine-looking boy. Thank you. I can't call you Mr. Townley. That's too formal. What is your first name again? Uh, it's Burl, but I don't like Burl, so people call me Les. You don't like Burl? No, not particularly. You don't like Uncle Milty, you mean? <laughs> Well, you're uh, you're married now, huh? Yes. What do you think of matrimony now that you've been snared? Oh, I, I think it's fine, Mr. Marks. It gives one a sense of responsibility and uh, it sure prestige. Does, yeah. <laughs> all the things that go along with married life. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. How long have you been married? Six weeks. <laughs> well, that certainly explains your attitude about marriage. <laughs> you're certainly qualified to be an authority on the subject. <laughs> Where did, you, uh, where did you go on your honeymoon, Pat? To Carmel, up by Monterey, up the coast. Mm -hmm. You go together? <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> That's beautiful up there, and they have some of the finest golf courses in the world. Did you know that? Yes. Did you play any golf while you were up there? No, uh, Mr. Mark. <laughs> must have had a pretty dreary time. Didn't you? <laughs> Let's find out something about your romance. How, how did you meet this fellow, uh, Pat? Well, I had come to work out at North American on the 15th of April. North American what? Aviation Incorporated oh. out in oh, Downey. Oh, you're a flyer? No, that's a uh, North American Aviation Incorporated where they oh. build these uh, ships and mm. different planes. And did you know he was uh, working there? Well, not at the time. I didn't even know he existed, but I went out there and... Met him two days after I had been there, and he uh, Fast met me. Worker, isn't he, yeah? he met me formally and kept asking me to go get a coke. And I had heard that he was married and had four children, <laughs> so I I ignored him. And well, how did uh, who told you that he was married and had four children? Well, the girl that sits next to me, her girlfriend used to work with him, and she I guess she got it all wrong. <laughs> Well, do most of the young fellas at uh, North American have uh, a wife and four children? Well, not all of them. Most of them are single, but there are a lot of married men out there. With four children? Hmm. Well, I don't know about four, but they have children. <laughs> don't you like children? <clears throat> oh, I love them. I'd like to have four myself. Well, get back to North America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Les, uh, I'm, I'm curious. How soon after you first saw Pat did you get engaged? Six weeks. Six weeks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that rather precipitous? Well, no. When the right girl comes along, it hits you like a ton of bricks. In my estimation. I know what you mean. A girl hit me like that just the other night. <laughs> Only she used real bricks. 
I made a barbecue out of them. <laughs> Put the girl in them, huh? <laughs> real hot mama, this kid. <laughs> well, I, uh, you're a real nice young couple, and I, I hope you're going to be very happy together, and I'm sure you will be. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to see you win a lot of money tonight, so let's get started. Huh? All you have to do is run your twenty dollars into more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. Let's see how high I can bridge your twenty dollars. You selected songs mentioning some part of the anatomy as your category. Now here's your first question: How much of the twenty dollars will you bet? Mm -hmm. Okay, all, all of it. it. All of it. You want to answer between you now? Give me the title of this song. Play, Mr. Fielding. Smoke gets in your eyes. Yes, it does. I'm smoking constantly. Right? <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You have $40. Here's your second question. Now, how much of this sum are you going to bet this time? All of it. Okay. Let's see if you can identify this one. Play, Jerry. I think the uh, stood still. What's the and rest? My of it? heart stood still. My, my uh, heart. Oh. Stood still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we now have eighty dollars. Here's your third question. You have eighty dollars. Now, how much are you going to bet? Go all of it. All of it. All right. All right. Play it, Jerry. Time on my hands. Time on my hands. Time on my hands. I'll have $160. How much will you bet? All of it. Let's go all of it. All, all of, of it? it. Yeah. All right. What is the title of this song? What have you decided upon? I... Dainty fingertips? Mm -hmm. Leaves in the sun. What? No, um, you've got some of the lyric, but you haven't got the title. I'm sorry. It's, it's Lazy Bones by Johnny Meiser and Hoagie Carmichael. Well, that's a shame. You've lost all your money. Well, we can't let you leave here broke. I'll give you one more question. You get this right, and you'll split $25. How many barrels in a double-barrel shotgun? Two. Two. Two is right. I'm sorry you didn't win more money. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you about the 1954 DeSoto Automatic with new PowerFlight fully automatic transmission. Why is it called the automatic? Because the 1954 DeSoto is a car planned and built to carry out your sudden orders instantly, silently, and safely at any speed. Driving the 1954 DeSoto Automatic with power flight transmission is driving at its finest. No clutch, no shifting gears. Just the turn of a key and you're ready to drive. And of course, in the 1954 DeSoto Automatic, you also enjoy the benefits of DeSoto full-time power steering. The power steering that works for you all the time. DeSoto power brakes to do over half the work of braking for you and scores of other DeSoto automatic features. And then, from a beauty point of view, this 1954 DeSoto automatic is a real dream car with an unusual and beautiful new treatment of the grille, bumpers, and headlights, and a gleaming massiveness that says, here's beauty that's built to last. There's a really fine, clean-cut, modern look to the whole car that comes from its long, really low, wide lines and the clean flow of its styling. This year... Drive and own a car designed specifically to carry out your orders instantly, silently, and safely at all speeds. This is the car. The stunning 1954 DeSoto. First car ever to deserve the name automatic. Tomorrow, first thing, go to your nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealer. See and drive the 1954 DeSoto automatic. And remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically.
We uh, have a housewife, Groucho, Mrs. Joan Twitchell, and her partner is a man who runs a restaurant, Mr. John Anthony. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome to your Betcha Life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. J- Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Huh? Mrs. Joan Twitchell. You're married, I take it, huh? Yes. I'm sorry to hear that, then. <laughs> How long have you been married? Nine Mrs. years. Nine years. I'm even sorrier to hear that. <laughs> Joan, let's see. Where'd you say you're from? Minnesota? No. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Oh, well, that's right near Minnesota, isn't it? That's pretty cold country up there, isn't it? Huh? And very hot. So. Did you ever see me up there at the Orpheum Theater? No, I don't believe so. I was uh, pretty young then. Well, I... <laughs> well, I was pretty young then, too, you know. <laughs> this is about a hundred years ago. <laughs> I used to go tobogganing up there between matinee and evening. What sort of work does your husband do? He's main floor manager for the largest department store in the world under one roof. That's the J.C. Penney Company. Oh. Where'd you meet him? Well, back in the days when Tarzan was an idol of the children, mm-hmm. we used to play in the back on castor bean trees. On what? Castor bean trees. <laughs> Mr. Anthony, you haven't said anything. You've won yourself $50. <laughs> and you've been jabbering here, and you won $50. <laughs> you ought to get $75, and you ought to get $20. Right? <laughs> you salted that away. <laughs> well, now you're Mr. John Anthony, eh? Huh? Are you a John J. Anthony, the fellow who solves people's problems? No, I'm not. My son is John J. Anthony. Oh, how old he, is he? He doesn't solve any problems. He's two years old. <laughs> Did you name him after uh, Mr. Anthony of uh, the court fame? No, we didn't. No. We didn't, huh? He, after that's your uh, name, After too. me and uh, his uncle. His uncle, huh? <clears throat> what uh, line of work are you in, Mr. Anthony? I own Barney's Beanery. <laughs> what was that? I own Barney's Beanery. You own Barney's Beanery and your name is Anthony? <laughs> yes. Where is this uh, beanery? It's out at 8447 Santa Monica, block and a half east of La Cienega. Oh. Have you ever eaten in there? Uh, seldom. <laughs> Why did you pick on Barney's Beanery for a name? Well, Barney's Beanery, it, it's an alliteration and euphonious. I w- I'll be glad to. What's your number, huh? <laughs> That's pretty fancy lingo, isn't it? He probably talks that way to keep the customer's mind off the food. Has this place always been there, this beanery? We've been there since uh, 27. Before that, I was in Berkeley, where uh, I catered to the boys at the University of California. Mm. Didn't you want any women in this place? Well, at that time, I was a little naive and uh, a bit younger. And I thought it wouldn't pay. I thought they'd just come in and get a little salad or a small sandwich and clutter up the place for most of the day. So we just kept it for the men. Your impression was that women don't eat? <laughs> it was at that time. Have you taken one out since then and learned the real truth? I certainly did. I learned the real, real truth since then. Well, I'm glad to, see, glad to see there's one man in Hollywood who's using the old bean, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's cut out the chatter and see how much you can make in the quiz, because it's time to play your bet your life. You run your twenty dollars no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money later. In the race for the thousand dollars, the newlyweds lost all their money. The secret word is tree. Now here we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected insignia and rank of the Army and Navy as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? How much is it? Twenty. You have twenty dollars. How much are you going to bet? And talk it over and decide on one sum between you. Nineteen ninety-five. Nineteen ninety-five. What is the rank of an army officer wearing a silver eagle? Uh, colonel. Colonel. Colonel? Colonel is right. Talk right up. You now have $39.95. Now, how much of this sum are you going to bet in your second question? Thirty-nine ninety. All right. What is the... There's a fly in the microphone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't want him to hear this answer. That's it. <laughs> what is the rank of a naval officer wearing one star? Talking over. He's a line officer. Hmm? If you don't know, guess. Admiral. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's a Commodore. Oh, now I have five cents. All right, how much of the five cents are you going to bet? Four cents. Four cents. <laughs> what is the rank of being a silver? Commander. Commander is right. You now I have nine cents. How did you figure that so fast, man? Oh, it was easy. <laughs> Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the nine cents are you going to bet? Eight cents. What is the rank of an army officer wearing two stars? Adjutant general. No, it's a major general. For whom is a Murphy bed named? <laughs> Murphy is Mrs. right. Murphy. Huh? Thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth Dealers. Okay, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we invited some building maintenance men to the program tonight, and our audience selected uh, Mr. Harvey Lugach to be on the show, and his partner is Countess Katja von Beerholm. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see, a building maintenance man and a countess, eh? Which one is the countess? That's me. Oh, well, it's an honor to have you here, countess. May I kiss your hand? If you'd like to. How do you know I won't bite? <laughs> I don't think you would bite me. Uh, you don't know me, countess. <laughs> well, let's find out something about you, countess. You seem like a charming lady. Uh, to begin with, what is your full name? How much too in informal to keep calling you countess? My full name is Katja... Elsa, Anna, Maria, Cecilia, Johanna, Henrietta, De Blanche, Spangspul, Van Beierholm. <laughs> well, let me know when you reach Kansas City. <laughs> I want to see what Truman's up to. <laughs> Where'd you get all those monikers, Countess? Uh, off a string of Pullman cars? No. Of a string of grandmothers and great grandmothers. I see. Well, Countess, would it be uh, Lay's Majesty if I asked your age? No, that's not French at all. for I'm a nosy rat. <laughs> and forty. Forty? Mm -hmm. Well, you're a fine-looking girl. <laughs> uh, where are you from, uh, Countess? I was born on an old estate. In the countryside in Denmark, not far away from where Hans Christian Andersen was born. Oh. Could you tell us something about your childhood as a countess? Oh, yes. I had a wonderful old historical castle, and I spent time riding my horses and playing in the garden. Well, I'm convinced you're the real McCoy, countess. <laughs> Not only the real McCoy, but you're also Anna, Maria, Gretchen, Knockwish, and Sauerkraut. <laughs> and I'm still going to get off at Kansas City and see what Truman's up to. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harvey Doglatch, is that, is that right? No. <laughs> Glugatch. Oh, Glugatch, huh? Sorry, I've been ignoring you. No, just what is it you do? That is in the daytime. Well, uh, I'm a <laughs> manager at the Los Angeles Window Cleaning and Maintenance Company. Oh, what kind of a company is that uh, exactly? Well, uh, we do uh, janitorial service and window cleaning for uh, office buildings, banks, uh, various for what? establishments. Banks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the problems connected with cleaning a big office building? Well, of course, uh, the most important problem, the biggest problem we have is personnel. Uh, uh, the secretaries on the in these particular jobs, uh, they're generally the messiest of... Of all, they'll put lipstick on the desks and uh, makeup on the walls. I thought they put lipstick on the boss. 
<laughs> you, you mean that the women are sloppy? Yes, and they're generally the ones who complain the most, too. Do you think men are, are neater than the women? Oh, yes, much. You do. Do you agree with that, Countess? Oh, yes, I think so. I think he's right. <laughs> You're not making a play for him, are you? <laughs> he's married. <laughs> how do you know he's married? Are you married? Yes, ma'am. Now, how did you know he was married? Oh, I just guessed that a man that looks so well as he does has such a nice position. He must be married. <laughs> Men like that doesn't go around loose. <laughs> <laughs> What about me? I'm loose. Countess, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to get personal, but uh, would you uh, be interested in matrimony? Oh, I would like to marry. Absolutely. Oh, brother, I may not have to come back to work next week. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of uh, fellow would you be interested in? Uh, a man of uh, experience? <laughs> Dashing? Yes. Debonair? Yes. Suave? Yes. Crooked? I mean clever? Yes, very much. Yes, eh? Next week when people see me, they'll start bowing and scraping. You know? <laughs> one more thing. I'm never going to mention DeSoto again. Countess, one more thing. Of course, this isn't important where true love is concerned, but... Uh, do you have any dough? <laughs> I have no money. I work for a living. Folks, get down to your soda deal tomorrow. <laughs> Come and grab some sent you. Rush down, for heaven's sake. Be there before he opens up. Well, Connors, this is all in fun. I'd like to go on talking to you, too, but I'm sure you'd rather win some money. And right now, it's time to play your bet your life. You wouldn't take me seriously anyhow, would you, Congress? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a pretty good catch of that if you can catch me. Huh? <laughs> all right. Now, all you have to do for a chance of the big money is to run your $20 in the more than our other couples. In the race for the $1,000, the second couple leads with one cent. And the secret word is tree. Here we go. Let's see how high can budget $20. You selected foreign monetary units as your category. This ought to be right up your alley, Countess. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Mm -hmm. All of it. All of it. What is the monetary unit of Mexico? Pesos. Mm -hmm. Pesos. Pesos. Pesos is right. You now have $40. You are now $40, according to Fenneman. How much are you going to bet? All. You're going to bet all of it? Yes. What is the monetary unit of Italy? Lira. Lira is right. You now have $80. Is that King Lira? Lira? No, no, King Lira, that was in Shakespeare. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's your third question. You have uh, $80. How much are you going to bet? All of it. What is yes. the monetary unit of Canada? Canadian dollars. The dollar is right. <laughs> You now have one hundred sixty dollars. Now, how much of the hundred and sixty are you going to bet? Mm -hmm. All. What is the last chance to beat your other couple? <laughs> <laughs> how much will you bet? All. We will bet all. One hundred and sixty dollars. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Will you come to the gas bar, Countess? Uh, oh, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> and we will hang over the gas bar, shall we? Uh? Oh, yes. <laughs> what is the monetary unit of Russia? Rubles. Rubles is right. Huh? <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Connors, you got no, plenty you on the ball, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and besides, you have three hundred and twenty dollars now. <laughs> and that means that the Countess and her partner, with three hundred twenty dollars in just one moment, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth one thousand dollar question.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Arlene Francis here to tell you about the most wonderful new car I've ever seen, the 1954 DeSoto Automatic. The DeSoto Automatic is the one car planned and built to do exactly what you want it to do. Do it instantly, do it quietly, and do it safely at all speeds. That's a marvelous thing to know. And what a beautiful car. The gleaming new grille and chrome trim give the 1954 DeSoto a longer, lower look. The swept-back fenders form a sleek, unbroken line right down to the smart new taillights. There are completely new interiors, too. The new instrument panel is in perfect harmony with the rest of the exquisite appointments. A real jewel-like instrument panel, giving you a real feeling of luxury. Take it from me, this 1954 DeSoto Automatic is a really thrilling car. A car you'll want to see right away at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Drop in to drive the 1954 DeSoto Automatic and enjoy a DeSoto ride. The ride that puts you ahead automatically. The 1954 DeSoto Automatic is available in two full series. The mighty DeSoto Fire Dome V8 now 170 horsepower, and the brilliantly responsive DeSoto Powermaster 6. Here's the Countess and her partner, Groucho, the winning couple, all set for the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Here we go for $1,000. Give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. You think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. A character in Sheridan's play, The Rivals, confused words that are similar in sound but unlike in meaning. She said things like, uh, an allegory lives on the banks of the Nile. For a thousand dollars, what was the name of this woman who murdered the King's English? Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided upon? We think it is Pygmalion. No, no, that is not the right answer. It's Mrs. Malaprop. Uh, Very famous character. As a matter of fact, it's become part of the language of Malaprop. There's any misappropriation of words. So that means the big question next week will be worth uh, $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much they win the quiz, George? They went all the way in the quiz with $320. Well, congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show. Also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low price field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, keep your wits and windshield clear. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.
The secret word tonight is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Oh, shucks, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first on the veranda? Uh, Mr. Walter... Is that right, veranda? I don't believe so, but no. it's nice. Uh... Well, it can be if you have the right veranda. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walter Mahonan and Miss Ruth Callobin. And they're waiting to meet you, Groucho. They have very interesting occupations we'd like to talk to them about. So, folks, if you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see. Miss uh, Ruth uh, Coleman? That's right. And Mr. Walter Mohonan. Mo Mahona. Mahona, huh? Ruth, you're very attractive. Huh? Well, thank you. Where are you from uh, originally? Oh, I'm from Washington, D.C. Hmm. Would you mind revealing your approximate age? It isn't necessary, but we're nosy. <laughs> I'm we like 24. to know. 24. Mm -hmm. We don't look it. Well, thanks. I look younger or older. No, you look younger. <laughs> I thought you were about 23 and a half. Huh? <laughs> are, you, are you married? No, I'm not. You're not married. Huh? A girl with a cute squint like you and you're not married? Have you tried squinting at the boys? No, but maybe I will. Uh, you can start on me, kid. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll squint right back. Who do you work for? Well, I work for the National Bureau of Standards. Oh, well, uh, how are your standards? Uh, well, they're pretty high. Well, uh, if you ever lower them, will you come back and see me? <laughs> Possibly. What do you do for the Bureau of Standards? I'm a physicist. A physicist? Well, prove it. Let's see you fit. <laughs> I didn't bring my fizzing apparatus. Well, uh, specifically, what are you doing for the Bureau of Standards? Well, our work is pretty highly classified, so I'd rather not talk about it. Well, the telephone book is classified, would you? Uh... <laughs> Walter Muhonen? Yes. Uh, uh, you're Irish, huh? No, Finnish. Well, so am I. The only difference is <laughs> I hate to admit it. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you married, Walter? Yes, I'm married to the most wonderful wife in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us something about your wife, would you? Uh... She's handy with skillet and casserole, and she <laughs> has a deft touch with condiments and agglutinating agents and littles. Glutinating she... agents? <laughs> yeah. Do they get 10% of your salary? <laughs> what she is also... a glutinating agent as opposed to a regular agent? Well, in soups, that gives the soup uh, a thickness, as it were. Oh, it's a kind of a catalyst? Uh, something like that. Uh -huh. she you also thought was... I was a jerk, didn't you? <laughs> when did you meet your wife, Walter? Uh, I met her seven years ago on New Year's... Was she glutinating then? <laughs> no. <laughs> in Seattle, Washington. You met her in Seattle? Mm -hmm. On New Year's Eve. Uh -huh. And we were married a week later in Reno, Nevada. Mm -hmm. Well, could you give us some details of this uh, whirlwind courtship? Well, I... Met her uh, at 8.20 on New Year's Eve, or 8 o'clock, and at 8.20 I decided I was going to ask her to marry me, uh, which I did at 12.20 that night, and which she did a week later. You must have been in pretty good shape if you could still tell, <laughs> still tell time on New Year's Eve, four hours after the party started. Well, it was a strange sort of a party. We went over to listen to uh, symphony records at a sorority sister house of hers. We listened to a uh, walk through a paradise garden by Delius. And you were listening to a uh, paradise garden by De Delius yes. on New Year's well, Eve. That was the name of the the symphony. Yeah. Uh huh. How long did this uh, piece take? This Delius piece. It. Uh, uh, they had. Uh, they served coffee at intervals. Uh -huh. In which. So this is a whole evening of Delius. A whole evening of Delius, uh, uh -huh. punctuated by coffee with sugar and cream. 
and talk, as it were. Did this girl know much about you, Walter? I uh, mean, prior to this, uh, this orgy that you threw there in New Year's Eve? Yes, I'm uh, surprised the joint wasn't raided. <laughs> I was considered a, a rough affair. Huh? I was considered not a very uh, uh, good risk in marriage. I was a sort of a tramp, as it were, a <laughs> tramp musician, and not very stable in those days. Uh -huh. About jobs, I mean. Did you have a job? At the time, yes, I was a, a beachcomber. <laughs> well, you couldn't get a more substantial job than that. Right? <laughs> a fortune in beachcombing, huh? Old beer bottles, dead seagulls. <laughs> Are you serious? Was this really your... Yes, I was working for the Headleys, who have a, a beach-calling place on, uh, at White's Point in San, in San Pedro. And uh, I worked for them. And you we combed the beach? Uh, up and down the beach from White's Point up to Portuguese Bend. Uh -huh. Well, uh, what, kind of, what kind of junk... Well, uh, I mean, uh, any what kind of stuff do you pick up? Uh, well, anything, uh, flotsam and jetsam that could be uh, merchandise. Well, I picked uh, up some flotsam and jetsam on the beach, too. But... <laughs> Are you doing any beachcombing these days? No, I have a respectable job as a welder in a shipyard. But I'm doing some abstract sculpture in steel. Abstract sculpturing in steel? <laughs> yeah. What is uh, abstract steel sculpturing? Well, uh, abstract sculpture, as I understand it, is the addition of formal meaning to a mass that has no formal meaning by the use of human will, and I happen to choose a contemporary medium, which is mm -hmm. steel. Well, you've gone all dimensions. your life through a kind of a mysterious haze, haven't you, Walter? <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> Well, I imagine you've had a lot of fun. You seem like the kind of fellow that gets a kind of an inside chuckle out of everything he does. Indeed, huh? I do. You and John Gunther. Now, have you sold? Uh, <laughs> have you sold any of your work? No. The main problem is getting into the shows. The juries seem to pick on the old and worn and haggard classics. Why do you go in for these unusual, unlucrative occupations? Uh, uh, because I like to, and I think every man should do what he likes to do. Mm. Well, I admire you, Walter. You have a fine, homely philosophy. It's that kind of thinking that keeps the country jails full of uh, customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly been abstract talking to you, Walter. <laughs> and uh, that goes for you, too, kid, huh? Thank you. I never thought when you first came out here and initially squinted at me that you were going to be quite so obscure. <laughs> well, now it's time to play you bet your life. You know, all you have to do is run your 20 bu bucks into more than our other couples for a crack at the big question later. You selected cities with the same name. There are a number of important cities with the same name. Some are here in the United States and some abroad. Let's see if you can identify them. Here's your first question. Now, how much will you bet? Let's bet all of it first. All, right. all, right. all of it. All of it? Birmingham is one of England's largest cities and also is one of our major industrial cities. In what state is our Birmingham? Birmingham, Alabama. That's right, yes. That's true. Uh -huh. You're on your way. You have $40. You have $40. Now, how much of this sum will you bet on your second question? Shall we bet all again? Yeah. I think we ought to. Okay. York, England is about 200 miles from London. Our city of York is 27 miles from Harrisburg. In what state is York? Pennsylvania. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We now have $80. You now have $80. How much are you going to bet? Okay, we'll bet the works. Okay. The city of Syracuse in Sicily has declined from former days of glory. This is kind of a one-act play here. <laughs> but our Syracuse is still on the way up with over 200,000 people. In what state is it located? New York. New York is right. Oh, oh another one? We now have $160. $160 is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? Who cares? <laughs> Let's bet all of it again. All of it. Cambridge is a famous university city in England. In what state is our Cambridge? Yeah. It has over 100,000 people. Massachusetts. Massachusetts is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Ladies and gentlemen, here's why the great new 1954 DeSoto deserves the name automatic. Why, it's the only car on the American road that fully deserves that name. First of all, whether you're driving along the open road or parking in a tight spot, DeSoto full-time power steering does the work of steering and parking for you. And when you have to stop, 
DeSoto full power brakes do over half the work of braking for you. Then, too, DeSoto electric windshield wipers maintain constant speed windshield wiping. And if you desire, the 1954 DeSoto will raise and lower your windows, air condition itself, and do a score of other things for you automatically. But the biggest news of all this year is DeSoto PowerFlight fully automatic transmission, the newest and finest automatic transmission available. Just turn the key and you're ready to drive. Step on the gas pedal and you're away in a swelling surge of smooth power, never draggy or jerky. Yes, friends, the 1954 DeSoto Automatic is a car designed and built to carry out your sudden orders quickly, quietly, safely at all speeds. Visit your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. See the new DeSoto. And remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. Okay, George, who's next? Uh, we have a teenager, Groucho, Miss Carol Sonia Tegner. Uh, her partner is a special guest whom we invited because of his interesting occupation. He's Mr. Adam E. Jansen. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Mr. Adam Jansen and Miss Carol Sonia Tegner. Carol, since you are prettier than Mr. Jansen, this is without looking at Mr. Jansen. <laughs> I'll start with you. How old are you? Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Do you go to school, Carol? Yes, I do. I go to Hollywood High School, and I'll graduate this January. Well, that's pretty early to be graduating from high school, 16. Isn't it? You must be a real smart girl, in addition to being attractive. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Jansen, let's get on with you. you. You've you been standing here with a vacant look in your eye. <laughs> are you not uh, Larry Jansen, the pitcher for DeRocher, are you? No. Where are you uh, from, Mr. Jansen? I was born in Minnesota. Oh, you're not the Jansen from the Jansen's Hofbrau in New York, huh? I don't think so. You're not the Jansen from I'm Jansen with tears in my eyes? Huh? <laughs> well, uh, how about your first name? Is that Jansen, too? No, my first name is Adam. 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 Uh, how do you account for that? Well, I was christened Adam, but my friends call me Elmer. Mm. <laughs> They call you Elmer. You haven't got many friends. <laughs> Don't you prefer Adam to Elmer? I like Elmer. That would sound pretty silly with Elmer and Eve. Huh? <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Adam? Are you in the rib business? No, I'm the chief of police of San Diego. You what? I'm the chief of police of San Diego. Why, Elmer, you lovable, forgiving old rascal. <laughs> You are forgiving, aren't you? Oh, sure. San Diego, a lovely city. <laughs> the flower of the South, San Diego. Wonderful town there. Uh, how long has crime been running wild in San Diego? <laughs> or to put it another way, how long have you been police chief? About six years. Tell me, Chiefy, uh, what are your duties as head of the police? Well, that would be hard to answer in a few minutes. Well, don't have to worry about an answer right now. Just be sure you have the right answers for the grand jury. Uh... <laughs> let's, pick, let's pick an average day, uh, Elmer. How do you start out? Well, when I arrive at the station in the morning, I'd first of all attempt to find out what has happened since I left the day before. You mean you read the newspapers to see if you've been indicted? <laughs> What do you mean? Don't you, don't you know what's happened? Well, uh, most of the time, but I like to find who is in jail and uh, what, what crimes have been committed and uh, uh, how many traffic accidents have happened. And, uh, and then you go home and go to sleep again? No. <laughs> do, do you have any women policemen down there? Well, we have some women who are not police women, but they're police matrons, about a dozen of them. Mm -hmm. How do they look? Pretty good, pretty good. Do these women take orders from you? They do. Mm -hmm. Do uh, do they obey these orders? They sure do. Tell me you're not the chief, you're the super chief. <laughs> well, it's time to stop talking and get down to money matters, Chief. And Chief Le Jansen, I was only kidding you. You know that, don't you? Don't pay any attention to me. Especially if I come to San Diego. <laughs> Now, then, let's play your bet your life, huh? <laughs> you know, all you do is run your $20 into more than our other couples, and you'll get a crack at the big bundle later. 
In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $320, and the secret word is water. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected our feathered friends. Fine thing for a cup. <laughs> Here's your first question. How much will you bet? You have $20. All of it. What do you call the comical-looking birds that inhabit the Antarctic regions? They can swim but can't fly. Penguins. Penguins is right. You have $40. How much of your $40 are you going to risk this time? All of it. <laughs> what do you call the seabird that is regarded with superstition by some sailors? The rhyme of the ancient mariner told about one of these birds. The albatross. The albatross is right, eh? <laughs> now I have eighty dollars. You have eighty dollars. How much are you going to try? The works. The works. She said. What do you call the aquatic birds that live near the seashore? They have a large bill with a pouch underneath. Pelicans. That's right. His bill holds more than the pelicans. You now have one hundred and sixty dollars. Is your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 160 are you going to go for? The works. What do you call the long-necked pink water birds that are found in warm climates? Talk it over now. Flamingos. That is right. <laughs> you wind up with $320. Thanks, and good luck to the Soto Plymouth dealers. George, who's next? We have a girl who works in a bank, Groucho. She's Miss Suzanne Glenn, and her partner is Mr. Peter DiPaolo. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss uh, Susan Glenn and Mr. Peter DiPaolo, eh? Is that right? Right, Groucho. Say, Peter DePaulo, that's a very famous name. Aren't you the first man ever to go over Niagara Falls in a pickle barrel? <laughs> <laughs> no, Groucho, I drove uh, racing cars. Oh that's, oh, that's right. You were a great champion. You were the hero of every kid in our block. I couldn't read the newspaper accounts, but the other kids used to tell me about you. <laughs> I was only 48 at the time. <laughs> I'll get back to you, champ, in a minute. Just stand there a while and idle your motor. <laughs> Suzanne, I'd like to get better acquainted with you. Where Where are you from? Well, I was born in Hollywood, California, Groucho. Oh. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Mm -hmm. And where do you work? Bank of America, South Pasadena. They have a bank out there? Yes, they do. Do you observe bankers' hours at this uh, uh, bank? Yes, we do. They're from eight in the morning until five at night. Mm -hmm. Does everybody go home at five? Yes, they do. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I want to know. <laughs> Tomorrow night, I may make a sizable withdrawal around ten at night. <laughs> Mr. DePaulo, I know you were a champion race driver. Uh, what were some of the titles that you, uh, that you achieved during your career? Well, I'd say the most standing was winning the famous uh, Indianapolis 500-mile race and really? then uh, becoming the... National A champion in 25 and 1927. And what was your average time in the Indianapolis race? In 1925, I averaged 101 mile per hour. And what do they average now? 128. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money in racing in those days, huh? Yes, there was. In 25, I was lucky enough to win $168,000. And I thought it was terrible that I had to pay some uh, $5,200 tax. <laughs> Today, I'd keep the 5200 and send the rest to Washington. <laughs> How'd you get started in the racing business? Was it always your ambition to be a race driver? No, I wanted to go to college. When I was a young kid, the time I had the idea of going to college, my father had a sign over the kitchen door written in Italian, and it read, Chi non lavore non mangi. What does that mean? Don't drop your keys in the wash basin? <laughs> Uh, it means who no work and no eat. And like all Latins, I love to eat, so I went to work. Well, my father was like that, only he was more of a plain-spoken man. He, he just dumped me out of bed and hollered, go find a job, you bum. <laughs> well, didn't your folks object when you started to take up automobile racing as a career? Well, they did, but as I progressed and became successful... 
They're very happy. As a matter of fact, after each race, I'd go home, and dear mother would have her one request, that I'd go to Newark a la Marquette. We'd go down to the public market. She wanted to show me off. We'd go along arm in arm, you know, and she'd say, Hello, Mrs. Pepleroy. It's a pity, jumping for the race. You come from California. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, your folks sound like wonderful people, Pete. Not only that, but you sound just like my brother Chico. Huh? Well, they were wonderful people. That's two strikes against you in the quiz, you realize. <laughs> Tell us some more about your family, Pete. Well, there are many things that I could relate, Groucho, but I remember very distinctly in, uh, during World War I, Brother Johnny and I were in the Air Corps. Brother Johnny was a flyer, and I was an airplane mechanic. And on this one visit at home during our leave, Johnny went on telling about flying, which got Mother all excited, naturally, and like all people in those days, they thought if anybody fly an airplane, they get killed, for sure. So dear old Mother, as Johnny and myself were leaving home, she embraced Johnny with that love and affection, which only a mother can express. Yeah. And in her soft Latin voice, she says, Johnny boy, when you fly, you fly low and a slow. <laughs> <laughs> And then I remember, too, months later, after that, poor Johnny had had quite a misfortune. He'd wrecked down in the Everglades in Florida, and he came home with his arm bandaged up and his nose mashed over. And he says, Mama, I fly too low. I hit a house. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to have many wonderful uh, visits at home. Wonderful how you, people. How do you feel about driving on Wilshire Boulevard, don't you? Scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> So, Pete, you're an expert on automobiles. What do you think of today's cars? Well, uh, I think people are getting more value for their money than ever before in the history of automobiles. You hear that? <laughs> well, are you referring to any particular car? Or... <laughs> well, tonight it's a DeSoto. It's a nice one. <laughs> I suppose the next the week, if you are on it for a locomobile, you say it's about a locomobile, huh? I'm glad you mentioned locomobile. She's a no more. She's no, a guy. She's a no more. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I mentioned a locomobile. I uh, I I do you? <laughs> well, enough of this chatter. Let's get on with the important business. You know what that is. You're going to play your bet your life for a chance to win some money. You run your twenty dollars no more than the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. In the race for the thousand dollars. The first and second couples are tied with $320 each. Well, here we go. Let's see how high I can bridge your $20. You selected personalities of the 20s as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? How much, how much can we bet? You, you have $20. 20, you bet it. All the way. 20. During the early 20s, the famous author of the Sherlock Holmes stories toured the United States. What was his name? Was it Holmes? Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Those oh, were the Sherlock stories. And I want you to tell me the name of the author who toured the United States. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. You got cleaned out in the first question. Oh. Well, the, ath the answer is Sir Conan Doyle. Mm. Very famous author. Oh, so I give you one question anyhow, so you put, split $25. We don't like anybody to leave you flat broke. Yeah. Why did you pick that category? Well, we thought we had it in the bag, but... <laughs> <laughs> now, what color do you associate with turnip greens? Uh, green. Green is absolutely right. <laughs> well, thanks and good luck for the soda <laughs> And that means that the San Diego chief of police and his partner and the beachcomber and his partner, with both of them with $320 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Hello there. This is Arlene Francis here to tell you about something new and wonderful. The new 1954 DeSoto Automatic. This year, the stunning new DeSoto features power flight transmission, the world's newest and best fully automatic transmission. 
Power Flight automatically adjusts to fit your driving needs and instantly you're driving at the exact speed you choose. With the magnificent instant response of Power Flight transmission, the tremendous power of the DeSoto Fire Dome engine, now 170 horsepower, and the wonderful assurance of DeSoto full power steering and DeSoto power brakes, all driving becomes pleasure driving. And when it comes to magnificent new styling, here too the dramatic 1954 DeSoto will set the pace for years to come. Even at rest, the new 1954 DeSoto has an air of impressive power and ability to eat up the miles. Tomorrow, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Step inside this new 1954 DeSoto automatic. Go for a thrilling ride in one. Once you've driven this new DeSoto, I think you'll agree, the 1954 DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. <laughs> Well, Groucho, here are the two couples tied for the chance at the big question. Each couple will decide on a single answer between them and write it down on one of the cards we've given them. And if both couples get it right, they'll split the money between them. Okay? All right, please. Now, help in the audience now. A New Englander named Clarence E. Mulford, M-U-L-F-O-R-D, has written many successful stories about the West. For $1,000, I want you to tell me the name of the most famous character created by Clarence E. Mulford. Write it down. This couple's... No, I'm sorry. This couple over here, it's Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, you no! Said it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the beachcomber and the girl from the uh, National Bureau of Standards, they split $1,000 between them and $320. Right, $320. That makes $1,320. Well, congratulations. What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to be a beachcomber. Starting yeah. to... <laughs> well, I admire you. You have a wonderful uh, solution for life. And uh, what are you going to do with yours? I think maybe I'll ask my parents if they'd like to come out and visit me in California. That, that's you couldn't have a spend the money in a nicer way. Huh? Well, congratulations from the more than three thousand DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast Thank to coast. You. you bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Mark Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto... Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Good brakes stop many accidents before they get started. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.
ladies and gentlemen. The secret word tonight is face. F-A-C-E. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all-new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... One of nature's noblemen. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, we went looking in our audience tonight for grandparents. You and, did, huh? Yes, well, and as a result... You're really getting old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we found one. He's Mr. Earl Pollock, and we'd like him to meet you, Groucho. Mm-hmm. His partner is Helen Wilde. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Earl Pollock and uh, Helen Wilde. Eh? Helen, you're a very attractive girl. Where are you from uh, originally? Monroe, Louisiana. Monroe, Louisiana? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, where is that? Is that in the bayou country? Yes. In fact, I lived right across the street from one of the bayous. Is that so? Did anybody buy you anything while you were down there? <laughs> Not hardly. <laughs> Could you tell us something about this uh, country? For example, what did you do down there when you were a girl? Uh, when I was a little girl, um, it was real bad days then, and I used to work in the berry fields and help my family. What do you mean Picking by strawberries. Bad days? And, well, you know, depression. Times were tough, huh? That's right. And I used to pick berries, strawberries, and blackberries, and different uh, things. Mm-hmm. Now, how old are you now, Helen? You say you don't look much over 20. I'm 34. Thirty-four? Mm-hmm. Really? Well, we don't look it, but we're about the same age. And... <laughs> would you Would you like to get together later and discuss our ages? No, I don't believe I would. My, uh, I'm married. My husband wouldn't like it. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do? He's a meat cutter. <laughs> Oh, he's not going to chase me with a cleaver. <laughs> now then, let's see. Uh, you're Mr. Earl Pollock? Yes, sir. Is that the way you pronounce it? Pollock? Yes, sir. Yeah. You mind if I call you Earl? At your pleasure, sir. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I've had greater pleasures than that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't sneer at it. Uh, <laughs> how, old, how old are you, uh, Earl? I will be 82 years old next month. Really? Well, how long have you been retired? Well, you get the idea I was retired. <laughs> well, you mean you're still active? Is it because of that beautiful I girl standing next to you? I am still active in the civil engineering profession, yes, sir. Is that so you're a civil engineer? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, that's quite an achievement to last that long these days. Thank you. The way things are. Did you do any berry picking when you were a lad? No, that was out of my line. Uh, Fenneman says you're a grandfather, huh? Twice. Two times. Two times, huh? How long have you been married? Oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50, 52 years. Really, you don't look it, huh? I'd say you weren't married a day over 40 years, huh? Helen, now about your marriage to this butcher, do you have any little tots running around stealing no. meat out of butcher shops, huh? Uh, I have a six months old granddaughter. A granddaughter? Mm-hmm. Well, how old are you again? Thirty-four. See, there's something in berry picking at that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> you and You and Helen are both grandparents, but it took you 82 years to do what she did in 34. (laughs) Well, I'm certainly confused talking to you two. Earl makes me feel young again, and Helen makes me feel real old again. However, I presume you're both interested in making some money. 
So let's play you bet your life. All you got to do is run your $20 no more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. Well, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Western songs as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? We'll bet all of them. The whole 20. Well, give me the title of this Western song. Play, Jerry. Wagon Wheels. Wagon Wheels. Wagon Wheels is right. And you're on your way with $40. We'll How bet much? it all again. $40 you're going to bet? Okay. What is the name of this song? Jerry? Heading for the last roundup. Heading for the last roundup. You now have $80. We'll bet all of it. Okay. Okay, Mr. Fielding. Red River Valley is right. You can now find $160. We'll bet it all. You're going to bet the $160? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Play this one, Jerry. Say the take the money, isn't it? Yes, it is. Home on the range. The money. It's home on the range is right. Huh? <laughs> and you wind up with $320. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth okay. dealers. And my man. Well, our uh, studio audience selected a girl from the telephone company, Groucho, uh, Miss Dolores Deal, and her partner is a special guest, Mayor Durward Loomis. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Well, uh, the mayor, huh? well, welcome, Your Highness, with the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mayor Edward Loomis, huh? Shows you how I keep up with current events. I thought Eisenhower was mayor. It's Durward Loomis, Groucho. It's what? Durward Loomis. Durward, oh. Are you really an honest-to-goodness mayor? That's right, I am, Groucho. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Your Majesty. Thank you, sir. (laughs) What are you mayor of? The city of San Fernando, Groucho. Well, congratulations. That's a wonderful honor. It's magnificent. Thank you. Where is San Fernando? <laughs> is that in the United States? San Fernando is in the fastest growing valley in the world, Groucho, the great San so? Fernando Valley. Is that near Rudy? Uh, uh, I guess not. <laughs> May I, I'll return to you in a moment. We'll start the investigation as soon as I talk to your partner here. You're Dolores Deal? That's right. Is that the way you pronounce it, Deal? That's right, uh-huh. In other words, you're Miss Deal, is that right? Yes, I am. <laughs> and you're from the phone company? Yes, Well, you have a very pretty prefix. Uh, (laughs) What is your hometown, uh, Dolores? Oh, I like to say I'm from Junction City, Kansas. Well, I don't mind if you do, but where are you from? (laughs) From Salina, Kansas. How old are you? That is, if you don't mind talking. Twenty-five. Well, I'll accept that. (laughs) However, since you're from the phone company, you probably gave me the wrong number just from having (laughs) What branch of the phone company do you work for? In the Beverly Hills office. Beverly Hills? Mm-hmm. Really? I live in Beverly Hills. I know. Oh, well, you eavesdropper, you. <laughs> do you ever talk to me when I ask for the operator? No, I'm, I'm not an operator. I work as a service representative. Oh. Well, you may not be an operator, but I am the lawyer. <laughs> You're a pretty feeble one, too. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Loomis, let's get back to you. Everything quiet on the political scene? Just at the moment, Groucho, yes. Well, I was just checking. I thought maybe you had a plane ticket to Mexico City in your pocket. (laughs) (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Are are you married, Mayor? Yes, I am, Groucho. How'd you meet your wife? Were you out buying votes and you happened to run into her? (laughs) Not this wife, no. Uh, I worked in a bank. Previous wife? No, this is my only wife. What are you getting for votes these days? uh, uh, Well, I don't know what the current quotation is, but I understand it's getting higher. I remember you could buy a vote for a buck and a half. Now you can just about get a pumpernickel for that. (laughs) Did you ever have any pumpernickel voting for you? Uh, I don't recall it. Uh, They may have been on the rolls. (laughs) Would you like to switch seats with me? (laughs) Thank you, no, Groucho. It seems to me I heard San Fernando was the fastest-growing community in the world. Is this true, Mayor? San Fernando Valley. 
is the, the fastest growing area in the world. Right. San Fernando can't grow anymore. We've reached the limit of our population. Well, have you discussed this with the uh, members of the population? <laughs> no? I still think it's true. <laughs> well, why, why do you say this, uh, Mayor? The geographical limitations of the area. We are two square miles, and uh, Los Angeles completely surrounds us. How long have you been, Mayor, Your Honor? <laughs> two years, Mr. Marks. Two years, huh? You're just a beginner in politics, huh? What are your plans for the future? Have you got your eye on the governor's chair, or...? Or do you plan to head right for the Supreme Court? <laughs> well, Groucho, uh, recently we've opened a new bank in Pacoima. I'm the president of the new bank, and we offer downtown banking services to the Pacoima area. You've only been mayor two years, and already you're opening your own bank? <laughs> Mayor, you may be a tyro politically, but uh, I must say you've got real talent. Uh. <laughs> Well, I'm sure neither of you is averse to winning a lot of money, so let's get down to business. Eh? In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $320, and the secret word is face. Now, here we go. Let's say Ohio can bid you $20. You selected stars of movies. I'll give you the title of these three pictures, and you tell me the name of the male star who appeared in all three of them. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? All of it, huh? Bet the lot. Right. All right, who starred in the road, the Glory Brigade, and Samson and Delilah? Victor Mature. Right. You now have $40. Now you have $40. How much are you going to try this time? All of it, huh? All of it. Who starred in Island in the Sky, The Quiet Man, and Sands of Iwo Jima? John Wayne. John Wayne is right. You now have $80. All of it. Shooting the words. Right. Who starred in Ride Vaquero, Quo Vadis, and Ivanhoe? Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor is correct. You now have $160. Oh, God. Are you going to try the whole thing? Yes. Take huh? it up with the... Uh... I think we should. Uh, all right. Okay. Who starred in Carrie, the Beggar's Opera, and Hamlet? Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence Olivier is right. And you wind up with $320. Oh, thank well, you, Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank you, Groucho. Thank you. All right, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have a department store buyer and a man from a circus for you. Mr. Norman Carroll and Mrs. Helen Kreider, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, kids, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss Helen Kreider and Mr. Norman Carroll. Helen, is that Miss or Mrs.? That's Mrs., Groucho. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was just checking. <laughs> I'm just wasting any time. Find out early. That's my mind. <laughs> now then, are you Norman Carroll? That's right. Or is sir. it Carol Norman? No, Norman Carroll. Sir. Where are you from, uh, Norman? I'm from uh, Vincennes, Indiana. I was oh. born about three blocks away from the Wabash River. Is that so? On the banks of the Wabash, huh? Do you remember much about Vincennes? Well, I was remember I was born in a flood, and three days later I got the measles. <laughs> hmm. Certainly you got a good memory. If you can remember being born during a flood. You were not on Noah's Ark, were you? No. My folks told me about was a about measles. About Noah's Ark? No, the uh, measles <laughs> epidemic. Why did you leave Vincennes, sir? Uh, well, I wanted to join the circus. Uh -huh. Did you still have the spots on your face at the time? No, I got over that. Oh, All right, I guess. Why did you want to join the circus? Was it falling apart? Huh? No, I wanted to uh, join... It's an old joke about the Siamese twins or something. No, I joined... No, somebody said, shall we join the ladies? And he says, why? They're coming apart. This was the Siamese twins. <laughs> I think it's an old George Kaufman joke. <laughs> what did you do with the circus? Well, I joined the circus as a clown. Well, what made you think that you'd make a good clown? Were you always funny at home? Well, around town, they thought I was funny. Uh -huh. And then I... Did you ever hear the old story of the clown? I think it was Marceline, the French clown. He was very despondent and always wanted to kill himself. And he finally went to a doctor, and the doctor says, What's the matter? He says, Well, I have suicidal impulses. He says, I'm always sad and dejected. He says, Well, what you need is a good laugh. Why don't you go to the circus tonight and 
and, and see uh, Marceline the Clown. And he says, I'm Marceline the Clown. <laughs> that's it's, something it's, like... It's not a very funny story, but uh, <laughs> it, has, it has a good moral. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of like I joined the circus as a clown and the contract said... As a matter of fact, it's a very dull story, but... Uh, <laughs> But the uh, most con- stories that have a good moral are like that, and you have to submit to a story like that. <laughs> have you heard that story before? No, oh, but I was going to tell you about the contract I had with the service. You don't like the story I just told you. <laughs> you do you want to hear about the contract? <laughs> this uh, well, Would you listen to this story I... again if I listen to your <laughs> Well, anyway... <laughs> contract that I had said... You don't care I ignore your story the same as you ignored mine. Huh? I like to get an occasional laugh up here, too. You know? you it don't, you it isn't all beer and all skittles just sitting here. What I was going to say at the beginning... The, the, You're a persistent the people... fellow, I must say. You have certainly got a one-joke mind, and you uh, certainly bound on using it. All right, out with it, huh? But I'll warn you, I'm not going to listen to it. I'll pretend I'm listening to it. Well, I started to tell you some a little while ago. That the, it was about ten minutes ago. Clown, the contract said, uh, clown, $15 a week, and you make yourself generally useful. This was in Vincent? This is, where, you, where do you mean? I don't know where I mean. You're telling the story. Right? I'll be willing to listen to the story in any town you name. It seems to me, in fairness to me, that I'm entitled to have some identity about this town. But I, I didn't join the... I left Vincennes with the... I know. That's when you had the measles. In the oh, okay, on with the story. Well, anyway, I was with the circus, and I got $15 a week as a clown, and the lady that owned the circus, uh, she finally came to me, and she said, uh, you're the unfunniest clown we've ever had. And then she gave me a job selling tickets. I only lasted two weeks. <laughs> That's what I was trying to tell you all the time. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't keep on interrupting you. Right? <laughs> How were you as a ticket seller? Were you very successful? Well, I'd say just fair. Uh-huh. <laughs> you weren't very good at anything, were you? It's kind of sad, the whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> Would you like to hear the story again about Marceline, the clown, who wanted to kill himself? I don't... I, unless you would. I would. <laughs> Helen, uh, what, what sort of work do you do? <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Helen? I'm a department store buyer, Groucho. Oh, that sounds like a pretty soft job. Uh, how many department stores have you bought recently? <laughs> None. None? You no. don't? No, no I don't well, buy What department, department stores are, are the store are you with? Well, I'm a little hysterical um, from this measles story. <laughs> uh, I prefer not to mention the name. Uh-huh. The largest in the West, however. Well, is it uh, is it the May Company? No. Is it Saks? No. The Army Navy store? No. Well, every store in town got a plug but yours. Uh, that ought to get you a big raise when you get back there. Uh, <laughs> well, now, Norman, let's get back. What sort of work do you do now? Well, I'm with the greatest show on earth now. Oh, you with Orbex? <laughs> See, Helen, there's nothing modest about him. You might as well tell us what circus it is, uh, Norman. Get it over with, huh? Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. See how shy he is? <laughs> what do you do for the circus, Norman? Well, I'm now I'm the ringmaster, and I do a little barking. <laughs> like, how much is that dog in the window? <laughs> well, tell us about your circus. Uh, what is it like this year? 
Well, I think it's the best show we've had in the 83-year history of this famous circus. We've got a little fella called Mr. Miston Jr. He's a, Mr. North discovered him over in Belgium. His father was a professor of note, and they brought him here. And he Mr. Says, North's father was a professor in Belgium? This is the little fella, Mr. Miston Jr. that I'm talking about. He works in the center ring. Oh, and where's He's, Mr. North waking? In the North Wing? <laughs> He's the one that goes to Europe and he oh, scouts. He doesn't have to watch the circus at all, huh? Well, he sees it in New York when we play Madison oh, Square Garden. He's there. And then, and then he goes go... to Belgium and stays there? And... No, they have... Um, I, I get mixed up talking to you. I do what he's going to say. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Marks, I can't understand I can... how anybody could get mixed up talking to you. <laughs> Mr. I never get mixed up talking to me. <laughs> Mr. Marks, I sold a lot of tickets, but honestly, I think it'd be the toughest job I ever had in my life to try to sell you a ticket. I wouldn't know what I'd be selling. <laughs> Norman, you have no idea how tough it would be to sell me a ticket. Right? <laughs> Particularly since I expect four seats for nothing. <laughs> well, it's been certainly fun talking to you two, but now it's time to play your bet your life for a chance at the big money. All you have to do is run your $20 and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big question later. In the race for the $1,000, the first and second couples are tied with $320 each. You selected little or big as your category. All of these well-known places, persons, and things begin with the descriptive words, little or big. You understand that? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's see how many you can identify. Here's your first question. You have $20. Now, what will you try? All of it. Hey, you've got to talk up. They want to hear it. All, all of it. All of it? Yeah. Oh, Do you agree on this? Okay, you've talked me into it. <laughs> Only if you agree. Huh? Only if you agree. I don't want to argue. I just want to win some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, write it first. All right. All right. What was the nickname for Napoleon? It began with one of the descriptive adjectives, little or big. I, I think it was little Colonel. Little Caesar? Little... For Napoleon. Yeah. Little Caesar. No, Little Colonel, I think. Wrong? Oh. Little Corporal. Little Corporal. Oh, he was plating with it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. You lost all your money. Sure did. That's not good. I'll give you one question, get this right, and you'll bring your, your money up to $25, which you can split. How many rings in a three-ring circus? Um... <laughs> uh, you want to talk it over? No. I think it's three. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you didn't win more. That's all right. Thanks, Thanks and good luck. This is worth the more than the money. I'd rather meet you than win well, money. It was wonderful meeting you. Isn't he wonderful, this guy? I was crazy about him. I wish he was my next contestant. <laughs> <laughs> well, our last couple went broke, and that means that our first two couples who are tied for the chance of the big question get that chance in just one minute for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Splendid. When you drive the 1954 DeSoto Automatic with PowerFlight fully automatic transmission, you're driving the most truly remarkable car on the road today. The main reason is simple. DeSoto PowerFlight. There's no clutch to bother with. No shifting gears necessary. All you do is turn the key, and you're ready to drive. Lightly step on the accelerator and go from a standing start to high-speed cruising in one silk-smooth surge of power. With DeSoto Power Flight fully automatic transmission, it's a breeze all the way. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, the brand-new 1954 DeSoto Automatic with Power Flight automatic transmission is available in two great series, the superbly responsive Powermaster 6 and the mighty Firedome V8, now delivering a full 170 horsepower. See these famous DeSotos at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. You'll be glad you did, because DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. <laughs> Well, here comes our first two couples who are tied for the chance at the big question, Groucho. Each couple will decide on a single answer and write it down on one of these cards that we've given them. If both couples get it right, we'll split the money between them. Okay, here we go. Joseph Braz, and I'll spell it for you. His first name is J-O-S-I-P, 
and his second name is capital B-R-O-Z. That's his real name. That's an important figure in current history. For $1,000, tell me, who is Joseph Braz? said George Washington. It happens to be Marshal Tito. Oh, no. And that uh, means that the mayor and the guy from the phone company split a thousand dollars. How much do they win? You, uh, One thousand dollars in the quiz and three hundred and twenty dollars. Uh... That means the mayor won five hundred dollars and one hundred and sixty dollars for his share. Here. That's six hundred and twenty dollars. You can buy for that. Let's see, three hundred and fifty votes. I would say in San Fernando. Oh, <laughs> Mister, I'll move to San Fernando and vote for you a thousand times. <laughs> oh, that's well, wonderful. now what are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to buy a Gracho special. Oh, fine. And you, mayor? I think I'll start an account in my new bank, Groucho. (laughs) Well, at least you'll have some money in it, even if it's only ours. Well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't forget Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic is... Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. You can't control the weather, but you can control your speed. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is window. W-I-N-D-O-W. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who now have on display the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission and the all new 1954 Plymouth, your best buy in the low priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George, who's first? Gotcha, we have a married uh, couple from our audience, Mr. and Mrs. Marty J. Backjean. So, folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? 
Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. M uh, Marty J. Backjean, huh? Backjean, what, what kind of a name is Backjean? Well, it's uh, J-I-A-N, Backjean, but uh, we change it to J-E-A-N, Backjean. In other words, you change your genes, huh? <laughs> Not in midstream, I hope. Huh? <laughs> Mrs. Backjean, what is your first name? Helen. Helen, well, that's a nice name. You could be from Troy. <laughs> well, what is your hometown? Uh? I'm from Long Island, uh, Queens County, New York. Oh, well, that's a nice place there. I used to live in Great Neck there. Uh, may I inquire how old you are, uh, Helen? I'm 27. 27, huh? Well, young-looking 27. Thank you. And where are you from originally, Marty? Well, originally from West Hoboken, New Jersey, about a half mile from Hoboken Ferry. Oh, I used to live in Hoboken many years ago. <laughs> how old are you, Marty? 45. Really? And Helen's 27. Well, that makes... Uh, Eighteen years difference, huh? Well, that's right. Mm. How long you two been married? Ten years. And so you don't look at me. <laughs> Where exactly did you meet Marty? Do, do you remember? Yes, I was in the tenth grade at Polytechnic High School. You were in the tenth grade together? You, and he was eighteen years old and you? <laughs> Marty, what were you, the village idiot? <laughs> no, I was a teacher. Oh, I see. And Helen married a teacher, huh? Well, yeah. that's, that's a new one, huh? Marty, what kind of a class were you teaching? I was a class in library science. I was a school librarian. Oh. Well, I must say, Helen, you had a lot of courage. <laughs> no, this is, this is no uh, reflection on you, uh, uh, Marty. Most kids, when they go to the library, bring home a book. And... <laughs> Helen Barry, there she brought home the librarian. <laughs> Well, tell us something about library work. Uh, how do you become a librarian? Do you have to start out as a bookie? <laughs> <laughs> well, Groucho, I didn't start out as a bookie. I started out as a shelf reader. Uh, well, were you Morocco-bound at the time? Or <laughs> were you still in uh, Hobart? No. <laughs> I started out as a shelf reader. And a went shelf out reader? To... Yes. You read shelves? I read shelves. Straightened the books on the shelves of the Los Angeles Public Library. And then went on to become a page, and then a junior librarian. You became a page in one of the books? <laughs> no, you, you said you started at the bottom, didn't you? Right at the bottom. But what are you doing now, Marty? Have you given up teaching? No, I'm still the high school librarian at Polytechnic High School in Los Angeles. Oh. You know, speaking of books, uh, in almost every home there are shelves that, with books on them, good books. People have read these books, and they never read them again, and they remain on these library shelves. And the camps and hospitals, the service camps and hospitals, could use these books. They need them desperately. And if any of you folks out front have any books like that that you're through with and don't intend to read again, instead of just decorating the shelves, why not take them to your nearest USO station and drop them off there? You'll be doing a wonderful thing for the kids. <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and I'm sure you'd like to win a lot of money tonight. Wouldn't you? Oh, I'd love to. All right, well, let's play You Bet Your Life. Now, tonight we're going to change our quiz. You know, in past weeks, the contestants have been betting all their money on every question, and too many people have been going broke. Uh, George, Fenneman, will you come in here? I want you to explain the rules. You get four questions. You pick them yourselves by number from a list that Groucho has in his hand there. Now, each question has a value, ranging from $10 for the first on the list up to $100 for the tenth question. As the value increases, $10 at a time, the questions get tougher. You can pick any four of the ten that you want. If you miss the question, we don't subtract anything. And if you get it right, we add it to your total. Now, is that clear? Very clear. Any question? Remember, the more the question is worth, the tougher it is. Number one is easy, number ten is very hard. So it's up to you. The couple that wins the most money gets the chance at the big question later. Well, let's see how much money you can win. You selected American history, and you ought to be pretty good at this. Mm. Now, you can start with a $10 question, Second. 50 or 80 or 100 You can start with any question you want. Let's try. We'll try on. the $50 question. 50 Well, that's a, that's a nice compromise. All right. Who was the president of the Confederate States? Jefferson Davis. That's right. You have $50. You're on your way with $50. Now, you see, the beauty of this quiz is you can't lose this 50 This is inviolate. This is yours. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, you have to talk real loud because these people right, we'll want to hear the We'll take the $70 question. $70. Yes. Now, now, if you win this one, you'll have 120 What was the name of the British general who surrendered at Yorktown? 
Cornwallis. What are you talking about? Cornwallis. Cornwallis is right. <laughs> you now have $120. Isn't this much better than the old way? So yeah. far. Of course, choice. we're going to break the sponsor, but we don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> now you have $120. Now, what are you going to bet? 80 or 90. You had a 70. You want to try an 80? Let's try it. The 80s are very 80. good this year. <laughs> <laughs> we just got them in this morning. 90. We'll try 90. 90. 90. Ethan Allen was a revolutionary hero in command of a famous group of militia. What were they called? The Minutemen. I think so. The Minutemen. No, I'm sorry. It was the Green Mountain Boys. Well, you still have $120, however. And one more chance, right? Now you have one more chance. Well, we should try the $100. All right. right. We'll try the $100 question. Okay. A famous raid on an arsenal led by John Brown in 1859 was one of the incidents that eventually led to the war between the states. What was the name of this place? Talk it over. You're married. Yes. Bridge or something. Oh, uh, we don't know, Groucho. Well, you should have known this. It's Harper's Ferry. I was thinking of a bridge, yes. It's named after my brother, Harper's yeah. Marks, huh? <laughs> and you still wind up with $120. Well, that's pretty good. Thanks and good luck to the Soda Primitive. Okay, George, who's next? Well, we invited some sulky drivers to the program tonight, Groucho, and our studio audience selected Mr. By Shively to be on the show. And his partner has an interesting hobby. She's Mrs. Frances S. Vera. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. <laughs> Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Frances S. Vera and By Shively. Mrs. Barrow, I'll start with you. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Englewood, California. Oh, was that so? I used to live there. (laughs) How old would you say you are, approximately, uh, Mrs. Barrow? Oh, well, I'd say I'm about 28. Uh Uh-huh. Well, how old actually are you? (laughs) You're married, I presume, from this uh, moniker here. Yes, I am. Uh And and Mr. Shively? Where are you? By Shively, huh? Yes, sir. Where, Where are you from, by... Well, I was born in Indiana. Oh, whereabouts? A town called Goodland up in the western, northwestern. Oh, is that so? I used to live there. <laughs> Great old oh. town. Yeah. Your name is By Shively? Yes. What does a By stand for? Well, I hate to mention that. That stands for Bion. For what? Bion. B I A N? O N. B I O N? Is that an old Yankee name or a. Well, I don't know. Some fella named me that they said he had quite a little money, and he tied that name on to me, and I, uh, when he died, he never left me a nickel. <laughs> well, I don't like to mention that. Well, that was a good one on him, wasn't it, huh? <laughs> How old are you, Bye? Oh, I'm only 75. Well, you're only a kid, huh? Yeah. Are you married? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. How long have you been married? Huh? Oh, about 54 years. Are you happily married, bud? Well, yes, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have any children? One boy. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. What was it uh, Fenneman called you? Uh... Sulky driver. You're a, a sulky driver? You mean you drive a horse drive, and carriage? Drive uh, trotters and pacers to a s- sulky. Hmm. I don't like to say this, but aren't you a little old for horse racing? You can drive as long as you can sit on a bike and hold a pair of lines, I guess. What big races have you won, uh, Mr. Shively? Well, I'm on the this- Golden West Trot out here to Santa Anita. I won the Kentucky Futurity and the Hamiltonian. That's a real big one, the Hamiltonian, isn't it? Well, it's about 10,000 more than the Kentucky Futurity. Well, you're a pretty modest fellow, aren't you, the way you reel these uh, victories off here as though they were nothing. Don't you? You don't like to talk much, but you don't blow your own horn very much. Well... I don't... I never noticed it. 
You say you're married, Mrs. Barry? Yes, I am. How did you, how did you meet your husband? Well, uh, I presume you still have him. Eh? <laughs> I was looking for a job one day, and uh, he had a flying school. So a what? A, a flying school. A flying school? Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. The best we could do when I was a kid was to tip the school over on its side. <laughs> Never could get it to fly. Eh? What were you doing at the at this place? Well, I was asking him for a job. Oh. And uh, I worked for him for about a year, and then we were married. Well, what, did, what did you do? You say you worked for him? Uh, I was a flight instructor. Oh. How long did you do this? Oh, I've been flying for about 12 years. You've been flying for 12 years? That's yes. a long time. Well, how'd you manage it? Did you, uh, do they refuel you in midair? <laughs> Apparently, you've done a lot of flying. Have you made any unusual flights, uh, Francis? Uh, yes. I have flown in the Powder Puff Derby for the last three years. The Powder Puff Derby? Yes. Really? That's one place I've never been. <laughs> Isn't that the ladies' lounge at the Brown Derby? <laughs> no, it's the all-women transcontinental air race. Oh? Mm -hmm. And you were in it this year? Yes. Mm -hmm. And where is this, uh, where did you fly from? Well... And to? Um, I flew from Lawrence, Massachusetts to Long Beach, California. That's a long ride. How'd you make out? I won. Really? <laughs> hey, we got nothing but champs up here tonight. Congratulations. You must be pretty good with a powder puff, huh? Well, try. <laughs> You must have a pretty fast plane. Is it a jet plane? Oh, no. Uh, it's a very slow plane. In fact, uh, you can come in last and still win. Only in a woman's race could you make a statement. Like <laughs> well, you're both in a different kind of a race tonight. You're going to play your bet your life for a chair for a lot of money. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. In the race for the $1,000, Mr. and Mrs. Backjean won $120. And the secret word is window. I have ten questions here. You get any four of these questions you want. Only remember number ten is for $100, and that's much more difficult than the first question, which is for $10. Is that clear? And any money you win, you keep. Now, you, uh, you took uh, food and drink as your category. Just talk up. 70, 70. Whatever you say. <laughs> $70. $70. What is the salted row of the stagion called? If you don't know, take a guess. Caviar. Caviar is right, <laughs> yes. On your way, you have $70. Don't do that. When you know the I answer, shout it out. Huh? <laughs> now you have $70, which is yours, and nobody can take that away from you. Except me, as soon as the show is over. Huh? <laughs> now, which one do you want? You want the 100, you want the 10, 20, 30, 80. anything more? 80. Talk up, kids. That's all right. Eight. You're the answer. Eighty dollars. All right. What is the sugar substitute made from coal tar called? Talk it over. Your partners. Oh, I don't know. I don't have no idea. Sir? <laughs> Oh, you should know this. Saccharin. But you still have $70. All right. Now your third question. Which one do you want? $60. 60 What is the main ingredient of borscht? Wine. Take a guess. No, no. I can see you're not rushing. It's beets. You still have $70. All right. Now here's your fourth one. You can't lose that 70 Should we try 50 all right, what are the small cubes of toasted bread served with soup called? Bo uh, Talk it over. Small cubes of toasted bread. Uh, Croutons. Uh, and anyway. you wind up with $70. Well, that's not too bad. Thanks and good luck. And good luck from the DeSoto Plymer dealers. Nobody cheats me out of that. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> now, before we go on, I have something here I would like to mention. It's about Christmas seals. You know, every one of those Christmas seals you buy and use helps fight the battle of tuberculosis. And TB is our country's number one infectious killer. So answer that letter you get 
containing the Christmas seals. Buy them and use them. All right, George, who's next? Well, now we have a, uh, a woman with an interesting job and a man who works in a restaurant, Groucho. Uh, she's Mrs. Edith Keenest and Mr. Tony Hartenstein. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Edith Keenest, uh, Keenest, uh, is that how you pronounce it? That's right, Edith uh-huh. Keenest. Now, what kind of a name is that, Keenest? My husband's from Switzerland. It's a Swiss name. Oh. And where are you from, Edith? I'm from New York City, right near Morningside Park. Oh, is that so? I used to live there. Mm-hmm. Is that so? <laughs> Tony Hartenstein? Steen? What? Hartenstein. Stein. What kind of a name is that? That's a Swiss name. I'm from Switzerland. Oh, naturally. Who isn't? Everybody <laughs> around here tonight is from Switzerland. Huh? I used to live in Switzerland. Today. <laughs> now, Edith, what sort of work does your husband do? He and I operate a dude ranch, the Double E Ranch in Woodland Hills. You run a dude ranch? Well, I'm glad to hear that. I take my little daughter to dude ranches quite frequently in the summer. Now, what is yours like? Uh? Well, ours is the dude ranch for dogs and has nothing to do with people. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean, a dude ranch for dogs? Are you serious? I'm perfectly serious. It's the same for dogs as it would be for people, only we only take dogs. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, is your dude ranch full most of the time? It's full all of the time. In fact, we turn dogs away almost every day. <laughs> well, your place must be a howling success, eh? <laughs> I happen to have a French poodle. Now, suppose I wanted to leave him at your flea bag when I went out of town. Uh, how would I go about it? Well, the first thing you'd have to do is give me plenty of notice so that I'd be sure to be able to accommodate you. No, it's for the poodle. I don't know. <laughs> now, what else do I have to do to get my dog into your club? Well, you have to tell me who recommended us to you. Because we're very particular about the dogs. They have to be strictly pets, and we have to know who the people are that send them. Suppose these dogs get lonesome for their owners. What do you do? Well, most of the owners write their dogs. And then I take the letters into the dogs, and I let them smell it. I even read it to them. They read these letters in the litters? No, I read the letters to them, and they smell it. And then they know it's from their owners. And I answer the letters for the dogs. <laughs> And what what are the have... rates? What are the rates of this joint? Well, I'd rather not go into the rates, but they're reasonable. <laughs> what do you regard as reasonable, uh, Edith? Well, uh, not expensive. <laughs> you give me the old doggy runaround. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Tony, not to change the subject, which needs changing about now. Uh, <laughs> what sort of work do you do? Uh, I'm an accordion player at the Switzerland restaurant. You're an accordion, a squeeze box, you play? That's right, vacuum cleaner. You're a kind of a Swiss fell baker, huh? That's right. Can you yodel? Yes, I can. You can, huh? Well, what is a yodel e- exactly, Tony? Well, a yodel is a combination of your chest voice and the falsetto. And, of course, uh, most of all, an ex- it's an expression of joy. Mm-hmm. Could you teach me to yodel? Well, I think so. Can you sing? <laughs> Apparently, you haven't heard me. <laughs> I, can, I can whine a bit. Well, you take, for instance, uh, you say, holo lo. Holo lo. That's right. Now you put some voice in it, and you go, holo lo, holo lo. Now, this was your chest voice. Now you take uh, the words ooh and do, but here you use your falsetto, like this. Holo lo, well, let's have a whole yodel in now, then. Six dogs just broke out of her tent. <laughs> now you can you yodel it. Oh, holy, 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 holy,
Uh, you can go to Latin. I'll sing the low part now. All right. What key, will you? Well, you pick any key. Right? <laughs> holy, 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 I can do more things badly than anybody in television. <laughs> well, it's been certainly fun talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life for a chance at the big money. In the race for the $1,000, Mr. and Mrs. Backjean are still leading with $120. Now, uh, you know, we have a new uh, quiz game, or don't you know? Okay. You have chosen geography as your uh, category. I've got ten questions here. You'll pick any four of these you want. They start at $10 and go up to $100. Further up you go, the tougher they get. Now, are there any questions? Is this clear to you? I believe so. All right, you can take a $10 question, which is the easiest, $100, 50 anything you want. We can talk up. 10 10 Mm-hmm. All right, and what foreign capital do you find the Kremlin? <laughs> Moscow. That's right. You see, you should have taken a $100. <laughs> well, you now have $10. Now you have $10. Now you can take any question you want. Mm-hmm. 20 All right, and what state do you find Pikes Peak? Colorado. Colorado is right. Now I have $30. Now, uh, which one do you want? All right. 40 40 What is the capital city of Chile? Santiago. Santiago is right. You now have $70. Now, you have one more question. You can take any one you want. 60 60 okay. 60 what is the tallest mountain in North America? Mount North America? Mount McKinley. Alaska. Mount McKinley is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $130. Well, thanks. <laughs> That means that the lady who runs the dude ranch for dogs and her partner with $130 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Arlene Francis here to tell you about the most wonderful new car I've ever seen, the 1954 DeSoto Automatic. The DeSoto Automatic is the one car planned and built to do exactly what you want it to do. Do it instantly, do it quietly, and do it safely at all speeds. That's a marvelous thing to know. And what a beautiful car. There are completely new interiors, too. The new instrument panel is in perfect harmony with the rest of the exquisite appointments. A real jewel-like instrument panel, giving you a real feeling of luxury. Take it from me, this 1954 DeSoto Automatic is a really thrilling car. A car you'll want to see right away at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Drop in to drive the 1954 DeSoto Automatic and enjoy a DeSoto ride. The ride that puts you ahead automatically. <laughs> Here comes our winning couple, Groucho, the man from Switzerland, and the lady who runs the dog dude ranch, all set for the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. No coaching now. One of the colorful figures of California's early days was a writer and poet who immortalized such places as Roaring Camp and Poker Flat. For $1,000, tell me the name of this famous poet. Talk it over. What's the answer you two have decided upon? Take a guess. Well, we, we don't know. Well, it was Bret Hart, a very famous uh-huh. poet and novelist. Uh-huh. So that means Bret Hart, B R E T, capital H A R T. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? They won $130. Well, not, quiz. not too bad. Thanks and good luck from the Thank more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Let me 
Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the outstanding 1954 DeSoto Automatic with fully automatic power flight transmission also have on display the remarkable new Plymouth, engineered and built to be your best buy in the low price field. DeSoto, Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the DeSoto Automatic. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving, don't stick your neck out in traffic. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world.